And you are live. Good luck. Hey, everyone. What's going on? Uh, I'm Amart. I am going to be one of the three racers for Final Fantasy IX tonight. Um, yeah. Don't really have much else to say. Pass it off to you, Cease. Hey, everybody. I'm Ceaselessly. I will also be racing tonight. And uh, looking forward to a good race. Mel? What's up, everybody? Mel loves games, a.k.a. Melbert. Hope you're all having a good time. <laughs> really excited to be with all these lovely people and play some FF9 tonight. Uh, hey, we're hello. joined by our commentators. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're, we're too shy, but hello, everyone. I'm Roaming Mark. I'm going to be one of the supporting commentators um, for the run. Take it away, uh, Broods. Uh, hey, I'm the Brutals. I'm a long-time runner of this game. Got a lot of love. And uh, I will also be commentating for these lovely runners here this evening, slash this morning. A long-time runner of the game, he says. That's all he hypes himself up with. I am Reverb. I am also a long-time runner of this game. We'll get into a lot <laughs> more of that soon. But we've got a lovely FF9 run ahead of us, so... I think we are ready to start if everyone else is. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. Any objections to starting a new game? Not uh, at all. Nah, I guess game. that's fine. You want to you right. count us in Rev? You want to do the honors? Absolutely. If everyone is interested in the game of Final Fantasy IX, I can count you in. I'm kind of giving you a buffer to get to the new game screen so you're all there at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. If we are ready, we might as well start this game in five, four, three, two, one, go. Let's Good go. luck, gamers. Good, Good luck, friends. Oh, Good luck. Look, everyone. <laughs> Good luck to everyone, all the runners in this game. We are in for the greatest game of all time. I think we can all agree on that one. No arguments there. <laughs> Starting off no right bias. away. No, no, no arguments whatsoever. Uh, we're going to start uh, with a nice little cutscene. This game is beautiful, but then we're going to head into the first fight of the game after a configuration menu. One thing we're all going to be very curious to see is what color text boxes we're going to get. Uh, <laughs> Rudes, do you have any predictions? Do I have any predictions on text boxes? Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I know what Amar's going to do. Blue. Everyone's He's, going oh, blue. That's very disappointing for me, but that's okay. I am going to say, though, I gave Cease some one-on-one -on -one help earlier today, so she is definitely going to be getting the masher first. All right, all right. I'm hoping that we all get out of Mage Masher within six minutes. Let's be optimistic. <laughs> That's uh, quite we'll generous. Well, yeah, we'll see. So uh, for those that don't know, the first objective of this game is about three minutes in where we fight Masked Man. And we need to steal a weapon for Zidane, the main character. And it is a one in 16 chance of stealing it. We can steal it about four times. Or we, have, we can try to steal it four times every 20 seconds or so. So this can be over in 10 seconds or it could take a couple minutes, but we'll see. It's funny when you say one in 16, it doesn't sound so slim when you say that. I've always known it's it really like doesn't. six and a half or so, but six and a half percent yeah. that is. But yeah, that actually sounds, that's, 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 that's glass half full mentality, that definitely. <laughs> it doesn't sound so bad and there's actually some other mechanics behind it. You could just miss the steel entirely. It's more like one in 20, I think, is the actual math on that, but you know. We've all had those runs where it takes a long time to steal it, so let's just uh, take a quick peek at that. First thing we get to see, though, is we get to figure out what everyone's going to name their main character. We'll see if there's any fun to be had here. Coming up in just a second, they get to name Zidane. Look at these lovely gray text boxes. I hope it stays like this forever. <laughs> So we're starting off right away with the config. Oh, yeah, quick configuration menu, of course, just to speed up the text boxes and uh, manage the um, the camera config and thing like things like that. Okay, so Cease is clearly going to win the race because of gray text boxes, but <laughs> got a lot of names being tossed out here. I see a shout out to myself. I see a Paul. I missed what uh, what Mel named 
Zidane. We'll find out in a second. Chewy in. Nice, nice, nice. So one of the things that if you've played this game casually or watched the speedrun of this game before, you know that the fights are much, much slower in terms of battle speed compared to the other games. We set it as high as possible in the um, configuration menu, but it's still kind of slow. Whoa. I see Whoa. a Mage Masher from Whoa. the Grey Text Box community, which is no surprise to me. I think your uh, coaching worked there. What did I tell you? I'm never <laughs> wrong. <laughs> Clearly. So just like that, Cease managed to get probably close to a gold split there. It's way ahead of the pack and can start zooming through the rest of this game. Well, unfortunately, Amart and Mel will be here for some time. Let's take a look. Hopefully not too long. <laughs> Hopefully not. Now, while there are some alternate strategies to not stealing the Mage Masher, um, the, the time deficit from not taking it now is actually is quite large. We can pick up one a little bit later in the second dungeon and um, sort of weave that into the routing should we wish, but uh, it does take several minutes and it makes a number of fights before then um, pretty much twice as long as well, which um, is not good. No, not good. We see Mel got the Mage Masher, so she is right behind Cease. Unfortunately, Amart's um, Sinner has, has been clobbered as well, so he's only going to get three steals per round as well, with the extra ATV wed. Which, um, actually, would you like to cover really quickly, Rev? Yeah, um, it's a very well-talked-about subject, but kind of one that's hard to understand until you've played the game yourself. Uh, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner of uh, Amart's screen that every character has a green ATB that lets you know when they have the turn ready, and that fills up based on your character's speed stat, um, something you can do if you have a character who's faster than the enemy is do what's called an ATB wait, where you just kind of hold the enemy's ATB at zero after they've done their animation and hold your own at zero. So even if they've gone first, you can get two turns in, essentially, to their one. It's a little trick to make yourself a little safer and faster in a couple ways. So they're going to be using that a lot throughout the run. We'll point out a couple instances of when it's happening. Mostly comes from Zidane as uh, being the rogue of the party. He's got the highest speed stat, usually more often than not. Um, yeah, unfortunately, often. today we're not seeing any any books. <laughs> Everybody's on the same route today and nobody's going to be using auto haste. I believe <laughs> we could still be pleasantly <laughs> surprised. <laughs> we'll leave that one out for now. <laughs> All right, so um, let's pay attention to uh, Cease here. Hopefully she'll be going for Puck Skip, which is the greatest skip in all of Final Fantasy IX speedrunning. Um widely considered the first reset uh, factor <laughs> of the run. Oh, really, the no child's on the right side. Oh, oh, not quite. Uh, it's... So, yeah, feel free to explain that, Skip, to... Uh... Yeah, um, so um, I'm actually, you know what? I'm not entirely sure how it works exactly, <laughs> but it's it's something along the lines of if you if you can initiate the conversation with that gentleman on the right there as um, Puck, um, the small Bermesian, Bermesian boy? Clarin boy? Yeah. Um, uh, with the, with the orange Prince, I think. Yeah. He's Clarin. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And bumps into you. Um, if you open the text box with that with that fellow on the right, at the same time, maybe there's a few frames leeway either way or something, um, it will pull Vivi out of that, uh, that, it, that, that conversation and interrupt him with an animation which you can then very hilariously slide up the map while he's still <laughs> getting up and um, ignore having to talk to Puck. It saves something like four seconds, I believe. Yeah, about four seconds if you do it perfectly, and if you go for it and mess up, you lose about a second, because you don't get to run as far. It's uh, the tiniest skip there is in this oh, game. Oh, 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 oh Mel's got God. it! All right, nice. So you got to see All right. Vivi just sliding right on through that screen. <laughs> we have a race. <laughs> Making up time already. Nice job, Mel. <laughs> um, yeah, it, we, we joke about it a lot in the community because it's a, like I said, four-second time save if you nail it properly. But this game does not have very many glitches or skips or tricks in it. That's one of the biggest glitches or skips in the game. <laughs> um, I think there's something like five established skips at this point now in the entire game. And I think yeah. only one of them is worth uh, nearly 30 seconds. And it's probably the easiest one. <laughs> yes, we'll get there in five and a half hours-ish. But <laughs> yeah, for the most part, this game is really well built compared to a lot of the earlier ones. You, you think of Final Fantasy VII, you every now and then find a 20-minute... I'm safe. Oh, nice job, oh! Amart. Also got the puck skip. Incredible. 
I'm popping off two in the You'll morning. You'll love to see it. This is great. This is great. Yeah, <laughs> some of the earlier games were not built the same way and had some skips to them, but Final Fantasy IX, you are really playing this game in its entirety, other than a lot mm-hmm. of little trips, little tricks, excuse me, to help you survive and get through some fights faster. But for the most part, you're just playing the game the way it's intended. At least on console, that is. If you're <laughs> playing on uh, HD, there's some crazy options of things you can do. All right, what is Amart doing? Seems to be... Oh, no, oh, he not, <laughs> did not talk to the ticket teller, so he's... the ticket booth. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not to worry. It's okay. It's, it's part of his uh, his plan. He's got some secrets up his sleeve. I think this must be one of them. We'll, we'll soon find out that he's also got slow disk speed on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, unimaginable. <laughs> so, um, Cease is going to be coming up to the second naming of the game now. We've got Vivi coming up. Who could it be other than, of course... Dot, dot, dot. Ah, looks like we got Rome joining the party. Very nice. All right, all right. That's a funny name. <laughs> Looks like a good person. Hopefully he uh, shows up a little bit later on this stream. There's a ton to talk about this game, technically, and you mentioned it very briefly with uh, fast disk speed. Uh, everyone here is playing on a PlayStation 2, specifically a slim PlayStation 2, with the fast disk speed option turned on. It's uh, something they added to the... It was on the uh, bigger PlayStation as well, but the slim one ends up running the fastest. It basically is just spinning the disc just a little bit faster, and it causes loads to be a lot shorter. And you can imagine in a nine-hour game, if you save one second per loading screen, of which there's probably 2,000 in this run, uh, you save a lot of time. It really, really, really adds up, yep. We've all tried to estimate it before. I think it's somewhere in the ballpark of 40, 45 minutes. Oh goodness, is it really that high? <laughs> I thought it was I think so, 10. based on the task. No, I, some people say 10. I'm more convinced it's closer to 40. Oh my, yeah, that is high. Yeah. I see someone questioning how many nobles is going to be the new question. How many um, nobles? Yeah, do you want to talk about Indeed. I would love to. That. So, yeah. nobles is the next mini game that... Um, sort of governs how people are going to be managing their money until the start of disc three roughly um it, it gives you an instant uh, influx of 10,000 gil which is going to essentially just allow you to skip picking up a bunch of extra uh, gil pickups along the way and um, so you can streamline your shops you can buy a lot more things um you can you know not have to grab a bunch of extra items on the way to just make up that extra little bit of gil um it saves something like 25 seconds and pretty much all of it comes down to being able to visit one of the shops a little bit earlier in Clara. It's um, it's it's quite negligible, but it's one of those things that you do really want to see. And I just saw that excellent naming by El <laughs> Amar. My, my dude, dude has corner, joined the yeah. party. <laughs> Let's go. Fan of my dude. <laughs> yeah, I believe everyone here is running the same route for this game. Um, we might see a few surprises, but I don't think we will. Uh, when this game was started, there wasn't a well-established route for which one is the best. A lot of different routes are out there that save time here, lose time there. It all ends up being pretty close to even, but a uh, outer came into the world. Oh, when did Petro show up? 2019-ish? Yeah. And really took a deep dive into this game and tried to maximize just about everything. And I think we could probably say it's the fastest route that we know of, and it's kind of taken over usually yeah, they, what we tell people to run if they want to seriously push in this game. It took a little while, but eventually um, Bomb Bomb got the world record with it and took the top spot with it, right? That was the first Absolutely, time it got yeah. into the top three. Um, and now it's the, the top four times, I believe, at least are all... Uh, maybe no, Misuto is still... The, Mizuno the, runs, yeah. Yeah. He runs a mix. I think he actually is doing a mix of MPU and Petro. Mizuno is another yeah. fantastic uh, Japanese runner in the much more established Japanese community. They've been around a lot longer. And there are some differences between North American version and the Japanese version in the way the game is played, just because it's a couple things are different. So if you are playing on the Japanese version, you can't quite do Petro route. It doesn't exactly work the same way, but... Can take a lot of 
bits and pieces of every route and put them together into something you enjoy. Yeah, it's crazy how little actually changes between the versions and how much it actually influences, to be honest. <laughs> yep. it's, uh, it's really only like two or three very small changes, but they really influence how you play the game. We are um, on so our this... second. Yeah, go for it. No, yeah, it's just um, King Leo. It's the first real boss fight of the game. Um, King Leo being the, the chap in the middle and his two um, allies, Venero and Zanero. Um, the only winning condition here is to deal lethal damage to King Leo, which is just shy of 200. Um, and Venero and Zanero both go down in roughly one hit, uh, with Zina not really counting as one, unfortunately. No. <laughs> um, the AT weight tricking works here between Marcus um, Shuyin and Blank. Um, <laughs> any of those three can actually get one off. Um, and you can save a little bit of time if you can get them off. The idea is just to try and minimize the amount of times that they cast special effects against you is where all the time save typically comes from. Yeah, because the battle speed is slow, so so slow, you really don't want to see a whole lot of spell casting because a normal physical attack will take anywhere from two to four seconds, but a spell can take anywhere from eight to 12, I think, with some of the longer ones. So usually in these fights, you're just hoping for a quick attack, but take what you can get. And right, right now we see Cease on 100 Nobles. Uh, this is a mini game. If you, as a kid, played this, you may have had a chance. It's really mm. hard. I still cannot do it very well. And if you played it as an adult on a LCD screen, you will not get it. It mm. is almost impossible without a, a CRT TV, which everyone here is playing on, thankfully. It's a lot nicer in the HD version. They made it a little bit more uh, forgiving, but it's very tight timing. I think it's 50 button presses you have to get perfect. Yeah, roughly. Along um, those lines. Yeah. yeah. The idea is simply just to press the right button. If you press the wrong button, you instantly get a fail on that check. And each button individually has a, a timing threshold um, where if it goes over a certain amount, you uh, it, it counts as like a partial fail or something like that. So you've got to be yeah. quick and you've got to be precise. Um, and it's the only way to get all 100 nobles on your side. Osis, I believe, did not get nobles. I think I saw an early miss. Yeah. Looks like Mel is still on pace. I haven't seen a miss yet, but let's take a look. Very satisfying sound effects coming out of the uh, <laughs> the correct button presses. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, it looks good. Is looks that good. Yep, there you go. Yeah, 100 nobles. So Clean Mel there game. got 10,000 gil to play with. And Cease, I think, it, it's hard to tell when you match so fast. Somewhere in the ballpark of six to 800 gil, I think, if you mess up a little bit. Yeah, it drops off considerably. You don't even get 1,000 gil for getting what, any input. Even if you get one slightly slow, it instantly yep. drops below 1,000 gil and you're... Suddenly on the uh, the noble list uh, routing, which isn't too much of a problem. You just need to make sure that you grab a few extra little pickups along the way. Yeah, thankfully they um, have routed it so that you you don't need it. It would be very unfortunate if this uh, was a reset point 15 minutes into the run, every run. But not a big deal. I'm seeing some misses on Amart's side, so I'm looking at it. I think uh, Mel's the only one who's going to get this. I remember when I was uh, getting ready to run for the um, the FF Relay last year and I spent the about two or three hours prior to it practicing trying because I'm, I'm not very confident with it at all, <laughs> trying to make sure I had it down and I th thought I finally had it consistent, sat down for the actual race and bottled it straight away. <laughs> it's one uh, thing to reset and go in there and get it perfectly. It's another thing with your sweaty hands and the nerves it's... running and the energy going. It's not easy at all. It's horrifying, man. With that, we are still in basically what is known as the tutorial section of this game. We're still in kind of the first dungeon, if you want to call it that, where we're learning a lot of battle mechanics in theory. And some of the fights are a little bit different than what we'll see. Um, you mentioned earlier that you only need to kill off King Leo in the prior fight to advance. And in the fight before that, if you were watching where they steal the Mage Masher, you don't actually have to deal enough damage to the uh, enemy to advance. You can just off all your party members and the fight will end without giving you a game over um we do that we kill everyone off because it's faster than dealing i think it's somewhere in the ballpark of 400 damage to ask man to actually is it that high? The prop it, it's ridiculously high <laughs> so it's way faster just to wow end it yourself um so we got a couple more fights coming up where we're going to do some weird attacking of our own party members as opposed to attacking the enemy just to mm -hmm. end the fight quicker but those gimmick fights will not last past this first area, so we're going to be heading into the first actual dungeon that some variance is going to happen. 
Um, so just a moment ago, we saw uh, our, our, our runners take control of Zidane for the first time, where they actually, for the first time, equipped the Mage Masher, and now it's on. So uh, for those with the keenest eye would have seen that Zidane was dealing around 40, 45 damage uh, per attack uh, in the previous encounter, and now he'll be dealing double damage uh, thanks to the power of the Mage Masher. It's uh, definitely a huge boost at this point in the game. Yeah, an interesting thing in this game is everyone has a unique job, unlike some of the other Final Fantasy games where you can equip certain abilities on everyone. So Zidane is going to be your main stealer for this game. And for the most part, a lot of the bosses that you fight in this game will always have a weapon that's going to be a giant upgrade for any party member um, when you can get it. Otherwise, you'll have to buy it or find it in a shop or on the ground somewhere about 20 minutes-ish later in the run. So... We take advantage of some spots where we try to steal, and if the odds are in our favor, we'll get a very nice damage upgrade. Sometimes it's just double your damage output, which matters a lot in this game with the really slow battle speed to end fights twice as quickly. Yeah. Uh, this is the only mandatory steal in the entire run. All of the other, I believe, yes. all of the other steals that we actually take through um, are all completely optional, and... They offer slight upgrades in very specific fights. Um, none are really much of a huge knock-on effect, um, weirdly enough. <laughs> yeah, it would be a very hard game to run if uh, it was mandatory to steal the Ori, you know, seven hours into the run. That would not be fun for anyone. Shout-outs to the Holy Lance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Holy Lance strats, I believe, are going to be a thing of the future someday. Steth route, probably. <laughs> Swed has a route that steals the Holy Lance from Ark, just saying. <laughs> of course, Swed does, yes. Uh, as, as I mentioned, these routes have changed so much throughout the years, and we all try different things, and some stick and a lot don't, just because it's like, yeah, that was that was interesting, but I don't think that's actually going to be possible, or it's not actually faster, or any random thing, but the amount of different things you can do in this game is actually pretty impressive. The so question from the chat was, is there a way to manip encounters in this, like a step counter or anything? Um, no. So the other games were built by a different team, I think is the easiest way to put it, where the RNG tables were made very differently. So you had an RNG table for the encounters that was different from the RNG tables for damage rolls or certain things like that. Um, this game only has one RNG table that's constantly pulling from. It generates a random number from 1 to 256 and whatever that number is determines your RNG for that moment. Um, the RNG table is completely randomized to an extent. You can see with uh, script what is coming, but the problem in this game is that it changes every frame, unlike the other games where it only changes during certain activities. So literally every frame you see them in game, the RNG is different. So you, there's just no way to know what's coming up next. What uh, If your hit's gonna crit, if your hit's gonna miss, if you're gonna steal something, any of the above is all affected by just this one RNG table that we absolutely cannot manipulate at this point, as far as we know. I believe that when you're actually locked into combat, the RNG only moves whenever an action is performed, though. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, but, so technically, if you knew what siege you were going into a fight, you'd be able to manage it it's like that, yes. but there's, there's, no, <laughs> there's, no, there's no reliable way, currently at least, to see uh, what, the, what on earth is going on. <laughs> Yeah, it'd be very interesting, but just given the way that it works, I, I can't imagine we'll get to that point. It'd be great to see, though. It'd be very fun if we could guarantee at least just a Mage Master steal. I think that would make everyone's life a lot easier. But you know, if you wasted one frame in the config menu, you're on a different seat already. So just don't see it happening anytime soon, but you never know. RNG, every RNG frame, constantly. This game really interesting and also makes it quite terrifying at times. There are a handful of fights that are not 100% safe. There's a lot of fights that we have routed out to be safe and you can just lose a lot of time. And there are some fights that we have routed out to be um, as safe as possible, but you can still die. So. Yeah. There's there's only roughly like three fights in the game where you're you're actually in quite a lot of danger really. Um, yeah. But even those ones, there are quite a lot of ways to mitigate uh, that 
that that downside. Um, but they don't come until quite a lot later as well, so we'll most likely definitely be seeing. Well, I, I believe everyone's going to be running off of a, uh, a save list today, right? Everyone be. Yeah, as far as I know, there's going to be safety saving for everybody. Now we are coming up on the first of three Steiner fights, is that right? Uh, yeah, this is number one. So um, we've just seen um, Cease in the top right here going for the ATV weight with Zidane. So if she gets this, very nice. Uh, Steiner will always go first in this fight. He always has the preemptive strike. Um, so if you can hopefully have a good ATV between Blank and, and or Zidane and somebody else to weight them with, um, in any combination of those, essentially, you can have Blank or Zidane have two strikes. Um, and the other have one, and that will finish off Steiner in one round of attacks. So he doesn't get to have a second animation, and uh, it's basically the long and short of how you save time in this game, is uh, trying to bring the amount of turn times uh, down to as few as possible, generally speaking. So by skipping a, a second Steiner animation there, saves something like five or six seconds. Yeah, those little time saves add up a lot in this game. If you've uh, ever attempted to to run this game or try to play casually to get the Excalibur 2, which we'll talk about a lot later, um, you'll notice that there's so many ways that you can lose 5, 10 seconds here and there, and the runners know a lot of them, and they are doing everything they can to avoid them, whether it's saving turns or giving a couple encounter checks or any random little thing just to save some amount of time. Yeah. And imagine that adds up a lot over the run. Mm -hmm. um, someone's asking if there are any specific drops. Um... Typically in this game, the bosses and enemies don't really drop anything aside from consumables. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, outside of perhaps just um, Ozma, which is definitely not in this run. Um, <laughs> no. Bosses don't drop equipped. Well, actually, no, that's a lie. I know that Ark has 100% guaranteed to drop the Pumice Piece, which I believe is the only instance of an equipable item being dropped by a mob that we fight. Um, that everything sounds about else right. is, Yeah, everything is down to either uh, maybe Ether drops which can be quite lucrative. Um, yep. Shout-outs to Black Wolves too. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, Ethers and Elixirs will be the only thing that we're really... We're not exactly looking for them. We'll, most of these drops are either 50% chance or 1 in 8 for a lot of the other ones. And towards the end of the game, it's just kind of... Again, it's RNG as to how many Ethers and Elixirs you'll have. It's not necessarily mandatory, but... You always would rather have more than less, so that's right. You can you can get into some scary situations if you get really unlucky. It, it's not common to get super unlucky though, but we pick up as many ethers and elixirs as we reasonably can without losing too much time and going out of the way for. So in theory, we have enough to survive no matter what the RNG is like. There are a lot of safety mechanisms built into the run, running underneath the hood. That it's it's quite funny that um, a lot of people, when learning the route, they'll they'll execute the route and they'll get really good at the route. And a lot of people aren't aware of the lot of things that are going on until it, it hits them in the face. And they're like, exactly. "Oh, that's, that's why we do that." Ha ha! <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it's 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 really 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 smart. A lot of the ways uh, that the routes are, are created. Yeah, that's one of the uh, problems I ran into. I don't actually speed run this full game in the same way these guys do and th the hard part me is not following along with the guide it's when you mess up and you need to adjust some things based on a accidentally sold piece of equipment or you equipped the wrong thing in the wrong spot having the experience of making those mistakes a lot over many attempts really helps you adjust on the fly yeah it's uh, one of those things that you pretty much can't practice for you just have to Get in that situation, get it wrong, and just learn from your mistakes. And it's <laughs> one of the, the, the major reasons that people spend a lot of time playing this game. Um, so we're seeing she's getting into Steiner 2 here. Um, she is once again having her parties uh, attack themselves off. Um, the, the, one of the uh, hit, uh, alternate win conditions for this fight is to have only Dagger alive at the end, as Steiner is not allowed to attack Dagger. Um, as long as Dagger isn't also KO'd um, when this happens, you, you don't game over. If you do knock her out as well, then you, you do actually game over. So you got to make sure not to, uh, to <laughs> knock her out. That's a, that's a real important one. <laughs> Again, a mistake I think we've all made at some point, or at least I'm going to say I have made. Uh, it's a little tricky oh, yeah. when you're 
fingers are moving a little too fast, you accidentally hit off Garnet instead of Marcus, for example. Oh, and you're yeah. like, oh well, that's great. There goes the last 20 minutes of my life. <laughs> it's um, quite frustrating as well if you if you uh, queue a command to attack one of your own party members, and then <laughs> as you're going to select your other party members, they they actually hit themselves, and it jumps your cursor down, and then you ugh, yes. ugh, every blah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it takes quite. It's again, it's not even that long. It's like something maybe like 15 to 20 seconds to get. Well, actually, no, you have to wait an entire turn, right? So it does yes. add up. It ends up being about a 30 second time loss to someone has to pick them up, and then they have to come <laughs> back round again. And they got to hit themselves, and blah, blah. And the damage that the enemy deals there is so crazily low because it's still a tutorial that they they right. definitely aren't gonna uh, KO you for you. So a good ATB. Oh, no, sorry, I was just saying that good ATB in these fights is really important. We just saw that Amart there uh, got a perfect fight, actually. Uh, all the ATBs were uh, in excess of the opposing party, so we didn't see any uh, animations from their party whatsoever. We just saw ours and ours alone, which is pretty much as fast as it gets. This is coming up on the third Steiner fight, which has a small little oddity to it. Uh, the win condition for this is kind of different from every other one. You can basically just wait around for the bomb in the back to grow a couple times. It'll get large enough, it'll scare Steiner, and the fight will be over. Um, this is going to be doing a little bit of ATB manipulation, kind of like ATB waiting, just to, really good. to make the bomb get more turns than Steiner is the goal. Mm -hmm. um, if you saw Steiner's turn, he just yells princess, and then I think he yells something else on the second one if yeah, he that gets was... another turn in. That was perfect, yeah. So um, the bomb actually has to have t two turns to, for one of its turns, but its ATB is is maxed. It is, it is the one of, among the fastest things in the game. Um, so Cease is actually wait, using her own ATB to weight the bomb against Steiner. So she's draining Steiner's ATB and then manipulating the, um, the, bomb's, uh, the bomb's ATB to have two turns before Steiner has one of his which is wild when you think about it <laughs> but essentially it allows her to save something like three to four seconds <laughs> exactly. by, <laughs> by skipping a single text box <laughs> yeah and that was something that was discovered pretty recently on how best to manipulate that and it's a very difficult concept it's hard to explain it in real time without getting in there and seeing the enemy atbs with some visual cues but it's a very tricky to perform thing for a new runner for example and it's such an advanced technique, but in the end, it saves you about three or four seconds, as Brutal said. We're going to be taking advantage of all of these small little time saves throughout the run, just to... a little bit ahead. With that, we are done with what I would consider the first dungeon of the game, Alexandria, and we're moving on to the second, the Evil Forest, which is going to start introducing a couple new mechanics to the game and is going to be the part where we get some random encounters for the first time, which are the bane oh, yeah. of every runner. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's going to be the first place that the Mage Masher really starts to shine. Um, it allows Zidane to uh, deal with all of the, well, but most of the random battles in one attack, um, which is a huge step up from being able to deal with them in two, typically. Um, we're going to originally be uh, initially be seeing Sedan um, after a bit of dialogue moving on to uh, the first boss of Evil Forest slash the second as well at the same time um, Prison Cage uh, where we're going to be trying to steal the broadsword ideally it's got a good rate a good chance to get it and it will save us a little bit of money and a little bit of menuing and uh, is always definitely welcome um, while we discover the true power of trance <laughs> yeah, this is this is the second fight where we steal, and probably only the second of the third one where we even try to steal for the most part. Um, this is not a an, again, this is not a mandatory steal. It's one where you have a good chance of stealing the item you really hope for. I think it's mm -hmm. something like seventy five percent chance. And if you get the second most common item, it has some benefit, but it's not as great. Um, and if you miss it entirely, it's no big deal whatsoever. It. Uh, I see a little bit of time and a little bit of money, but not anything significant. It's resetting over, at least. So, see, this is the, the so one of only two ATEs, which is a mechanic I believe is new to FF9 when it came out. 
yes. which is um, allows the party to allows the player to witness events going on with other party members in other points, other places in the story at the same time. Um, we ignore all of these bar one, which we'll get to in about two hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, Evil Forest, um, the second, well, second dungeon, first, first dungeon of the game. First place we can get random battles. Um, there is a chance to steal, uh, uh, skip this random battle if you can get sort of lucky-ish. Yeah. Um, but it's not common to skip not, this one. No, not at all. It's very, very tight. Um, this encounter is one of the more favoured random battles that you can get. You really do want to take this one out. Um, it's a big chunk of experience for Sedan. Uh, it helps out for ability points. And most importantly, um, when we do get the trance in just a moment, the extra uh, spirit that we've got that increases our trance bar just a tiny little bit means that we can take two actions and still have trance activated. So we don't have to watch Sedan de-trance, which saves something like 8 to 10 seconds. Yep, and I believe so that, Mel just uh, burned right through that without an encounter and has taken the lead if it uh, is showing properly on my oh, screen. Is that right? Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's already in the prison cage, so we're going to get right on there. Um, this is the first instance of trance in this game, which is similar to a limit break in Final Fantasy VII, where you have access to a couple different abilities. Uh, depending on who is trancing, you, every character has a unique trance to themselves. Um, like Final Fantasy VII, it's actually pretty rare to get trances. You will most likely see, oh, what is it, two trances from a character if you play it normally per run. There's a couple other forced ones that you'll see, but for the most part, the random trances will not be happening in this game, so we don't rely on them at all. No, typically Zidane trances um, three to four times per run. Freya hopefully doesn't trance or only trances once at a very nice place. <laughs> and um, that's pretty much it, other than, like Rev said, the uh, the forced ones that we're going to see. So the free energy plus a regular attack from Zidane here is going to be enough to take out Prison Cage. And we'll see Mel de-trancing here because she didn't have that random battle. So it's probably actually going to put Cease back in the lead, which it has. <laughs> <laughs> which you, Yes, <laughs> so it was so very close, but you can, yeah, the power of trance. <laughs> so one um, thing to note with trance of again another uh common mistake we all make uh since you stole the mage masher you actually get um zidane's second trance ability title flame and it's very tempting to play this game and say "Ooh, i got must be a more powerful spell well first of all it's not more powerful but second of all it targets everyone and yeah says garnet is a target in this fight and if she dies that's a game over so you really do <laughs> not want to accidentally use title flame here yeah, that's definitely a, definitely a misplay. So this is the second stage of the prison cage fight. It's now uh, kidnapped our baby boy, Vivi. Um, simply two rounds of attacks. My dude has been kidnapped. <laughs> Can't have that. Um, just two rounds of attacks. And on the final turn, as long as there are no misses, please. Um, <laughs> Paul and Shuyin will be going for a steal each. And once again, they'll be praying for the, uh, the broadsword. It's not too much of a problem if they don't get it, and it is actually, strangely enough, the same weapon that Steiner does have. Um, but we're going to be exchanging it off of a later party mate member for a better weapon. Um, which is going to help out Steiner's damage a little bit earlier. So that's two rounds. Let's take a look. So these are going to be coming up pretty much at the same time here. Do -do -do -do. Up, seeing a broadsword there. And a nice. leather wrist. A leather wrist from Mel, which is technically the more, or the rarer steel, but it's actually it's really less helpful for us. It, uh, yeah, everything goes fun. perfectly <laughs> right. It could be great. It could also be devastatingly bad. So Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, Mel, I, I'm pretty certain that Mel will not be applying <laughs> the power of the, uh, the leather wrist. Um, yes. So at this stage in the game, I believe it's actually a bug. In PSX, if you don't have yes. a certain value in your spirit, um, your characters actually can't perform a critical hit. Uh, criticals Correct. are completely unavailable. In PC HD and um, console HD like remasters of this game, that has been fixed, and all characters can crit from any point in the game. 
um, including enemies at much earlier point in the game, which is quite <laughs> devastating. <laughs> yeah, but actually, um, strangely enough, we can use that to our advantage um, in PSX because in a Sea Iron boss fight that's coming up in about 30 minutes or so, we'll, we'll break it down then. But um, during that encounter, um, you don't want to crit because if you crit at the wrong point, um, you can actually deal too much damage and it will actually end up uh, game overing you. Yeah, we got a Brad Sword from Amart as well. Um, nice. Yeah, so the, some of these earlier fights especially are very well calculated where we estimate our damage range to be within a certain uh, number point. And a couple of the bosses have counterattacks depending on how much damage you deal to them. So if you get an unlucky or a lucky crit, depending on how you look at it, it can really change the turn order and you can unexpectedly get hit with a counter that you are not um, healthy enough to survive. So... We really take advantage that. of, yeah, <laughs> and and again, I think the chances to crit in this game are lower than a lot of other Final Fantasies, so we don't rely on them nearly as much, because we assume the worst RNG and hope for the best. Yeah, it's another one of the skills of this game is um, being able to plan and prepare and make room for criticals on on certain turns and playing around them as well, because like Rev said, there's a lot of counter attacks in this game and knowing when they're going to happen and. A lot of the strategies in the boss fights um, really, really play into when those counter attacks happen. And uh, getting a crit on the wrong turn or the right turn sometimes um, is definitely something to be able to look out for. We're coming up to a, a pretty minor part in the game with a lot of dialogue and a little more exposition as we get started here. But we'll notice a slight difference between Cease and Mel at this point. Um, Cease will most likely be going back into what we call Steiner's room to pick up an extra ether, not for using, but for selling for a thousand gil. Uh, I suspect Mel will not be doing that because she has the extra gil from the nobles. That's right. It's one of the first pickups that's actually worth the, a, a chunk of the time. Um, there are ways that you can manipulate not picking it up without getting nobles and whatnot, but in a marathon setting, it's probably a little bit too dicey. Yeah. Um, so we have got another small boss fight coming up here. Um, just got to attack, attack dad three times and finish <laughs> the fight. As long as we can hit him, it's okay. Um, the only thing that you got to hope for here is to go first. So you're hoping for that good ATB, maybe see if a little flea cancel on the side. Not good ATB see, from Steve. Not, ATB, not, not good ATB from anyone. <laughs> yeah. But you might see a now lot. Is in front though. Yes, two to get it off first. Uh, Baku had a worse ATB somehow than it was empty. Quite important there, actually, because Mel is only level one, her health pool is a lot smaller. So if Baku hits really hard and she just she misses, for example, then uh, yeah, so another thirty-six and Mel could actually holding die, our breath so. here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we're okay. As long as we don't miss, it's, a pretty, <laughs> it's really slim, and we're not playing for that. <laughs> but it we can hold our breath a little bit. It can okay. happen. <laughs> a lot of a lot of things have to line up to, to die to Baku. Yes, but we've all seen it before. And yeah, that uh, that extra not getting the preemptive strike has actually given her. As you can see, it's quite a sizable lead. It's <laughs> yes. uh, several seconds. I'll mention it very yeah. briefly. You were, you were talking about the animation cancel since we're watching Amart uh, do this fight. You will notice throughout this run that most runners, they'll be holding L1 and R1, which is attempting to flee. You'll see that can't escape at the top. That's just something you can't leave a boss fight, obviously. But we do that when we input an attack. You skip a tiny little animation that every character makes when they're readying an attack. You'll see Zidane kind of pull his hands back as if he's about to urge forward. You can skip that little one second animation by instead. It'll just instantly put you in the I am ready to attack state. It's one of those things that if you do it in certain situations, you'll save anywhere from a second to two seconds per attack. And again, that's another thing that just adds up a ton throughout the fight. Yeah. Yeah, Zidane's animation isn't too long, but um, Freya is, uh, she's very fancy. Oh she, twirls. Twirl. oh, she twiddles. <laughs> it's worth she it every to, time, though. Yeah, she likes to. She <laughs> likes to have. She likes to play with her stuff, and uh, it takes quite a long time. So we like skipping Freya's uh, little twirl. 
Now Mel is in full control again and is heading to the boss of the evil forest. Again, going through that first encounter room. Um, we'll get into some encounter check stuff in a bit. Um, up towards Plant Brain, which is a again a fairly simple boss fight that has two phases, which we'll see a lot throughout this game in uh, some way, shape, or form. Um, the trick to this one is Blank will come in and join the fight in under a couple circumstances. I think um, if Zidane is in critical or no HP, he will come in. If you deal enough damage to the boss, Blank will come in. I, th I think there's a time limit, too, where Blank will show up, but the moral of the story is you can't actually end the fight until Blank is there, so no amount of damage you do will actually in the fight until you get to the second phase. But we're going to be doing our best to get to that phase as fast as possible, and then hopefully ending the fight as quickly as possible from there. <laughs> Shoutouts to Ceases quickly. She uh, just got back attacked by a fang, which Ooh. is uh, a miserable state of affairs, but luckily got a very quick quick flee, which is um, one of the mechanics that they actually do try to take advantage of a lot when they get into random battles. More often than not, these random battles aren't favored we don't want them um and one of the ways that we can get out is it's 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 every single second i believe that passes I think so um yeah um when it's not the opponent's turn so anytime when it's not their turn so whether it's the our turn or nobody's turn that's currently occurring every second you check against that rng table um and the game says am i getting out of this fight and more often than not it's no but sometimes <laughs> it's yes sometimes and it's, it's yes, yes if it's yes, then we rejoice. Ooh, an Amar. And like that, there we go. <laughs> out of there. Which I don't think we've even this... seen it yet, right? But the only other way to get out of a battle besides defeating the enemy is to use the Dane's Flea ability, which mm -hmm. is an eight-second spell cast. You lose a little bit of gill, and it's just not a fun time for anyone. No. So Zendrobium so... is the only other random battle that we see in Evil Forest here. Perhaps a magic sword from Seas. Yeah. This one, All instead of fleeing the damage with uh, Steiner, just to kill it off, usually, for a little extra experience. Yeah. Mel got through it with, I think she's at one encounter, so he's already onto Plant Brain. He's going to be doing a, another ATB weight trick here, waiting for the first attack, and using a fire on Zidane to kill him off. Um, Plant Brain's first attack was Pollen, which blinds the party members, so I think it reduces your chance of hitting to 50%, so instead of relying on a self-attack he casts fire with vv which cannot miss he's going to be quickly switching to blank getting an attack yep. off holding atb with steiner waiting for the turn to end attacking with steiner and if she did it right blank will attack again before the boss goes let's take a look very good <laughs> and very she got good. it so that saved it's... anywhere from i think five seconds for a tentacle attack to eight seconds for a thunder something like that so Nice little time save. See if Cease is able to do it as well. So we're holding ATB. Steiner's going to be able to hold while Blank's going in. Then we wait Blank against it one more time just to get that free attack in. And... Oh! Was that a basic attack? Oh! <laughs> get him, Steiner! <laughs> oh, uh -oh. no. It should be okay. We, get the we can still get the Blank in. Yep. Oh no, this looks bad. Thunder. Could be scary. Nah, single target is totally fine. Okay, okay. A quick menu from Mel there over in a flash. Um, it's easier when to... you look at the broadsword, yeah. It's, yeah, it is, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, Mel just is coming quickly... up to. Uh, okay. Yeah, just to quickly pick up um, Zidane because this is a forced encounter here. We currently don't have a way around it, and uh, the EXP boost is a little nice. We want to make sure that Zidane gets to a certain level for the next boss. And we're praying between oh, four spiders. That is exactly what she needs. Um, <laughs> she's probably going to want to split this two ways. So, so there's no. a lot of forced uh, random encounters here. The bosses don't give any experience in this game. They only give ability points. So uh, we will see some very low level characters by the end of this run. But on we're going to make up for it. Uh, oh, no. This... So we are hoping to take all this experience. And we don't want Blank to have any experience. We really don't need... VV or Steiner to get an experience here, but unfortunately Steiner was not able to kill himself off in one hit, so he's going to get a, a chunk of this. Mainly looking at Zidane's level here, and I think I saw a level 2, which is a little yeah. scary. So she, she shared a fang, which is not level 2, so she's going to have 
29 experience points at this point, so she's going to be a team shy of level 3, which is nice and easily and achievable, because Ice Cavern is never so nice as to not give us any encounters, but is definitely going exactly. to be something she be targeting. And... Okay, cool. Uh, Amart's uh, scraping through the prison kit, the plant brain fight. You can see what happens when things start to go a little bit more awry. Um, Never in plant bad. brain. Yeah, we're really not uh, deal uh, like tooled up to deal with many turns of that fight. We actually really want to deal with uh, plant brain as quickly as possible. Um, if, if the fight goes on for too long, Vivi can go down really quickly. And if Vivi's down, then Steiner is currently is is then immediately almost completely immobilized. And, you're relying on blank and it can get really 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 scary really really fast um very scary i saw four uh, spiders on cease's side which is definitely going to put her at level three so see, cease's yep. experience is sorted we'll see if mel ends up forcing an encounter or getting one randomly but the next fight is a one-on-one -on -one fight with zidane and the boss actually two bosses and it, it's very scary to do perfectly if you are under leveled and it's very, very safe if you're level three or four. And it, it's just a little breath holding if you're level two. So thankfully we'll have some safety saves, but I think we'll be okay. Yeah, um, Sal, I see you in chat saying she's probably going to have to force an encounter. Mel is, yeah, most likely going to have to uh, make an encounter happen if, if the game is so generous as to not give her one in this in a time of need, which is just like FF9. <laughs> Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Going say, for the most line, part, uh, no, you go ahead. No, I was just oh. going to say, just because of the, the counter turns, um, essentially on certain turns, Sea Lion has two turns back to back, and uh, those two turns really, really, really stack up. And um, the max damage that he can actually deal between those turns is more than your health pool at level two. Um, so you just have to be able to. In an RTA setting, you'd kind of just cross your fingers and pray that you get through it and things like that, or you get like a good trance or some other, you know, thing <laughs> just gets you, looks you through. But in this kind of um, setting, you, it, it's, it really will not pay off and you'd much rather just take the random battle, just run around a little bit and make that happen. So, um, but getting through Ice Cabin without any fights is pretty slim. Yeah, as mentioned in chat, the Japanese version of the game, the Sea Lion is excuse me even more intense because the damage rolls oh, yeah. for the spells are higher so that uh max damage pool that you talked about that could be dealt is much much higher in the japanese version so that fight is even riskier yeah actually um it, it's, it's it's actually just the one it's it's the tsunami attack that we see as the second okay. counter attack yeah it's just that one that's brought up by something like 20 damage points or so which actually um <laughs> allows him to deal lethal damage to sedan in one turn um, <laughs> at level three rather than at level two so a lot of people encourage runners to get to level four before they get to that uh, boss um but uh, you know it's it's one of those things where you just kind of have to just you know accept that some runs just aren't going to make it at the hour point yep. it really 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 is awful um and it doesn't end there for poor old japanese it gets worse oh it Seriously. gets worse yeah, the JP version is is quite difficult. Once you get out of disc one in in the Japanese version, it's it's actually a bit more smooth sailing for the most part. Um, but you just got to deal with a really awful early game, and man, it it, it gets you. <laughs> it really gets you. Yeah, no one likes a reset point an hour into a nine hour run. It's uh, yeah. pretty demoralizing. But a lot of runners do use the Sea Lion fight as a benchmark for how they're doing. Um, some people yeah. have a certain time limit they want to end the fight by to figure out if it's a good run or not. So Mel is taking advantage of the saving mechanic on the world map. Anytime you are on the world map, you can save. And just because this fight can go a little awry, even if you are well leveled, you can make a mistake pretty easily. So since we're in a marathon, we might as well call a little Moogle over and make our first save of the run. Yeah. There is a Moogle inside of Ice Cavern. However, it is not stuck behind just one set of dialogues, but another within a cutscene. It just takes forever. And uh, yeah, because our runners aren't planning on uh, dying to Sea Lion, they just take the safety save out here and just play the fight a little bit safer. Um, so quickly mentioning about the overworld, in this moment, you're actually seeing um, our players just running across the overworld. Um, I'm not sure if it's like an intended uh, exploit of the game, but yeah, while you're sure. turning, when you see um, the, the name of the continent, um, which only happens for your first time visiting each place, 
So you saw Miss Continent just then on Ceases, and you'll see it in a moment on Amarx when he's traversing. Um, while that's up, you can't actually get any random battles. Your danger value, which um, is what determines the chance of getting battles, just simply doesn't increase. Um, so you can use that to run across, and there's one other point in the run where that's going to be relevant. Um, but after that, we are actually going to be using, a, could call it an exploit, I suppose, to minimize very greatly the the, the the chance of getting a random battle on the overworld, which is a mechanic, a, a, a trick called um, stutter stepping, which I believe our runners are on turbo, maybe except for Mel, which is just um, you mash, <laughs> you mash, you mash on the D pad <laughs> and don't, you, it's essentially if, if you go more than a frame into your moving animation, then that is what begins to increment the danger value um, only happens on the overworld, doesn't happen inside of dungeons, yep. it can't be used anywhere else. Um, so as long as you don't move for more than one frame at a time, so one frame movement, one frame stop, rinse and repeat, your danger value should never go up and you should never get an encounter. But even with using a turbo controller, um, because you're not actually like talking to the game specifically, there's always going to be a tiny little bit of cross lap and all that sort of stuff between the technology going on there'll always be a little bit of a chance of you getting it no one stutter steps perfectly everyone gets random yes. battles sometimes yeah um and the only other thing to note is that um when you're going through forests and stuff it doesn't eliminate the fact the chance of getting um the old <laughs> friendly ragtimer. monsters the old <laughs> ragtimer so maybe yeah. we'll see one of them this run <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hope um you saw mel there just take a fight she wanted one just to get the level three and killed off garnet because she does not need any extra experience in this game um brittles is mentioning very briefly how the random encounter mechanic works it works differently on the overworld compared to a normal screen where you can get encounters the way it works in a nutshell is the further you move the more likely you are to get an encounter with a certain amount of steps needing to be taken for your next possible encounter though so you did see one screen earlier on in the evil forest where uh, the runners opted to go left for a brief second and then come right back uh, that that uh, value that we call the danger value resets every time you leave a screen so you can do what is known as splitting the screens into reducing the chances of getting a random encounter it works a little bit differently in the overworld so like Brutus was mentioning you can just mash your way through it and skip uh, the encounter checks instead of being uh, a distance that you cover it's entirely based on um, how big of a step you take so mm. it's, a, it's, it's an interesting little twist in the mechanics but for the most part we're going to be crossing our fingers every chance we get to never get a random encounter there's going to be a couple that we do take on purpose because it's just impossible to avoid them and we can use them to our benefit but anytime you see an encounter you kind of sigh a little bit and just accept yeah. the fact that you just lost 30 seconds yeah, um, someone in the worth... chat did ask how the modern ports are for speed running and the biggest difference between that is the encounters the random encounters are a lot less likely so instead of getting average of 50 55 encounters in a run you will have 15 random encounters for example at worst yeah the um yeah the, the, it's it's interesting with hd because the checks they're all the same and you get them at the same rate but they're they're just the chance of them the, if you getting an encounter per thing is ah, just much much lower it's a nice um, little quality of life improvement but yeah for sure so this is um the first real run killer of bosses in the run um sea lion there is a pair of them um the first thing you have to do is uh, take out Black Waltz 1, and we've got the preempt on him. You cannot get in front of Sea Lion, but you can get in front of Black Waltz 1, which is exactly what our boy Shu Yin here has got, which is very good. <laughs> we also saw a wing from, um, from 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 some Sea Lion and another one, which is perfect. The animation is nice and quick, and it deals low damage, so that's perfect. We want as many of them as possible. And uh, one more attack on Black Waltz 1 is going to finish him off. Fire is not great. It's a little bit faster than Blizzard, but the damage is a little bit higher. Sea and this fight, uh, uh, one of the gimmicks that you'll learn early on as you're playing this casually is if you were to attack Sea Lion right away, uh, the Black Waltz will cast Blizzard on it, which heals it. So we really, really need to kill Black Waltz 1 first. Ah, Blizzard. A wrench in the plan. So we're going to have to heal here. Yeah. Um, so we know the... Uh, no, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna say we know that the max potential damage rolls in this fight so a blizzard will do either 32 or 36 damage so if you are under that threshold the 
best thing to do is to heal. You can play risky and hope for a wing, which I think the max damage is 18, if I'm correct. I think it goes to 20, maybe 22. 20, yep, we just got one. It's not high. Yeah, something like that. It's much less. Um, so we can kind of estimate what's coming up next based on that. Uh, if you notice the Mel's fight, the gem on the chest of the sea lion just changed colors. Once you do two attacks with the Mage Masher, you do enough damage to go into phase two, which is the yellow phase, which means mm -hmm. he's going to counter with a Blizzara, which is going to do a lot of damage. So Mel is making sure that she is full health to a certain threshold, that, so she knows that she can survive a max damage Blizzara, and if she gets unlucky, a Blizzard right after that can do... It's 91 is the total? Something along those lines. I don't remember the exact number. Yeah. Combined. So it's, it's every other attack. So the next attack dealt by uh, Mel here is going to activate the final phase, the red gem, and that's going to hit us with the tsunami, which is nice and nerfed. They nerfed it um, for the Western audience. So <laughs> we're we're not powerful much. enough as gamers. <laughs> I am very not. grateful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the max combined uh, damage roll for that is 117 on North American version, if I'm remembering correctly. So, it's perfectly survivable at level 3. It's a little scary at level 2. But I think uh, also yeah, at level 144 two, health and she's getting hit, so she should be totally fine here. At level 2, you have to hope that the the wing pro the attack prior to it is a wing, and then the attack after the tsunami is also a wing. A blizzard, a blizzard at any point is just lethal, and Zidane won't survive. Okay, Can so take one the more time here. Fight can take the time here to try to farm a trance, which is a potential strat in that case, so you can deal enough damage to just skip over um, the final counter. It's, it's a risky strat because it's completely random how much your trance fills on any given hit. If so it fills it's not a very reliable. It can absolutely <laughs> fill zero per hit, which is very possible. And that's it. Stand like fight, three heals. A peek at Cease and Amart here. Both seem to be moving along just fine. It's a sub one sea line from Mel. That's not bad. Let's go. That's what we be paid. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Cease so is just entering phase two. Yep. With plenty of health to survive the counter. Amart's trance is building pretty quick. Oh no, sure never mind. there's nothing off, <laughs> nothing off that wing. <laughs> yeah, you can always decide to. Turn pivot in this fight and just go for the transform. If you get some lucky hits, it can be a lot faster and it gives you the chance to steal Zidane's uh, second weapon that he could potentially steal in the run, which would save a little bit of time later, but it's a 1 in 4 chance and it's not something that we rely on anyway. That was a beefy build on, on Seas just then. I wouldn't was be surprised it? if we see a trans off this pair of attacks Oof, right now. That's true. And uh, Seas is going not... to... Yeah. If not, if it is really close, then we might actually. So if there's no st if there's no uh, trance here, we could see a cheeky little steal. Oh, okay, okay. We're gonna attack. Yep, the safest option. That means if we don't build anything next turn, then we've got lethal regardless. Hoping for no trance here, I think. Ugh. Oh, never mind. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, the trance never happens when you want it to and does when we, you don't. We are surging. <laughs> All you can do is sit there and watch this lovely little animation. I'm feeling very emotional right now. <laughs> Surge of emotions. Um, so a little side note on trance is that not only does it give you access to... Um, some extra abilities depending on the character. Some characters don't actually get new abilities, they just get uh, like a damage boost or something like that. But another little hidden, hidden buff that I wasn't aware of until I ran this game for over a year, I think, is that it actually um, applies perfect accuracy to your character and they can no longer miss, um, which is uh, uh, an issue with all of your characters up until this point, outside of obviously magic abilities and whatnot. It, all of your characters have a very small chance to miss all of their attacks until um, around this three or so when we get a, 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 a combat ability, one of the equipable abilities that we can use to mitigate that chance. But until then, uh, Trance is, it's got a stealth benefit. Looks like uh, Karma is catching up to Mel after they one encounter. Evil Forest is getting a pretty brutal escape, two encounters. That's not ideal, but nothing you can do about that. The random encounters will be happening in this run. We expect anywhere from Oh, I don't know, 45 to 65 random encounters throughout the run for each person, so 
Yeah, I'd say anything under 50 is still pretty lucky. <laughs> Very oh, yes. lucky. Yeah, usually it goes into the 60s. And there's just nothing you can do about him. You can nope. reset and reset and reset until you get a very low encounter on, but it's going to happen at least 40 times for everyone, let's say. Oh, got nice. a quick flee off of the Steiner attack there. Very nice. So again, um, because it's not their turn while Steiner is attacking, you're, you're earning flea checks and you can use that to your advantage. And uh, hopefully during that time, um, you can get a successful flea check in. It, may, it makes that uh, that attack look like a, 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 essentially a flea, which is brilliant. Just donk him on the head on the way out. <laughs> the Cease and Amart are trading the lead for a second place back and forth right now, each getting caught in random encounters while the other person gets through that screen, and then they get an encounter on the next screen while the other person doesn't, so they're going back and forth. Elle is currently naming uh, oh, Kara. Princess Garnet to Kara. Princess Shout Kara. Kara. <laughs> Princess Kara Karn. <laughs> It's uh, one of those funny scenes casually where she picks up Zidane's dagger and says, what do you call this dagger? And that would be her default name. But if you change it, she says, oh, great. Good to know this is named a dagger. I'm going to call myself Kara from now on. <laughs> so in just a moment, you're going to be seeing Mel um, perform her first stutter step. Um, she's going to be going from Ice Cavern to the small rural village of Dali, uh, where we're going to be mashing through our first good chunk of dialogue. Um, <laughs> so again, this is when she's going to be mashing the D-pad um, and using the the shoulder buttons L1 and R1 to change the trajectory with the camera. Um, we can go straight through the forest here because another small caveat to this is that you can't get ragtimers and friendly monsters within the first 20 seconds of loading into the overworld. So as long as you're not in a forest after that 20 seconds, you can't get any. Um, <laughs> it's just one of those things yeah. <laughs> that somehow you find out eventually from word of mouth. <laughs> right, it's one of those things that you'll do casually if you don't fully understand how the mechanic works. It's still very strange to a lot of people, but you could stutter step perfectly and run into a forest and get a friendly encounter with the ragtime mouse. It's just the way that that fight works. It's a little bit different. It's not uh, distance-based. It's just an RNG number base that you can just happen to pull the very wrong number at the very wrong time to get the encounter, even if you do the stutter stepping perfectly. Oh, we've got Princess Sal joining uh, Beautiful, Amar. beautiful. <laughs> oh no, that was Cease, sorry. Cease. That was yeah, Cease. That was Cease. There's too many, too many dagger namings going on right now. It's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. See what Amart goes with. We've got Princess Knife. Princess Knife. <laughs> you call that a knife? Love it. This is a knife. <laughs> so Cease will be doing another stutter step. Um, sometimes it's up to preference whether you stutter with the down button kind of blindly or if you swing the camera around to mash up. Looks like Cease is going with the up option. It's a little bit easier to see where exactly you are going. It takes a little bit of time to swing the camera around, and Cease is going to be avoiding the forest just in case. Just not playing with it. I'm taking that. Uh, oh, you yeah. know what? I don't, you Some keep very that superstitious dice. people out there. <laughs> I don't want that dice. This is the way I I like to think of this game is you have every single time you you run into a scenario where you can potentially save time, you are adding another bit of RNG to your run, probably. So you just like you know what? I'm not I'm not playing with that dice. That you can keep that one. <laughs> I'll take Amart as well, choosing to go just outside of the forest, just in case. <laughs> promise you guys you are fine to go through it, but trust me, it's easier said than done. Would rather not, thank you. <laughs> exactly. Now we are in the village of Dali, which is, oh, I would say it's a nice little uh, mashing break after a stressful dungeon. There's no random encounters here, but there are going to be some very stressful boss fights that... Uh, <laughs> unlikely to die on but you can you can lose a little bit of time if you aren't careful and you can save some time if you know some strats you can't believe you just referred to the Dali kids as a boss fight <laughs> yes the uh, the, <laughs> the green Dali kid and the brown shirt Dali kid the two uh, <laughs> biggest RNG factors in the game yeah they're uh, they're quite frustrating especially on the second path the time you pass up through the village they can really get in the way uh, they are they are an immovable object <laughs> yes you will notice uh, on this kind of overworld of the village when you're not inside you'll see these two kids running around one of the things that make this game really charming is that um, 
There's background RNG in every screen, so it's not just uh, the damages you deal and the damage that's dealt to you or other random things. It, they changed it up so that every time you enter a screen, it's going to look a little different from the last time you entered that screen. So things like where the kids are positioned without a screen, where they run, how they interact with each other, is going to be different for every runner every time, just to give you a bit of flavor. Um, and for the most part, you might never notice that in the game, other than a couple different points, but there are certain sections that we'll be paying attention to that, including a really big one coming up on uh, airship after the next boss. So um, the, the dialogue that Mel's partaking in here with Dagger, um, there are a number of occasions during this, the, the speedrun and the story where you're given multiple options on how to respond to characters. Um, and more often than not, they don't really matter. Um, but this one is actually one of the biggest time saves uh, where Dagger, I can't remember what the original question is, but after that, she asks Zidane how she did in the play. And um, if you tell her she's just like Ruby or as good as Ruby or something like that, she gets really mad and just sort of storms off. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you're kind of yeah. rewarded with a, quite a fair few seconds of time save for telling Dagger that she's not very good at acting. <laughs> yeah, you get different dialogue boxes but don't, depending on what you pick. It doesn't affect the game in any way, shape or form, but all it is is extra text to mash through. And we don't like doing that, so... Except you're more likely to go on the, the, the date option. with Freya on the, on the exactly. big wheel. Smile. <laughs> I was hoping for the date with Steiner, but next time, next time. Um, I saw Cease much... running into some kids. Or, sorry to cut you off. Cease was having no, a little no. bit of trouble running into the kids, as we saw. And that, that just happens. Hey, my dude, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> We haven't even come close to talking about the story in this game at this point. If you haven't played this game, absolutely recommend it. Um, yeah. At this point in the run, Vivi, who is a black mage, is learning a little bit about his origin story. He's kind of the unknown character at this point and almost the protagonist as we start with him first as, as far as a controllable character goes. And he's learning his background and this is the village where um, black mages like him are created. <laughs> and Haymart's making friends with the kids <laughs> in the town. They want to show him their Pokemon cards. Exactly. Um, so there is actually a small and very essential shop that happens here. It's really important, actually. Um, it's going to have a huge impact on the first almost two entire CDs of the game, funnily enough. Um, we are buying um, a bunch of wrists and a leather wrist if we didn't steal it already as well as an iron sword if we didn't steal the broadsword. You can see how this is going to get quite complicated. Um, but the most important thing here is that we're buying the feather hats, which are a very important ingredient um, towards making um, an accessory called the yellow scarf, which teaches us one of the most valuable and important abilities in the entire game, bird killer. <laughs> um, <laughs> the killer abilities in this game literally add a 50% of your damage to your total damage so if you deal 100 damage you suddenly deal 150 um there is another um, modifier that you get later on called mp attack and with both of these coupled together you can deal double damage to pretty much any monster in the game that you do want to deal with so they are very 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 mandatory for dealing with bosses quickly um and these these feather hats are going to be going into the first piece of gear which is going to be teaching sedan and freya um, bird killer and one thing that ff9 loves <laughs> is birds it loves them i'm pretty sure that something like 60 percent of the bosses in this game are birds <laughs> something like that yeah there's uh i want to say four useful killer abilities bird devil man and dragon that will be mm. taking part of and every every enemy has a certain classification to them i don't know if it was a mistranslation or something you can think of it more as an aerial enemy killer that's kind of translated into bird. Everything that's floating in this game is a bird, and I mean everything. So we'll be running into some people just kind of hovering a bit. They're birds. Everything's a bird. Oh, yeah. It, it just, even if it's not hovering, it's got wings, but. <laughs> sea lion, I think, is a bird. He is? If I remember correctly? I think so. I, I just don't No, he definitely that one. is. Yeah, he is. <laughs> But you can't have bird killer by then, so it's Fortunately it, which not, is really but... strange. They they gave him that uh, attribute, but there's no way to get bird killer there. So 
Yeah, good old bird killer. Nothing beats that. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know what the boss is, odds are it's bird. <laughs> so Cease isn't getting the VV Vortex here, but Amart's going to be coming up to a moment. Um, when Amart leaves this very scene here, he has a quick conversation with this pipe in the ground, which VV's, VV's actually been kidnapped and is currently being held on the ground, like we're seeing in uh, Mel's screen. Um, after this scene, this this instant cutscene here, we're going <laughs> to have a quick conversation with the pipe and then one that goes straight into that door closest to us on the left. We've got to be very careful not to keep mashing. Nice. nice <laughs> because job. it takes ages to talk to that pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, if you looked very quickly, you saw a little exclamation point, meaning you could interact with the pipe again and you would get another small cutscene of uh, Zidane interacting with the pipe. You saw Amart accidentally mashing through that ladder as well and climbing back onto it because you can interact with it. You can lose a lot of time if you aren't very, very careful in this game, especially with Turbo. Oh, yeah. So underground, there is another little menu. We're going to be um, shuffling our gear up a little bit. Um, the most important thing that's happening here is that we're um, we're slipping the, the silk shirt from Zidane over to Vivi. The silk shirt has been giving us some much needed protection against Sea Lion. But now um, Vivi needs the protection as um, a boss coming up soon is going to, completely scripted, is going to hit our entire party with Thundara, I think he hits us yes. with. Yep. Um, which uh, deals a lot of damage, really, for this point in the game. Um, usually if you kill a fair few monsters and whatnot, it's not too bad. But I remember when I played this game casually, Black Waltz 3 killed me a lot. <laughs> it took me a long yeah. time to beat Black Waltz 3. He's really, really, really lethal. Um, but we pop the, the silk shirt on Vivi because uh, one of the things this game has is uh, hidden attributes. If you press the select button, it will tell you um, lots of different things about gear that you don't normally know. Um, and one of the things is silk shirt can nerfs thunder damage straight in half, cuts it straight in two, and it's the only way that we're going to be able to get um, Vivi to survive unless we just power level him for a little bit, which is not very fast. No, um, not fun so at all. No, not at all. So it's really important that we slip those those shirts around. We give Vivi the silk shirt. Um, so that he doesn't just go down straight away um, because we're going to be using Fire Sword a lot during this fight. Um, if, if Phoebe does go down, we are probably just dead. Um, quick little menu there from Mel popping the Iron Sword on Steiner because we didn't steal it from uh, Prison Cage and put, putting on Bird Killer and um, Manita? No, Bug Killer. Bug um, Killer. For later. Yeah, that's going to come up in use. Disc 2. <laughs> Maybe not. Well, let's hope it doesn't, but you never know. Is Ralfu a bug? No, it's the uh, crawlers that matter. Is it just the crawlers? Okay. As far as I can remember, I think it's just for being able to one-shot the crawlers. Okay. I wasn't sure. I, I always just kind of assumed that Ralfu was a bug, too. Probably a kind bird. of got a buggy face about him. <laughs> Ralfu is exactly. a bird. <laughs> He's a bird. <laughs> okay, so another um, uh, option dialogue selection thing here. Unfortunately, option two is faster. I know. Option one is better. <laughs> It'd be fun if we could poke the barrel containing our party members and get a couple extra lines of dialogue, but it's better just to look <laughs> at it and then fall over. Yeah, get uh, stomped on by Zidane. He jumps out and Goomba's uh, Steiner right on the noggin. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're coming up on the second Black Waltz fight, which can be very, very simple. It can be very complicated as well. There's um, something that's known as the Fire Us skip, so the phase two in this fight, once you have dealt over half of the total damage to Black Waltz 2, he will counter with a spell called Fyra, which will target everyone but uh, Princess Karakarn from L. Um, <laughs> this will do a ton of damage and, you know, is very slow as all spells are. There's a little glitch where you can skip it though. So let's see if Mel is able to get this. We can talk about what is happening when it happens. Nice ATB. So you can never get in front of Black Wolves 2. Oh, and the whiff. That's nice. They're going to go for the weight. First hit. Follow up with a Steiner. And the dagger and Vivi little touches here. Just a little bit of chip damage on the side. So Zidane's going to get a free turn here thanks to the weight. Very nice. And we're hoping we're looking... this targets Vivi. Oh, perfecto. It does. It's so perfecto. the way this uh, counter works is... Oh, oh that's not Damn great. It. <laughs> so if you kill off the person that uh, the Black Waltz has last targeted, for some reason, this Fire Eye, even though it's hitting multiple people, because it's scripted not to hit Dagger as well, if you end up killing off the person who 
uh, the Black Waltz last hit. He'll just skip it instead because he'll say, well, this party member is dead, so I'm not going to be able to actually get this attack off. It's a little quirk in the system just because of the way that uh, Suscarnet is programmed here. So had she been able to kill Vivi off with an attack, that fire would have been completely skipped and it would have saved a little bit of time. Thankfully, she's in no danger of dying due to her level mostly, but bummer. She had the perfect fight set up and just got very, very unlucky. Yeah. Yeah, as uh, Sal said in the chat, the extra levels on VV was just enough, so he survived with two whole health. Yeah, unfortunately, he's too much of a beefy V. So there are different uh, use case scenarios depending on who Black Waltz hits with his second attack, so we can watch Seize to see if she gets a more favorable setup, even though that was perfect conditions, just the wrong health pool. Well, the first attack on VV as well means that he's definitely going to go down on turn two if he's targeted. Yes. We're the all crossing our fingers we... and hoping for Phoebe. The only one that we don't want to see targeted here really is Steiner, because then we kind of just have to deal with the, the fire. Yep, the so best case there is just heal and eat it. And then wait and see what he does. This doesn't look like Steiner. Oh, it is! Steiner just got to oh, go goodness. for it at this point. Yep, nothing you can do other than heal and just continue attacking. We'll check uh, Amart's fight as well as he is just to that spot. That's the first hit on Z with. Aimar. Following up with the chip damage. And the weight. So Aimar's health pools are a lot lower actually, so hopefully he can skip Fyra because this Under, is going to be most uh, detrimental. The Dane. He has Spin some options he can week. do. Let's see what he'll choose to do here. He's just going to opt to heal, which is probably the safer strat all in all. Okay. Unfortunately, yeah. we didn't get any Fyra skips in this marathon, but... Nice little trick. Ooh, that crit is oh. very nice, though. Oh, it wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> that would have <laughs> scuppered it anyway, probably. <laughs> yep. He's just going to eat the attack and heal up immediately after. Thankfully, we know the turn order, so... Yeah. Do this entirely safely and just do a cure-all on the party and hope for the best. And that's it. At this point, it's it, you can't really lose unless you just like get a string of really unfortunate misses. So, um, we uh, Black Waltz 2 actually has... Um, it only can drop ethers. Uh, you can oh, one of the ethers is always guaranteed, but sometimes it's probably like a one in three, maybe a little less chance that you can get an extra. I saw one on Cease just then, and we're seeing one on Amar as well. I know that Mel only got one as well, so that's an it's extra. One of those things you love to see it if it happens, but it's not something that we rely on. Yeah, an extra K in the in the bank at this point because it, when we get to Limblum, we're going to sell all of our ethers to fund our our shopping spree. <laughs> All right, I can stop holding my breath. There is a weird little glitch here in this game where if you are mashing too quickly, uh, the way the text is generated in this game, usually you have to wait for an animation to finish before the next text box will appear. But since one of those circumstances happens at this cutscene that Amart is in right now, if you choose the option that we need to choose a little bit too fast, you'll end up just soft locking the game. You'll just stand there and you'll never get the uh, flag in the game to start the next line of dialogue. So. The game is completely soft locked at that point. You have to reset. There's no, no way around it. But yeah. thankfully, everyone was on their guard and watching for that. One of the so things I is... mentioned earlier with the uh, background RNG yeah. is going to happen um, on Cease and Amart screen. Pay attention to Vivi, and we'll look at the differences between Cease and Amart, not in the current screen, but on the next one. Um, he, in order to get his line of dialogue where he goes up to. Zidane and Dagger has to speak to another black mage, and it's completely RNG as to where that black mage is in his animation cycle. Essentially, we need him to turn around, notice that Vivi is there, and turn around uh, again to go back to his business and ignore Vivi. At that point, he will come towards Zidane and Dagger. This can happen within two seconds, or it can take, I think, 11 seconds at worst. Okay, average average RNG there from, uh, from Cease. I think I saw Mel get the average one as well. I believe so. Where the black mage kind of just stands there. He sort of does a little bit of a shuffle, but doesn't really go anywhere. This is the first time in the game you will notice a discrepancy in background RNG, because it's very obvious between a 2 second and 11 second. Sometimes poor Vivi just stands there, just saying, um, hello, hello, um, hello. It's like Amart's getting a little unlucky. Eh, not awful, though. Oh, is there more to it than just whether the black mage moves? 
<laughs> there is a little bit. He, he, the Black Mage, I think, can move further back on the airship, and Vivi goes the wrong. It, it's just a mess. Yeah, I know. I know about like his positioning and stuff, but I didn't realize that Vivi can have like additional text boxes and stuff. That's yeah, he can go through the the ums, some hellos. It, it's very weird. Oh no! Yeah, as Rome said, he can sometimes just sprint towards that ladder in the back. It, it's strange. If he ends up towards the back when he is told to go forward, he very slowly waddles his way towards Zidane and Dagger, and it just takes forever. But he is very cute while doing it. He's adorable. <laughs> He is everyone's favorite for a reason. So we mentioned really briefly um, that Black Waltz 3 has been set up for in our previous menus. Um, the, the fight is completely on rails. Even all of the starting ATBs are completely on rails as well. Um, as long as the runners perform the actions at the right points, um, nothing can really go wrong. Everything will go to plan. Um, and it's simply that uh, the first Zidane will always be able to act first. If he attacks Black Waltz two, uh, 3, then Black Waltz 3 counters by taking off. And as long as you're able to cue Steiner and Vivi's actions before it finishes taking off, they will also be able to steal three turns, um, at which point they'll get those actions. Black Waltz 3 will then have his um, first turn afterwards. Um, and then on the turn after that, you just you hope for high rolls. If you get enough high rolls, then Vivi saves a single animation. But the most important thing is not only are you not casting an extra fire, but because Vivi doesn't cast um, four times, he casts three instead, you actually um, don't have to watch Vivi detrance either. And it actually ends up saving about 17 seconds overall, which is completely RNG. It is more <laughs> favorable if your level is higher. So we'll probably not see it from Amart, but we should see, see it from, from the other two. I'd be surprised if Mel doesn't get it. I think um, Cease is quite beefy as well. I it's mostly so. that you want to see at least a level three or four Steiner actually try yeah. and get it. So here we go. We have to look at damage rolls. 75 is fine. It's Steiner is actually the one that matters the most. He has the widest range, although he attacks yeah. fewer. But we're hoping for a 270 at least. This is really nice. We just don't want to see any 240s. Ooh. 280 is fantastic. That's Ooh. a very beefy Steiner. You can't do that at level three. So Yeah. Nice, we don't want to see exclusive. any 168s from Vivi. We want to see some 189s, 182s, which is great. So it looks like Mel is very much on pace to get the D-trance skip. I don't think we can hit that low at level 4 either. I think it doesn't go the below the 189. Yeah, I think yeah, we're perfect. This is, this is done so. It's really important to know that um, Sword Magic from Steiner can't miss. Um, Zidane actually can't attack right now. If you try to queue with Zidane, he'll, it will go to attack, but it will always miss. Um, I think Unless he's trance. trance thing. No, will he actually connect? Hit. Yep, trance cannot okay. miss, as you mentioned earlier. I wasn't sure if there was something going on here where it could actually miss. But, um... I think he can counter, though, so it's not worth it right. ever. I had to double check. There's some it's something that, that never really comes up because of because of free energy being as, as, as lethal yes. as it is. You just, there's no point in not doing that. Yeah, so you notice there at the end, Vivi did not... Um, have his trance coming off animation we'll see if it happens to any of the other runners let's hope it doesn't but we can show you the difference but the fight just ended after vivi's third uh fire attack and yeah so normally in this Mel fight it's on rails and like you said if you under damage which is very 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 likely you will need that fourth spell to end the fight and you have to wait this little bit for the animation to play out so Cease is um, level. It's got a level four Zidane with level three Steiner and Vivi, which means that her damage rolls are slightly lower. So two fifty. Ah, that's the lowest roll. Yeah, uh, two forty. I think is the lowest. So it's it's not really? the worst. Yeah, two forty. Wowie. Okay. That's, yeah, that's bad. Yeah, but one eight nine is really good though. That's a high roll. Yeah, that's good. That was a um, chance. One six eight. Ah. Uh, uh, it might mathematically be possible with another 270 and a 189, but it's I don't think it's it's very, very tight actually. Yeah. So we're seeing a lot of flea cancelling going on here because So Vivi is because Vivi is toggling ah, there, 240. Yeah. Vivi's toggling between animations here and things, so you can actually skip some wind up animations as well with flea cancelling during these fights. It's uh, it's pretty wild. So we will see both Cease and Amart get what is uh, known as the D-Trance, which is that little eight-second animation to uh, VV come back to normal. Just a small time loss. Nothing you can do about it. Nope. Thanks, Final Fantasy IX. Thank you. Fun game. <laughs> you do, really you do to that. be fair, you, you see the D-Trance animation more commonly than you don't. 
Um, Absolutely. Mel has, has this, she's killed a lot of mons. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's got a lot of blood on her hands today. <laughs> Lying in her pockets with a lot of gill in the process. <laughs> exactly. The rich um, get richer, am I right? <laughs> Which in a, in, a, in a real RTA setting is definitely not good. You really don't want to be seeing that sort of thing in a pace and nope. whatnot. Um, but in a marathon setting, higher levels is, is is a lot more safety and things like that. So it's it's actually kind of okay. It's not needed, but it's uh, very welcomed. Uh, you'll see if Mel is in a very long cutscene right now. Uh, this is a nine hour ish game, and we take advantage of these uh, breaks whenever we can get them. Some are thirty seconds, some are three minutes, and this is one of the longer runs in the game. So. Mel's probably making a sandwich and reading a book and taking a nap for this one to finish before she gets back in there. This is, I think, the longest break, that, or at least the, the think second so. longest. Yeah, because it's not only that one cutscene, but it goes straight into this one as well with all the yeah, loading. A little bit of mashing. It. Yeah. But, um, yeah, and then there is a, there's, a, there's, a, there's about 20, 30 seconds of mashing after this small overworld movement thing, auto scroller thing. And then there's another cutscene, so you do get quite a lot of time to go and meet yourself a nice cup of coffee and, like Rev said, go and cook a roast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes you take advantage of those 20 second breaks to run to the kitchen, get some water if you're lucky. And sometimes it's uh, nothing you can do for two hours at a, at a stretch. You just are not allowed to walk away. Yeah. It's definitely one of the benefits of running Turbo as well. If you have the option to yes. play on Turbo. Um, is it, during this entire sequence, as soon as you've you've queued the the lethal damage to Black Wolves three, you can actually like set that to turbo, and you can really you can go and take care of yourself. You know, <laughs> you can actually not worry about it, whatnot. It's definitely definitely a, a cruising way to play the game. Yeah, and one thing we probably should have mentioned, I'm shocked we didn't. So, as we we did mention that uh, Cease and Amart are playing this on turbo, um, it, which is a, a technically a different category. Just to break it up, um, the Japanese. Um, run is usually in the history of speedrunning has always been turbo included just because of the prevalence of turbo controllers in, uh, in Japan that you can get but interesting thing if you go and look at the um, leaderboards for this game uh, Mel on the any percent category has a time of 8 hours 49 minutes and 22 seconds and Cease and Amart in the turbo category have a speedrun time of 8 hours 49 minutes and 22 seconds all three of these runners are dead even their times so i think uh the only way to break that tie is to see who wins this marathon oh yeah because uh you're only as good as your last run <laughs> exactly <laughs> and that's why i don't play this game anymore <laughs> <laughs> there you go i think your last run was 16 hours so i don't think you're all that uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, so yeah, the next bit coming up, we've got Limblem, um, which is my favorite C. Oh god, it's everyone's favorite. We all love just 30 minutes of mashing <laughs> X and square and not it, doing anything. It's really, it's it's a bit naff for the speedrun, but it was always my favorite C. I think it's the coolest one. It's I don't think it's the coolest bad. one anymore. No, it's awful. I, <laughs> I always oh, used goodness. to like this one. <laughs> Yeah, we've got um, plenty of time here, so we can we can talk about each other here. So speaking of categories, uh, everyone here runs a little bit different category. As I mentioned, uh, Mel is the standard any percent. Cease and Amart are doing any percent turbo. Um, I myself do what's known as segmented, which was the oldest way to play this game. Uh, this is one of the only early games with speedrunning built in mind. Uh, GoldenEye had cheats that you could unlock depending on how fast you beat the levels, but this has a weapon late in the game that you can get you get to a certain spot under 12 hours which is really difficult when you were a kid back in 2000s uh, with a very terrible player's guide and not much help to go off of but no. I run a category called segmented where it's based off of the in game time so I save and do little bits and pieces at a time uh, just trying to get perfect RNG um, you want to talk about all the stuff you've done with this game I think you've done a thing or two um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I originally when I started playing this game, I ran on the emulator, the PSX digital category, because I was just playing for fun, um, which is just any emulator that you can pretty much get a hold of. And I used to run on that with some of my friends and um, we got some really good times. We had a lot of fun with it and dabbled with it before I eventually picked up a PS2 and I switched over to the PSX any percent category. Um, and yeah, got a time I'm pretty happy with in the end. 
Um, managed to get the first sub 8.35 um, any percent time, which was uh, kind of lucky, I suppose. <laughs> it's a bit of luck yeah, it, it, was, it was a decent run, I would say. It was a pretty good run. <laughs> yeah, he's he's um, being very modest, but he, he crushed the world record and is the current world record holder for this game, beating out the previous record by two and a half minutes. Is that right? Yeah, a little more? something like that. Yeah, it was it was it was a big leap. Um, not something I was expecting. I was still kind of like in my head planning to be playing this game for a few more months, but um, then this run just kind of comes out of nowhere. I'm like, oh, oh, I guess That's this it. is my life now. Can't um, hope for anything better than that, yeah. Yeah, so um, then I decided to try and beat the game blindfolded. And um, that's the the sixteen hour run that Rev was talking about a moment ago. It was it was actually a segmented run, and I have just submitted it today to the leaderboard. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brittles is very modest about himself, but uh, imagine trying to do this game blindfolded. There's there's a couple of small tricks you can use here and there to figure out what's going on, but uh, it was an insane it, month yeah, of was... month or three of practice and a, a very very well performed run. So if you have uh, spare time, Brutals made an edit of the video it's just over half an hour long is very digestible or you can watch the full run it's extremely impressive but it's quite long <laughs> but um, yeah the, the 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 idea behind it is that i took the, the current route and just basically adapted it there are some fun things as well so for example in the in the evil forest section you don't know um if you're going to you don't you can never see your drops so one of the things that you have to kind of oh my goodness oh it's happening <laughs> she's doing it so Go speaking on, of mel. mel is currently naming uh freya and uh one of, one of the things that brutals had to do in his run was name his characters and he did it blindfolded and let's just say freya got a little messed up from where uh, it was intended so the name that mel has chosen 50 something exclamation point four dash whatever that's what uh, brutals went with thinking he had a totally reasonable name but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we tried to give her a name, but somehow I ended up in the symbols and did that. No idea. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was. I think you were close to 50 50 with the correct names, I think. Yeah, I think I was all right. I got, I got, I got, I got all the profane ones right. That was the most important <laughs> Exactly. Thing. The only ones that matter. <laughs> we, um, we tried to call um, Zidane Blank, and uh, he ended up as Blank, <laughs> which, Blank. Is a, which is yes. a good one. <laughs> But no, it was a really cool challenge. Um, there was some really cool things to try and figure out. And uh, ultimately, it kind of started to fall apart. The only character that actually got messed up was my favorite, my bae, Freya. She got a little bit skewed somewhere. And Dear I just Freya. had to kind of give up on her and just hope that she was okay. <laughs> um, so I ended up with a, a really, really crazy Necron fight at the end of the game. Spoilers, by the way. That was beautiful. Yeah. Oral of the story at the end of the day is though uh, th there's there's so many different ways that you can run this game and if you are at all interested or if you just want to hang out a lot uh, we have a very welcoming community and we love hearing new ideas and bringing in new people it's never fun to suffer alone so if you ever want to come join us just reach out we are here for it we are welcoming of everyone in any category that works uh, a lot of modifications can be made to make the game playable for you on a budget or physical limitations we are everyone join us so if you are at all interested in this game please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us on our twitch accounts or in the discord however you can reach us absolutely um so yeah limblum overall um there is some important things that go on so we're going to be taking um uh, well <laughs> first of all we got a quick lesson from big bro here <laughs> gosh, bro. gosh you sure know a lot um we're going to be heading out over to the shop and then promptly over to the synth synthesis shop. Um, we're going to be crafting a bunch of items. We're going to be picking up some new gear and picking up some stuff for later shops as well. Um, condensing a lot of stuff down and making it so that we don't have to actually revisit this shop for quite a while. Um, but most importantly, we're going to be getting ourselves geared and ready for the next dungeon, which is going to be Gizma Luke's Grotto. Um, you got to be quite careful not to mess any of these up because Gil at this point can be quite tight. Um, yes. And if you, you slip up a little bit, then you might not be able to buy the right things. You have to make an extra little trip. And just moving between these shops doesn't really sound like too much of a pain, but it does add about a solid 20 seconds or so, which really does. when you really don't have much control over the game, when, you know, you're fighting for, like we said, like three seconds here and five <laughs> seconds there, when you just lose 20 seconds because, oh, no, I, I shouldn't have sold that. And then you have to run back over and whatnot. It can be it can be quite strenuous. 
very demoralizing. And if if you played the game growing up, you you may have known about the cotton robe trick. It's a thing you can do where you can synthesize a cotton robe from two pieces of equipment that, when all told, only costs I think it's sixteen thirty gil to make per cotton robe, but you can sell each cotton robe for two thousand. So essentially, it's free money. The only caveat in the speed run is it's dependent on how much money you have to spend on wrists and hats to uh, pull it off. So it's another thing where if you do get uh, 100 nobles and you get that extra 10,000 gale, you can buy more um, materials for the cotton robe, which ends up saving you just a bit more time. So it's not just the raw gale that you get at the start of the game. It's a little bit extra that you get on top of that because of that. Yeah, so it's, so it's, it's generally not... That. It's definitely not worth it to buy as many wrists as you can, for example, and then take that money through to then go and turn them all into robes and go back and forth and back and forth because that would actually take probably minutes to manipulate all of all that all that cash. So we just do as much as we can do in, in one in one quick visit to this shop and then that shop and then move on. Um, ultimately, you could probably actually completely mitigate it entirely if you got nobles. And then you'd have to just make a few extra little pickups along the way. But because we have that money here and now, we can afford to just throw it together. Um... Yep, we, uh, there's some there's some benchmarks in every city, basically, for how much money you are going to need to purchase every bit of equipment. It's not extremely tight until one or two specific spots in the game. So, do everything we can to get as much kills as we can without going too far out of our way. So it's not going to be a huge problem again if you don't get nobles. You are still able to buy everything. And there's just a couple points where routes can differ on what you buy in certain spots, depending on how much money you have. Uh, every runner has a split section in their note of if you get nobles, do this. If you don't get nobles, do this instead. Mm -hmm. And it's quite funny as well, because um, when you come to this game, um, more often than not, you're unless you're running HD, where the, the, the threshold for getting nobles is quite a, quite a lot more generous, um, if, you, if you're playing on PSX, then it's more often than not when you're new, you won't be getting nobles. It's very normal. Um, and even if you do sometimes get it, you'll probably more often than not not be getting it. Um, so most right. runners, when they get into the game, they'll be learning the nobleless routing. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny because they'll get nobles and they'll they'll you know be excited and they'll panic a little bit. And what do end I up do? <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, do I need this? Do I need that? And they'll end up losing. When time do I go they're... to the Clara Inn? What am I doing? <laughs> it's exhausting to keep track of all the very very minor differences that can happen, either given the game's willingness or can happen because of a tiny mistake that snowballs into a very big mistake towards the end. There's a lot of oh, uh, yeah. small variation in this game. Yeah, it's definitely one of the, the difficult parts of speedrunning this game, and the, one of the things that takes so long to learn is just, and it just does take a lot of reps, it's just that you, you see a scenario and you're not really sure how you should handle it, and then you have to just review it and think, ah, oh, perhaps like this in the future, and then you just have to just, just learn. And it's all very minor, it's like 10 seconds here and 20 seconds there at a push and whatnot, and yeah, eventually it, they all start to come together. So um, we're going to be seeing uh, the next boss that we're, the next boss we're seeing is uh, the telescope boss coming up <laughs> soon on, on Mel's stream, which is um, is just a, a really really brief mini game between Dagger and Zidane, where Zidane is showing Dagger a bunch of key landmarks around the, the surrounding area, I believe, yep. um, trying to trying to gain her favor and whatnot in the process. Um, and uh, you, as the player, simply all you have to do is uh, inspect five locations around the map, um, which sounds nice and easy. Um, it's a lot more challenging if you've got <laughs> turbo enabled. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, um, uh, it's something you get a map from blank earlier in the game for the continent that you're currently on. And I think when you actually view uh, these locations with the telescope, they do show up on your map. It's meant as a, a bit of a guide to help you figure out where you can go next. Um, it's a stretch to call it a mini game, but it very much is in a lot of ways because essentially you just need to move as quickly as you can to all six locations before you can move on to the next part of Lindblom. And right. you want to mash exactly two dialog boxes to skip on to the next location. And if you're mashing too hard, we'll just do the same location over and over and over and over again. So there's a lot of ways to do this wrong and one way to do it right. So let's see how everyone does. Yeah, there's um there's one location in particular which is the South Gate, which um I'm not sure if it's got like a little bit of like a programming bug to it or something. It has to but... be glitched. It has to be. Yeah, it's nothing really, but it simply is that when you inspect it the the, the, the game takes you to a certain location 
and then goes to readjust you to another one and it just takes like three seconds or something so that's the one that yeah. you really don't want to repeat yeah for the other locations you know there's a bit of a buffer as to where you can um mash the the button to actually views that view them and it will move you to the correct location for some reason with the south gate i don't think there actually is a correct location that you can mash even if you line it up perfectly it still moves so it's just a little tricky spot on top of an already annoying part yeah, especially considering this entire area, there isn't really much room for like um, player skill. Really, you've got the shop, which obviously is the, the probably one of the biggest contributing factors to player ability, and then there's just the telescope. After that, it's all just you know maybe there's some background RNG that I'm blissfully unaware of. Um, <laughs> Very minor <laughs> stuff. There's there's a another minor boss fight in the elevator, and then there's the festival of the hunt. Um, you know anything about this game you know the festival hunt is a very very fun little mini game that you play at this part of the run and you get a different item depending on who wins the festival so i think we can all uh make bets in the chat over who's gonna win in uh mel's festival it can be zidane freya or vivi i think vivi's got this one is there a condition for having all three of them lose no i don't think so i think one of them no. wins no matter what Vivi for sure, he's beefy. <laughs> Vivi's very beefy for Mel. I think he's got a good chance this one. He's Freya might take, take it, it, but I think I think I think Vivi's gonna win this one. Uh, so um, a, a fun bit of uh, information about the hunt is um, there is actually a unique monster, which is is if you've played this and you're aware, there is a rampaging Zagnol that appears at the four minute thirty mark in um, the the the, the, the yeah, was it the commerce district. Like which you can get into a fight with and Freya joins you for that fight in particular and in one of the other categories for this game all bosses is a mandatory boss so you have to kind of chill and wait for him to spawn and um, yeah. I remember <laughs> and so <laughs> essentially during that time that part of the game is actually a break because you can kind of just jam around and wait for him and it's also still really important that you do something with that fight which I won't spoil for now um, but um, on the way there, you have to just pr um, proceed through the first screen of the Commerce District. And uh, I, <laughs> I did an all bosses run a few weeks ago, and I'd, I'd very, very, very skillfully ordered a Subway sandwich <laughs> <laughs> during this break. And I was like, Perfect. great, I can have my sandwich while I wait for the break. And I was, you know, getting very, very, very you know, excited to tuck into this sandwich. I was, you know, thinking about it i was oh man i was so ready for i was so hungry i was so ready and i was going up through the district <laughs> and, I, and i i must have moved a little bit funny because i got ambushed by a squirrel and, oh, I, no. and i hadn't done my menu yet oh, so i was no. i was wearing the wrong gear and i just couldn't i couldn't i couldn't take it out and it was gonna get me and i was like <laughs> oh no i'm gonna lose my entire run <laughs> oh goodness yeah they're dangerous yep. they uh they got a lot of health sandwiches will get you <laughs> And the whole oh, time was the, Yeah. Yeah. Say so Cease has cleared the telescope, Mel got through no issue, and I assume Amart's gonna have no problem. We are all very experienced with it, and I expect nothing but the best from everybody as we watch Amart here. I'm gonna just talk over it because I assume he's gonna be perfect as always. There's a comment in the chat asking uh how it's based on who wins the festival. Um the festival's very easy to have Freya win, which we'll most likely be seeing coming up. You never know what Amart's gonna do. Um, there's a couple hmm. different scenarios that you can take advantage of to decide who wins. I I believe if you want uh, Zidane to win, you have to kill everything and the Zagnol. And I, I think there's another strange condition. If you want Vivi to win, you have to get into the Zagnol fight and you have to die to it. I think that's the condition. You have to have Freya and Zidane both be. Yeah, down. you need to, you need to essentially knock Freya out of the competition yourself. Yep. Um. I believe that you win if you take out the Zagnol because the the points so. that it gives you is just so. so yeah, I couldn't huge. remember if it was, there was some other element to it, but I think I think it is just defeating the the mini boss. And as uh, was mentioned, for all bosses, I, we mentioned that there's a killer ability that you can apply for every boss. There's a category that they fit into, but there's a specific um, enemy type for bosses known as heavy. There is no heavy killer, but. If an enemy has the designation designation heavy, it's considered a boss. So the Zagnol is a heavy Zagnol. 
El did not save before she left, so let's hope she gets the uh, good she didn't save. festival here. Did not save. Oh. oh it's risky. Even. Maybe she forgot. <laughs> I mean, normally we don't save in the in the in the RTA, so she can uh, pull this off. It's a very tricky festival to do properly, but I'm sure she'll be fine. Have faith. If anyone can, can do if, it, it's shoot. Uh, Amart saved either. I'm a little worried here. Um, there is also, you know, you, you, the, the the date with the princess is really important as well for winning. It's on the line here, yes. Yeah, that's uh, so that's really Mel is that uh, in the festival right now, and she's going to be in her first battle. All see right. how she does. Let's we'll be take looking out the at the, uh, the ATB here. We want instant ATB, obviously. It's really important that we get in front of the move because it can just take us out really quickly. We want to just kill it as fast as possible. Decent ATB. Let's see what. And she went for. Uh, it. Did she get? Oh um, no, Mel! Mel, what's happened? You must have forgotten that the targeting window was on. Oh, she's through anyway. Ah, oh, we love to joke around here. <laughs> so really, we just want Freya to win the festival. We actually get a very nice accessory for it, and it turns out the easiest way to do that is just to uh, knock yourself off immediately. And the entire mini game is over, and Freya wins by default. So there you go. Free. <laughs> it's free real estate. <laughs> I honestly thought Vivi was going to win this time, but I guess Mel is playing, <laughs> you know, to go fast. I guess this is a speed run. So the um, the, the the item that we got for that, the reason why it's so important is it's the coral ring, which actually isn't accessible just yet, I believe. I don't think you can get it until this too, naturally, or perhaps there is. Yeah, not that I know of. I, I don't think so. Um, which is, uh, it, it's, it, again, it teaches us one of these really powerful abilities. It's got Manny to strap to it, which um, is going to be really, really critical for Zidane coming up in a moment. It's going to help him deal with a lot of fights. Um, it's also got a, another passive where it completely absorbs lightning damage, which isn't too relevant just yet, but it might become, it, it, might, it might show up. Um, some random, well not random mobs, but some forced encounters that we're going to be taking in a moment um, have a chance to use lightning and if they do and they hit Zidane then it's just, you know, it's free healing for us, it's great. Um, but the man eater is the most important thing for now and the lightning thing is definitely going to be coming up later, several times. Yeah. <clears throat> kind so of beats the, the, the 2k I think the Zidane gets for winning. <laughs> Something like that and Vivi gets a uh, Master Master card if he wins. Um, one thing we haven't quite talked about yet, we talked a little bit about damage rolls varying a little bit depending on your level. The way this game works is kind of different from the other games. You you get a little bit of stat boosting depending on your level and your equipment that's currently equipped. You get uh, a small amount of stat growth, but for the most part in this game, all of your stats come from equipment. So unlike FF7 where you get stats as you level up, and I think there's probably some more, I don't know enough about 7 to say that perfectly, but... The, the higher level you are, the more health and damage you'll do. Um, and eight, you know, the, the enemies shift to your level a bit. Nine, it's the damage that you output is almost entirely based on the weapons that you have. So you can be level one and still be dealing a ton of damage at the end of the game. The only thing that you're going to miss out the most on is health. So yeah. we have a certain amount of health to survive this uh, speed run without taking really all that many extra encounters and grinding at all, which is a nice little feature in this game. And we'll still be dealing a ton of damage at the end of the game using a lot of the mechanics that we have. So we are dropping off all of those cotton robes that we sent earlier, grabbing pretty much all of the potions and Phoenix Downs to carry us through until roughly disc three, actually, maybe even till nearly the end of the game. And a quick tent. So the tent is gonna help us with the Gizmaloot fight. Those that um, maybe didn't see uh, experience it as when they were playing it for the first time is that um, Gizmaloot is actually susceptible susceptible to a bunch of status ailments. And if you can actually use tents in combat, and if you use a tent, there is a 50% chance that you'll be bitten by a snake. There might be a snake happens, in that tent. There might be a snake in that tent. <laughs> and, if, and if there is, it's actually really crippling. It hits you with um, blind. Um, silence and poison. Um, Gizmaluk can't be poisoned, but the other two do affect him, and they're really, really, really bad for him, and we really, really, really want them to stick. So uh, we'll be taking a bunch of tents with us um, to maximize that. Yeah, one of the interesting things in this game that makes it uh, capable of being speedrun is that 
for the most part, a lot of or almost every single boss has some status effect that they can be hit with. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. Um, sometimes you can slow or mini a boss, which we don't take advantage of. But every now and then we will be doing some uh, status ailment tricks on bosses to help us get through them. Uh, Giza being the first one. A lot of people probably didn't know that you could use tents in combat in this game. They will heal you for 9,999 health and full heal your MP as well. But as Brutal said, they do have that 50-50 chance of obtaining a snake and you will be poisoned, silenced, and blinded. So we're going to be using that to our advantage here and attempting to get that on Giza Maluk coming up. Ella so, just completed uh, a very long stutter on her part, and instead of going straight to Gizamaluk's Grotto, has gone to the Chocobo's Forest to get on the Chocobo, which, as you can see, can just run through the map not only extremely quickly, but can avoid encounters entirely, so we take that extra 30-ish seconds to end up saving, oh, I don't know, five minutes throughout the run as we use it throughout the map. Yeah, the other really important thing that I wasn't actually aware of and haven't tested, so I'm believing this one, is Ooh, that... Okay. Um, if you go into the Chocobo's Forest and get the Chocobo, then it actually enables using Chocobo's period. Whereas if you were to go to a Chocobo's track later on right. and find guy Source from elsewhere, you simply wouldn't be able to summon the Chocobo. Um, yes, you have to actually meet him first in the yeah. forest. It would be nice if you didn't have to. That would save a good bit of time. Yeah, it would be pretty helpful. So Gizamaluk's Grotto is the first really challenging like dungeon of the game. Um, there is some ATV weight tricking going on, and the first screen is really quite dangerous. Um, other than the first screen, it's not too bad in here. You kind of really don't want to get an encounter in the first screen. There's a good chance that there's going to be a lot of bees, and bees are yes. bad. <laughs> Danger bees. Bees are bad, as a rule of thumb. Um, yeah, they one can of the enrage your party. The... One of the issues with that uh, fight at this stage in the game, we haven't really talked too much about the abilities that we get throughout the game, but Zidane has not mastered the flea ability at this part of the game, so if you don't have a very weak weapon equipped before you go through the door uh, that has the ability um, just innate on the weapon, you cannot flee, so you either have to kill the fight or hope you get lucky and run away quickly. We have to leave a strong weapon on, because as soon as we enter the door, we're in a forced fight. We don't have time to switch to a safer weapon and then switch back to a powerful weapon so if you get a fight at the start of the grotto you are risking a lot that's right so yeah getting into a fight you can you can choose between taking a dagger up to the door or you can choose between having a weapon and just like trying to dispatch enemies quickly there's a bunch of different really ways you can think about it and whatnot but ultimately this one's a tiny bit faster but this is the first forced encounter there's two of these um zidane can a to weight these black mages so he'll be attacking uh, any of the ones that don't attack, so that one on the left there. And then we'll be using the other party members to try and wait him in. Hopefully he got in front of the other one. Ah. Uh, uh, one's it down. Ah. Uh, yep. Not quite. Even still, uh, the ATB wait will be in effect, so they each got a turn in, and you would think naturally, since Sedane was third to act, um, the other black mage who is still alive would be acting before Zidane, but since Zidane has a higher speed stat and we held the ATB for the black mage uh, completely empty, Zidane is allowed to have his ATB bar emptied as well, and they both started filling at the same time, and since Zidane is faster, he got a turn in essentially before the enemy could. So, the use of the trick to save not only some scary damage rolls, but just a nice chunk of time instead of waiting. So a quick little top-up between fights here. Hopefully we don't get an encounter in between. Nice. Very skillful. <laughs> <laughs> Very well maneuvered. So see if Cease East. can avoid some uh, danger here. Looks like a, quite a deep conversation with the Vermesian here. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't get punished. If you talk to him from as far away as possible. Oh, a little bit wide. Ooh. Might be okay. We'll find out after the doors open. Nice. Yeah, it's based on the distance you've traveled, whether or not uh, and the next encounter check will happen, no matter how uh, much you stepped between that distance, unlike the world map. So we try to do as much as we can to m minimize the distance we're covering on every screen. And this is one where you, if you have perfect movement, you can save an encounter check, which yeah. uh, can save your run. It's like everyone got through it perfectly. So we're we're good. If you're familiar with other, other speedruns, uh, other Final Fantasy speedruns, I should say, so like Final Fantasy VII, for example, which has a step route, if your movement isn't, you know, immaculate and whatnot, you can be behind on steps or ahead on steps if you're really good. And um, that can completely drastically alter how you manage your encounters. So in FF9, if you're a little bit out and you get a, a check that you weren't normally going to get, 
if you get the encounter, you get the 30 second time loss and that's it. If you don't get the encounter because luck and, you know, it's God's will and that's just how it is. But um, <laughs> but in, in the other ones, sometimes if you're a little bit out, then that can really, really, it can, it can have a huge knock on effect depending on the route that you're doing and things like that. But that's not present in nine, which makes it a little bit, I would say, a little bit, a bit nicer to manage, really. Yeah, it has its ups and downs. You you never know what you're going to get, but it makes it uh, more interesting in some spots. So Amart had a couple preempts there and was able to use two attacks from Freya to deal lethal damage to one of the uh, Black Mages. So that didn't have to do the wait and still killed it in the two turns there. Very nice. Yeah, at this part of the run, Freya is a new character and just has her starter weapon and is a little bit underleveled compared to everyone else. So all of that combined means she does about half the damage that Zidane does at this point. So one hit from Zidane will beat one Black Mage, but uh, two hits from Freya will also get you there. So there's a couple different ways you can do that, depending on what everyone's ATB is. Yeah, it's also partially down to just the fact that we only have one source of Man Eater at this point in the game. That and, too, uh, yeah. We're also just trying to prioritize Zidane learning Man Eater at this point. Um, so in this game, all of the fights outside of random, we don't really take random battles outside of literally, I think, two scenarios, two screens <laughs> in particular in this game where we'll, we will say, yes, we will, we will take fights in these, these areas. Other than those, the only times that we are gaining what's called ability points, which is what we use to learn abilities like Man Eater, you know, Bug, bug Eater and things like that, and MP attack, all these things that passively help our characters. The only time we're, we're actually planning to, to, to kill things and gain abilities for that. It's for like boss fights and whatnot, so we'll try and make sure that people stay alive for those boss fights. Um, and all of these ability points are quite carefully crafted. We are very yes. specific in very, who is learning good. what and when. Um, we have extensive spreadsheets and charts and all that sort of stuff <laughs> which you can dig into. It's, it, can, it can be quite daunting when you start off. And backups in case somebody does go down in certain scenarios. Think, well, we didn't get that here, but we can get it there and whatnot. It's all very, 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 very carefully planned to make sure that everyone gets all the right things in the right time. So Mel is going into the Giza Maluk fight. She swapped out some equipment right before the battle to make sure everyone, or today in, in particular, has Bird Killer on because this giant water dragon is, of course, a bird. So he needs to be able to do <laughs> as much damage as possible on it. And we're going to see if some of the tents land. There is a backup if they don't. And sometimes you still can lose even with that backup. So we're going to be crossing our fingers here and hoping for a snake in the tent. If uh, there are any Giza Malooks in the chat, I suggest you look away now. <laughs> so uh, at this point in the game, different runners have different numbers of tents. I believe we're running on two today. I Looks like we're opting to so. get the preempt with VV. Yeah, so two is the standard, the typical number. Okay, so we got in front of Vivi. That's very good. Okay, let's cross our fingers. And three, two, one. Ah, not the one. No Next. dice on the first tent. All right, it's up to 50. Close bracket, exclamation mark, dashboard, <laughs> quote. I believe. Definitely he's got this, yeah. <laughs> and let's see. Ah, nice. Got it. Okay, so bitten by a silenced darkness poison snake. So that tent happened to have a nice little snake rolled up inside, and it bit our dear friend Giza Maluk. So as you can see, it's got the dots above its head, which means it can't use water, and it's got the uh, black fog in front of its eyes, which means it should have a 50% chance to hit as opposed to, I don't know, 90-something. Uh, even though Mel just got hit two times in a row, it can still happen, but... The most important thing is it can't use its water spell right now. It'll just say can't cast instead. So not only does it uh, prevent a lot of damage from happening, you're just skipping a turn entirely. It is merely a suggestion, friends. <laughs> for uh, yeah, Darkness <laughs> is only a suggestion. She's he's a Maluk is three for three on hitting Mel. Consider it is very missing, close to trancing. So oh my god! Oh, that's four for four. You you love to see it. So, poor Zidane could just take a hit and trance, but you cannot gain any trance bar when you are not alive, so. Right, so we're back in the action now with the high potion. Can't cast, it's a free turn. At this point, uh, if you do land the tent, as long as you have enough items, which we should, and I think every runner here uh, does have, you're, you're pretty much completely safe from not losing entirely on this fight, but you want a couple perfect scenarios to go the right way in order to make the fight end a lot faster. Uh, Giza Maluka, I think, is the first enemy that we encounter that can just counter any time you do a regular attack. So, every time you attack, I don't know if it's 50-50, but you run the risk that he will 
do a counter where he just smacks you with his tail. And that just <laughs> wastes time. It's, it's Five the for chance... six, I think? Yeah, it's right. the chance of not only is, is, yes, the counter is happening, but yes, the counter <laughs> is connecting, which is... Oh, thank goodness for that! <laughs> Gives him a little name are both landed tents at the exact same time, so it looks like we have a full tented fight, which is great. You love to see it. More likely to land the tent than not, just because of how many we get, but everyone will have those runs where you just do not land them. Oh, Revy loves my dude. Aww. I do love my dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I don't even want to know what Amart's going to be spelling out. <laughs> did he name, what did he name Steiner? Uh, Blue? Text oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Amart. <laughs> oh, I'm going to come over there. <laughs> I see. I should have seen it sooner. I was too distracted. Oh, man. So Mel has uh, gotten through Bizamuth's oh. Grotto, which is a very tricky dungeon. It can it go wrong like... in a lot of ways. Species is having some some trouble. Also, uh, oh, there goes Amart. Also, just eating every <laughs> single hit. It's merely a suggestion. At least the silence. So uh, after Gizamaluk has taken fifty percent of his health when damage, um, he can start casting Water All, which is party wide damage, and it hurts. It really, really hurts. It does over 100 damage to each of your party members, and he can use it back to back. And if you attack him between them, then he can counter you as well. It just, oh, it's really dangerous. Um, so if you don't get the tender stick and you, you don't get to use silent strategies on him, then uh, you can really get out of the side. Thankfully, no one took a, took a loss to Gizm Luke. It's very good. No rubber dub, though. Mel, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on, Mel. Have, have a little sport, please. <laughs> After running this game for oh six months, you'll start to uh, start to find enjoyment in the very unenjoyable sections of this game. So we all have little memes and moments that we are looking for in every section, and this one is full of them. So we're going to be looking at which direction certain characters are facing. The character that Mel is talking to now, part-time worker Mary, is falling in love with a, another person in this camp. She oh. is running up to now, and we meme about how he reacts at this point. Uh, it's the shoulder to cry on. Jeff, I believe, is the part of the meme. <laughs> so part-time worker Mary has not quite found love, but she's got a friend in Jeff. Sometimes he faces away entirely, and part-time worker Mary is very sad. Sometimes they face each other, and it's meant to be very important to keep track of this throughout the run. So we're actually seeing some pretty good paces here. What was it? A bunch of like 203, 204 geezers in marathon. I don't have a timer running, though. Yeah, I um, just, the just on, the, on, yeah. on the actual run. Yeah, it's pretty. It's good pace. It's good pace, actually. So when you're you're starting out in this game, if you're running on console, um, a lot of people's goals uh, is to get under nine hours total. Um, the world record is you know about eight hours and thirty four minutes at this point. But a good benchmark for when you're really understanding the game well is to get under nine hours. So we have certain benchmarks throughout the run of whether or not you're on pace, on track for that, and really you know anything around. Two hour Giza Maluk is a good time. Two oh three is totally fine, and we'll be checking end of disc times and stuff like that. But everyone here is on a really good pace for doing great, especially with a couple safety saves. Um. So the 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 next split <laughs> from Giza Maluk up until um, end of disc one is usually between. Well, um, the thing with the is it, because there's quite a lot of ink. The, the boss fight is pretty much on rails, but the the random encounters can vary quite a lot. Um, especially the quality of them as well. So it, the split can go from, I think, 15 minutes to about 18 minutes. Maybe. Sounds about right. Um, so we're probably looking at... I think the best case scenario here is probably going to be a 218, a high 218. Um, we could be seeing some two, sub 220s, which is the wait is, is actually a really, really good pace for marathon yes. saves especially. Very good indeed. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see some like up, up until like 222s, which is uh, still... Yeah, not bad at all. Oh, not bad at all. If you're if you're looking to get sub nine and that's your goal, you really want to be under about two twenty three for disc one. And you know, if you're higher than that, you can still obviously get that time. It's there's plenty of time to be saved later on. But you want to just be at certain benchmarks, and anything under two twenty is all right. Let's keep going. This is great. Yeah, and yeah. Everyone sure. should be there, I think, give or take some encounters. Hopefully, no one gets 
really bad luck, but we'll see. So Mel is the first through the south gate. I think it's the south gate that they were, and I can never get them straight, and is making her way to Bermesia, which is Clara's hometown. It is the rainy city. And it is another dungeon, one that has just so many encounter checks. There's a lot of very long screens and a lot of backtracking that you need to do in order to get through the dungeon. Some very minor puzzles, you could say, uh, in order to get through. It's just a lot of greens with encounters, and as we know, you can get through it with either zero encounters or, I don't know, ten encounters if you're really unlucky, but you're holding your breath on every screen and hoping, please, 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 please. So we'll take a glance at that after a, a third forced black mage fight. So the issue that you find in Bermesia is that the random encounters have now reached a point where they've gone from, ah, that's a shame, to, oh man, please leave me alone. <laughs> yes, um, you're you're running up against that benchmark that we all have for that end of disc one, and you're staring down this clock right in front of you, and you say, "If I can just get through with no more encounters, I can hit this time." And you yeah. get an encounter, and some of them can be very, very slow, and you can lose forty five seconds very easily per encounter. So this is where it starts to hurt. The um the the issue that you have here is that you can bump into um, basilisk monsters which hopefully we don't really see many of at all which are these little green guys the monster things knocking over and uh they just pretty much their entire moveset is casting um different spells and one of them uh very uh, uh fittingly is just slow and it takes Ooh. quite a long time for it to go off yeah you just don't really want to see them and they can come in packs of three or four yes i think it's just three, three. i think it's the max yep you can also get a uh, preemptive strike on them and see some lizard booties, so if we do see them, oh, let's yeah. hope for that. Big ol' rumps. So let's hope we don't see anything. The first screen can be a little tricky because you do want to switch weapons so you can flee from them. And then as you see, Amart is putting on a stronger weapon as soon as he reaches the end of the screen. He's got to be a little bit stronger to take on these black mages. So there's a lot of weapon switching, and you just saw Mel do a menu so she can flee whenever she needs to and puts Zidane in the back row for a couple different reasons. And unfortunately got an immediate encounter, so comes the breaks. Elle has, for the most part, been in the lead uh, the entire disc, and that can certainly change the end of this dungeon. Thing too significant to note on these black mage fights, they're the same as the ones in the grotto. All you need to do is do one hit with Zidane or two with Freya, so we're just going to be looking to ATB weight them and get rid of them as fast as possible. Yeah. So the menu that you do after you defeat the, um, the black mages also is, is, is pretty cool. Um, it was quite a while until I realized exactly why everything was the way it was. Um, so we equipped it down with the Mage Masher because, like Rev said earlier, we haven't finished learning Flea, uh, which is a really, really good ability to have at this point in the game because having to kill all of these Basilisks would be a huge time loss. Shout outs to Fleeless. Um, <laughs> uh, and additionally, we actually put a weaker hat on Zidane um, so that we can actually. Uh, deal with the boss in a really specific way which I'll, I'll cover when we get there I suppose um, and we're also going to be you know, sorting out our rows and whatnot. It's there's a lot of really really specific things that are going on which kind of look a bit pointless um, but they're actually setting us up perfectly for the Beatrix fight at the end of this one Amart just had a chance to pull ahead of Mel there but got an encounter at just the last check of the screen and is unfortunately still a little bit behind and Mel made it through the long screen without an encounter so might hold on to her lead for a little bit longer. As Brutals mentions, we, we really need Flea here because we have some tricks and gimmicks to get through every boss at this point but some of these random encounters, even though it's just should be very killable. We don't have the tools necessary to um, quickly dispatch these, so the only good option we have is to flee. So we have to equip a weaker weapon on Zidane that still has the flee ability on to be able to get through the uh, dungeon in a decent amount of time.
Um, so, oh, back attack on Amar. Ooh, you no. hate to see it. So until we get... Actually, we do have access to it now, but we choose not to put it on just yet because um, back attacks are a 1 in 8. Every time you get an encounter, there's a 1 in 8 chance of it being a back attack, I believe. Um, not factoring in preempts from yourself. Uh, there is an ability that you can equip called Alert, which we do just only just have access to after looting a specific chest in Bermisia. It's really important that we um, do loot that item. There is a bridge that we need to drop and which Cease has just run over. Um, unfortunately, we didn't we didn't call it out as it was happening, but um, there is a chest in there. The Germanist boots, which teach you alert, which um, it completely it turns off back attacks. You cannot be back attacked when, when um, alert is currently equipped. Very, 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 very powerful when you're seeing up 50 to 60 encounters throughout your whole run. You want to see as minimal back attacks as possible. Um, we don't put it on just yet. We leave, we opt to leave it off for the moment just because it would be adding an additional menu. And then ideally we'd have to actually, no, yeah, we'd, we'd have to take it back off again and do some more yep. menuing. It would be a bit messy. So we just say, you know what? Nah, we're not going to get back attack. This is just not happening. Yeah. We're not, we're not we scared need, we, we need the right equipment on for the coming fights. And I think you would need something like three back attacks prevented. And like you said, it's close to one in eight. So you can imagine if you average 24 encounters, it might be worth it, I think, in order to actually save that time. But since we're hoping for under five, ideally, it's uh, it's just not worth it to put on here. Everyone seems to be getting bit by the encounter bug at the moment, so I don't think the leads have shifted all that much at this point. a bit more to go for each runner here and then we're heading into the last boss of disc one a very iconic fight against beatrix um probably has gamed over a couple people playing this casually um she has something in the range of 3500 health if i'm remembering correctly and dealing enough damage to her would not exactly be an easy task because it hits for about 500 with man eater on and freya hits for around 250, so it would take a considerable amount of time to actually get there, and you'd have to wait for a lot of animations, and she can um, kill your party members in one hit anytime she chooses with shock, and it would be a lot of uh, using Phoenix Downs and revives to end the fight, but this is one of the fights that has an alternate way of ending. Uh, the game does take mercy on you, and has the fight end in 10 turns, no matter what, so we will be counting the amount of turns that Beatrix has, and just kind of hoping for no death so we don't need to use Phoenix down at all. And there's also going to be uh, a little trick we can do to actually skip a couple turns. We'll see if anyone can get there. I would actually be really surprised if many people actually dealt lethal damage to Beatrix in a casual playthrough because even with... Um, we, we're not using the Ogre at this point in the game with Manita. Um, if you, if we, there is, a, there is a strat where we can go for lethal damage on Beatrix, but it, it relies on a few too many things to be any good. Um, revolving around trance, which, well, we've seen how that's gone so far, haven't we? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, which I don't think I've ever actually seen anyone execute. I've actually had the situation arise in a run. I've even gone for it, and it still didn't work. So clearly I did something yeah. wrong. <laughs> um, it, yeah, it's very specific yeah. in order for you to actually save time, and you can just never rely on trance in this run. Other than Sea Lion, it's kind of one that you can almost rely on, but the rest you just assume you're never going to trance at the right time, so... All we're going to be yeah. doing is just waiting out the fight. Yeah, and even then, it's such minimal time save that it's just there. Nah. It has to happen within, I think, four turns for it to actually save any time, as opposed to just waiting another four turns. So it's it's just not worth it. Yeah. So it's in, instead, we we opt to just survive for ten turns. The setup that we've got that would interfere if we messed around with the um, uh, the Germanist boost. Part of the reason why we don't touch it is um, we use an ability called Protect Girls. Um, which allows the Dan to specifically cover and defend and take damage for um, uh, female characters as long as it's a single target effect, which Beatrix only has access to, thankfully. Um, if she ever tries to do a single target effect targeting Freya, when Freya is underneath 50% HP, 
so then we'll stand in the way and take the damage. Um, because Zillan is back road, he takes half damage from physical attacks. He's also got the Coral Ring on, which means that Thunder, Strike, Thunder Slashes will be completely absorbed and will be brilliant, actually, if anything. And um, also, finally, uh, the Shock ability, he'll just tank that for us. So if, as long as Freya is sub 50%, we can just sit back on her, and whenever Zidane goes down, we just throw a quick Phoenix down on him, pick him back up, and get straight back into the fight. Um, so there isn't going to be much damage dealt during this fight at all. We might see a few cheeky steals. Maybe someone's going to go for their yeah, Maybe stuff. someone will be brave enough. So it's a little <laughs> risky, and you would rather keep everyone's ATB at full to be able to Phoenix down. We might not see it, but we'll see. Um, yeah. One thing we are going to look for is something known as the jump skip, which is taking advantage of Beatrix's really fast uh, ATB. If the stars align properly, we can have Freya use her jump ability when the rest of the party member is temporarily uh, down and Beatrix will not have anyone to target, so her turn will just come and go, but it still counts as one of her 10 turns. So on turn eight, we can jump if the stars align and Beatrix just skips her last two turns. Three in a row? Ah, <laughs> Beatrix was bought bullying poor Petey for a moment then. <laughs> <laughs> Story of Petey's life. <laughs> Getting stomped. <laughs> so that's turn three, turn three, four. On... four for Mel. No, so you can see. You need to be watching getting... damage rolls on or uh, health pools on everyone. Dane needs to be able to take himself out of the fight, and Freya. I... Vivi also needs to be down, so that shock might be helpful here. We're kind of. No, Freya still at full health is actually not good. Just yeah. it lowers the chances of this being successful. That was five, right? Ah, I've lost count. I can never do this myself when I'm doing the run. <laughs> Hopefully so Mel's keeping track, I have faith. Ugh. Probably shouldn't be counting, because I think she can hear me. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Mel. <laughs> but no, with Prayer Poor outside of 50%. Pizza right there, too. Seven. Uh, I think I was, she's I think seeing I was, eight, so... I think I was a She saved... Yeah. You think that was seven or eight? Well, let's find I, out. I thought it was seven, but um, I also wasn't looking the whole Sel time. Sel said so she's yeah. got it. I trust Sel. So we'll see when Freya lands. Hopefully the fight just ends. Yeah. Did, did. Okay, so Mel got the jump skip. Ended up skipping two turns from Beatrix. Let's see if anyone yeah. else can uh, get there as well. On so the 10th turn, actually... she'll use Snock Break and the fight will be over. It's a mechanic that we're going to see um, at two points in the run, actually. Other than this, is that if there is nobody for the enemy to target, if they full fill up their ATB, they just skip their turn. They just decide there's nothing they can do and they just empty their ATV and start again and because Beatrix 1 is so fast when um, Freya goes up she uh, <laughs> Mel has her turn Beatrix has her turn she then has another turn and then Freya comes down and the fight will actually be over and that's uh, where jump skip comes from so you basically just skip two animations um, which is about uh, 15 seconds yeah something like it's that bit, and certainly it's, it's, it's only going to be in minor in inconsequential bosses right they wouldn't put that for a very important boss anywhere in the game would they Oh, definitely not, no. Definitely not, no. <laughs> Okay, so Amar, it looks like he uh, succeeded. There's a steal from Cease. Unfortunately, we did not get anything. There's not really much of a hope of getting anything useful, but still got to go for it. Sometimes there's the 1 in 256 chance of getting a sword that we're just going to buy anyway and doesn't really help us all that much, but got to go for it. Yeah, the uh, the Mithril Sword. I, I, you know what? I never joined the Mithril Sword Club. But th th did you ever get into it, Rev? You know, I sure did, and I have done four full RTA runs of this game, and I have gotten the sword on two of them, believe it or no not. No way. I, I don't I believe that at all. <laughs> My first run ever, I stole it. I was like, I don't even know what to do with this. I didn't know the menus at all. It's like, okay, great. I had to go for it. Yeah, so uh, so Mel the... is uh, at the end of disc one now. It's going to prompt her to save her game. We don't need to, thankfully, because of uh, how you see the next coming fights are, and she is swapping to disc two now, so her final time is... 20 40 something ish which is a, a really good time good. so when I mean, a martin cease are just right behind this is a really close race right now you can see a lot of variation on disc one sometimes you'll get some 217 disc ones and some 225s and in a marathon having three runs all under 22 is fantastic yeah everyone's really really tight this is this is great <laughs> as we said race, they but... are all tied for their pbs so we expected nothing else yeah So this two is going to start with a nice, chill little bit of, of dialogue. We're going to be uh, moseying around the south gate, 
Summit Station, which has probably one of my favorite songs in the entire game. It's just the best. We're um, going to do a quick shop. We're going to grab ourselves a couple bits of gear. Um, it's going to give Steiner some much needed abilities before moving on to uh, the next boss, which is going to be Black Wolves 3, take two. One of the, uh, the neat things about um, this shop as well, the item that we get for Steiner, the Barbet, we mentioned it very briefly, but it's going to give him a couple extra spirit. And uh, the formulas in this game are very in-depth based on your stats for when you can crit. And there's a certain dead zone, as uh, we mentioned earlier. I think it's between 18 and 22 spirit. The math works out so that you have 0% chance to crit. If you had less than 18, you would actually have a chance to crit. But because of the way it works... Uh, no characters can crit until they're at 23 spirit, I believe, and the Barbit will put Steiner over that magical threshold, so now we can start to hope for some critical attacks. So we can do uh, ATV weight uh, tricks with Dagger. Dagger's actually quite quick um, in the next couple fights. Uh, we've also given her a Feather Hat, which amplifies the damage of her Magic Racket because it is wind-based, and there's a lot of more hidden things going and Mel isn't realized she hasn't spoken to Marcus yet. <laughs> there we go. This <laughs> is exhausting keeping track Steiner. of all the uh, the triggers everywhere in this this run. It's not unusual to miss one minor thing and hopefully that minor thing is not a major thing. And it's, oh, that was four screens ago. Let me go back and do that. So minor slip up, but no harm, no foul. So after a bit more uh, dialogue here between Garnet and Steiner in their attempts to get back to Alexandria, they are going to be accosted by our old, our old friend Black Waltz 3. Uh, he is in a beat-up condition again, and he's basically just as easy as the last time, but for different reasons. The last time we fought him on the airship, uh, it's a very set fight. As long as you are equipped properly and do the same things, you'll get the same result every time. This fight is also completely free, but for a different reason. He actually cannot attack... Uh, Princess Garnet, um, unlike Black Waltz 2, who has a way to put Garnet to sleep and kidnap her and cause a game over. If it's just Garnet standing at the end of the fight, Black Waltz 3 will actually end up hurting himself because he's so damaged. So this fight is entirely safe. You cannot game over on it. Um, all you can do is just give a little bit of time. So with these uh, beefy Steiners that we have here, there's a good chance that they will survive this fight. If he is level 1, he's most likely going to die in this fight. And you got to do it very, very slowly, but essentially all we're looking for here is um, for the Black Walls to only hit Marcus and for Steiner to do as much damage as possible. I'm just going to say it. Two of the three runners in this race have died to Black Waltz 3 2. I'm not going to say which ones they are, though. <laughs> you, you, you have to just attack yourself for that to there. happen, don't you? <laughs> Who would do such a thing? All I'm saying is it's happened to two of the three runners in this race. <laughs> uh, is Dagger actually faster than Nine, or is she only fast compared to Steiner? I believe Steiner is the slowest party member that you have, question mark. Um, I think that's yeah. correct. And Dagger is pretty speedy. Um, I think the Feather Hat has a point of speed on it, question mark. It it's, sounds about yeah. right. I think she is the second... No, Amaranth obviously is the second fastest, but it, it, this part of the game, she has a moderate amount of speed. I want to say it's 21 at this point, and Black Wall yeah. 3 has 20, if that's if that sounds right. Yeah. That could be a little bit yeah. off. It's something like that. She she is only just faster. It is a it is quite a tight weight. Yeah, for the most part, you'll only be waiting with Zidane to outspeed enemies, but this is one fight where you just happen to have a party member who's faster than the boss that you wouldn't expect. Uh, Mel did a great job, had everyone alive, and was able to dispatch Black Walls 3 very, very quickly. Very nice. So, uh, Steiner's one of the things that about this game that's pretty cool as well that I don't think many people know is that if you wear two items that have the same ability on them, which Steiner does currently, he's got two items currently on him that have Bird Killer on them. If you're wearing both of them at the same time, they both gain ability points off the same mob. So, Black Waltz 3 2 is going to give us 5 AP, and he's actually going to gain 10 because both of those items give Bird Killer AP. So, this fight is actually worth quite a lot of AP towards Steiner, but it's still not essential. 
he has so many other encounters later on that are going to help back him up. Um, but if he does survive this, then you just don't even need to think about it. Yep, we have backups on backups and backups, and it'll come into effect later in the game because you can also get the ability known as Ability Up, which will double your AP gained. So if you're keeping track, that quadruples everything. You are doubling it with the doubled up gear, and then you are doubling that again. So you can get a quick amount of ability uh, in a short amount of time if you have the right setup. Uh, one thing you just noticed on Mel's screen, she just quickly jumped across that bridge. If you go down a little bit and check the treasure chest, there's a good amount of gill in there, which I assume Amart and Cease will be picking up. It's one of the other benefits of getting 100 nobles. You get to you skip that chest, it. which takes all of five seconds, but, you know, I don't need it. I want those five seconds. Oh, there goes God. Amart, wasting all that time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and he's back. Whew. Can be well, a very dangerous stutter step if you're not uh, very good at it. Um, if Amart, you get... Go. Unlucky. Hey, Mark, go. Through the bridge. <laughs> <I've>... <laughs> go, hey, Mark. Get, get. <laughs> if you get unlucky in the uh, Black Waltz 2 fight, you can end up with just dagger. And normally we don't revive because there should be, in theory, if you do it very well, no other encounters until everyone gets a full heal. Uh, unfortunately, if you mess up your stutter step, you can get a world map encounter. And if it's just dagger on her own, we don't have Zidane and cannot flee. So you can swipe there. So if you are a newer runner, you might want to everyone up after the fight so i'm actually going to take a little bit of a break and rome's going to take over for a little bit but before i do i would like to friendly remind all of our runners to please do not forget the power belt whatever you do it is very important <laughs> and don't with that i'm going to pass over to uh, rome i'm going to so skip I'll be back in a bit fight you broods <laughs> <laughs> who would forget the power belt in this yeah, lovely who would forget the power belt in trino this yeah. is uh they mentioned before with the ate system uh this is the only optional ate we're going to witness in ff9 speedrun to pick up the power belt because we have to witness this uh money being stolen from uh garnet from dagger sorry um from the forearmed man and then Kara, i think you mean oh Kara, yeah princess Kara. i'm sorry <laughs> and uh Steiner needs to go meet up with this four-armed man uh, before getting Dagger. Uh, otherwise, you just miss out on this free item. And it's incredibly important because the accessory contains MP attack, which I mentioned before, which increases damage for a sliver of MP on basic attacks, as well as just having uh, more strength points, which is important for leveling. But yeah, it's just an important accessory to pick up. You also start learning counter off of it, which is not mandatory, but will end up saving you a lot of time throughout the run. And if you miss it, you're just wasting so much uh, damage, and a lot of these fights are safe, but you don't want to be spending any extra time in battle for many, many reasons. So if you miss it, it's it's, it's game over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it's pretty much a run killer. Like You can technically still continue on with FF9 without it, but uh, it's, it's just going to be rough. Yep. And you saw Amart picking up some more gill outside the auction house. I think you skip that if you get nobles, Rome. Yeah, Is that right? Yep, you just run yeah. right in. There's another gill pickup that we can skip if uh, we happen to get nobles, but mm. it's, a, oh. it's, it's, it's a very quick pickup if you mess that up. I got a little bit stuck on our way to the hideout. We'll see if anyone yeah. else can save a couple frames by getting around that mm. one guy who's conveniently in the way. Uh, the other thing about having nobles is you can purchase the Mithril Dagger in the, the Trina menu. But if you don't get nobles, then you skip buying the Mithril Dagger, because there's a free one right outside of uh, Tot's mansion, or whatever, the, the tower, Tot's tower, uh, that we'll be meeting up with uh, eventually. So you just pick up the free one to save uh, quite a bit of gill. Which we'll be using uh, for Synthesis later, because we need, I think, roughly like four mithril daggers for synthesis and whatnot so something crazy like that you need yeah, you need a bunch yeah i think you need two of them to make something and you combine that something with another one it's just right. absurd yeah this is a pretty calm section that we're in currently without uh too much going on a little bit of a mental break before we head into some very very uh annoying dungeons where we can get hit with encounters again there's oh i don't know Five dungeons throughout the game where encounters are just awful, and this is one of the big ones. Yeah, uh, especially since we don't have Zidane with the flea ability, we have to rely on either killing the encounter or getting a quick flea off. And because of that, we have some ways of dealing with every single uh, battle, and it's the same every time for the most part. So it's not the worst case if you get encounters. All it's doing is slowing you down, though. 
-hmm. And uh, some routes actually take advantage of this because it's it's very unlikely to get through the entire dungeon without a single encounter. So odds are good that we will get one, and odds are good that you can kill it pretty quickly. So it's one of the places where if your route is needing a little bit extra AP or experience on some of your characters, it's a good spot to take some. And the experience will actually help out a good deal here. So general rule of thumb, I think, at this part of the run is to defeat the first encounter you get and then run away from the rest of them. It'll help set things up for the future. Yep. Yeah, this is a kind of a plot-heavy section where... Um... Overall, overall in the story, this is where Dagger and Steiner are um, essentially trying to make their way back to Alexandria, um, or were eventually are trying to get back to Alexandria, and then now have this little side quest with Marcus to try and find Supersoft from uh, Dr. Tot here. But They're on their way uh, to hopefully help restore Blank from being petrified and also get back to Alexandria and hopefully convince the Queen to end the war and... Things will not quite go as planned as usually happens. Yep. So we'll get Marcus back on our party for temporarily for the upcoming little dungeon and boss fight. This will be the last time we, I believe, use a character other than a little bit in disc three that will no longer be a full party member. So this is our last chance to um, have a little fun with our starting crew. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Spoilers, I'm sorry. Spoilers, goodness. Yes, there will be spoilers throughout this game and unfortunately we can't read or see anything extra this is a very fun game with tons of little hidden secrets to it we'll be burning through all of them very very fast in the name of uh finishing and going to bed <laughs> yes exactly yeah you can see uh Kmart's picking up the metal dagger there it's a free one <laughs> no, and Mel's playing a quick uh, game of Tetra Master. With <laughs> yeah, accidentally. I think uh, on purpose. Let's say that. Yeah, let's say it was on purpose. Starting up a card game <laughs> with Doctor Tot. Yep, make sure to split the encounter checks so you can get through the room safely. <laughs> yep, in the name of getting Sanders Ultimate Weapon. That's right. But um, yeah. The the reason that happens with the starting a card game is that you, for this game you could mash both the square button and the uh, X button or circle button if you're playing JP or you swap to it. So you can double button mash and if you just, just so happen to hit the square button when talking to a character you can start a card battle with them if they have, <laughs> just so happen to have, have a deck of cards on them. So that, that Yeah, the happen. way that uh, the way that dialogue works in this game is you can press either square or X to fully bring all of the text on screen from a dialog box and then X or square to also clear that dialog box and bring up the next one. So what these runners are doing are mashing X and square constantly in hopes to just get through the next box, bring up the one after that, clear it, mm -hmm. go to the one after that, etc. So if you talk a few too many times in certain locations, you end up double talking and uh, Cease and Amart are obviously using turbo. And if you accidentally leave the turbo on just a little bit too long, you will have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Just sitting there chatting to the same guy over and over. <laughs> yeah, we can see, uh, yeah, we can see Mel doing the little dungeon. There's a little bit of a puzzle too, where we have to flip some levers and switches just to get the little uh, little cutie bug. Uh, and you saw her line. shimmering, uh, shimmying a little bit closer, step by step to that switch instead of full on running. She's just trying to reduce the amount of encounter checks that she gets on that screen. So sometimes yeah. you spend one second to potentially save 35. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we mentioned before, um, getting encounters here isn't really that great. Uh, we can try and manage and take care of it, but uh, we have no option of quick fleeing. So, other than you know holding L1 and R1 and hoping for the best, but we have to kill it. And as the alternative, yep, we have a little gargant, little cutie bug with a little ship on its back. Yes, yeah, so there are a few dungeons in, this, dungeons in this game where we have to use party members that don't include Zidane. Um, every time that happens, we have a couple different tricks up our sleeve to be able to get through fights. One of them is very notorious and wastes a ton of time later in Disc 3, and we'll get there at some point. But mm -hmm. Bell got through without any encounters, which is really nice. But unfortunately, yeah. Cease and Amar are both yeah. getting some very cute bugs at the moment. So since she can't to flee for Cease, she's uh, trying to use L1 and R1 to run away but also attacking with Steiner and Dagger just to kill them because you cannot rely on a quick flea to actually work when you want it to. So 
What you can do is hope for a very quick fight, which Amar got because he only got one bug as opposed to two. However, Cease will just be beefier than ever yep. for this upcoming fight. Which, you know, that can help. Mm -hmm. And I think I think Amart was a little bit underleveled compared to the other two, so that fight, while being slow, is going to help this coming fight just be a little bit safer and make things a little smoother. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we'll we'll need Steiner and have a little bit of cushion for HP later on, just in case. Um, we'll point that out when we get there, but it's good to have a little bit of HP for Steiner uh, before we move on to this boss fight. If you're level yeah. one, it's it's fine. You just have to, you know, hope you have a good pattern, so to speak. But we'll get. To yep. That so later. Mel is coming into the fight, and basically it's another fight where it only has single target attacks, which is fine if you have plenty of Phoenix Downs, since you can certainly go fast enough to just revive anyone who happens to get killed. Um, if you are level one, basically everyone will go down in one hit. And Steiner is our big damage dealer here, so any extra health on him makes it a lot nicer to not have to wait for his turn to come back. Um, saw Zeskara go down for Mel, and we will just pick her right back up with Marcus and just keep attacking with Steiner to do as much damage as possible. This fight also has a little bit of a gimmick to it, where instead of the fight uh, ending when you do enough damage, the boss escapes. It's essentially the same thing we're looking to do, what is it, 2,000... No, four, three thousand, two hundred damage, something like that. I can't even remember what it is. Yeah, it, it's somewhere around there, but yeah, basically just need to scare this thing away. So instead of actually dying on the last hit, uh, you can continue damaging it as long as you have turns in before it escapes. So Mel was actually doing some math there to see if she needed that last Marcus hit or not. You can, you get the right damage rolls, not need to hit with Marcus, and end up just wasting time attacking there when you could just do nothing. Yep. One of the most important tools for an FF9, FF9 speedrunner is the calculator. Where we need, <laughs> yeah, the game is uh, slow enough to where we can punch in some numbers every now and then to count damage on a boss to see if we can get that extra attack and to finish the job. Yep. Amart's heading in now, and he's got a much beefier cast of characters, and yep. uh, Princess Knife was able to survive that attack. Yeah, survived. Right. Three whole HP, so mm -hmm. there's the little benefit he lost. Oh... 35 seconds on that fight, but just saved, mm -hmm. you know, 14 seconds there. So yeah, there you go. Good and bad. Yes. And BP Marcus, too. There's a uh, hidden mechanic on this boss fight that let's hope we don't see. But if uh, two of your party members are poisoned, mm. as Marcus currently is with the uh, poison ticking above his head. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, that unlocks a spell for the boss known as Knight, which will put the entire cast of characters to sleep. So hopefully it will not be getting another turn. Okay. Yeah, looks like he's good. But yeah, that, that can be pretty scary whenever you have a BP team uh, yes. that's able to survive the Devil's Kiss and get poisoned. Yeah, I have lost a run that way once, which is not fun. Um, you basically can't do anything when you are asleep, and the only way to get out of sleep is to be hit with a melee attack. And at that point, you're probably going to die if you get hit with a melee attack. So it's it's basically just run over. It's very yeah. rare. You don't often see it because usually you will, as you saw with Cease, Cease just die with the Devil's Kiss. And it doesn't count as a poison damage. So not a huge issue. Yep. And looks like everyone's past the baby Ralph. Right. And yeah, Mel's on our way to Clayton. Another quick stuttering across the world map. This is one of the smaller ones, thankfully. Um, stuttering is a very interesting technique, and it, it absolutely wears on your hands. Some people are better at it than others. I am horrible at it, and it just hurts on these long ones. Uh, thankfully, there's a couple short ones that are not too bad at all. Come up on some longer ones later, though. Yeah, some there's a one in particular in disc three that's kind of killer. <laughs> Thankfully, it's one of the last ones in the game, but yeah, we're reaching Clara, uh, every FF9's runner's favorite dungeon. Absolutely nothing can go wrong here. <laughs> no, certainly not. So not a whole lot of uh, secrets to this Clayra dungeon. There is one little switch we have to flip, and there are a couple different paths we avoid, obviously, because we don't need the treasures here. There's not very much we need to pick up. 
other than uh, the magician's shoes, which we'll get very early on, it's going to allow Vivi to kind of be the powerhouse for a little bit. Um, we will be able to do as much damage as Zidane. Uh, you, I think more for the next little bit. The problem is yeah. magic spells are just kind of slow. Mm -hmm. so we don't like to use them, but we need that option there, and we'll be using it on a couple of bosses coming up, too. Yep, exactly. And Vivi's going to be our little star damage dealer for this dungeon, and um, for some of the upcoming, or I guess just the first, yeah, the, the first, I guess a couple bosses, he's going to be the star as well, doing a lot of damage. But yeah. That's At least I enough really... to where it's it's useful to uh, mm -hmm. have them. Yeah, exactly. And just using the cost of the time it takes to cast is worth it compared to just attacking. But yep. that's something I do love about the FF9 speedrun is that every character does have some sort of uh, moment to shine. Almost. Uh, almost everyone, yeah. Depending almost on the road, everyone. I suppose. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, every character has like a little bit of... Um, uh, other toolkit that we can use like we were just using dagger you know like in black Waltz yep. 3 2 um as a yeah. main source of damage and yeah uh, the thought process is if we're forced to use them we might as well make them useful mm -hmm. and if we're not forced to use them we don't need them i was actually doing a great job so far in this run this is her first encounter and she's almost done so maybe this yeah. is going to be the only one shout outs to uh our friend beth bow here hope he's watching <laughs> he loves this uh this monster. The trick to this guy is you just want to Blizzard the core and it's dead. Because otherwise, if you attack the sand golem part, it just like sort of droops and it like it doesn't really do anything. So you just kill the core and just use the encounter <laughs> with a one yeah. single Blizzard with our setup. It's easy to slip on that and end up wasting an extra 15 seconds. At that point, you might as well just flee. But for the uh, for the round this round in particular, it, it does help to kill at least one encounter. So getting that one uh, encounter will help uh, with the AP for Frey, I believe, to learn some abilities. It'll also help with uh, some of Zidane's damage rolls on a couple of forced fights coming up. It'll make things a little bit easier. We're gonna be watching his level a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's one of those ones that it would be ideal to get through with zero encounters, but it's not very likely. So we might as well just take advantage of the odds that we're going to get one. It's really hard to get through this dungeon without an encounter. Yeah, there's just so many screens with a high encounter threshold, so it's just it's going to happen. Usually. <laughs> Mel is ahead, so let's see if she takes the tour out of kind Oh, no. Okay, well, she's being rude, and Tour's is going to make her own way around Clara. <laughs> I thought uh, maybe we were going to get that today, but no, yeah. no dice. No tours. Maybe that's Amart's secret strat. He's going to take the tour here. Mm-hmm. It's tricky. You can't trust him. Yeah, since Mel did uh, got 100 nobles, she has the extra guild to buy outright by the partisan and the thunder gloves. Uh, otherwise, we have to wait for the ant lion uh, boss kill to get the guild and to afford the partisan, and then pick up a free thunder gloves and the Clara. But it's quicker to just buy it if you have the guild. It's one of the. I think it's maybe the last part where uh, nobles is helpful. I think I'm so. Mistaken. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last little thing you get. Yeah. Because all the extra gill we're going to get is going to be covered for Black Mage Village. Oh, was your encounter Claire for Cease? Wow, she made nice it through job. with that encounter. Saw so many on Amarts, I just got confused and figured one of those had to be Cease's. Yeah, Poor yeah. Amarts is getting a little bit hosed at the moment, but mm -hmm. it'll be fine. It'll even out in the end, as FF9 does. It always does, and Cease managed to get the tour skip. Very, very important, especially mm -hmm. on Turbo. Yep. Um, that uh, priest right there, he asks you if you want to just take a tour of Claro, where he goes and shows you around, and you're on a bit of a side-scroller until that's done mashing. It takes about a minute, minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And if you're on turbo and you're just not paying enough attention, you can very easily take the tour. Mm -hmm. So Mel's coming up on the uh, cutest boss in all of Final Fantasy IX video gaming, yeah. Antlion, also known as Doodlebug. <laughs> um, this is one of the fights where Vivi is the star. You... What is the rules here that any attack with Zidane will get countered? Yeah, any physical attack will counter. So if you just do the basic attack command, he'll do a counter horn uh, counter. So Which does a ton if, of damage, if I'm not mistaken. It does mistaken. a lot, yeah. And especially if he casts trouble mucus like this and hits trouble, 
and you attack with Zidane, he's going to counter Horn, and then trouble status is fairly unique, but we can go on that later. Yep. Let's focus on Vivi here. Yep. So um, right now Zidane's been hitting about 500-ish damage on his things, and you'll see Vivi did a nice 1368 there, which is fantastic. Um, I think this boss has something like 3500 health, and depending on damage rolls, you can either kill him outright with... Um, three blizzards from BV, which I think should be the case because Mel's BV is very beefy at the moment. Um, your lower level though, you can also do Lancer with Freya. She's not the strongest character by any means, but she has an attack Lancer that will do about two or three hundred damage that will not get countered, so it'll just fill in the gaps of uh, that damage needed. And once you're at a certain part of the run, um, that lion will counter with a sandstorm. Let's uh, see those sandstorms in the chat. Do, do, do. Which will put your, <laughs> put your health to anywhere from 1 to 10 HP. Not too scary, but something that I look forward to. And it's uh, a very safe one, as opposed to being able to get killed by Fire Aura Trouble Mucus. Quick work of that fight for Mel as ceases taking a bit of a sandstorm break and finishing off the fight as well, not too far behind. Um, because of the fact that Cease made it through the dungeon without any encounters, there's a couple different options of what you can do. You can just continue on as normal and just say, hey, I got through without encounters and not risk anything else. Or you can do a little cheeky strat where you pick up an extra treasure chest, which will save, I think it's 18 to 20 seconds if you pick it up. The problem is you have a chance of getting an encounter when you do that. You are running that bit of a risk, so it's a risk-reward type of thing. But since you made it through without any encounters whatsoever, you still kind of want that encounter. So you're, you're happy either way. Mel's coming up on everyone's favorite uh, break of the run, the rat dance. A little cutscene of uh, Freya jamming out and dancing mm -hmm. after beating an evil bug. <laughs> I think they're friends with. I think it's uh, their buddy, Antlion. I don't know. I think he's just a little mad. I think Gizamaluk is also a monster that they actually like. Yeah. Yeah, Gant, This is Gant, where. Uh, yeah. Y'all uh, spam our rat jams in chat. If uh, <laughs> you're in a jam. FF9 runner, you have to have rat jam enabled just for this cutscene, obviously. But um, yeah, Antlion is like a guardian of Clara, so. It's just getting upset from, I believe, the... It's been a while since I've actually, like, <laughs> remember the lore for this, but... I believe Antlion's just, like, uh, disturbed by something. And so he's going and going crazy. Yeah, I think the, uh, the mist that has taken over the continent is causing some shenanigans with everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's caused a couple of... Uh, enemies to go a little bit, or a couple of friends to go a little crazy, and actually happens to some characters in the game as well. Mm -hmm. Let's see the fire on, on Amart. Okay. Not great. But uh, going back to the trouble status, it's, I believe, the only Final Fantasy that has trouble status is FF9. It's, I don't think it's ever used again. Um, so whenever a character is inflicted with uh, trouble and they're hit with a single target attack, I believe it has to be physical, it then harms the rest of the party in like an AoE attack as well as the character again. So let's say Freya did a physical attack right now while she was troubled and he counterhorned and hit her. While they were all sandstormed to low HP, your party would just wipe. Yeah, I believe it's an entirely unique to FF9, and it's not something that we run into too often in uh, the run, thankfully, but there are a couple of situations where you need to be aware of it, so it's good to know how it works. You have a couple of runners who play this game and they'll say, wait, that's how I... I, I didn't know Trouble did that. Yeah. So it's, it's not extremely well explained like a couple of mm -hmm. other things in this game, but it's one that's worth knowing. And it does persist, persist after battle, too. Some, some status effects yes. do, some don't, but trouble is one that sticks around, so you want to try and clear that later on, especially in disc 3.
Yeah, unfortunately, Amar just got blessed with encounters in Clara. Meanwhile, Cease had yep. zero. Typical FF9 things. It's kind of FF9 for you. Let's hope uh, Amar gets a few lucky areas later in the game and can make up a lot of time. This is not something where if you are down by two minutes early on, you are not going to win. This can mm -hmm. all change at the drop of a hat. Correct, yeah. T uh, TQ and Chad was able to um, clarify the uh, single target physical attack specifically. But you can also um, trigger it by doing self attack too, like a yes. suicide, which <laughs> there's a famous clip of, a pre of another runner <laughs> that's done that in a run before. <laughs> but it's so easy to make a mistake in this run that you wouldn't realize you're doing and just end your run. Yes, Death Guys is the equalizer of everything. But we'll see. I have a feeling everyone's going to get through this flawlessly. Yeah. I'd also like to point out that there is an uh, option here. You can select to not believe your, uh, the queen with, uh, while speaking as Dagger. And if you're fast enough, you have to be mashing incredibly fast and do the second option. And it saves how many frames, Rev? Oh, sorry, he stepped away. Um, <laughs> sorry, I stepped away for one second. I think it's 26 <laughs> frames. 26 frames, yeah. <laughs> so if you're mashing and then you just kind of mash uh, cancel to select the section, second option, you can try and save those precious frames. Otherwise, if you take your time to select it, you're not going to be saving anything. Just little things like that, and just to try to optimize and shave off little bits of time here and there. Or you can just you know, keep mashing and not worry about it. Yes, so many frames. All the frames. Yeah, if you're crazy enough to be playing FF9 as a speedrun, you might as well go for those half a second time saves. Why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now that the dust has cleared around Clara, the the whirlwind that had one protect, once protected it is now open for intruders. But our party here is going to be heading down the trunk. As we do a quick menu for Freya on Mel's uh, Mel stream, since she was able to buy the partisan, she can do the do the menu now. However, Cease and Amart will need to make a little detour in the Clara Inn to purchase it from the Burmusian Dan, who is a refuge. Yep, he's one that you saved in the middle of Burmusia, so he shows up here and is so grateful he sells you his items. Yep, very nice. What a guy. Just in time for a forced encounter. A gauntlet of sorts um, mm -hmm. for the most part we don't have a lot of random encounters that we fight but there are a lot of forced encounters and we're going to get a lot of experience from those to get to a decently high level but for the most part we just want to get everything over as fast as possible but since we're here and since we can't run away from these we might as well get the experience and AP from them I mentioned briefly, when we're coming up the Clara tree, we actually do want to take one encounter just to get everyone a little bit higher leveled here. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason for that is we want Zidane to be able to do enough damage to these uh, guards without them escaping, as you just saw with Mel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we need level 7 or 9 from Zidane, I can't remember. I think it's 9, yeah. 8 or 9. Now, once you get to that level, you can no longer under-damage them. So, the way to deal with that is to do a physical attack with Vivi then do a physical attack with Zidane, but unfortunately Vivi died there. Yeah, just a little pepper from Vivi and then a follow-up with Zidane should finish, but uh, the thing about a guard escaping is you don't lose that on the, the AP, which is the important part. Uh, you do lose that on the experience. Uh, however, if both guards escape, then you lose both the Everything. experience and the AP, so you get nothing, which is bad, <laughs> but... Um, and uh, Cease opted to go for the extra greens and mm -hmm. got punished for it, as is tradition. As is tradition, yep. Always worth it, though.
So the, uh, the guards here only have, I believe, just the two moves. They only have attack, like a basic attack, and a blizzara, which is slow. Um, so we just wanted to see them either take no turns, which is great, or just a little quick basic attack. If they do get a turn. Yeah. Every fight you have a random starting ATB, and we're always staring at that as soon as the screen loads, hoping for some very filled green bars, but... Nine times out of ten, you just don't have great ATB, and there's nothing you can do other than wait for the attacks, see who they hit, and deal with it accordingly. So for Mel, Z Zidane is above that threshold where he is guaranteed to one-shot the enemy, so he no she no longer needs to hit with Vivi to get through each turn. Now we just kind of uh, have Zidane and Freya just... Quick attack, quick attack, as much as possible. ATB wait if possible as well, if the turns align with either Zidane, with Zidane. But uh, we can cast uh, Blizzara to finish a, a single target off with Vivi with Blizzara. However, that's slow. Um, we typically really do that if Vivi gets a preempt and the other two are slow, and we know we're going to lose a turn. Because we're just essentially going to be seeing uh, most likely a Blizzara anyway, so might as well be from ourselves. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, this than that going through the runner's minds in every fight, and there's some circumstances where you can save two seconds if you are very on top of things and very aware of what can happen. So, again, those minor time saves that you think, I don't know how I could possibly save half an hour on my run to compete with world record, those <laughs> yeah, no add kidding. up. The seconds become minutes. Neymar's going for the greens as well. Ever wow, punished? Let's see. No, no punished. Wow. This is a karma second. for the rough era entry. Well, he decimated half of the Clara encounters anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, there's nothing left to fight. <laughs> there's nothing left in Clara to run into. Yeah. But That um, will save him about 18 seconds later on. Um, we'll uh, point that out when we get there. Quick little attack from Mel and Shuyin. Now the black mages are starting to show up. These are the type B, if I remember correctly. We've been fighting type, type B, A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these ones are not really more threatening. The problem is if they get an attack off, it's I think it's guaranteed that's going to be a spell. It's going to waste mm -hmm. time. So we really yeah. want good ATBs here to just finish them before they're guaranteed eight to nine second time loss. Mm -hmm. So every time Mel is going into a fight, she's holding ATB to see which um, guards have their turns ready, who's going to likely go next, what she should kill off mm. with who, and she's kind of weighing that all very, very quickly. Love to see a nice Zidane miss. miss that leads to a Blizzara, which leads to trouble. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the way the run goes sometimes. Yep. You just roll with the punches in the FF9 run. <laughs> you just see that miss and you go, well. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as a perfect run, so mm -hmm. you have to have a little bit of humor to get through it all, I think. Oh, Cease had a perfect ATB almost going into that single Black Mage fight, but Black Mage had more perfect ATB. Of course. Of course. Why wouldn't it? Yeah, as we mentioned, as Rev mentioned before, with the differing ATBs, that that can really like swing how much time you're going to lose or save uh, for this whole invasion. Because there's several fights back to back to back to back to back, and the enemy going first, you going first, it's just going to be a wild swing of uh, RNG. Through yeah, I think it's eight fights if I'm kind of correct, seven or eight, something oh, like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I don't know if I've ever counted. Three on the way I down. Think. Three at the first screen, two after that for the decisions, I think. So I think it's Possibly, eight total. Yeah. Something, Something like that. Like um, and so you can really imagine how second time loss or save in each fight, they just add up so fast here. And it's, you, know, you can have a perfectly executed run, but no matter what you do, you can just lose two minutes out of nowhere. <laughs> But yeah, all things considered, it's still a close run. Like, uh, everyone's still within the same story beat, so <laughs> it's still anyone's game, it's anyone's honestly. Game, yeah. Anything can change. 
anything can happen. Even a March with his blue text boxes could win. <laughs> so the so, uh, oh, go ahead. I was, I was just going to talk about the uh, decision tree at this part of the yeah. run. Um, it's very important. Uh, there's a little mini game you could call it at this part of the run where. If you took the tour, I think, gives you clues as to what the safer routes are, I believe is how it works. Yep. I'm not quite sure if that's entirely true, but um, you'll run into some dialogue boxes at each uh, area that you go to, and someone will ask you which direction they should go to next. And there's a certain set of inputs we want to do to either avoid battles entirely or get the most helpful amount of enemies within the battle, whether that's you want extra because you need the AP and experience or you want fewer because you're good. So you want to pick the second option on the first uh, text box. You want to pick the first option on the second one. And then the third one is varying depending on what you're lacking or if you're not lacking at all. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit of, yeah, as you mentioned, the, the backup strats of, oh, well, I didn't get my encounter. Uh, which option do I pick to try and make it up? So there's always backups to every uh, scenario. You might have seen on Mel's screen, she just uh, knocked Vivi off with her her own attack. And you might think that's a weird decision, but we need um, a little extra experience for Zane and Freyda. And we also need him at uh, critical HP. Yep. Yeah. So much, like the, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, much like the protect girl strat, the end of disc one on Beatrix, uh, Freya now has an ability called cover which um, works in a similar fashion, except it's not based on a party member gender. It's just she will cover for anyone who is in critical, or is it below 50%? I health? think it's a, it's either 1-6 or 1-8. I have to have to check, okay. but it's, it's pretty low. I think 1-6 yeah. would be critical health, so mm-hmm. anything yellow. Yeah. Um, so we did that earlier in disc one, so Freya could survive and Zidane had a better chance of absorbing the lightning. Uh, at this part of the run, Freya has the lightning absorption on. And we also want Vivi around because he's dealing some good damage. Freya is now dealing good damage too because we got a weapon upgrade for her finally. So everyone at this point can do pretty much the same amount of damage, but Vivi's still a little bit of a head, a bit of a head start on everyone else because of his um, accessory that he just picked up. Mel made it through the invasion and heading into a little bit of a cutscene with Sir Fratley. Who, uh, we saw a little bit of a cutscene earlier in Bromesia, a little flashback scene with Freya. He's everybody's favorite little rat boy. Maybe, I guess, if you're a, a puck, a puck stand. I was going to say, I'm partial <laughs> to puck, but uh, at least a close second. Maybe yeah. third, other than. Yeah. Actually, Bermesia Dan's pretty great, and uh, the dancers are great, and you know. True, yeah. Okay, so no one likes Fratley. Eh? Let's just go there. Oh gosh, I think there's <laughs> quite a few people who like Fratley. I know. <laughs> but uh, he's one of those ones on the list that if there was uh, an expansion or a mm-hmm. sequel, he's everyone's kind of target of. I wish we had him as a playable character or a fleshed out story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, unfortunately, he has an amnesia and he doesn't quite remember Freya or his real purpose and he just kind of goes off instinct to kind of protect this place and then he just kind of pieces out for the rest of the game yeah, he's got uh, one of the bittersweet stories in this game this is a very touching game in a lot of ways and he has a bit of redemption at the end but you know not nothing's perfect in life so mm-hmm. it's, it's beautiful in a way and mm-hmm. sad in some others Cease just finished up uh, their Clayer invasion. Amart's almost done. I think that was the last fight for Amart. No, one more. One more, yep. So our old friend Beatrix is coming back. And oh boy. like last time, we can actually end the fight through damage as opposed to waiting 10 turns. You can wait the 10 turns out, but at that stage where we can kill her in... Uh, Three of her turns, give or take, which would, mm-hmm. if we were sitting there doing nothing, would equate to, I think, like six or seven. So it's actually faster just to deal the damage. Yeah, it's at this point, we have uh, a lot better equipment that we can just try and burst her down as soon as possible. And another thing to note, if you do the right inputs when you're going up the tree to save the townspeople, they will be in this church. 
um, at the end of it all before the Beatrix fight, and you can talk to them to get an individual item, depending on who you saved. And we end up talking to four of them, three or four uh, or five, five of them to get their them, items. Yeah. Yep. Um, I don't think anything's mandatory, but you really do want to get everything that they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have like uh, ethers, opinions, uh, two. Uh, Tetra Master cards, which are uh, Tetra Master, you say? <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that eventually, I think. And then there's an elixir, I believe. But uh, just some stuff to have uh, for the future, as well as just for Gil and uh, safety, in, in a sense. But yeah, for Beatrix too. Uh, basically, we're going to be trying casting Blazaros with Vivi. Uh, he should be covered with Freya um, since he's in critical HP. And as long as the Freya is safe, then down we can she have goes. Them attack. <laughs> yeah, down she goes, of course. But yeah, we're going to be having Vivi doing the Blizzaras um, as much as possible. Uh, she will cast Cure once uh, she has a turn ready at below 50 HP. So if you can try and push her to Cure skip, uh, we try to do that as, as best as possible. But of course, it's kind of depending on the turns. Yeah, it depends on the turn order, the type of attack she does, your ATBs. It's up to a lot. So if you're lucky and you do it right and you get the right turn order, you can skip. I think it's something in the area of four attacks total, mm -hmm. which saves, oh, 10 to 12 seconds. Yeah, uh, it, it's It can't be guaranteed in a fight. You can sit there and wait for it to line up perfectly, but... Yeah, might as well uh, just... Sometimes push. you just go. Mm-hmm. I don't think Mela's going to get it. She got in a very unfortunate shock at the beginning and then got uh, hit with a quick attack. So I think her ATBs are off, but let's see. Yeah, she's going to get the cure uh, here. Or just yeah. the cure here, which mm -hmm. only cures for, I think, 900-ish, 750-something. So it's nothing that we can't deal with. It's just a small waste of time. Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, it can just be applied to all this run. <laughs> yep, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, this game is really easy if you're just lucky. Yeah, just get lucky. Just be the Brutals and get lucky. Let's see if uh, Cease can land the air skip. Another thing to mention, just kind of like uh, Ralvu, uh, Ralvu Raba, uh, you can over damage uh, past the kill threshold on Beatrix um, because she kind of has like the last word, so to speak. She wants to hit everyone in one HP, so you can actually over damage. So it's important to kind of count your uh, count out your damage points and make sure that you're within the damage threshold. And you don't over damage and over commit turns. Just a waste of time. I think, I think Cease did get it. I think this should do it. I... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, this is another one you do want to be uh, doing calculator math on just to make sure you're at the right range. Oh, yeah. Almost. Completely messed up is where she is in the fight. I don't think she will now. I'm... Jeez, I have yeah, a feeling she's... she also didn't ether VV, which can be a little dangerous. No, okay. Oh, she got it. You get the cure us, or you did get the cure skip. I'm... It's one of those, it's a very tricky fight, and you have to really understand the ATBs well to uh, know what's going on. So these runners are very good at this situation, and they know a lot more than... Uh, I do in this spot, so always trust them. So yeah, Cease and Mel finished up Beatrix 2. Amart's on his way. And Mel's coming up on some very fun little mini games, so we'll Oh yeah. We'll all be judging very, very mm -hmm. intently. No pressure, no pressure. <laughs> Also, uh, time to see if Amart's gonna live up to his uh, Mimi words of hinting at something. I, I didn't see was... any. Uh, I didn't see any poison like poison gear that he was picking hmm. up. So I don't know. Yeah, this is the part of the run where you can start branching off in routes. Uh, there's not a whole lot of options you have early on in disc one and the start of disc two to change things up. You're kind of just going in a straight line and picking up the obvious things. You can't really have a whole different route planned, but coming up on some interesting choices where some runners tend to do different things depending on what they prefer, what they think is fastest, what they're comfortable with. So we might don't think we're going to see too much variation here, but you never know. So Amar is plugging along on his fight. Let's see if he can get the cure skip here. Yeah, the shock, unfortunately. Yeah, the shock is the one ability that you just can't survive in this run. Mm -hmm. um, you just don't have the amount of health that you need. 
Yeah, it's just a, such a high damage threshold that, yeah, you just don't have the HP at this low level. Yeah. As we see uh, Clara demolished on uh, these other two streams. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Freya's just getting... Yeah, she's here. getting beaten down, so... Yep, there's the Hopefully not going to get the cure skip here. Yep. But yeah, that's just unlucky. You need to be uh, prepared just in case the stars do align, but mm -hmm. prepared when they don't. So if anybody's familiar with the Tantarian route, um, this ship, the Red Rose that you're on, is the last save point before you are able to fight Tantarian, at least in Disc 2. So uh, anybody that's familiar with it, it's just like, this is your last save point, and you have to go through the cutscenes and the guard skip with Steiner and all that stuff until you get up to that point again to fight Tantarian for a second round if you wipe to it. Uh, is Bay 2 like Little Ralph? Yep. Uh, where you can do extra unnecessary turns. Yep, that's that's exactly right. Um, you can over damage and just kind of sit there wailing on her, even though her sort of end of battle phase is already triggered. So yeah, um, you got to use, got to pull out the calculator and make sure you're counting up the damage. Make sure you're doing only the necessary amount for uh, committing your turns. Yeah, it's it's a skill you'll get. Uh better at as you go along. It can be tricky to keep track of everything going on in a fight and thinking of all the different possibilities while also keeping track of damage and trying to enter the numbers in the calculator and you'll ask your chat, wait, what did Steiner hit for there? And it, it gets a little uh, confusing to an extent, but it's a nice skill to develop. Yep. As we say bye-bye to Clara for Amart as well. Oh, didn't come to me. Goodbye, Clara. We didn't miss you all that much. <laughs> you yeah. were mean to Amart. Amart yeah. happened to see it go. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we have a guard sip coming up. Let's talk about that. Or do you want to talk about oh, yeah. Cage Swing first? Yeah, Cage Swing is uh, coming up first for Mel. It's a, it's a fun little mini game that people like to ignore because it's 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 not the most fun mini game in the world. All you're doing is hitting left and right and left and right and trying to get to the right side of the screen with enough speed to crash on the other side and land. Um, there are a couple ways to save just a little bit of time with some not frame perfect inputs, but just some very precise inputs. So you want to go left four times, then right four times, then left four times, then right four times. It's a very specific pattern that we're looking to see here. So let's see if Mel can get the fast pattern. There you go. 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 I think she's a little bit off. I don't think she's going to be getting it, unfortunately. Mm. I did uh, put a lot of hours into this mini game and made a very brief tutorial for it, so I, I can I know a lot of the benchmarks to be looking for. Um, mm -hmm. Red unfortunately, the she for hours, <laughs> hours and hours and hours. So unfortunately, she didn't land in. The optimal number of uh, cage swings, but all in all, she lost, I think, seven seconds by getting in an extra turn. Now she's on to guard skip. Let's see. Oh, oh double. Oh, so good. So very rarely go. in this game do you actually get to see the random encounters. I guess they don't count as random encounters, but yeah. uh, if you were to run into those guards which come right at you, you will get into a fight with them, and yep. it's just like a random encounter where you're at least losing 25 35 seconds and at worst if you're under leveled dying uh you cannot flee mm -hmm. from them so you have to either kill them or hope for a quick flee and if you have an under leveled steiner you are in serious danger yeah yeah if you don't get any money encounters okay it looks like seize was just a hair off on the uh quick cage oh. we'll have to do left and right of shame yeah but... just a little bit more but uh yeah we'll as we mentioned before Having a low-level Steiner, this is where it's the scariest part because that also means you're probably you're most likely going to have a low-level Marcus as well. And yes. The guards will just Blazara both, and you're just like, well, um, okay. <laughs> and you can't flee. Guard one down and guard two. Oh, just barely caught Steiner. Just caught barely. So unfortunately, Cease is going to have to be dealing with one of the guards. We'll be totally fine because of the extra beefiness for both uh, Steiner and Marcus here. Yep. Yeah. 
she should be yeah, fine. Anything over, anything over like 160 health, you're you're very safe for the most part. Unless you get caught by two and get very unlucky, but I'm not too worried about this one. Swag. Thing to keep in mind is the other guard that did not touch Cease is right behind her, so you yeah. can't uh, rest after you've gotten through. They will never catch up to you as long as you are still moving, but if you drop the controller for a second and shake your hands off, you will get caught by the second one, so keep moving, Cease. Also, I think there's got to be some sort of like uh, input recognition delay, too, because I think the guards get a like a frame head start or something like that. Cause that there's I wouldn't no... be surprised, yeah. Yeah, where the guards are like a step away, but then they still get you even though. Yeah, they can overlap each other and and just completely catch you even if you're doing everything right. So, and the uh, the opening positions for the guards is completely random, and there are some patterns of skipping them that are harder than others. Um, it is in theory possible to skip them every time. You can do some crazy maneuvering and uh, movement techniques to get around them, but. Unless you have practiced it a lot, it's very difficult to do. You can do like these little loop-de-loops. You can just run around in circles if you're good enough, but it is yep. difficult to do. <laughs> it's also very fun to watch someone who is really good at it just make short work of them. Even when you're like, there's no way they're going to get through this one. Oh, okay. Well, they're just spinning around in circles and they're gone. Yep. See if uh, Amart can do me proud and get the fast cage. Oh, nope. He's already uh, doing his own route here. So Godspeed to you, Amart. So, uh, yeah, Mel picked up the Ice Brand, which is the part of this little rotation platform. Um, there's two chests up there. One contains a tent, which we're going to be selling. Um, and the other one is the Ice Brand, which uh, is going to start uh, Steiner's uh, damage stonks going up, because he's going to be doing a lot of damage with that sword. Yeah, early on in the run, Zidane gets the most weapons and is kind of the main damage dealer of the party. But Steiner, towards the end of the game, is basically... Um, your physical attack throughout the game. So whenever he gets a new weapon, he gets really, really strong. So at this part of the run, he gets the Ice Brand, which will be dealing almost three times as much as any other member. Mel pointed out, Cease did not go for Tant Strats. It's a, it's a crying shame. We are three Petro runners in this, uh, this race, which is the way it should be, let's be real. Oh, wow. Uh, Amart got <laughs> a one guard, unfortunately, and there's a second. Yeah, I've got caught by the second guard. Well, we, there's still Amart could do whatever he wants. He could go for Tan right here, and you know maybe we see it. Oh, getting hit with the meteor. I'm not quite sure what happened there. The ATB uh, might not lined up, or she might have missed. BB missed. Yeah, missed the yeah. Thorn or Zorn. I mean, sorry. Um, Zorn and Thorn. This fight is very simple. Basically, they just give each other power, and all you have to do is physical attack them to take that power away. And it should end in uh, no time at all when they get no attacks off. But uh, when it powers up the lower HP one that we're not attacking, you just hit him with VV and de deal 10 damage and his power will go away. But VV can, of course, miss. And then you just have to wait out the not life-threatening, but very, very slow attack. Yeah, you can also get lucky and just do a full round of attacks um, and try and just burst them down. But it's better yep. to just... With Steiner. Um, yeah, at their high levels, they might be able to do it. And we can uh, point out the damage rolls when Cease gets there. We were glossing over it, focusing on Amart. But let's take a look at Cease doing the Zorn and Thorn fight while Mel works her way up to the next boss. Just get a crit with Steiner, too. <laughs> yep. And since we can crit with Steiner, um, and he's doing so much damage, a crit is double damage. And he's already doing three times more damage than anyone else. So that's, that's six times the normal hit if you're counting it. So, so. A crit with Steiner ends this fight in one turn, and you'll love to see it, but we don't count on those. So Cease is off, and there's 1,675 damage with Steiner's hit. And you will see our old friend Paul hit for 630, and our other friend Blart hit for another 625, most likely. 45. Yeah. Fortunate, but... I do love our team of Maul, Paul, Rome, Blart. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely what Cease was going for. Amart. Amart is splitting the screen, going to Tant. What is he doing? Oh, he's going to go. <gasps> oh. He's doing it. Oh, Amart, you 
the there little... was the uh, optional boss there known as Tantarian, which is a completely separate route. It takes about four minutes to fight, but you get auto haste, which is a very, very fast ability. Yeah. Um, so you spend four minutes to get the ability and you hope you make that time up or in theory save more time. It doesn't quite work out, unfortunately. I think you end up losing more time fighting than you do saving. It makes it safer in a lot of spots, though. But Amor was rude and paid Tanta visit and then completely left, so... But yeah, he just took a little detour in the library and gained some knowledge. Become five head. Amor's clearly more experienced now. He's uh, knows exactly what's going to happen. He can see the future at this point, so... Well, we saw Mel and we're seeing Cease do it now. We're going to do a safety save. Um... Not particularly for the first boss we're going to be fighting, which is going to be the third round of Beatrix, but it's the fights after that with these little doggos that... Yep, some of the forced encounters are not necessarily guaranteed to be survived. Right. So, let's fight with Beatrix 3. Um, again, we do have the damage to uh, defeat her before her turns are over, so we're going to be doing that. Since we have more party members, there's a lot more variance in this one. Ideally, you just want to keep attacking with Steiner, and right. doing some physical attacks with Zidane and Freya. You can attack with Vivi. It's a bit slower and not necessarily as strong, but what we're looking for here is hopefully Beatrix leaves Steiner alone. Yep. And uh, I've also seen some runners uh, just do a basic attack with Vivi just to bleed uh, ATB for yep. Beatrix so she doesn't um, queue up Kira, which is possible. Oh, wow, just... Much like the cure in the last fight, uh, she can do Kira, which heals a bit more. Yeah. Mel's choosing a bit of a scary strat, choosing yeah. not to pick up. Um, I think she forgot to heal Freya. because of the meteorites, so uh, Freya yeah, went down I... basic attack. Yeah, that's also possible. We're holding our breath a little bit on this fight. Yeah. She kind of scary with a couple Yeah, of this is not ideal. Hopefully she gets this phoenix down in in time. Yeah. Yeah, okay. As long as... Uh, this should be the Cura here, so she should be okay. Yeah, she should be fine, but... Yeah. Oof, yeah. A little, little scary, but... It's scary, but it's fine. It's and fine. Mark's got a really quick uh, double attack with Steiner on the little, nice. little clowns. So he's on his way. Yeah. Yeah, Mel's making the race more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> a true showman at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah, made it through. This is the last time we see our friend Beatrix as an enemy. She says, leave this kingdom and never come back. And then 10 seconds later, she says, oh, okay, I'll join you guys. I'm your friends. <laughs> yeah, you know what? <laughs> Actually, I think you were right. Never step into this land again. Actually, just kidding. I'm going with you. <laughs> Yeah, we're going to be using uh, Beatrix as much as possible for these upcoming fights. Yep. But... Yeah, she's a lot of she's a fan favorite uh, for side characters because we do get to control her for a bit, and she's very, very powerful. And we're going to be taking advantage of that uh, every chance we get. She's got that girl boss energy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, never step in this land again together. <laughs> Yeah, so we're coming up on another uh, kind of gauntlet of regular fights, we call them. They're not um, uh, they're not uh, boss fights by any means, but they, uh, they're forced encounters that we can't escape from, and we have to do our best to deal with them. So there's a set amount of damage each character does, and we're kind of using a little uh, strat work to figure out who should hit who when and deal with them as quick as possible. Things get interesting though after the first round of fights when it's uh, just Freya and Beatrix on their own. Yeah, especially we'll talk about that when we get there. Yeah, we'll talk about that. See how well. Yeah, see, it's just <laughs> up Beatrix three. Amart's on his way to start that fight. But yeah, the little doggos can be a little nightmare for some people because they can yeah. just instantly sleep Beatrix, who's going to be our our damage dealer for that little set, that little team there. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. And with this route, um, unlike the uh, the previous route where, with MPU, where Freya would have the weaker weapon, uh, we can't attack Beatrix to wake her up. We would just end up killing her. So if she falls asleep, well, we just have to hope she wakes up. 
There we go. Nice. That's a scary. So one. This one is is not too scary, just because there's only one of them. But there's going to be another one coming up where there are two of them, and that can get that can get dangerous. And a little quick menu here. We're going to take the power belt off of Steiner because this little escapade here is going to be the last we're going to see of him uh, until disc three. So we're going to strip off the power belt and give that to Zidane, who's going to be finishing out the rest of the second disc. So we can start learning MP attack and get that strength upgrades and stuff. But Steiner will still be hitting pretty hard, be able to one-shot these uh, black mages, these Type C who have the staffs now. Yes, they're uh, much more scary than other ones, not really. <laughs> yeah, not by much. Yeah. They can still be pretty scary, honestly. They can all three get turns and knock out like your entire party and you're sitting there going, uh, <laughs> uh. But of course, yeah, you, uh, you want to <laughs> Sorry, I'm having some no issues. Give me one second. Okay. Yeah, of course we see uh, Steiner getting auto like, oh, a crit from Zidane. Wow. Um, we see the the priority attack on Steiner. <laughs> I swear, there's like some sort of unwritten code in FF9 where Beatrix will focus Steiner in this fight, but there's nothing to confirm it. So <laughs> it's just a little yep, bit of all we want is for her to leave him alone, but she just will not. Yep, just doesn't. She refuses. Now we see cover in action, because uh, Steiner's in crit HP. Able to tank that. Renuary confirmed it's a myth. Dang. Yeah, we all we all know it to be true, even if it's not actually true. Yeah, uh, we're able to finish up the Beatrix 3. We we'll see little doggos on Mel's. On Mel's screen. Not too bad here, because we have uh, several ways we can take these guys out. Just use a little combo attack. While Cease is not the Black Mage uh, encounter. Ideally, we want Steiner alive uh, if he didn't survive the Black Mage or the Black Waltz 3 2 encounter, uh, so we can learn Bird Killer. Uh, but if he survived that fight, then you're good on the AP, but he still needs a little bit of the XP and things. It's always good to get the experience and AP that you're expecting, so we don't have to deviate too hard, but it's always a backup just in case. Yep. As we saw with um, ML screen, and we're going to see soon with Cease screen, um, Steiner's going to break away from the party and go join up with Freya and Beatrix to help support them. And that's going to be the last little bits of fights we see with him for the disc. It's some time, yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, he's very, very strong right now, and we immediately lose him. Yep, unfortunately. But we still have Zidane, still a beefy boy. Easy come, easy go. It's kind of a twofold problem because we end up losing Steiner for these forced fights with uh, Zidane, Dagger, and Vivi. And we also don't quite have him yet for this current fight that Mel is about to face right. with these two doggies. So, yeah. really hoping to avoid Tongue, which puts your characters to sleep. And uh, things can go south, which is why we saved. It's not super likely, but yep. there's the yeah. This is the scary one. So yeah, we we'll just hope for to... good ATB on Beatrix, and of course she had awful ATB. So let's hope for nice attacks. 
Okay. Rush is okay. fine. And another one is a tongue. So Mel's got some options here. She can uh, attack Beatrix with Freya, which usually kills her. So not going to be doing that. And that. we got a sleepy, obviously. But we're in danger here. Thankfully, they're all high level and should be okay. So we're going to cross our fingers and wait for... She Beatrix to up wake there. up. Okay, she just woke up and got the attack off. Okay. That's okay, that was good. That was a good outcome for a double sleep. <laughs> it can be real bad if they spam thunder and keep licking and it's uh you can die pretty easily there. Nightmare dog. It's still scary in this next fight. We get another two, but thankfully um Diner joins the fray, so we get a couple more options in our tool belt if that happens. Mm -hmm. It's a little, little scary, but uh, we're through it. We're through the worst for Mel. Let's hope uh, season A March. Don't even have to worry about that. But yeah, with the sleep condition uh, status effect, uh, physical attacks will wake up the the party member. But magic spells do not. So if they decide to just sleep you and just go thunder, 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 and just. <laughs> snoozing then you're just kind of like well cool game <laughs> and mel is through the second fight with no issues i think um beatrix has the perfect amount of mp and that's based off of i think it's zidane's level Ray. it's someone's freya's level okay mm -hmm. so uh she'll have a certain starting level that's based off of your characters actually all of your characters will have um certain starting stats based off of uh, Blank and Marcus and Cinna and Freya and Zidane for someone uh, affects another person starting stat. So we want to make sure to take as much experience on Freya as possible so that Beatrix starts that fight with 64 MP so she can do Klim Hazard twice, which is 32 each. We see Cease in that double doggo fight. See, yep, cool. Made it. Easy. Gonna help uh, catch her up to Mel. Yep. We see Amart leading the party. Bye, Steiner. Mel is coming up to her next boss. Uh, that cute little snake we fought below Trino. He uh, went and called his dad, and his dad is very, very mad at us. <laughs> yep. All Papa Rally. Yep. It's actually an easier fight, all things considered, because uh, he has a couple of gimmicks to him. Uh, mostly, he can't kill us. The only annoying thing he can do is cast mini on our party. Um, it's probably the only time in the run we will be seeing that. Uh, it's not guaranteed to happen, but we are hoping if he does it, he shrinks down Princess Karakarn and not uh, mm -hmm. Edie or our uh, friend Shui in here. So, see how the fight goes, and normally it's pretty uneventful, but even if he does shrink down a party member, we can just toss a remedy to cure it. It's just a slight bit of time loss, but nothing too scary. That cute pink snake called his dad with an even longer tail and even more spikes, and he's terrifying. Got a nice uh, innocent stab on uh, Dagger, which is great. Yeah, we just have uh, Vivi here casting spells, then we have Zidane finish, and just like that. And yeah, again, we don't need uh, Dagger's AP for anything like that. And Amart looks like he's about to finish the scary fight. He's got great ATB in the second fight and is uh, making his way back up to the top. Mel's coming up to a nice little break of her own. She has to do a one small little area. I think it's a two two minute long cutscenes that she can stretch and get some water and get some food. Love to yep. see it. 
So at this point in the runs, the Dane should have flea learned um, for the Ralvu uh, Mago fight. You can some things runners have a uh, like maybe not learned how to do, but it's just something they can spot check real quick. As well, Ralvi's taking his turn. You can just pop in Zidane's menu and check and see if he has Flea Learn, because he shouldn't have any equipment that has Flea on it at the, um, for this fight. So if you see Flea there, you know that you have Flea. You don't have to equip a dagger to try and stop the rocks fights for the Ralvi Mago fight. And Cease just did that and noticed that she has Flea, so doesn't have to worry about that coming up. See if we see any mini characters for Cease. Any mini daggies? I know. I always like mini Vivi. He's so cute. Cute, but help on the run. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah. clean fight for Cease. Good. Something funny that can happen in this uh, that fight is it can cast Ultra Sound Wave, which is minis, which minis your character. Uh, you can also cast it again on that same character and unmute them, so it just cures it for you. <laughs> Very uh, it's bizarre. Rare. Yeah, it's weird that the spell cast again undoes the first one. <laughs> right, you yeah. love it. On Mel's screen, we have uh, two little bounty hunters that the queen is hiring to find the princess, and now she's kind of putting out this bulletin of dead or alive. I'm sure they will both be very integral characters with very fleshed out backstories that we'll be seeing a lot from this point in the run on. I'm sure, yeah. Surely not afterthoughts in any way, shape, or form. Let's see if we get any uh, mini friends for Amart here. Oh, ultrasound. Oh, we're getting some minis. Looks like that's on Zidane. Zidane, yep. We'll get a little mini Zidane over there. Yeah, we can cast Remedy. It's kind of annoying because the way this uh, this fight ends is with two Blizzaras from BV and then a regular attack from Zidane. Uh, we do the regular attack at the end because if you do it during the fight, he will counter by curling up and not doing much other than taking no damage. So you just have to wait for him to uncurl. So we attack with Zidane at the very end. So two Blizzaras and one Zidane attack will end the fight. So we do need uh, Zidane to be full size. I think mini... I don't, I don't know what exactly it does. Is it percent damage or is it only cap you at like 50 or something it's something crazy yeah it's pretty severe though i think magic is less severe i think it's only like quarter yeah 50 percent or it's, yeah it's it's still pretty we, bad it, it's less it's less less it is less than 100 percent. we don't want that <laughs> yeah amar got through no problem they are doing a great job of all these dangerous fights surviving and using some very good backup strats and quick thinking to get through this this is great so far I think uh, Amart popped into the menu and didn't see he had Flea Learned, unfortunately. So, yeah, I didn't look. Oh, he doesn't have Flea Learned, you said? Didn't have Flea Learned, I don't think. I think I just saw and just only saw Soul Blade in there. But even yeah, after you if you're I gonna say if you're very very uh, in tune, you can keep track of every encounter that you've gotten. But it's such a such a tough thing to track of yes i killed exactly this many encounters that gave this much ap so it's hard to keep track of what you've actually killed at this part of the run for all the small areas where you know oh, maybe i'll kill maybe i'll flee did i kill did i flee so any little trick we can take to get some knowledge is helpful as we see mel navigating pinnacle rocks and then gets caught oh. Yeah, so this little mini game uh, usually is the spot where you get your first summon of the game and you have to go around and finding your lightning buddy and solving his riddle and answering his story. Or you can go straight to the end if you know the answer. Or you can just say, I don't want to deal with you right now and leave without getting the summon because we're never going to summon anyways because we're so slow. But eh, maybe we will. Yeah, maybe. We'll it's see. not with uh, with, with that here. Nope. You're not though. We might never summon this game. That'd be really nice. <laughs> Yeah, summons are... Actually, no, I guess we have to. Anyways. Yeah, we, yeah we're gonna, but... Uh, <laughs> but, um... Yeah, for Dagger in particular, no. Uh, we don't pick up no. any... That for her, like, we don't pick up any gems or jewels or anything to equip on that. But... At least in yeah, the way that uh, summoning scales is by how many items you have in your inventory, depending on which summon it is, and we don't have the 
missions to get that many items to make it useful, first of all, and summons take forever in this game, so even if we did have the damage ability, it just might not be worth it. And so we see the the demolish the demolishing of Lindblum. The queen herself. He's been corrupted by the mist as well, and is no longer the nice queen she once was. He is, at this point, kind of the villain of the story, but I don't think it's actually her doing all the work. Uh, it's Carbuncle not used anymore, uh, so spoiler, like we are only going to be summoning Carbuncle <laughs> as our only summon through. Yes. Yeah, besides the fort, the other forced one, and uh, store for story reasons, but... Yeah, no, there's a uh, Carbuncle strat, which is very helpful. That's another big uh, routing point in the run is going to be on disc 3, where people change up who they bring to which place. There's a big decision to be made, but this current run, we will be summoning Carbuncle. Yeah, this is the big break for Mel here, because these FMVs are f fairly long, so it's a little bit of a, a mashing break, so you can get up stretch, uh, get some water, take a break, bathroom break if you need, if you're yeah. mashing. As you see, Atomos, or Atomos, however you want to pronounce it. Atomos. Um, consuming Lindblom. has uh, drastic complications and consequences for the world of Gaia, but not so much for us. It's just kind of annoying, and we have to go through Lindblom again as we uh, attempt to rebuild. This is our second time in Plot City, and it's just wonderful every time. Oh, yeah. Riveting. Yes. Brutals is uh, curled up on the couch with his tea, just loving this content right now. <laughs> Sipping. One of my favorite things to see uh, casual players do is they see that Ad Atomos or Atomos or whatever everyone pronounce it. Um, they see that in the cutscene, they're like, oh my gosh, you just demolished this entire city. <laughs> and you get it later on and you summon it against like some random enemies and it does like 30 damage. And you're like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, it just uh, only does gravity and gravity works a little bit strangely in this game and it's it's not that great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, back attack for Amart, unfortunately. No. Yeah. They'd have to equip the dagger too. Festival of the Hunt is getting its revenge. Mm -hmm. He's in no uh, danger of dying, but he is in danger of losing time. Yeah. I think everyone got a Pinnacle Rocks encounter, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Yeah, I think so. Unless she, she skipped one. I Mel think I saw her doing one. Mel did. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah she's, I... she's had the Zagnol. Yeah, I don't doubt this game was uh, mean to cease. That's uh, keeping in tradition. Yeah, as is tradition. But yeah, if you do the uh, Ramo little old man mini game, you just get a single Paradot, so you can summon him. Because uh, at this point, daggers and Picos for summons is more reasonable. Because when you first get her, <laughs> uh, her spell casting uh, and Picos for all of her summons, she knows a few of them, a handful of them, but they're like four yep. kind Picos and. You just don't have the MP to ever use them, but no. But now she has the ability to learn uh, some summons, and she can cast them at a reasonable rate. But we're just not going to bother. Yeah, okay, Mel's back in Lindblom, talking to old Regent Sid, who's still an Oglop. So he gives us some gill to go synthesize one thing. Very important to shop. Again, we uh, the most important thing we're looking out for is better weapons on everyone. So we're getting nice weapon upgrade for today, and so he's not going to be hitting basically for what Steiner was hitting for before. And he's also going to get a really annoying, but everyone's favorite ability is now unlocked with this weapon. So we'll be seeing that coming up. Oh, even if you hack the game to have the MP for the summons, they're still great out. Oh, interesting. I don't think I ever messed with it. I, didn't, I just saw that I was like too high. I'm like, eh, just not going to bother. <laughs> I know, that was always your uh, your hit list as a kid. Like, I'm going to grind Dagger out in disc one and get those summons. And you're like, eh, eh, nah. 
Because you can only really realistically do it uh, before Dolly, right? Uh, there or outside Trino, I think you can still do it on disc two. You're right. Yep. But. Nee. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so we make the Exploda. Um, for Zidane, the little new Thief Sword we're going to be using for some fights. But, um, yeah, now we have Dagger and Zidane kind of back together on their little adventure. One quick little detour before we're heading out to it's some people consider it the optional party member. It's uh, not optional, it's just a matter of when you get them in the run. You can get them as early as disc one before Giza Malug's Grotto, or you can get them as late as right now. And sadly, we have not figured out a great way to use them in disc one yet. Um, even under task circumstances, it's still just a little bit slower to pick them up in disc one. So we're going to wait until the very bitter end to get them. Yeah. Unfortunately. Maybe one no, day. We'll this one one character. Mel is underway again, finally out of Lindblom. It's always a great feeling. One more quick pit stop to grab a couple items and a couple bits of gear. The interesting thing is you saw her pick up uh, 10 softs, which cure petrify, but we're not going to be using them for that. Nah, not traditionally, at least. At least we hope we don't have to. Let's hope not. I don't. Is there actually a circumstance where you use them? Mm, the only instance would be the epitaphs, but I don't think they. No. Yeah. Because not in this yeah, like it, Well, I guess. It, yeah, I don't remember. Could never uh, to worry about ring petrify in this run. I don't think. Not typically. But we're gonna stutter it all the way to Q's Marsh because we know where to go. <laughs> Kind of to... The mystery now is we need to go to somewhere else, not of this continent, but no one really knows how to get there, but let's go to the weirdest place on the map to figure it out. Oof. A Martian encounter. hate to see it. Yep. Oh, Mel's ahead, so maybe she'll do a quick round of frog catching for us. Yeah, there we go. Get one frog. Pick up that ore. You need it. <laughs> Gosh, bro. Gosh, bro. Hey, Mark got the acquired the Exploda from Lindblom, and he's gonna go mash through some more pl uh, plot. One little frog he picked up, and we get our uh, sixth character, good old Quinna, aka Befbo. Befbo. <laughs> our good friend Befbo. There we go. Una is the blue mage of the party in uh, traditional keeping. The way you learn abilities is by eating enemies, which is also a strat that we used to do. You can learn some very interesting things, the most important of which is night, which we mentioned briefly in earlier fights where if you have two poisoned enemies, night can get cast. What it does is it casts um, sleep on the entire battlefield. But you can do an ability known as Insomniac, which means you're immune to sleep, and cast it on certain enemies or bosses that are not immune to sleep. And you can do some pretty interesting things with that. The problem is casting Knight takes, I think, 15 seconds just to cast, and you also have to bring Quinna along with you, who doesn't really have a whole lot of other uses, so it's uh, a bit outdated now, sadly. Knight's still really strong, though, because, like, um... Yep. Yeah. As, as you mentioned with the sleeping, like you can just sleep block bosses, which is really, really strong. Because even that 15 seconds, you're denying any round of turns, any round of like healing and reviving and things like that. But Yep, and if you wake someone up out of a sleep with a physical attack, it deals double damage and cease with the mythic Quina up there. Love to see it. Yep. 
So there are there there are pluses and minuses about everything. And like I said, in the end of it, it's not like one is vastly superior to anything else. So every route is viable in its own way. You can get a really good time with some outdated strats. If only there was someone on this call who's gotten an 849.22 <laughs> on a Tant Night Route or something. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be gross. We would not talk about that. Yeah, Cease here. Yeah, Cease did PB with these so-called outdated strats that is uh, just as good of a PB as the other two runners here. So it's very, very viable. Yeah, it's still viable for sure. As long as you know your route, you know your menus, you know what to do in each situation, and you have the, the blessings of RNG, anything can really work. Yeah, exactly. Except for Steth route, so no Blood Sword strats, unfortunately. Sorry, Tony. Oh, no. Just <laughs> kidding. Steth is going to get world record someday. We all know it. Martin opting to save before uh, Q's Marsh. Lonnie, yeah. on a null screen that the doors are going to lock and we're going to be chased by this giant mechanical creature. Uh, we don't need to fight this thing at all. Um, if we try to, it just kind of uh, becomes disabled for a second then just continues chasing you. There's no real way to defeat it. Um, all bosses, I think, require just running into it and just blasting it once and then keep running. But can't really kill this thing except, you know, just running. But Alrighty. Oh, I've returned yeah. for the best boss. Yeah, welcome back, Rudis. This is the one. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Lanny. Lanny. Because we get to roll the dice, you see. <laughs> oh, really? The biggest dice. It's a huge foam dice, and we're going to throw it straight at our head. <laughs> <laughs> How so? So we get to use the coveted ability Lucky Sevens. Which only works when Zidane's HP ends in a 7. And very intelligently, up until this, everything up until this point has accumulated in this moment. We have calculated it perfectly to have Zidane end in 7. It's not a coincidence or anything. <laughs> Allows us to cast Lucky 7s, which has equal parts chance to deal 7, 77, 777, or. The coveted 7,777. And with Lani's HP only at 5,500 ish, it knocks her out straight away. Wow. There are some really cool backups and other routes that you could take through the fight depending on what numbers you roll, mm -hmm. which makes this fight one of the more complicated fights in the yeah. game and definitely one of the more complicated fights in this team. So his ATB is pretty good. I'm not sure if Gigi's gonna get the turn, maybe, hopefully. Is it gonna matter? Oh. Triple sevens is good. Yeah, it's good. So I don't think we're gonna be able to buffer. Right, the cast is really good. <laughs> Dagger's gonna go down, that's absolutely normal. So we're gonna send Zidane in here. Oh, attack with Quinna. This actually works. Yeah, the attack still works. Yeah, yeah. So we're using Quinna here not to deal damage, but to buffer Zidane. So Zidane's going to be able to attack here. Uh, Lani's going to be pushed past the threshold. She's going to say, why aren't you giving up as she is? And then Zidane's actually going to get an extra turn here for free. Mm -hmm. I love this. It's so cool, man. It isn't always as cut and dry as that. It's it's about calculating your turn order. And putting 50% on at the right time. Unfortunately, the quick attack means that Zidane doesn't get a turn. Yeah. This water all kind of stings. But Zidane does have lethal damage here. How long he doesn't miss? As long as it doesn't miss. There we go. Dead on. Very nice fight. Well, yeah, Cease Very, is... very nice fight. But, um, yeah, Lonnie's speed is, I believe, 50. I think she's faster than a lot of Disc 4 bosses. So, <laughs> trying to get that, um, trying to get those inputs in fast enough. Uh, it's kind of difficult sometimes. Yeah. She, she has 50 speed is maximum in this game. And, ah! Uh... Triple sevens. That's good because I don't think Vivi's going to get his turn. Yep. All right, this should kill the dagger. Nice cast. If she quick attacks here, it can really scuffer this plan, so the cast is always welcome. 
Oh, don't do it again. <laughs> oh? It's gonna say. <laughs> oh, that's the VV. It's a little bit early, I'm afraid. This isn't gonna quite cut it. Getting in the Phoenix down, so uh, Dagger becomes the target. Um, so, yeah. the, other, the other thing about this is that Lonnie's only gonna focus on Dagger until uh, she gets mad enough to where she gets this revenge little uh, targeting attack where if Zidane attacks her enough times, she's gonna start focusing on Zidane, but. Early on, early on, she's oh. just only for stagger. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> the critical hit. End it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. I get lucky when you can get lucky in other ways. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have one, hopefully one more shot at Lucky Sevens. If ATBs aren't good enough, it's not actually a very good idea to go for it. Um, you, a way that you can kind of mitigate a lot of risk in this encounter is just by constantly dropping Phoenix Downs on, on Dagger, as Rome was saying. Uh, she will prioritize the da uh, uh, Dagger for a good chunk of the fight. Um, eventually, she can start counter-attacking Sedan. It's kind of rare. It's yeah. not quite 50%, but it's, it happens. Yeah, as long as you kind of stick to the... Um the sort of setup and strategy to try and go for Lucky Sevens and work around that. She really shouldn't be attacking him, but it can happen, as you said. It's kind of weird. Yeah, there's just a lot of ways that you can handle the fight, depending on if you want to do Sevens. If you don't want to do Sevens, you can still go for the same strategy, but in a different way. It's just, there's so many lines. And just, she's so fast, you've got to play really quickly. And it's just, ugh, ugh. We love it. Yeah. Okay. Just... Oh. oh, there we go. <laughs> I love it. The talent is unreal, and that's actually really good. That's bringing. We needed a mark to get that because that brings the back end in quite a lot. It saves about a minute. It's uh, it's really chunky. Mm -hmm. Um, so we just saw. Um, <laughs> I I like the joke about this NPC. There's a. There's a chap in the middle of the mines that you can... He's ready to play cards. He loves it. Yeah, he he's got good. a deck ready. And he's, uh, he's got a nice little collection. He brought his binder with him to work. <laughs> and um, you can challenge him to a game of Tetra Master inside of the mines. And normally you wouldn't really want to do this, but the reason why it's good is because um, near the start of the stream, Rev mentioned that you can uh, you can split screens. So danger value is... Uh, only, only increments as long as you're on a screen. So if you can leave a screen one way or another, then you can uh, you can reset that danger value. And another way to do that is to play cards. And that screen has a fairly high danger rating. You get quite a lot of danger per check, so you've got a good chance to get a fight towards the end. And a good way you can mitigate that is just by playing cards. It takes about six or seven seconds to come in and out. So the, the penalty is not very high. Yeah. Here we go. It's just yellowing and running to the up where you need to go and just getting an encounter and losing 30. Oh my goodness. Did you oh. see that encounter off Mel? <laughs> oh no. <sighs> getting <laughs> That's got to be less than 5% or something. That's so slim. That really sucks. Yeah. So as we mentioned before with the night route, uh, some... Uh, this, these bats would teach Quinn a knight, so we would have some sort of HP threshold from the, the party to get the bats below 25% uh, of their maximum health and have Quinn to eat it to learn knight. But yeah, Petro route where you just say bye bye baddies and just leave them. Yeah, the um, for the bats, I believe it's um, you cast Bizarro across them all, and the damage being split um, doesn't quite kill them in one hit, but it does deal typically enough damage to put them in knight eating mm -hmm. range. It's been so I can't remember what the number exactly is. Yeah, I haven't done it in a couple of years. I, sometimes <laughs> if my run's not going so hot and I just want to finish, I'll, I'll just learn nights for kicks. Oh, there you <laughs> go. <laughs> you, can, um, you actually can weave Knight into Petro Route uh, without any real trouble. Um, by the time you get to the only fight where it's relevant, which is Earth Guardian, um, both of your party members are wearing Gaia gear, which has Insomniac, which is the ability that you need to make it viable. So you can just weave it in. It does work, but it's... It's yeah. pretty much time neutral. Mm -hmm. That's pretty interesting. And, uh, yeah, it does just add variance to your run in this in, in this cat in this route, so it's not actually a good thing to do. Right. So yeah, playing cards again on the way back. Mm -hmm. Sorry, mate. I was just kidding. 
<laughs> you want to play cards now? Again. No, 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 no. Ooh. Cheeky little save. I thought we were going for the Stilt Skin package for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Stilt Skins packages are typically a bargain. Like, they're pretty cheap. They go up like 111 gil every time you see them. Mm -hmm. but they're worth more than what you pay for them, essentially. Like, you'll get like ethers and pinions and elixirs and things like that from them. Mm -hmm. But. I would uh, say they're quite mandatory in blindfolded percent, if I do say so myself. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, little Gargan Ruse. We saw them earlier. Um, not Gargan Ruse, I guess Gargants in, in Fossil Rue, but um, these little bug guys are wild, essentially. And we're going to ride the backs of them to get around where we need to go. It's pretty easy to get lost here, but thankfully, since we know where we need to go. We can just kind of travel, hit all these little switches and levers to change the water flow because they don't want to run into water. They'll just run along the little vines where they need to go. But yeah. Yeah, there's there's, um, there's a cool little uh, mining mini game that you can do if you if you go down the right path. Oh, I'm not yeah. really sure what you can get from it, but it does exist. Spring. Oh, not quite on the wall there, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> There's a very sp particular path you have to take across this vine as well, or else you get um, sent down by some jets of water. Hit the final switch here. Yeah, and then down we just here. Quick way out. Yeah, once you've done um, Gargoner a few times, it's it's not too bad. But it's it's yeah, I've seen a lot of people get very lost here. It's very easy to not know where on earth you're going. Everywhere looks the same, really. Right. Yeah. Just vines leading out to caves, leading out to other vines to switches, and you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> just, Have just, I been here before? <laughs> you're on your way out. Yeah, thankfully, Mel didn't get too many too, too many more encounters after those initial ones, but you can get pretty demolished by encounters here. Uh, minutes have been lost here in runs alone. So, uh, we mentioned a long time ago that you can run on the overworld when the, this continent text here is being spayed, but as soon as it's gone, you see that Mel has very quickly pivoted to stutter stepping. As soon as it's gone, encounters are live again and you stutter step. So she's going to head straight to the chocobo tracks and uh, get a bird. Or you could just be Masudo and just run to the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the give up, giving up strat. <laughs> you can definitely do that. <laughs> I've seen him make it. I've seen it happen. Yeah, one time he's just like, I don't care. I'm like three minutes behind. I'm just gonna run for it. <laughs> Live, <laughs> but so a quicker range of the inventory here is gonna normalize your shopping. In a moment, we're gonna do a bit of selling to make up a bit of extra gill so that we can we can get rid of some junk, some stuff that we're not gonna use anymore, and get some gill uh, for the upcoming shop and synth in Black Mage Village. Mm. Uh, we're just coming up straight after Condé P. A little bit of dialogue and this little gill pickup on the side, which uh, is actually, it's quite a big gill pickup. So even if you got nobles earlier, you still actually get this one. Mm. It's pretty important. Yeah. Again, it's it's, <laughs> it's quite a few uh, areas in Condé P. I think is actually quite big. There's quite a lot of like rooms and yeah. areas and whatnot that um, you don't actually get to see much in the in the speed run. Mm -hmm. um, There's a lot of nooks and crannies, and people want to play cards. Like pretty much everyone here wants to play cards with you, so oh, they love it. <laughs> Rally ho! Yeah, that gill pickup's really good. I think it's yeah, it's yeah, out. nearly three k. It's a lot of money, really. Mm -hmm. It's just chilling. Unfortunately, yeah, cease with the five encounter fossil brew. Ah, so there is actually a diamond tucked away here, which is, um, I don't know what stats it's got on it. It's its an ore, it's an accessory that you can give to people. It's um, not, I think in it, on its own, it's not very powerful, but it's got some really good abilities strapped to it. Um, I might be wrong. I think it's distract and yeah. body term. Right. That's right, right? Yep. Yeah, so which is going to come in really handy later on. Oh, yeah, it's pretty vital for disc four, at least in RTA. Yeah, body temp mitigates the effects of uh, heat and freeze. So, um, Kraken and Tiamat, and even Malaris actually, uh, they're, they're, they're disabled quite badly by the use of body temp. We're going to want to get body temp uh, learnt or at least equipped by all of our party members, one way or another. 
Um, and Diamond really helps us out with that. And Distract is also one of the more powerful abilities. It, um, it basically applies physical blind to all uh, uh, opponents. Uh, as long as they're doing a single target physical, it, it cuts it in half. Oh, the cliff fall. She's going for cliff fall. No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah you want to talk about cliff fall you just get it yeah <laughs> oh eventually, my but she got it. <laughs> you're gonna have to go for it now sees um yeah so cliff fall actually i don't know when it was discovered but it was only just brought to our attention um by some japanese runners it was it was brilliant actually so during the ff relay last summer um Wisteria, one of the Japanese runners, hit it in the race, but um, at the time we didn't we didn't see it. I believe that's when it happened anyway. And after the race had happened, he, he pulls me aside. He's like, oh yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. Did you see me get cliff fall? I was like, what is cliff fall? <laughs> what is that? And he pulls me aside and he shows me this cliff. And I was like, what is that? I, what? And um, yeah, it was brilliant. So then uh, a couple of our... our, our uh, North American runners then started labbing it and looking it up and there is like a small pixel where you can sort of just bloop down onto the lower level if you hit it at the very very precise angle you can kind of just like grind against it for a bit and hopefully it will send you through um, That even that was actually like quite fast it only saves a few seconds because you only have to run around and it doesn't take long so I think yeah. Mel probably saved like 3 or 4 seconds yeah. or so significant but it's pretty swag if you get it yeah it looks really cool it's the only like geometry exploit that is currently known in the game i believe yeah that's um, hard yeah uh, i think hd has uh two points you can do in the forest but as far as i can tell only the psx can do that one where mel clipped down um, yeah but it, it you have to be on a chocobo because you have to be going a certain amount of speed and so zidane by himself can't do the cliff fall no um but it has something it's got to do something with like being sub pixel and like a frame or the animation we we've tried labbing and stuff out and like if you have the same save that can do it you can do the same exact setup and do it perfectly but uh yeah. it on where you spawn the chocobo or something it's we're still trying to figure it out but it's not entirely figured out yet but yeah, I remember Pete Swanson spent a, like a, a day or two like grinding it out, and he it was it was it was quite dis upsetting really because he thought he'd found a setup. There are buttons that you can use to lock the camera in place so that you could essentially like uh, manipulate your positioning, and then he actually got on a setup that was working. It was working. It was working. But as soon as he moved the chocobo a little bit, got off and got back on, it stopped working again, and it was yeah, quite quite upsetting. Really. But um. It's something you can go for. It's definitely a marathon thing. If you get it, it's pretty cool. Or if you're behind, you're like, eh, I don't really care. <laughs> just, I'm just going to try yeah, this. Yeah, pretty it much. Me. Yeah, as we... Oh. I'm sorry, what? No, it's just that was a nice little sell from uh, oh, Mel yeah. there. She's getting everything. That's it. That's a nice little shop. We're out of there. Mm -hmm. These people haven't uh -huh. seen humans yet, and they've not interacted with their with their shopping habits, but they're now under the impression that everyone's like, whoa. whoa. <laughs> Isn't this bye? And they're like, whoa. <laughs> but um, yeah, something to talk about the uh, the Black Mage Forest where both Cease and Amart are currently at. Uh, this is, I think, the only screen where we're just kind of hanging on this one screen and where your encounter that's just constantly ticking up. Like, we don't... Every time you transition through one of the uh, different pathways, uh, your encounter that's still accumulating over and over and over again. So this place is very, very common to just get a couple of encounters. So yeah, the tip you typically you get between two or three or so. That's the kind of the standard. It's 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 quite annoying to like try and evaluate what an average is for a lot of these screens because it usually is between two values and so you end up average is very often like 2.5 or 3.5 or 1.5 like you either get one or the other um so it's pretty standard to get two or three sometimes you can get four five doesn't really happen thankfully um but a lot of the a lot of the enemies here they're pretty prone to countering you so if you can't cheat get cheeky little uh, basic attacks but flea checks and things like that you've got to be quite careful or they'll uh, Mm -hmm. They'll start hitting you with psychokinesis, which does quite a lot of damage, really. Considerable, yeah. Considerable amount, yeah. 
So changing rows and, you know, just buying time until we can flee off. So um, we're going to be doing a synth. And the main reason that we didn't do it on the way over a moment ago is because if you do it before all of this dialogue that uh, Mel is currently experiencing, we'll say, um, if you go into the synth shop, you actually have quite a long dialogue with Dagger, um, which is it costs a lot more time than just waiting for it all to go and just actually walking up there manually later. So uh, we'll do a lot of this sort of stuff and then we'll head back over and finish it off. A couple extra items in there. Primarily uh, what we're going to be making is the rune tooth. It's actually really important that we get it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help us deal a lot of damage in the upcoming couple boss fights. Hilkegars and Amaran. Uh, without it, you can still win, but you'll kind of end up relying on Lucky 7s a little bit. Right, yeah. <laughs> Amaran is particularly painful because your damage output is, is nerfed quite heavily by the Exploder. So... Um, after Black Mage Village, we're going to be seeing um, hill pass. Well, one of one of many hill passes. <laughs> we uh, we travel across hill pass a number of times um, to go between Madain Sari, which is all oh, is the best, oh, it's and the best. Um, Tree. Um, so there's quite a lot of, of pathing across it. It's it's not too bad. The, the per screen, the encounter rate's not too high. You pretty much always get a couple on it over the sheer volume of times that you go across it. And um Oh good. No no uh, rag timer for Mel. Can she get on the chocobo? Nice. <laughs> That's getting a little bit nervous there. <laughs> the thing with Cliff Fall is that um it's harder to park your chocobo in the proper spot where you pop out of Black Mage Village, but yeah. thankfully rag timer can't uh give you encounters until I think twenty seconds while you're on the world map, so yeah. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I forgot about that, of course. So um, Mel is, and the other two runners as well, will be leaving their Chocobo down there and stuttering here. Um, we don't actually get enough Geisel Greens to be able to summon the Chocobo again during this three on this island in particular. Um, and on top of that, uh, if you leave your Chocobo there, the stutter that she'll be making later on won't be as long. So this isn't actually an entire time loss. It will You'll make the time back up in this three a little bit later. Um, overall, by not having to manage as many guys or greens, it is actually a time save. It looks a bit funky for now. Yeah, um, the parking job. That chocobo will very, very patiently wait for us, thankfully. <laughs> Just that same spot <laughs> for days on end. Stay right here. It is actually like <laughs> weeks or months, maybe, in, in game time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, the time between like Aoife uh, going down at end of this two and the time in Treno and stuff is actually a really long time. <laughs> yeah, days and nights and then yeah, Treno and yeah, yeah. And you pass out and go back to Lindblom, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there's all that as well, isn't there, of course. But uh as we can see on Cease and Amart's screens, uh we're learning a little bit more about Zidane's history, his uh backstory with uh Baku. He's kind of like uh, speaking about his quote-unquote friend, <laughs> but as we can see, his friend is himself telling a dagger about him, his past, which I think is pretty cute a way to tell him. It's uh, it seems kind of traumatic, but it ends up like ultimately trying to paint Baku in a good light, doesn't it? Yeah, even though he's kind of uh, yeah. He is, I mean, he is a bandit. Like it's kind of yeah. all things considered, he's not actually that bad. <laughs> But yeah, Zidane, um, the, there's like a bit of backstory, isn't there? Because he's, well, huge spoilers, I suppose. He's not from this world and whatnot, and he's kind of been taken in by the band. And um, uh, yeah, so Baku's kind of like, you know what? You'll make a good thief. <laughs> Brings him up as one of his own. Shape him up. So yeah, the synth that Cease is doing is really key. We're going to make the Butterfly Sword now, even though it's quite weak. It's uh, It's got Protect Girls on it, which is a really powerful ability that we're going to be using a bit in Disc 4. It's going to help manage um, the Maliris fight. There's some really intricate strategies that go into managing Maliris quickly, and Protect Girls it takes a lot of pressure off of it. Mm. Um, it, it it's, it's another reason why it actually ends up being a really powerful ability, specifically targeting Freya to protect just her. 
yep. and it all lines up really well. Um, and season A mod, oh, this is tight. <laughs> Look at these two. They're right there next to each other, holding the hands as they go back to Conda PD. Hey, we got Ham. Ham has joined the party. Hammy. But, um, yeah, something I do like to point out every now and then I, for a lot of people learning is that uh, back in the Evil Forest, we want one point of Protect Girls AP just so we can have it available for Disc 4. It's like we're already planning AP routing for abilities like way early in the game or yeah. something used like basically once in <laughs> late game. So it's fun. The, just... the big dump from it is actually coming from Soul Cage. We're actually quite a long way from Protect Girls currently, but um, because normally we get Protect Girls from the leather shirt. Um, but immediately before the Aether Tree boss fight, we actually get um, a really powerful shirt called the Brigandine, which um, has ability up on it, which Rev mentioned a while ago, which is going to double all of our ability points on Sedan, which is huge. It's very, very, very strong. So rather than getting 9 AP from Aether, he's actually going to give us the full 18. But because the leather shirt and the Brigandine are in the same slot, the only other way that we can get Protect Girls onto Sedan is through his weapon. Fortunately, the weapon doesn't matter in that fight, so we can actually, we will we will happily spend the guild to make a butterfly sword just to get protect girls on Sedan. It's that it is that valuable. Yep. It's very nice. So only one fight for Mel. That's actually not a bad hill pass. Got Zidane got tagged unfortunately, so there's going to be a little bit of healing going on. Um, a quick menu needs to get everyone geared up with the stuff that we just got from that synth, and uh, hopefully Hilgigas won't troll us too much. Hopefully not. Oh, did anyone else get married? No, uh, no, not married. No. <laughs> Amar picking up the extra pinion there for a little bit of cushion gill. Cease as well. You know Cease being business when she's not making uh, <laughs> Quinner and Vivi get married. <laughs> she wants it. I couldn't res I love it. <laughs> But uh, we're going to make sure we get the desert boots on the uh, two ladies of the party. Because uh, one single earthquake can wipe them. But with the desert boots, it has the earth damage, so they won't get wiped. Uh, and then we can just have a, a Kira all or a Kira all on the party to recover. Because Hogagars will, will do that if he so chooses. Oh, go on, Mel. Oh, ah, okay. uh, it wasn't quite a full preem. <laughs> Sat on. Yeah, so plopped. I don't think... You know what? Is Vivi getting his turn in? Oh, just, 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 just. Yeah, thankfully, uh... He's like 36 feet or something? 44. <laughs> 44? Oh, wow. It's 44. He is a speedy boy. The pants. This is fine. So we need to change... Turn order is really important here. So, kills the girls once he drops below 50%. The next time he cues an ability, it will be Kuraga. So... Because Vivi's Bizarro animation is quite slow, there is a cute heal clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, um, the animation is so slow on Bizarro, um, Hilgigas will actually queue his next turn. So he'll attack this turn, but next turn he will be casting Kiraga. So we need to make sure. Well, we'll do our best, I suppose. But I just hope that Zidane doesn't miss. At this point in the game, Zidane can still miss. Yes. And what we would like to see is a crit to finish early so we don't see Zidane's. Uh, Alright, Zidane. Uh, Vivi's cast, but. Say lovey, how it goes. You see it? You should go. You should kill. There we go. Very nice. Yeah, if Sedan's ATB is really, really good, then you can get in front, and you can actually lucky sevens because it's still at this point Zidane hasn't um, uh, leveled up, so his HP still ends in seven. You still go for lucky sevens, and you can try it, and you can one turn him. It's pretty unlikely to get all the ATB for it. But typically only if you get a preemptive. Yeah. Zidane has to have that instant ATB and Hilly's not also instant as well. Um... Uh, I'm just... I'm... Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm just wondering if Mel got the um, the AP necessary to protect girls in disc one. Oh, yeah, I'm not... I'm not sure. Uh... I know, she only had a one encounter... Um... Evil Forest. Mm -hmm. No, there's there is there's a couple there's it's very it's very minor and there are some little things that you can do, but 
You can leave the rune tooth on um, Zidane here if he gained uh, uh, some AP towards protect girls. Um, if you didn't get it, then you can pop the butterfly sword on her now. The only downside is that there's an elevator fight um, that can be a little bit can be a little bit faster if you get the right ATBs. Um, it's, it's all very ifs and maybes and hopefullys and all that sort of stuff. Um, and it also gives you a little bit of protection in case you get into a fight with some trolls because they can enrage Zidane, which means that you can't cast flee. And if that happens, then having the rune tooth on allows you to just battle your way out rather than uh, rely on um, dealing damage. Uh, the casting flee, sorry. Hmm. So we see the shot of Aoife, but we're not going to be there quite yet. We'll, we'll be there in a minute or two, but <laughs> it's kind of our future runner's problem. But as we see on Mel's screen, we're currently Madain Sari. Everybody, one of everybody's favorites, like mashing plot cities. <laughs> just got to hit zone to zone and just mash to the little uh, accordion, I think is what this is. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, though, Rome? What kind of Eidolans do you like? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of what kind of girls do you like? What kind of moogles do you like? <laughs> what kind of preempts do you like? <laughs> what kind of encounters do you like? What's your favorite kind of time loss? <laughs> uh oh. Uh, yeah, Cease's in kind of a bad spot. Uh, I don't think... Oh, she... no. Uh, she would have saved it, yeah. This uh, is probably GG, to be uh, fair. Uh, she can weasel back into it, but this is really risky. Uh, yeah, Elixir's good. Oh, gosh. Um, it's just once you've only got one hero alive, it just you kind of have to hope for a miss. Right. I think it might be quicker just to do a soft reset and get back into the fight. I mean, actually, maybe there's a trance way out of this. <laughs> maybe <laughs> trance, but... Never mind. If you can try and kill, I don't know how much HP Heli has at this point on her fight. This is scary. Didn't kill. Yeah, get out. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> that was Oof. unfortunate. It's really unfortunate, yeah. Yeah, she did save good. Because, yeah, that as you can see, that Hilly, even though like he's not particularly threatening in most cases, he can just decide to just incinerate you if he so chooses. And you're yeah. just like well this is kind of unwinnable <laughs> his damage output is really high he can actually just one bang any of your party members um with the hip hop it's too powerful it does up to like 650 damage um unless you've killed tantarian <laughs> 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 it can yeah it can even kill Zelan in one hit which is really rough um you kind of have to like reserve uh Ico for healing on most of the turns and even then it can still get pretty pretty nasty Ico does go down because dagger's output, healing output at this point in the game is never going to be enough. Right. I'm not really sure. Up, oh, so sure. There we go. So as we see, he's heading back into Hilgagars. Uh, we can see on Mills. Um, I'll stream that Dagger is learning more about herself for Medain Sari, which is an important location for her. Um, she's getting a lot of like uh, memories coming back to her and a lot of um, things she recognizes here. And as we see in the opening cutscene for the game, something might also like this leads us to believe that she. Uh, might have lived here at some point. As we have this uh, very wonderful dinner scene. Now, whatever you do, don't forget to pick up the pot. <laughs> don't pick up the pot. <laughs> don't the pot. forget to pick up the pot, because heaven forbid we get into more dialogue with Ico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you find? I've done that a few times, yeah. Or you, uh, <laughs> after you give her the pot, like, 
you just you can just have a chat with her and then she just, she just says go get the pot <laughs> and then go back in and pick it up she's like what are you doing don't forget my food <laughs> There is a oh no move was skip. Ah, she, she was doing so well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had all the other skips up until now. You know what? If Moogle skip happened as well, it would have been incredible. It would have, yeah, because we would have puck skip, we have cliff fall, and then Moogle skip. Yeah, got all the skips in the game. Indeed, a little bingo card. <laughs> Moogle skip is another one of those skips that just is a heaven there. The idea is that you can talk to that Moogle before you trigger the little movement sequence of him walking in. It's very specific. I don't think anyone's ever really tried, tried to lab it or anything. Again, it's one of those ones that saves like two or three seconds. It doesn't cost you time to go for it, really. But it's just pretty much irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, you don't really um, want to try to set up for it just because the setup time it takes to set up would just cost the time it would take to save. So you might as well just yeah. yell. You just gotta gun it. Yeah. Cease made it through Hilgar's, a much nicer one compared to the one before. So she's on her way to Madane Sari. So she can mash. Good old Madane Sari. It's a good job we only have to come here like three or four times, eh? Yeah, thankfully. <laughs> Is man, this place isn't too bad when you're playing casually and you're like, you know, jamming along. The dialogue's really sweet. It's nice. You know what? A lot of people give Iko a lot of flack, but she's pretty. She's all right. Yeah, she's pretty good. Like she acts like a kid, and it makes sense. She does. She's got some some cool cutscenes as well. <laughs> Thinking of that one after the start of this three, <laughs> always cracks me up, man. <laughs> Boom. <No. laughs> Optional ATEs and Traino are pretty good with her. But, yeah. So, um, yeah, Mel, uh, Mel's on her way out. And see on her way in. Um, so now we're on our way to Aoife. This is probably widely considered to be the most hated dungeon in the entire game, probably. <laughs> it's not probably not really too hard to contest with that. Um, it's long. There's lots of really long screens. Um, you, it's pretty much impossible to not get any encounters. There is a screen that has probably a guaranteed, it is pretty much guaranteed to get at least one on, if not several. Um, fortunately, most of the encounters that we get, we can deal with uh, with the softs that we picked up in Dragon's Gate back in Limblum. Um, or by casting life with Ico, most of them are undead. We we don't, they tend to, there's, I can't remember what the, my, my conids? Mykonids? Yeah. I don't know how you pronounce it. Mushroom guys. The mushroom guys. The mushroom guys and the zombies are the ones that we're going to be 100% ignoring. Yeah, um, zombies are probably the worst. Because mm -hmm. um, there's usually lots of them and they, they're quite quick and their animations are typically quite long. That's strange. Yeah. So uh, hopefully the encounter rate stays quite low. Typically for the entire split, so from leaving um, Hilgars. Up until Aoife, you're looking at like seven or eight encounters on like a half decent runish. Anything better than that is is, is is a bit of a blessing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, the stropers, the tree big trees are great. You can just you can just soft them and they're big sacks of experience points. Oh yeah, they're great. So easy. Yeah. But um Yeah, we only need like what uh maybe not need, but we would like to get like one or two just for AP reasons, right? Yeah, um, it's actually, I believe it's completely optional at this point. Um, the experience points is slightly more vi uh, valuable. Um, I think if you kill three, it's, it's, it, it, it can depend on who's alive and if you kill a Draco zombie and how many zombies you get and how many party members survive in the elevator fights. And there's a lot of little variables and whatnot. But the general idea is we would like to try and hit 16 by the time we're doing Soul Cage. Um, just due to the level 5 death and mitigating any, uh, any chance of that uh, <laughs> ending the run completely. Oh, nice ATB, get that soft out of there. Nice and quick. Very quick. And yeah, we want to see that stroper instant ATB. We want to see the instant ATB on that stroper because they do have like a little sweep attack where they damage everyone, so you sit there and just heal with a cure all or something. 
That's yeah, what... that's the strange thing, is that AoE actually does more damage than the single target, <laughs> which I don't really understand. <laughs> yeah, each of these um, branch, uh, individual branch screens have around a, something like a 50% chance to get an encounter on each. Pretty, pretty, pretty typical to see one. Yeah, and in these encounters, you've got to try and just get out. Yeah, the zombies using just... a. You can cast on them, take them down with VB and Ico, but it's just nah, it's way too slow. We're gonna see them later eventually, and they're slow there too. So, this their strike wind up, their little melee attack for some reason just takes forever for them to actually get that turn off for some reason. I think the reason is because they. So animations in this game, they can't snap into animations. They have to be at a certain point in their idle animation, their ready stance, yep. to be able to go into a combat one. And I think it's because they have quite a long cycle. Yeah, I think that's what I, they... I think yeah, that's what I was like kind of theorizing. I, I, I wouldn't sure. I, not, I didn't know if it was ever confirmed or anything like that. But yeah, they do this like little head little bobbing waving thing and then they like do the little skull chattering animation too yeah I, th I think the whole cycle itself is quite long which makes it seem like it so if they if they just started a new animation and then they're gonna have their turn you have to watch the whole thing before right. they can do a strike and then they have to reset back to neutral before someone else can have their turn i think it all just add this just yeah they take ages they're really slow even though they're just not even casting mm -hmm. oh mushroom lads are here yeah all mushroom gang Looks like uh, Mel's getting some uh, Ethan counters a little early before we even get to the long screen. Gives plenty of room for uh, Amart and Cease to catch up at least. Well, Mel did protect the, uh, protect, predict that Ethan was going to be very kind to her. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a pretty linear dungeon. It's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of. It's, it's a it's a place where I like to call it encounter quality. Like if some some, some not all encounters are created equal. <laughs> some of them we'd much rather see than others. And then right. Ether has a lot of encounters that can get you. They're not the worst encounters in the game, but there are a lot of them. Yes, yeah. You can just get overwhelmed with them. We gotta preempt on these little zombie boys. Nice little quick flea on that one, getting out there nice and quick. So here we're seeing Amart approaching the tree. He's gotten through two screens now without an encounter. Mel two on the long screen. Yeah, Amart's oh my goodness. From Mel just getting blasted with encounters, Mel Amart's on his way to the yep. on Mel's trail. <laughs> yep. So if uh, Season manages to get a half decent Eva, she could probably catch up a good chunk here despite the, uh, the Hilgiga's issues. Yep. Not too much of a problem. Yeah, thankfully, just loading back into Hilgar Arts doesn't take too long. You only have like a little bit of a cutscene and a menu. It's not like two or three minutes worth or anything like that. Alright, made it through the last screen. A little bit of dialogue here before we mess with the, uh, the lift. Stroper for Amar, nice quick ATB hopefully. Uh, oh, this if this is a sweep. Oh, could trance? Is he going to beat it? Ah. Oh, it's taking so long. Oh, sweep. Ah, oh, no trance. But look at that damage. <laughs> look anyway. at that damage, man. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to hop off the uh, comms here. I'm going to have Reverb tag back in on commentary. I'll be hanging out in chat, so... Thank you, Romy. We'll see you again soon. This is uh, closing in on a very interesting race between Amart and Mel right now. We're neck and neck, and Cease is just right there. This is great. Yeah, she's not far behind at all. Eva's the right? great equalizer. I know. <sighs> that Hilgi. Oh my god, so close to dealing damage. I think she was saying she. What'd she say? It's like 160 from dealing damage. 150 water. damage away from getting oh, that. Man. Oh, Solution 9. I thought it, it had a chance, but oh man. Oh, Mel. That was close. Uh, I know. This, this dungeon is notoriously the worst. It's just encounter after encounter after encounter after encounter. It's pretty standard for Aoife. Yep. Usually the worst dungeon before this is uh, 
Fossil Roo or Clara, you get five or six and you're pretty annoyed. And you're like, yeah, that was a terrible dungeon. This one, a terrible dungeon is <laughs> 12, 13 encounters. Yeah. Oh, you know yeah. what? I, I don't think I've had an excess of like 11. I think 11 is probably my worst for the split. I think any more than 11, you're just putting the controller down. Good. You're losing time. Yeah. There's, no, there's no chance. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're switching to this and then you, <laughs> <laughs> Right, and then you got the uh, mountain path encounters to add on insult to injury, and you, all of a sudden you're adding 16 encounters to your run after two splits. You don't like that. No. So Aimart's taking a lot of uh, kills here. This is, I think, his third stroper, so that's really good, actually. It's pretty much going to comfortably put Sedan at level 16 for Soul Cage, which is definitely favorable here. Yep. Thara. Yeah, we're... We're very careful with our levels here for a lot of reasons. It's uh, not a huge issue to get over experience this early in the game, but we need to watch that later on in the run just for a couple reasons. Yeah, you can <laughs> actually, funnily enough, you can kill too many things at this point of the game um, in the Petro route. <laughs> sure um, can, but you actually can. It's kind of it's kind of awful <laughs> if you kill if you kill too many, you hit. Um, your level is too high going into the Shell Dragon fight, and you're less likely to hit critical straight away, which is really weird yeah. that like it's Soul Cage that knocks onto uh, <laughs> an end of this three fight. <laughs> yep. All right, Mel has finally made it through. There's no more random encounters. There are still two more encounters before the boss, just because that's what kind of dungeon this is. Just you want to see a couple more dragons and a couple more zombies. Here you go. Yeah, so these are the only fights in the entirety of this part of Ether, which are actually routed into the AP, I believe. Um, all the other ones before it are kind of optional experience, and they you can use them to back up some AP if anything's gone wrong up until this point. And um, more yeah. often than not, Protect Girls is something that needs adjusting during this, this part of the game. It has been done so by Mel, actually. Yeah, it's one of those great parts where, you know, you would obviously want for zero encounters, but if you need to make up either experience or AP or whatever it may be, this is a great place to do it because you can kind of swap on inconsequential gear that you don't need to get through a fight because you can use a, a soft to get through it and just pick a little experience back up. I just realized what uh, Ico was called on a last stream. Six! Yeah, I'm curious what the <laughs> reference is for that. I don't well, she's quite six, get that one. She? Yeah, she is six, that's true. She's six. Got Kagar on uh, sees the stream. Paul, Sal, Rome, and Kagar, the dream team. Okay, we're up to single target down these zombies on Mel. A couple different ways you can handle this fight. You can uh, fire all and cure all, which, depending on damage rolls, should kill. Or you can also hit one with Zidane, so it's really up to ATBs. Yeah, you do need the rune cube on to kill these in one hit, though, with the. With, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. with the um, with the butterfly studies, it's a little bit useless. It also have been a dropped input, switching from single target to target all. Yeah. Oh, oh just get a crit. Like, Easy. It's just one too <laughs> late. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> the personification uh, of Final Fantasy IX manifest in a delayed crit, and that's a level 14 Zidane coming out of the. Uh, zombie fight which is kind of worrying actually a little low we'll make up some good experience on the mistodons at the end of the disc but hopefully the the exp oh you're, you're thinking the, the zombie here it's it's, yeah. it's it's purely for level five death it's really important right, right, it's, right, right, right. it's pretty critical that zidane survives the soul cage fight i i don't actually know how to back that up there's probably a way that you can do it but it might involve killing a lot of things in this three yeah, uh, it would be a lot. Well, hopefully Mel just takes it nice and slow and checks on. Uh, nice. Yeah, ATB. You can, we'll, 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 you just we'll play it safe. Yeah. Yeah. So you, uh, it's, it's common knowledge that a lot of um, undead monsters can go down in one hit to Phoenix Downs and such, but in FF9 it doesn't actually quite work that way. It's actually if you use a Phoenix Down on something, it has a one in ten chance to kill it in one because they inst a Phoenix Down will actually set their HP to some a value between 0 and 9, I believe. Yeah, um, that's correct. Yeah, so it's only a 1 in 10 chance of actually killing it in 1, and a, a follow-up with anyone will, will will finish them off if the Phoenix Down is thrown, but uh, a Phoenix Down into a basic attack is a, quite a slow way to kill them um, in comparison with yeah. a lot of things. So 
Uh, elixirs are guaranteed. Options. Yeah, elixirs are guaranteed. You can also cast life, but that does have a chance to miss. It's not super high. It's, I think, even less of a chance to miss than a physical attack, but it can happen. Uh, it's it's ten percent actually to miss with life. Ten percent? Okay. Yeah, it's this. It's, it's, it's yeah. I think a physical miss is yeah. Yeah, physical is quite quite a lot lower. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So we have got a level fifteen to that end, but it shouldn't be fine. It should be fine. We just have to. We'll be fine. Take a breath. The way that we can kind of mitigate the RNG is by just throwing the elixir with Zidane if he comes up early, because that way, if it goes off, then that means he's alive, and if exactly. it doesn't, then well, he can't. So this is the the Draco zombie fight for Amart top left. Quick ATV on Zidane, He's... get the elixir out. Only two in the bag though. That's a little low. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick one up down here and then hope for some elixir drops. We'll see how he's feeling at the end of the run, but. There's usually at least one drop between the dragon or soul cage. Hopefully. High potion. Did get a Gargan card. We like Gargan <laughs> <you go>. cards. <laughs> Take it. I was coming up on Soul Cage, which is a a fun little boss as a kid if you don't know what you're doing you're like oh here's this uh tree what are what are trees weak to oh, definitely I know. fire yeah i'll set that yeah. on fire <laughs> yeah so <laughs> yeah, we call this the message, uh, the second fire us start, yeah. just <laughs> it's just the fire has started oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> So if you if you try to cast fire on this guy, he will counterattack with some nasty, nasty spells. He is not weak to fire at all. So Mel did get the instant ATB with Zidane, got the elixir off, Huge. and has killed the boss instantly without having to worry about level 5 death, which is fantastic. Looks like Amart is also level 15. So we'll be watching his boss fight too. It's not even guaranteed to open with level five death. It's just quite favorable, isn't it? It's something like a. It sure seems like it. I don't know. He's only got three attacks, I believe. He, at the base, yeah, at the, at the start of the fight, there's shockwave, level five death, and something else, <laughs> probably leaf swirl or whatever the That's Pokemon the attack one. is. It's something like that. <laughs> yeah, leaf yeah, dance or vine, vine whip. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever Bulbasaur starts with, it's the same thing. Okay, so first elevator fight for... Oh, Ico sneaked it in front of Zidane. <laughs> <laughs> Big Ico damage. Oh, Ico. Yeah, mistook the, uh, I, the, the instant ATV there. Tried to um, get it off with... Uh... Oh, did she just cure all the party? Oh, no. Um... Oh, no. I think she did. Maybe, she's not maybe... queuing up Zidane, so I feel like she's confident. No, the step forward... Oh. Oh! Okay, <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Drop that frame. Drop that frame. All right, let's see how AMR can do on this fight. Hopefully, good ATBs here. Not great. Any good ATB on Zidane? E Just wait. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Might as well go for yeah, it. To, all right, good enough. Throwing it out. Yeah. I don't think Soul Cage is all that fast compared to a lot of bosses, correct? Uh, I actually don't Let me know. Look it up. No, I don't think he's that fast. I think he's he's roughly average, probably somewhere in the low thirties, I would say. He has twenty four speed. He's very slow. Oh yeah. What's uh, what's our boy Zidane set at around this area? Should be around twenty five, I think, by this point, if not a little higher. You. You can AT wait, wait, you can wait. You, I think you could ATB wait Soul Cage if you really wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> be in the next route that we put together. That'll be a That's thing. Good damage, you know, and don't know why, but <laughs> <laughs> you accidentally used the elixir you just picked up. You got to do some backup strats. Well, there I you go. Know. I'm going to need this. <laughs> Another little stir. Head on back on over to Hill Pass once more. Nope, this isn't the last white time we're going over it. <laughs> but it is the third. Never the last. It is the third. Of all the times, it is the third time. We hold our breath on the last screen as Mel gets through without an encounter. Nice. Easy. 
So yeah, you're going to see uh, Amart is doing quite an essential menu. So once we get out of there, we can we can bench the butterfly sword. It's done its job. We can put that away, put that in the coffer. Sell that later. Um, we need our rune tooth back on for Amaranth again. Once it's really important that we made sure that we sensed it. Uh, quick save from Mel outside. I would have forgotten. I forgot this in the relay as well. <laughs> I'm always sitting here thinking, why isn't she going inside? Oh wait, yes, we're we're being mm -hmm. safe. Very smart. This is the uh, the last fast chance to save it before Amaran. Amaran himself isn't too scary, but uh, it is important. If you get really that... unlucky, it can go wrong. Yeah, he's he, he can be pretty lethal. He can he's very fast and he's pretty tricksy, so you don't really want to let him run away with a fight. So yeah, Amart just wrapping up some abilities here, getting some stuff popped on. Um, Manny, RMP attack counter, all those sorts of things, getting ready to take down uh, Amaran. He's not too bad. He goes down without too many hits. But um, he's, he's got access to counter abilities and things like that. So, he, And they actually do more damage than the regular hits, so you got to be careful with them. Yeah, you have to be just a little bit careful. Unfortunately, he doesn't join our party with 7,000 health and... 50 speed like he does in this fight but uh he has 50 speed i th he's got something crazy <laughs> like that yeah he's high i'm pretty sure charlotte hair <laughs> boss has got uh he's got 50 speed does he actually wow -wee. he sure does um i think that's quite funny as well that you can actually steal some mythical no not mythical claws poison knuckles uh poison knuckles yep you can steal poison knuckles from him um, but he doesn't have the money when he joins your party, so he must have nope. dropped them. He something. loses them when he jumps away, I think. And it's also quite frustrating because they're actually useful for this three Tantarian because they have a uh, <laughs> change in them. Okay, so we got good ATB on Ico for Cease here, but we're just going to wait for Zidane to come around to make sure that nothing bad can happen. And the Elixir went off. Yeah, there you go. That's the, yeah. the, the, the power of the tree. That's how slow the tree yeah. really is. <laughs> think that uh, 750 is for level 15 as well on Zidane, so good to play it safe there. Yep, level 15 as well. With an antlion nice card, very nice. That was a nice little lucrative tree. That So uh, it's really yeah. important that when you're getting prepped for the Amaranth fight here, one of the Moogles actually offers to heal your party, which uh, you don't actually get another heal before the end of the uh, disc at this point. Um, and the reason why this one is quite important is because we're using MP attacks, so we actually really want to have a high MP number. And because we've leveled up quite a lot during the Eva Tree, our MP cap has increased, and we want to have that maxed out. Some people think, well, the heal is only worth 50, 50 HP. I can skip that. I can save an input. I don't have right. to worry about it. But it's actually the manner that you're really doing it for. Yeah, MP attack is a very, very strong ability, and it is often overlooked when you're playing casually. You think, I don't care about MP, I won't equip this, but yeah. maybe you want to use MP on some spells with Sedane, but we don't need to use that at all during the run, especially the one, for well, our melee people, so... The wrong you know, reason why MP, MP attack is stuff. so valuable in the RTA side of this as well is because... When you're when you're playing the game and you're you're running through and you're just you know kind of attacking things with Zidane constantly, you're just gonna run out of mana really fast because Very every much. attack of every time you use MP attack it takes one eighth of your total mana. So the best case scenario is you can get nine because of the remainder few points of mana. So you'll actually you'll run through a lot of ethers if you if you just leave it turned on. So it's, the game doesn't really encourage its use. Yeah, no, not at all for casual play. And it does become an issue in disc four when we have a lot of bosses and encounters in a row and you just have to yeah. be mindful of your mp and be healing restoring every uh every boss fight all right so we got an instant counter attack with zidane we'd love to see it nice. we want to see amaranth miss and a counter attack makes this life a really so nice opener easier. so she can yep. attack at this you want point it. coming up here nice this is our third attack. he's vulnerable at attacks. certain spots when he's jumping around and he will counter it, and the counter miss is oh. great because I think he does double damage there, so this is an excellent fight for Mal. Absolutely. He's going to come back, and you have to hit him here. This is going to be four. And the only way to make this better is... Well, no crit, but Another counter? counter on this type. Another counter? No, I didn't oh. get it. How about this one? Um, Not quite, yeah. but we got the attack anyway. And he's out. It's just that Very, very easy. fast fight for Mal. 
Yeah, that was a really fast bite. And no encounters as well, which is... That's a good split. That's, that's going to be a goal. Oh, I suppose it's the, the, the save <laughs> is going gonna, is gonna to run away yeah, with that goal, that unfortunately. Amart is right there as well. I'm guessing he also got zero encounters because he is just about to start the fight himself. Unfortunately for Cease, she is doing battle with a troll. Fortunately, it didn't cast Solution and she's going to get out without too much trouble. Yep, I think we kind of glossed over it early on in Giza Luke's Grotto by just saying bees are bad, but they can uh, cast Berserk on the party, in which case you lose the ability to flee if it gets hap if it gets uh, onto Zidane. So you really don't want to be Berserked ever in a random battle, and those trolls also have the ability to cast that. So it can be a dangerous oh, fight. Two steps into another one. Um, Final Fantasy the Ninth, please. We might be having some technical issues with Amart. I try to get him back up as soon as we can. I think I lost my feed to him. Looks like it, having some yeah, issues. We'll work on that. In the meantime, Mel's almost done with disc two and is on some uh, small story bits for the rest of the way until we go back to Aoife Tree again. It was just so fun the first time. I feel like we should just go back for fun. What do you say? Absolutely, I just couldn't get enough of those stropers. <laughs> we did buy 11 softs and we've got a lot to use. All right, yeah, uh, Amart is pocket. coming back. I just opened him and I see a D-trance going on with Zidane. Not quite sure what's going on. And, Am and uh, Amarant is down. Might need to get a little uh, tech support to get Amart's feed back up. Let's see if we can work on that real quick. Gonna open my streams again just to keep them up to date. So yeah, we're gonna be heading back to Aoife Tree for the final little gauntlet we'll get one more time. We need to pass over Hill Pass. Um hopefully not getting any more encounters. This split. <laughs> Has quite a lot of variance to it, unfortunately. There's there's quite a lot of uh, chances to get a lot of encounters here. Yeah, it's very easy to get through with zero encounters, but it's also very easy to get four encounters on your way out. It can be a lot of variance on this split. Before then, though, we got a nice, comfortable break as we got another uh, two-ish minute cutscene here coming up for Mel. Actually, the intro cutscene for a lot of people, if you walk away and come back, you're like, wait, did you reset? Oh, no, wait, we're just at that part of the game. <laughs> it's, yep, it's caught me out a lot, so I've come back, especially to Pete's streams. And thought, Hang on a minute, whoa, why? Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it looks like Amart's back. I think that's uh, Mel's feed twice. Amart did not catch up. He is still a little bit behind, but... Don't worry, it's just dialogue going on in Amarts at the moment. He's uh, just grouped back up with Ico, and uh, he'll be going through to the cutscene that you're seeing on Mel's feed soon. But while this is going on, we're going to get to see Cease's fight with Amart. Uh, Amart, sorry, Amarant. <laughs> <laughs> Mel wishes she could battle Amart. Um, so if I ever had my way with uh, uh, Amaranth, I'd always cast Lucky Sevens if he gave me the chance. Um, I have an, a, a weirdly su high success rate of hitting Sevens on Amaranth. It's definitely above 50-50, which is kind of weird when you think about it. I haven't had to cast it many times, but if he hits you for just the right number, he can put you in range for it. It's a beautiful strat when you can get it to work, but can't rely on it. So Amaranth is actually one of the fights where you kind of do want to get Trance, as, well, hopefully early. Trance allows you to do a lot of uh, things that you can't normally do. When he's jumping around, 
as Rev mentioned earlier, there are a few positions where you can um, you, you can't hit him. He's 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 he has maximum evade. But if you've got trance activated, um, trance stops you from being able to miss, so you can deal damage in positions where you can't normally. Um, which is also kind of kind of funny because he says, oh, "Why can't you keep up?" or something like that when you actually are hitting him in the face. <laughs> the game doesn't think that you're supposed to be able to hit him, but trance is uh, taking priority. <laughs> Yeah, there's some very weird things going on with the evade chance and accuracy chances that go on with status effects in this game. If you're um, if you're blinded, your evade drops to zero, and if you're trancing, you can hit in some spots that you really shouldn't be able to, and you get some weird results. It's quite interesting. It's good ATP. Right. Oh, right. you like to see that for Cease. I think I'm lagging a little bit on Cease's strength. Are you a little bit behind? Okay. Oh, it's a beefy crit to uh, start oh, the fight. So she's on three. Yep. Very nice. Should be able to end this in uh, two quick hits. Unless we get another crit. Okay, no second crit, but we can get a counter. Okay, no counter, but we can get another counter. He's going for the safety strats to make sure she does not die. Yeah. Gotta respect it. Yep. Can't afford the miss is, is an option. There is always that chance. And got the miss counter right afterwards, so there's a little karma. <laughs> nice. And ended the fight very quickly, despite the heal. So that's a fight. As long as you're patient, you can heal and save yourself from disaster. But it was tempting to just go for it, and yeah, that can be dangerous. Nice, so Amara is down for everyone now. Everyone is slowly moving through. We're going to have Amara <laughs> finally join our party. We've got our final name for the marathon coming in here. We're going to have three more custom names coming in for Amara. The last party member to join, and also very, very helpful in the speedrun. You think a lot of people mm -hmm. don't have Amara in the party when playing casually, but he's just as strong as your other physical damage dealers, so... We're going to be using him a lot coming up. What have we got? Chew! <laughs> <laughs> Our friend Chew has joined oh, the battle. Chew. Shout out to Chew wherever he is. <laughs> Come on, Chew, you're coming with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Amaranth has the, the hidden benefit of actually having the fastest... Um, basic attack animation of the of the entire party of all the people that you can actually send an attack through with Amaran is the fastest he's real speedy the only downside is that um, due to uh, what we mentioned earlier with the spirit levels he is never actually able to perform a critical in the speed run um, he is able to in the um, HD speed runs but in PSX he never actually reaches the spirit level to be able to perform a crit you can get it if you're playing casually if you if you gear him up correctly and you, you grow him with the right stats, you can make him able to crit. But in a speedrun, in these in these routes currently active, he will not quite be able to do it. So you have to try and play around that a little bit. Yeah, it's one of those things, if, if crits were just a little bit more statistically common, we might uh, put a little extra effort into making them viable, but we just don't rely on them at all in the speedrun, because it's just not something you can count on happening. It will happen, probably five to ten times a run, but you just can't rely on them anywhere, unfortunately. Yeah, you don't really need to, like, uh, attribute towards them to make them happen. They they will just happen naturally. They get um, spirit growth. Despite all this, and some of the gear that we're wearing just has natural spirit on it anyway that we want to wear. And Amaranth number two? God. <laughs> Boxes, of course. Oh, Amart. Of course. <laughs> oh, solution. It's not Amarin. Okay, oh boy. Okay. MLZ is a dangerous encounter. These ones, like we said, can cause Berserk. But you just don't want to see that I'm Zidane. Work through safely, which is good. Oof. Yeah, if it hits Zidane, then you're no longer able to cast play, and uh, you just have to fight him. <laughs> yep. It's like, oh, all they right, don't have a ton of health, on. but... <laughs> Two of them can be quite annoying. Yeah. 
You can. It's, it's funny. You, your priorities shift instantly, and you just go like, you know what, Vivi? Come on, let's get him, buddy. And you just start <laughs> wailing on him with Bizarro. It's like, let's. You know what? All right. <laughs> All right then. You want this? Yep. <laughs> and unfortunately, at this point in the run, we have not really bought a whole lot to uh, beef up Amaranth at all, so he's only going to be hitting for 200 if you really attempt to use him. So he's not super helpful at this point. So if you do get uh, Berserk, you're counting on some Berserk attacks and some Blizzaras and crossing your fingers, hoping for the best. Amaranth doesn't really get to shine yet, but he will be soon. He has a, a great backup ability. That be dealing a ton of damage despite having no weapons until the end of disc three basically pretty much yeah we uh we pretty much just use him to throw stuff we actually spend yep. a lot of money on um throwing silver forks in uh the arc fight during oil vert it uh the flying enemies bird enemies they take a lot more damage to thrown weapons and uh, the damage dealt by throwing is proportional to the attack power of the weapon and um I think the silver forks like the cheapest, or they just have the highest power. But they are. I think they have the, just the highest power available. They're very expensive, but very expensive, they're... very high damage output, which is really funny because they're Quinn as weapon. <laughs> <laughs> right. If, if you use them in battle, they would deal 400 damage. But if you throw them, they deal 4,500. So it's yeah. one of the the highlights and the main focus of Petro Route is to get you leveled up the right way and to be able to bring Amaranth to the arc fight and to be able to buy a silver fork or two that you can throw. That's the main focus of the money and that's the uh, the tightest gill shop as far as money is concerned. It's all routed very specifically so you can afford everything at that shop, which will be coming up on very soon actually. Yeah, and so because, uh, tree was... Go ahead. Yeah, just, I was going to say that the because Amaran is throwing, you can leave him on the back row and it mitigates a lot of damage that he'll be taking. So he, he ends up being really tanky and the really high damage output, really tanky and really powerful, but only in those very, very specific scenarios where we're, we're throwing. Yeah, he's going to get a lot of uh, forced experience coming up at the end of the disc. So even though he's a little bit under level, he'll gain some HP very quickly. And since, like you said, he'll be back row, he can just sit there and throw things all day and He'll be extremely valuable coming up as we go through Aoife a second time. It was just so fun. We had to come back. So let's see how uh, Amart does in <laughs> counter-wise. Oh, early one. Mel has so, made it through the encounter check, so she's on to the scripted part at the end of the disc. I'm trying to think how long this part of the, the, the sequence is before you actually make it down the branch, and I believe it's like four minutes? Sounds four about right. Minutes. So we're looking at like a... F 514 hopefully for Mel which is uh, again it's, it's pretty good pace pretty good pace indeed yep we're we're at the upper limits of what you'd want for uh, sub 9 but we're still very much within that range especially given the ability of all these runners they're certainly capable of having very strong disc 3s and disc 4s so all on very good pace and you love to see it in this marathon it's anyone's game still yeah, it might look like Cease is uh, going to be struggling a little bit, but oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> there is uh, the best split coming up at the start of CD3, is there not? Oh, it, it is my favorite part <laughs> of Final Fantasy IX Casual, favorite part of Final Fantasy IX Speedrunning, and it is going to be a treat to watch. Oh yeah, so you guys are in for an absolute treat. It's a little bit while to go. It's, I promise. <laughs> I promise it. We got, about, it. we got about 20, 25-ish minutes before we get there, but it's coming, and you can't avoid it as much as you want it. Our last Amaranth name is going to be... Cop. <laughs> I think oh. Cease is going with the Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> Who could have seen that coming after Paul, Blart, and Mall? <laughs> <laughs> You'll love to see it. An homage to the greatest movie of all time. So, uh, in the second part of Ether, this is where the AP and the EXP is actually routed in slightly. It's completely optional, it's not required, but it allows Amaranth to learn HP 10 a little bit early. He's routing in uh, ability points for that. 
Um, it's not essential. It helps a little bit during the arc fight, but yeah, it's it's, it's nice to have. Um, if you don't get it now, it's backed up later. Uh, it's another one of those that's, that's neither here nor there. Uh, HP 10 is really really helpful overall, and it is quite helpful to get it. Um, but one way or the other, we'll have it for when it's really required. Um, so killing something on the way up is gonna is gonna confirm that we're gonna be getting it typically. Yeah, the game does a really good job of balancing out the amount of AP that you need to learn abilities on certain people. There's a lot of abilities that, you know, Zidane and Freya and Steiner would normally have mastered at this point of the game before you even have Amaranth, who of course starts with no AP for anything, but since you don't need the exact same amount of AP um, in characters, there are certain things that it costs Zidane 25 AP to learn that it costs Amaranth 10, so we can catch him up pretty quickly. He's, uh, Good to go in time for us to actually use him in this core. So this final sequence here, Kuja is summoning some Mystodons for us to deal with. They have about as much health as damage as Dan deals, so we were able to knock them out in one hit, hopefully. Um, about they uh, are also 1400 health, I think. It's, yeah, 15, 15, 15. I think it might be like a really high 14, because you can low roll at 14 as well. Okay. Um, but if, if that happens, you've got Amaranth or, or VV to give him a little donk on the head to make up the extra damage nice and easy. Um, a little love tap. Oh yeah, just really send it home. <laughs> um, they are also undead, so you can either throw elixirs with the um, party members, Phoenix Downs if you're uh, a little bit tight on resources, or just cast life with um, Iko with the same mischances earlier. A lot of ways to take them out. They're nice and, nice and squishy, really. But the best yep, way nice is... nice and squishy. They do have a one bad attack, a bad attack called Mist that can put anyone who does not have Insomniac to sleep, and you just don't want to see that. But other nah, than we, that, we, they're not. We, as, a, as a Petro runner, no, Mist doesn't exist. We can't be. We're not allowed <laughs> to be afraid of Mist. No, nope. we just don't even talk that's, about it. No, nope. nope, that's not there. That's not happening. Off the table. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no tongue, no Mist, nothing. It's nope. all. It's just gonna be it's fine. It's not there. I don't know. Nope, don't, can't remember that ability. Don't know what you're don't know what you're about. talking about. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, in the um, in the other routes, because of casting night, it became a priority to be able to get Insomniac equipped on a lot of party members. Um, which is simply just you can't if you've got Insomniac equipped, you cannot fall asleep. Um, which is generally quite a powerful ability, but there aren't many situations in the game where you can be put to sleep by monsters, really. Um, but this is one of them. The Mistodons they have an AOE sleep effect. It's not a very high chance to be put to sleep. Um, but most of our party don't have access to Insomniac at this point. In Night Routes, you are often learning or have learned Insomniac by this point, so you can usually spread it out quite a lot. But um, we are currently susceptible. So Mel is making her way down the final branch of the disc, and she's getting attacked from behind from a monster you can see. Um, the screen works a lot differently than uh, a normal random encounter screen. It's just based off of whatever RNG number you happen to get. And I think it's a... I, I learned the, the actual mechanics of this at one point. I think it's a... There's four out of 256 numbers that you can roll. Oh, that miss is not good. That you can roll that will just cause Mistadon to show up. The first half of the screen, then it's a one and eight. I, there's some crazy statistics about how they show up, and it's, it's just a little bit worse on the uh, the JP version. So they are always guaranteed to get two fights. For the most part, you can get rid of lucky, but... Yeah. Just hoping for one battle here. Me holding our breath as Mel goes down the branch, and just hoping she doesn't get visited by another friend here. It's always weird to see what they decided to change between the versions, and why they... And this entire <laughs> screen, funnily enough, it's... It has a really weird build of momentum. Normally when you're moving around, you press a button and Zidane just moves. But this one, you have to like move <laughs> in the direction and Zidane will start slow and then slowly build Pick up speed. speed. And it's the only yeah. screen it happens in and you can only <laughs> move in one direction. It's just like, all right. Yeah, so cool. bizarre. <laughs> I, I know I saw in, in an interview once, they broke up the game into different sections. So one person worked on one thing and another person worked on another section. And it, it really shows in some parts. It's kind of funny. Mel did make it through without a second encounter. So she is all but done with disc two. Just uh, six or seven minutes of uh, mashing and 
She'll be on to disc three. Amart right behind though, getting the first Mystodon battle. Hopefully that's his only one as well. One solo cutie there. Yeah, you can also this fight in particular can vary between one or two Mystodons. The the two forced encounters prior to it uh, are random. This one is actually there is an incredibly slim chance that you don't get any at all. But uh, more often yes, than we learned that uh, randomly. One uh, random runner was just going through and just made it through the entire screen without getting an encounter. That was the first time anyone had ever seen it. So it's extremely yep. unlikely, and it took me. Oh, I don't even know how long. Ten hours of just holding down on this screen to be able to get through it once, and I don't oh, can, recommend running on it. You save, did you save it on the Moogle prior to this? Yes, yep. Yeah, you did, okay. <laughs> reload, hold down, reset. Reload, hold down, reset. It was... How much time did it, uh, did it save getting that one? Against saving um, the game, do you know? Well, it, it's about... 40 seconds to skip that actual fight, but it ended up costing me a lot because that AP on uh, Amaranth is really valuable when you're not taking any random encounters, so he was yeah. a little short on some abilities that I had to fix, so it ends up probably being about 20 seconds in total saved. Oh, right. So, you have there's... To, um, is, is the time it takes for you to go into the Moogle calculated? Yes. That part, that um, yeah, I mean, that would have been one that you do anyways, just because I... This whole uh, return to Aoife is pretty brutal anyways. I save outside the Aoife tree, so I'd have to, in theory, yeah. do that whole climb, zero encounters, do these perfect Mystodon fights, then do the branch, just get one Mystodon, do that extremely fast. So it's almost better just to save and take perfect fights. What's a perfect fight for the Mystodons? Just instant life, instant Z. Um, yes, I believe that was the case. I think I was under-leveled on Zidane from some other... Uh, missed encounters the uh, the long screen in Eva. I didn't take that one as well. I had zero encounters, so Zidane could not one shot these things. He could do, I think, it's about thirteen hundred damage. So it was a Z hit and Amaranth hit, and then a life on the other one. I believe it's the fastest uh, way I figured out to do it. Did you not get any encounters? Have you had any random? But, but, but no, did you not get any random encounters on Eva at all? Then? No, not in Eva. Only one in the entire game. <laughs> one encounter on uh, Hildegard round three where I had to go through it twice. Could not have been through each screen without an encounter. Just never back and forth from uh, Desert Palace to just yeah, tank the event. Shit. <laughs> can't, you can't yeah. do it twice. It's Statistically, it's possible, but no thank you. Yep. Yeah, uh, zero on the branch is another thing that I've never had there. I've never not had the Misted on. There's a, <laughs> a bunch of these really lucky things that I've not had, which is uh, pretty wild. It's a trip when it happens. You don't even realize that you've made it through the entire screen. Like, wait a minute. Yeah. There was no Whoa. fight there. <laughs> now that's a goal. <laughs> <laughs> but Amart has made it through as well. He only had the one Mistadon fight. And knowing the luck that we're seeing, eh, we might get a visit on Ceases, but we're, we're not going to on that. We're, we're going to see Cease just cruise right on through the end of this disc, I'm guessing. Oh yeah, 100%. So this is the first of the forced encounters, I believe, so hopefully good aid to be on Zidane. Ooh, not bad. Get him in. Ah! Okay, yeah. head attack we can deal with. Very nice, That's very nice. Happy. Yeah. I believe that Zidane can actually aid to be weight these guys, so if you miss, you can kind of like get him to have another Wouldn't go. Wouldn't doubt it, yeah. They I'm don't see sure him all he... that fast. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he can have another go. Oh, that was the second one. Okay, yeah, nice. Quick little cheeky nice. little cure there. Top everyone up. Make sure there's nothing nothing sinister happens on the branches. Yep, heading down. Got the first encounter. Pretty much at the average rate of when we tend to see them. Not the best ATB, we have to sit through this annoying fire attack, but we'll get right through this fight. Thankfully, it's only one of them. Yeah, it took me quite a long time to actually get my head around counting, because there's a lot of AP that can be counted here for that AP, for HP 10 and figuring out and knowing when you're going to learn it and whatnot. But eventually one day I was like, you know what, I'm going to learn how this works. <laughs> <And> it didn't <laughs> really help. 
There's so much variance and it's so hard when you're five and a half hours into a run to keep track of the tiny things and remember how many things you fought and where you are. Sometimes it's uh, it's great to have all the crazy fans in chat that you can say, hey, did I did I learn this ability on this fight? And they'll go back and watch your stream and say, yep, you learned it here. Or, no, you need to do this. And that's the greatest part of our community is you always have some fans watching that can help you along the way. I'm pretty sure there was a bunch of that during my PV. I was like, hey, did I do this? <laughs> This is on, right? <laughs> I've got to go. Yep. So much <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're fine. Even if you know, so you just need a little bit of reassurance every now and oh, then. Please tell me. <laughs> CD3. All right. Mel's on to disc three. Still got it in in 515. A high 515, but we got it in there. Very nice. So that was... We ended up on a two... 222 this one which puts that at like a 48 58 48 sounds right pretty good pretty good i think we might still get the excalibur 2 if we're lucky yeah it should be it should be in the run-ins close so close. Um, when i <laughs> for the europeans in the this is how skewed excalibur 2 was against us <laughs> so last year I picked up a, a PAL PS1 and I ran it, right? And this was when I was getting like c pretty consistent sub nine hour runs on American PS2. And I picked I, my final, I picked up Excalibur 2 at 11 hours. And that's with all like, like nearly two years worth of practice behind me. And I didn't skip any cutscenes or anything. And it wasn't segmented, it was all one, one run. But oh my goodness. <laughs> that is it's just, just not fair. Not fair. <laughs> Man, Pal was just it was doomed from the beginning. <laughs> that was a terrifying run as well because I, I got to Death Guys and I was like, alright, let's save it. And I went to save it and it was like, can't accept this memory card, it's just not oh, right. No. I was like, right, well, let's <laughs> well, spin no the wheel. Pal memory cards, let's go, let's do it. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. That's crazy. Amart about a minute and a half behind uh, 51720, it looked like, for his disc two. Pretty good, pretty good. And Cease is just right there as well. Got a little bit more text to mash, and we'll be right behind. Yep, so we are. Um, there's going to be quite a lot of mashing, unfortunately. It's about 20 minutes from the start of disc three until we get to the, the exciting bit. So we could. Um... Probably just recap on what's going on at this point, and I'm pretty sure it's it is just a general like what is going on with our characters. There's a bit of a time skip here. Sometimes past um, everyone's kind of settling back into some sort of a normal routine because, as far as they're concerned, everything's kind of done. Ku just kind of slunk back into the shadows for a little while. Zidane's uh, having a little bit of a depressive episode now that Dagger is queen and he doesn't really get to spend any time with her. So he spends a lot of time drinking in the bar. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dagger is a little yeah, bit confused with her identity. He isn't really sure what to do with it. Yeah, as you just saw on Cease's screen, the uh, queen has met her end at the hands of Bahamut, controlled by Kuja, who is an evil presence, but we still don't quite know his modus operandi right now. So he's just going to kind of wander off into the shadows while... while uh, Dagger has to pick up the pieces and is now the queen of Alexandria, so time is going to pass in the story. Well, things start to settle down a little bit as far as we know. There's still an evil threat of Kuja in the distance, but no one really knows where he came from, where he is, what his plan is. So let's just uh, hope for the best and run our city. And you know what? Since we're pressed and don't really know what to do with ourselves, we might as well just play cards. That sounds good to me. Um, you know what? If if you're gonna go out, going out to Bahamut is pretty mel. <laughs> That's it, pretty, it's pretty mel. great. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we got this uh, stuff going on with oh, a little bit of game, a little bit of the token gameplay, of course, <laughs> amongst all the mashing. Um, it drops after several minutes of dialogue. You have to move like three feet with Ico to trigger the next chunky bit of uh, mashing. Yep, it's coming up for Mel. It's about a minute away. We call it the most important movement in the entire game. 
Oh yeah. We'll see if Mel can okay. nail it. We'll we'll judge her very very harshly on this. I remember. She's been practicing um, though. I think she's gonna get this. <laughs> one of the one of the turbo runners once revealed his secrets to me, and that's uh, with certain turbo controllers you can also turbo turbo the D pad inputs, and uh, we'd go AFK <laughs> and turbo the movement to get I <laughs> so he could have that an is next break. level. <laughs> that is insanely impressive. I love it. <laughs> Shouts to the Mythic Dawn. Right, turning a uh, five-minute break and a ten-minute break into a fifteen-minute break. So this whole cutscene that we are dealing with as part of Alexandria is actually pretty adorable. There's a miscommunication with a love letter passed around between many many characters originally meant for meant from Ico to Zidane but gets passed around from hand to hand and there's a comedy of errors that takes place in this scene it's a very memorable and a great cutscene when you're playing casually but when you're speedrunning it's 15 minutes of just mashing and mashing and mashing and mashing and mashing oh yeah usually this is the point where you uh, decide whether the run is worth it anymore <laughs> Yep, um, you, you check your disc two time and think, do I really want to mash through this next 15 minutes and hope the run lives? Yeah, because there's another blender that you, the, the, in a moment when we do the, the card tournament, is a bit of a blender for runs. When you get um, to the point when your your PB is quite tight, if you end up you know, losing a little bit of time to cards, it can be really, really, really painful. It puts a lot of people off of finishing their plate when they get this far. Yep, we've hinted at it a lot, and I think it's time to address the elephant in the room that we are coming up on the card tournament. Uh, everyone, every speedrunner is the least favorite part of the run, I would say. I can't imagine there's someone who's actually looking forward to this part. Even though I love the game, I think it's fantastic. Unapologetically and unironically, I actually really do love Tetra Master. Um, there's a lot that goes into this mini game, and if you this a lot and you understand how the system works you can use a little bit of that to your advantage but at the end of the day there is some randomness involved so a lot of people end up thinking it's not worth trying to fully understand and throw it away as just completely rng but there are a lot of things that you can do if you practice to make the odds in your favor so we're going to see a lot of different strats from these runners they've all got their own methods of what they prefer there's no right way there's no wrong way to do things but really fun mini game once you understand it a bit more the problem is the game does not hold your hand at all when it comes to playing it it's something you either need to look up online or just brute force learn so absolutely it can be a beast it's, one of the, it's really it's quite difficult to understand how to actually learn it in a speedrun environment as well because the strategies that people you, you often need to have someone say you know what this is this is how it works because <laughs> just understanding this the strategies that the the, the speedrunners use and stuff is, is kind of counterintuitive a lot of the time and it, yeah, it's, there's a lot of a lot of experience like, like cumulative experience that's gone into learning how to how to play it and whatnot but once you once you get your head around it it's a lot of fun yep it's a it's a great little game and anyone who wants to learn more about it feel free to drop by uh, my channel at any time I love playing it and I love explaining it and I'll explain it a bit here because it's one of those things that like I said, they don't teach you anything about when you're playing the game. So you see these numbers and they don't really make any sense to you. Um, short version, uh, you you always see four numbers on a card. There's a number, a letter, and then two more numbers. So, for example, 3M20. You see those numbers and you're like, I don't know what this means. What do I do with this information? So the way that it works, the first number, that three, is attack power. So you have three attack power. The letter that follows it tells you what type of attack damage you're doing. M is for magic and P is for physical. The third number, so if it's 3M20, the 2 is your physical defense and the 0 is your magic defense. So if you have a 3M20 and you attack a, a 1P01, that means you have 3 magic attack going against 1 magic defense. 
Does that mean that the three always wins? Not necessarily, but it gives you a better chance. It's gonna pool, it's gonna draw from a pool of bigger numbers. So you have good odds of beating a card, but that's a three versus a one. Once you get your head around that, it becomes a lot easier to see what's likely to happen in the game. The problem is they never sit down and tell you those numbers. They never let you see it uh, in a nice, clean way. And the game moves very fast on the computer's side, so you really don't get to see what's going on uh, slowly so you can recognize the whole thing. So it tends to be numbers flying left and right and cards changing colors. It gets very complicated. But if you sit down with it, you can develop certain strategies to figure out the best way to survive, whether you want to battle, whether you want to just take a card. It's, it's really intricate, and we'll see a lot of different strategies here. But the most important thing to take away from it all is that you open Goblin to E4. <laughs> <laughs> and then you play exactly. around that. <laughs> so I'm going to just answer some questions from the chat just because this is a good downtime. Um, I was asking, uh, there is a random aspect to it. Yes, there absolutely is. So like, if you have a three that's battling a one, um, what's going to happen is you're going to see a number pop up on both of the cards. You're going to see like 34 and um, 11. And that's what your starting HP essentially is. The the higher the number, the higher the potential starting HP. And then what it does is, let's say 34 and 11 are your two numbers. It's going to roll an RNG roll between 0 and 34 for your card and 0 and 11 for the other card. And it will subtract that amount from the total. So at the end of that subtraction, whatever the higher number is, wins the battle. So the 34 has a higher chance of ending with more health than the 11, but it's not guaranteed. The 34 could roll a 34, lose all of its health, and the 11 could roll a 0 and maintain all of its health. So that's where the randomness comes in. You do have a better chance, and there's a, a grid that explains the odds of everything. So usually um, a 9 is almost always going to beat a 0, but that's what keeps it interesting is a 0 can win. So... That's where people say it's just completely RNG, it's made up, it doesn't matter. There's a little bit of RNG to keep it interesting. Yeah, just when you're speedrunning, generally what you try to do is... The computer will often favor taking battles. So the best way that we manage a lot of the fights is we play cards, we take cards without engaging in fights, and try and limit the computer's option from engaging in further fights. And that's the best way to get through it is by rather than engaging in fights and rolling the dice every time, we let we play. All right, this card's got a down arrow. They haven't got an up arrow. I'll just take it. Just give it. That's mine. Yep. And it's yeah, also fast. It's slow. So. Yep. Uh, another chat asked, where do the numbers 34 and 11 come from in my example? Someone else answered it and they're exactly right. So it's uh, this is getting way too complicated and more than you actually need to know to play the, to play the game. But it is. Uh, a hexadecimal based system. So a zero means it can be anywhere from zero to 15. A one means it can be anywhere from 16 to 31, so on and so forth. So it's going to pull a random number from that range and give you that for the base health. So it's all a hex, it's a hex based system to make it determining some of the numbers. Um, and if there isn't a fight, you automatically gain that card. So if you have an arrow pointing to a card that doesn't have an arrow to defend it, you automatically win. So even as you'll see in this speed run, our runners are going to have very low level cards because we're not dueling. We're not picking up um, better cards on the ground along the way. So we're basically starting with a couple handful of cards that we got at the very beginning of the game. And we're hoping for a couple others that have dropped randomly. Uh, there's a one in eight chance that it drops from almost every fight. So we fought a lot of random encounters. So we got a lot of, not a lot, but a couple random cards along the way. So we're most likely going to be seeing a lot of zeros, ones, and twos on our cards. And we're going to be hoping to just get some guaranteed wins. Pretty much. Unfortunately, the, all the cards that are being played at this point in the game, they're all quite low level. So you don't often see their, uh, numbers going above two. Sometimes you see some threes. Usually the second opponent that you play against can play some like fairly powerful cards, but... Most of the time, they don't play intelligently, so you can kind of exploit that. Sometimes they are literal gods, and they will have the correct yes. card perfectly um, when you don't want them to, and that is unfortunately just something that happens sometimes. Um, 
but the only thing to make sure that is that you, you win the first two games as quickly as possible um, and the final game you just don't draw it uh, you can throw the game um, which is okay but the the reward for winning the final match is the rebirth ring which is the biggest safety net in the entire game it's so valuable um, and you you do really want it it's very 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 helpful um, but you don't need it and you can just get out of there if you know if, if you're willing to take a loss sometimes yep so yeah the goal is to get through the first two fights ideally in win-win scenario and if you're doing a speed run you just want to win or lose the third fight quickly you just don't want to draw and drag it out um, we might see some safety saving in this part of the run if you get really unfortunate all of your cards can be taken from you and you can end up in a very 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 bad spot it's been known to happen so see if we get some safety saving along the way it is really nice to win the actual card tournament and get that reward more often than not though they don't usually we see like maybe like five to six games through the course of a tournament probably from these sort of scenarios Usually, obviously, like the the three O's are like, that's that's the dream, and whatnot. But most 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 of the time, you have a draw or two, maybe a loss on the way there. Um, yeah, if you can get through it in four games, you are you should be very happy. If you take five, you're like that's that's fine. If you take six, you're like that was annoying, but whatever. And then if you are, it's very easy to take seven or eight or more, and this can be a run killer for a lot of people. So it's something that's worth practicing and understanding as best as you can. You don't have to be a master at Tetra Master, but nope. knowing every, not every, but a couple little tricks and what to do in certain spots really helps. It's very easy to sit there and look at your cards and think, I don't know what the best move is. And you can spend 20 seconds thinking about every individual move, or you can try to play fast and hope for the best. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Yeah. There are a lot of really weird strategies that go into it, and often when you're reviewing it, it's, it's often the play that you are least thinking of at that moment as well. So here we're going to see the great disappearing Amaran. Nice. There he goes. That means yeah. that we mash the text boxes nice and quickly. <laughs> Good job, Mel. So first round is going to be coming up. I uh, can't remember their name. Cardona Bishop is second, right? Oh, good. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> I can't remember the first Oh, one. man. Yeah, I can't either. We mashed it. through so fast, I don't think I've even looked. We'll, we'll try to, to get it perfectly down. It looks like Mel is going to zoom right past and do a safety save first, which is a very good idea and for right, a marathon. Go back. you got to trigger the dog. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wake up the Moogle. Cooper. you got to trigger the dog, and he got to be quick as well, or else he jumps over to the other yeah. side of the screen. Oh, this was good fun to save when I was blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, if, you're, if you are going to do the safety save there, it's actually faster to go around the right side. Fun fact for you other two runners, if you're going to do the safety save first, you can go back to the first screen and go around the right side. Ah, <laughs> the more you know. It's going to do it faster, yep. You're telling me that you didn't do the entire mashing sequence every time you tried this? No, I had a uh, shop <laughs> before every card tournament attempt. It was great. <laughs> All right, Mel is heading into round one. Let's see how she does. Attic Man Wake, I think, is. Uh... These cards are all right. Yeah. Got a scary. lot of cards. Sometimes you want a lot of arrows. Sometimes you don't. Okay, Mel we're is on the, uh, on the draw. Fewer this is arrow good. player. Okay, lost the 50 50. Not too bad. We can't get back into it, though. Ah! Okay, they're playing away. That's good. Nice Sometimes play. you just really don't know what the computer has based on what they have played. At this point, it looks like the computer has absolutely nothing, but they could... Okay, that's it. That's it. Yeah, win, win, win. Very nice. Nice. Okay. Very solid first win for Mel. And Amart is heading into round one. We got a, so much Tetra action going on here. Now it's Cardona Bishop. Absolutely lost in the card tournament. Mark got a lucky Gargant card. Very, very helpful. Oh my god, this is incredible. Surrounded in cards, I love it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> gonna make a play here. Just take that weird back. Very nice. Oh, there we go. Okay, down left. Can't really get involved with this. This is a bit of an awkward place to be in. She's got a safety square though. She can play in the top, and she's opting not to yet. You got to... Oh no, no, no. Right, we're gonna do... play with that weird. Yeah. Lucky. Yeah. 
Lucky. Yeah, Lucky, you okay? Ah, no, Lucky. Uh, no, we're okay. Is still the zoo back? Man. Ooh, this is dangerous. Oh, the zoo with the zoo. Like the zoo. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Nice. Uh, nice. nice. Very nice. nice. Lucky. <laughs> Lucky little bit. I didn't see what happened with AMR. Let's see. He won his first game. Very, nice. very good. Mel might go do a safety save here if she wants to guarantee rebirth. Yep, looks like she is going to do that. You, you want to do a save before the end anyway because of missed those. That's a very um, good like point. Yeah. We were talking about earlier the Mistodons can sleep you in, and during the yep. there's a fight sequence coming up re immediately after this, and uh, they can just kill you in this route. It's quite slim. They have to use mist, and it has to connect, Ooh. and it has to put someone to sleep. Which are all a few variables that are ultimately quite stacked in your favor. Um, yep. But if it does happen, you can just die. Mart had a nice fight there. Got a little bit of help on some good luck, but he absolutely won the second fight. So we got win win and win win so far. Alrighty. Amart's going to go and take that safety save as well. Almost forgot the dog too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the dog. Yep, he definitely did get a bit lucky. I think he still would have had a good chance of winning that one. I, I'd have to go back and double check, but it looked like I think he w would have lost it to 5-4 uh, of their lead, and he had the last play. I think he could have won either way, but he didn't have to worry about it too much with a little bit of luck. All right, Mel is going oh, okay. into the final battle. We've got our Swiss Army Golem down there. Yep. Okay. One quirk about the final battle is they will only play the Ogolop cards, which are always physical, so sometimes people like to stack their uh, magical attack cards for this fight, because they have a better chance of Dang. winning. This is, uh, I think ah. none of the... Uh, oh, goodness. None of the uh, Ogolops will have What's the play? magic defense. You... you gotta gotta go for it, take that six. Oh no, this is a good two for... I kind of like this. Yep, you gotta Ooh. do it. No, I don't nice. like that. Okay, still it's uh, nice. Let's go, Mel. Nice job. I would have been win, punished win, win. too. That last dog lot had a down yep. arrow. Let's go, Mello. <laughs> All right, Amar, bring it home too. Come on. Amar is opting for a little more physical attack. He's got some more arrows though. That uh, Andragora card is going to come in clutch. I think. Ooh. Won the first battle in a lucky roll. Oh, won the seventy-five twenty-five. Let's go, Amar. Yep. It was a 7-7 final outcome. You might be wondering, why did it let Amart win that one? The defense wins if it's a tie. So defense is a little bit more of a, a boost in that scenario. All okay. right, this is a very open board. This is interesting. Putting the fight. Probably all right, it's all going to come down to a nice, nice win. Take every uh, Take come on. Ah. Oh, that was scary. Come on, hold your breath. Nice. Nicely no done. Right. Imagine losing at Tetra Master. No, Two, you. three O's. Oh my. RNG? Very well done, no, 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 no. <laughs> now no, just no, win. No, no, no. Needs RNG. And they get some cutscenes, which gives us plenty of time to watch Cease. They don't get any cutscenes. Sorry, there's a there's a very important uh, menu. They're not, not quite menu, but text option mini game here that they have to do. Mm -hmm. We'll make sure they do it right. We'll talk about that we finish watching Cease, which is way more entertaining. Nice, there's that goblin. Don't forget to put it to E4. <laughs> nice, perfect, yep. <laughs> Lovely antlion card being brought out. Very, very helpful in the first couple rounds. Usually it all I think it always has at least two attack, so you can put it to good use. Nice, he's nice, okay. For 7 and 0 so far. Did we have him get back into this? Very nice. Yeah, I might be a little bit ahead of you in the feed. Apologies for spoilers if I am giving them away. Cease heading into round two, still taking some very strong cards. You can see there's a different strategy for everyone. Cease opting to take the goblin, which some people see those zeros and panic and say, I don't want this card. People say, I just need some filler to you know, be able to take some cards back and play with. Ooh, very nice fight for Cease. Good job. And this looks like a solid win. All right, eight and no. Come on, Cease, bring it home. 
Oh my goodness, that was, that was <laughs> touching. <laughs> Look, little tense. Let's go. <laughs> Mel getting the first lucky. Mistodon skip out of the way. We can watch her do the second Mistodon skip here. And we're going to talk about a lot of stuff back and forth in a second while we focus on the And the Brave skip? Uh, okay, get the line no. up. Uh, <laughs> doing the classic setup. Very we'll nice. See if, uh, perfect. We'll talk about that in a second once Cease is done with her card tournament. Yeah. Just skips one of the fights, saves 30 to 40 seconds, is it? Very nice. Yep. The it's biggest gonna... skip in the game, I would say. Yeah, it literally is. Unfortunately, it's one of the easiest ones. <laughs> I know. Let's make sure Amart can get those, both missed on skips as well. Yep, quick little menu no, first no off, doubt. though. Get some of the new gear on here. Turn on all these abilities. Very nice. Beatrix in the back row. So we've taken all of Beatrix's armor off for this sit section because we want uh, we want it on Steiner. So she's quite quite flimsy right now. So back rowing her is going to give her a lot of much needed protection. <gasps> Ooh, he's playing that one scary. Beatrix, okay. Let's go. And we skipped it. We're out of there. All right. See if we can get the second skip. Might do a different setup for it because he has turbo. He's doing the turbo <laughs> route. It's basically free. Nice. We'll explain that again in a second. Don't worry. Don't worry. Then it's on to some uh, forced encounters. They're not too scary. You just want to make sure you don't have awful ATB and you don't get the mists, which never happens in Petro Route, as we said before. Never seen it in my life. After these fights, it's a lot of uh, cutscenes, so we'll be able to catch you up on everything in Cease's stream when uh, she gets there. So don't right. worry. On just the love cards way too much. So come on, Cease, bring it home. Let's go. Oh, nice double take, and she can't fight that five. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. I'm in an really unfortunate like spot with the arrows. It's a nice win. Okay. Ooh. To be a little careful here just because of the arrows that she has. Play it safe and win. Yes. That is 9 and 0 oh for those counting at home. I don't I can't nice. imagine there's ever been an FF9 marathon where we haven't had a single card loss. That was amazing. That was unreal. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. So all three of our runners have the rebirth ring. They're not going to have to do rebirth ringless rats, which is incredible. Great job, everyone. Yeah, that was huge. We'll kind of catch you up on uh, Cease's stream after this cutscene is over, but for now we can take a look at these Mistodon fights. They work mostly similar to the Mistodon fights at the end of disc one. Steiner can kill them in one hit, and... Um, Beatrix acts as our Ico here and can defeat Mistodons with life. So it's always a set number of Mistodons you fight in this uh, small little gauntlet. And basically we're just hoping for instant Steiner ATB as you just saw with Mel's. Otherwise you end up like a scenario that Amar is currently dealing with where the Mistodon goes first and you're relying on your own team to dispatch the, uh, the fight as quickly as possible. Ideally Steiner because a quick attack is better than life. And in addition, if you manage to save enough mana on Beatrix, you actually have enough to cast Shock during the final fight. <laughs> Which is, yep. uh, you can't miss, it's guaranteed to hit. You can't miss. You know, so there's a couple things we kind of glossed sword. over. Uh, I think it's the same speed. It might be okay. a couple frames different either way, but I don't think it's majorly different. Um, coming up on Cease's stream to something we kind of glossed over on Mel and Amart because we were watching Cease, there is a small little mini game here where you dispatch the soldiers uh, for Steiner in a certain order. You tell a certain amount of people to go a certain direction. I think it relates to the beginning of the game. If you go and talk to every one of these soldiers in disc one at the very start and remember exactly where they were, you follow that, but you'll never will. Um, it's a good way to do it where you select the first option and the third crew, and then you just mash the rest of the way through. It's kind of quick and easy, but you get a accessory for it, the angel earrings, that aren't really useful except for they sell for 10,000 gil, which is extremely necessary in this run. It's a lot of money. Yep, so it's one of those ones you, you do not want to be mashing through. There's a lot of backup things you need to do to make up that money. So, quick little mini game that isn't all that difficult, but you want to make sure you're doing right. So now Cease is going to do the same menu and take the equipment that she needs off of Beatrix and then is going to do two Mistodon skips. The first one acts like the guards from earlier in the game where if you touch them and run into them the fight will start. They have a very big hitbox though so you want to kind of lure it to the right side of that ticket booth and wait for it to growl and then you can just kind of run around and he's too slow to catch up. 
that was really clean movement. <laughs> that was clean. So the second skip on this uh, screen right here that you see C's doing in the classic setup for the line for where the screen exit is and the line for the trigger uh, of the fight ugh, the in the way. overlaps in a weird way. So if you set up your diner at the right pixel, you can just hold left and you'll cut through the um, screen transition, but you won't trigger the fight. It, it's really precise, though, and unfortunately, Cease just got caught. It's kind of hard to adjust if you don't nail it right away, but it's a very quick fight, so not too bad. Yeah, shifting left and right pulls Beatrix down, and then she can do what she just did and sort of bonk into you a little bit so that your uh, your hitbox bumps into the screen transit, the, the fight trigger, and it can really mess you up. The only way that you can kind of refix it is by moving back up the screen, kiting Beatrix up a little bit, and then trying again. And it's it's kind of frustrating to deal with. So, and then from uh, there, it's uh, it's kind of ho-hum just to finish off these Mistadons, and then there's about 20, 25 minutes of uh, mashing and break time as we go back to Lindblom again before the run really starts. <laughs> so yeah, you get a little bit of an oasis in all the mashing in this three. It's, uh, there is only really one more piece of downtime, which is also fairly long in the entire run fortunately after this point but um, once you're done with that that's kind of it there is a, a good chunk of gameplay coming up a lot of movement across the overworld start of this well mid start early mid sort of thing it's about an hour deep across the yep and this is where where all the preparation that we've been doing is really going to come into effect we've been doing a lot of things to get ready for fights coming up and it's just about that time it is very satisfying when everything starts to fall into place. All these abilities you've been learning and hoarding and making sure you have AP for and all these pieces of equipment that do certain uh, immunities and effects that you need to get, it's all coming to a head. But not Insomniac, we don't need that one. No, never. <laughs> this isn't real, it can't hurt you. I've never heard of it. <laughs> Do you know what's going? Do you know what's going on in these cutscenes? Because I actually can't remember. Yeah, absolutely. So um, earlier in the game, they were trying to take this pendant from uh, Garnet that you see on Amart's stream is shining very brightly because it contained an uh, Idolin. It contained Bahamut specifically, and um, Kuja was able to take that from Garnet and use it for his own evil doings. And what's happening in this cutscene is he is back to Alexandria in that attempt. Oh, sorry, I, I think I got that backwards. But he did steal um, Bahamut from Garnet, and he is using that to attack Alexandria. The pendant contains the Alexander Eidolon, which um, Echo and Dagger are using together to protect the city. So right now on Melstream, you see the wings of Alexander are coming in to protect the, um, the city and Bahamut is no match for Alexander. So this is when Kuja gets his plan to realize there are probably some stronger summons out there. So his plan turns from, I'm gonna use these summons that I've already collected to I'm gonna go find the most powerful summon that exists. And I think that's gonna be in uh, Oilberg. So that's where he sends the party to shortly. Yeah, these are the good cutscenes, man. Everyone loves Bahama stuff. They're also great. These uh, FMVs in this game are fantastic. This is going to be the last time that we see Alexandria in one piece, I believe. <laughs> or is that no, no? Is that later? No, it is. It is. It is here. No, that. this is here. Yeah. This is when a lot of uh, mini games are taken away from you. The uh, Paul races. I think. Uh, Paul meets his end here. I think that is actually him fleeing on Mel's screen. He is no longer an Alexandrian <laughs> citizen. If you want to get the athlete queen, I think that was your last chance. It's over. So this eye that we're seeing in the sky is the, the very same eye that we've seen in all of Dagger's flashbacks, but she's finally realizing what it, what it is, I think. 
Oh no, she doesn't see it yet. Does she? She sees it in the in brown ball. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if she actually is seeing it. I think she's a little too preoccupied. But we are learning what it actually is. It's this uh, new character we haven't met yet. But this was the eye that she saw as the kid that uh, took down her mother in the village of summoners, Medane Starry. Turns out it's an airship that was used to steal Eidolons. So we're seeing a, a really good question. is How different is the PlayStation run to the HD run? Or the PC run? Um, it's a really good question because there are enough differences to really change the way the, the speed run operates. And um, generally speaking, um, the PlayStation version... The, the HD... Mm, I don't even know it's again. I suppose the HD version is um, a little bit more friendly in some ways. Um, it, uh, it's got... The, 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 the first one, the first and foremost, is that it is shorter. Uh, the HD version has cutscene skips enabled in that you can... When you get into a cutscene, you can press A or X or whatever your confirm button is to choose to skip the cutscene, which brings the runtime down about 45 minutes or so to an hour um, yep. on that piece alone. Um, load times are a lot quicker. Um, in the speed run, uh, the way that we re-record time, the programs that we use um, have load times removed by built-in. So you don't need a really good computer either. Um, you can just have any computer, and the the program will remove your load time, so you can play on a on a, on a Dell PC from 2001. As long as it <laughs> runs the game, it will. Doesn't matter how long it takes for you to get in, as long as it runs the game, okay, you'll be fine. Um, whereas when you're playing on hardware, it it can cost quite a lot of money to get all the equipment set up and whatnot. Um, yeah, especially if you're not uh, North America based, you you really need to be running on a uh, American console for it to run fast enough and that can be really expensive for um foreign countries to be able to get their hands on those the uh, markup on that is insane these days yeah the only other alternative is that you can play on a japanese system which are also quite sh um cheap but they can be uh, <laughs> hey Mark, they can be quite <laughs> difficult to uh it, it's it's difficult to learn in a foreign language for sure because if something especially with final fantasy 9 where when you're learning this game things are going to go wrong you are going to make mistakes and that is completely natural um, and backing things up is a lot more difficult when you can't read the abilities um, yep. and things like that. Uh, but yeah, yeah the, other, the other difference, the other major difference on uh, PC is that things are just not quite as smooth as they are on um, console. The menus are a little bit different. It's, it's just a little bit clunkier. So if you are coming from playing the console version, you'll notice things just don't quite flow as easily you're just starting on pc you won't really know it but it, it's not as clean as the uh, console version let's just say that yeah the alternative is if you kind of want to play the the console version but you're on a budget is that em there is a category enabled for emulators and um, there are some people that Absolutely. dabble with it from time to time it's where i started personally um it's my it's my home turf and uh the emulators that are allowed these days are very very similar to hardware they're a little bit slower in the load department but the input latency um, side of it has gotten a lot better recently. Um, it's very competitive yeah. still. Some of the times on there are quite, they're quite good, um, and it, it gets to run all the exact same things as a PSX one. So if you do end up really liking the run and you want to pivot over, then uh, switching from emulator to hardware is as simple as buying the hardware. Um, but PC yeah. generally is uh, is is it, it's a little bit easier to get into. It's got auto saves enabled by default. So if you do make a mistake or if you get killed then you can just pop straight back in. Um, Cutscene skips. Uh, by default, you'll have um, turbo because auto clickers and things like that are just... You can just get a program for it and it will manage it for you. Um, <laughs> and to be honest, I'd probably say that the HD community is probably more run these days. There's probably yeah, more active HD PC runners than, than console currently um, overall. Uh, there's al always the console category, the HD console as well, if you've got it on like, your PS4 or your Xbox. Those ones also exist. You can still run on there as well. I think PS4. No, no one's run done a run on PS5 yet. I don't believe. Not that I've seen. Yeah, I, I'd be very curious to see the timing. But uh, yeah, I believe that PS4 is currently the fastest. Uh, one person has PS4. done a PS5 run on HD oh, console. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe only one though. Yeah. yeah, we we strongly encourage any way you can get started. It's if, if uh, you want to start out on emulator or. Um, HD console, that's a great way to get your toes wet to see if it's a game you actually want to play. It's uh, 
it's it's the cheaper option it's the quicker option you can start going and that's kind of our best advice if you want to learn this game is to just start playing don't uh, try to master something on. instantly just start playing and you'll get the hang of it yeah the only way that isn't great is to play on ps3 yeah try to <laughs> yeah you want to really try and avoid european releases of the game at least for playing original versions so if you're playing on emulator if you're playing on a like a, 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 an original setup that you've got at home, like a PS2, if you're from Europe, please don't play on PAL. <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. <laughs> no. it's, it's just a lot slower. Oh, yeah. Um, my The very, very, very first run I ever did when I was... Before, I, <laughs> I just did it blind completely. I just picked up my Switch. I had it on there and they did run on there. And it was awful. And I had no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> Switch is a uh, switch is not so hot. <laughs> Don't probably try and avoid switch. But again, if you've got it on switch and you just wanted to do a run, then there's nothing wrong with it. You just uh, yeah, just the loads are really, really, really slow. Um, HD you know, console you... does have um, a unique bug where if you're doing some sell menus, some things that you're not trying to sell will be sold in place of the things that you are <laughs> trying to sell, which is unique to HD console. It's a very special little bug. Yeah, and even if you have very fond memories of this game as a child and never got the Excalibur 2, for example, following along with the speedrun guide and taking your time in a lot of places is a great way to get started. That's how I got my start with this game, and I think a lot of people yeah. were also the same. Just like, hey, I want to replay this game, but let's see how the speedrunners do it. Yeah, and You'd be surprised how quickly you can pick it up. Yeah, the routes that people use these days typically are like, they've got a lot of like armor in them, a lot of protection and things like that. As long as you vaguely follow the strategies and things like that, you don't have to execute anything perfectly. The game, ultimately, the, the speed run, like to execute it isn't that hard. Um, optimizing it is where all the difficulty lies, which exactly. obviously comes quite a lot later. But um, yeah, no matter what platform, they're all good. HD console is definitely more accessible. The HD PC is definitely more accessible has turbo and all that sort of stuff already built in which means that you have the problem with hd is that um i think there is only one sequence in the game but other than there's there's the there's a tiny bit with like an auto scroller in the airship here and there there's the clara dance and maybe one or two other parts <laughs> of the game where you don't need an yeah. auto clicker and there isn't a cutscene that you can skip which is awful because there is no other way to take a break um yep. when we play on console the, there is a lot of cutscenes and there's you know, a bunch of these which add up to like a minute here and 45 seconds there and whatnot where you can go and go to the bathroom and get a drink and grab some food or something. And some of them stack together and give you quite a bit of time, um, which HD console is most difficult with. You can use like a wireless controller and maybe take that to the kitchen or something with you while you're mashing if the range reaches. Yeah. And um, what does the Excalibur 2 have that is different? Uh, so Excalibur 2 is just a really powerful sword. Um, it's also got the holy attribute, um, which means that if you give Steiner a piece of gear that boosts holy damage, then it, it scales greater. So there's a bunch of ways that we can scale our characters, which such as like MP attack, man eater, and bird killer, and things like that. And if you can scale an attribute, an element, sorry, as well, then you can achieve even higher damage. So Steiner goes from dealing around four and a half to five thousand damage to just easily dealing max damage a hundred percent as soon as you get Excalibur two. As long as he's got a micro helmet on, basically, it's that simple. Um, just scale the holy damage as well, and he just starts clocking. He starts clocking. Um, you don't <laughs> actually need it. You can finish a run without it, um, but some fights that you really want to end quickly are going to last a little bit longer, so they can get a little bit more dicey. And the strategies that you're going to see speedrunners do aren't going to work as well for you. But you, yeah, if if you do it on HD, um, as long as you skip cutscenes and such, you'll very comfortably make Excalibur 2. And if you don't, you can just turn the boosters on for the end of it or something like that, just to you know make sure that you get it. Just between like moving yeah, you, around and stuff. Even on console, people's first runs uh, and console is obviously way less forgiving and a lot more encounters. Usually, their first runs come in around ten. Uh, 10 hours and 30 minutes ish so even they are in no danger of missing the Excalibur 2 it's not like it's something that you won't make it there in time on your first run if you're just following along with a guide yeah so yeah the, the problem with Excalibur 2 that people have when they're trying to perform Excalibur 2 runs a lot I've seen a lot of people go for Excalibur 2 but they kind of just go into it with the intention of I'm just going to do the story and I should be able to get it 
But the problem with that is that if you don't plan anything, then you won't have the necessary abilities. Things like body temp and things like that, like things that stop you from being afflicted by really nasty debuffs, which are really yeah. prevalent in only, unfortunately, like the last hour and a half of the game <laughs> or so. And they really get you. And they'll really, they'll really, really get you. And there's a few pieces of gear that like just make you invincible to certain bosses and stuff. There's seriously just uh, yeah. There's a couple little things, and if you don't have those, and often, for example, we use the diamond gloves, which is an item that you get at the start of CD3, which they've got they've got ability up on them. To be fair, I think right. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, some some stuff that like you might not feel is very important, but they they completely nullify water which doesn't sound very helpful but when you're going up against a boss that spams water gut every single turn it's like oh you you, you don't do lose. anything any you can't hurt me yeah. anymore i can't die yeah um so there's a bunch of gear that it's it really helps to know what they do and the, the speed runners just says yeah make sure you've got this don't sell this and whatnot and if you follow the the, the menus are, uh fairly correct you don't have to get them perfect <laughs> You can, yeah. you can mess up a little bit. Just some things will be quite slow. But even if they're a little slow, you'll still get Excalibur too nice and easy. Exactly. But yeah, couldn't, I couldn't recommend it enough. It's a lot of fun. And the, the cool thing as well that I think a lot of people gloss over is they think that they're going to have to go into this game and they have to sit down and do it in one go. Absolutely not. It, yeah, no, it's a common misconception. There's no one says that you have to do that. <laughs> you can just think, you know what? I'm done for the day. I'm going to save it. I'm going to come back to this. You can just do that. That's all I've ever done with this game. <laughs> yeah, literally. Call it quits, save, and then you're come the, back You're day. the best in the world at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, resets are helpful. So um, I, I did a blindfolded run a few if like three weeks three or four weeks ago and i it technically that was a segmented run i did it in one sitting because i'm a lunatic um but uh overall my play time my real time attack time was just under 17 hours um but my in-game time was i i actually had uh, like maybe 30 to 40 minutes left over to get excalibur i got it within time comfortably um uh, because I saved it and loaded it if and then loaded it again and loaded it and loaded it to get things a little bit more optimal than normal. Well, I feel like we've been talking for 45 minutes about how to play this game and we are still in Lindblom. We are still in Lindblom. <laughs> we are still here. There, I think. Just the one thing that I'll say is whatever you do, don't get caught up in the dialogue. Don't think, oh, I'll just read for a bit because you will lose a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> I've been learning seven oh, recently and every single time I'm like dabbling with practice or something, I'm like, what's going on? And I'll start reading it and then I'll be like, oh, I'm, right. I've been here a little oh, while no. now. <laughs> I should probably carry on. <laughs> yeah, we'll point it out when we get there, but you need to get to the fourth to last boss and defeat boss in under 12 hours of in-game time to get the Excalibur 2. And you you say there's no way you can do that, but I guarantee you, you can do that. I thought I'd that wager myself, that you could. I was playing in the slowest possible options, and just followed a guide, and I think I got it in I think it was like 9 hours and 40 minutes of in-game time, having never looked at a speedrun in my life. Just kind of roughly following a guide and resetting just a tiny bit when things went horribly. Yep. You absolutely yep. can absolutely. do it. You without skipping cutscenes, without needing anything extra. Nope. And it's really fun going up against all the bosses as your little little baby party. He's like, oh, no, a little weed, little weedy well, babies well, well, and well, you just go in there. You're like, bah! damage done. It's over. <laughs> all right, great. I'm not even level thirty. And bah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as someone pointed out, it's an intended challenge in the game. It's, it, I think it's what makes Final Fantasy IX such a unique game. Uh, I, there's probably a couple other games that I don't know about, but this game and GoldenEye were two games from my childhood that had speedrunning built into it. It was a reward to finish certain things as fast as humanly possible. I think that's just great that this is one of them. Yeah, one of the things about like um, the progression in this game as well is that a lot of the time... Um, your character's power is based on the equipment that you're wearing. 
Um, it's a common misconception to think that you need to level up loads and grind and things like that. There's almost none of that in the actual the running the, the route that we do. There's a couple occasions where we take fights because the chance to not get a fight in those sections is almost zero. So we assume that we're going to get the fight and we just we take it down and we get a, the way that this game scales experience as well is is typically if you get to a new zone and you kill something you'll gain two or three levels probably and then if you get to the next zone and you kill something you'll gain a bunch of levels and you'll 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 peak out at that point in the game like really quickly and you can grind there and you can kill lots of things and try and get ahead but it will take a long time for a very small reward yeah i mean even in the speed run we are almost at the end of encounters that we take and we're going to fight three or four encounters for the rest of the game, and that will put us for our end game levels. We're level 17, I think, on a lot of characters, 15 and 17 right now, and we'll be in our mid 20s, low 30s for some. Just mm -hmm. with the four encounters, I think, that we kill from this point on that give experience. Yep. So it, it really adds up fast once you start fighting late level stuff. As uh, Jibben in chat said, a level one speed run is infinitely easier than a uh, starting gear speed run or challenge run, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I, I think I saw someone fight Amaranth for about three hours at level one. Oh, sorry, <laughs> in, in initial quip. It took him yep. forever because he was just clocking in for about 60 or something like that. Oh my god. It's, could, you <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine? No. Well, yes, but no. Oh man. So uh, Mel is almost going to get the final potion, which is a step in the right direction. Actually, Amart's yep. not very far behind, is he? Is no, he? still about a minute, minute and a half ish behind in total. Maybe less than that at this point. I think he was a minute and 25 going into disc two, or going into disc three. And he might have caught up a little bit. These cutscenes are hard to time sometimes. You black out pretty easily. Yeah. Good old emblem. Try to time this one based on when uh, Mel leaves this scene. Let's see. So yeah, the, in the well, with regards to the run, I'm to be honest, story-wise, I, I'm not the best person to ask. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> am. Don't worry, I, I love this game. <laughs> Ultimately, we're just traveling around Limblum to go and pick up a few uh, different potions so that we can attempt to send Sid back into a human. Um, yeah, we are. We're going to go after Kuja at this point because we're mad that he attacked Alexandria, but we don't know how to get there because we don't have an airship. And the best airship builder on uh, in the world is Sid, but he's a little uh, preoccupied with being an Oglop at the moment. So we're going to try to fix him real quick. <laughs> just real quick. Just Oh, you know what? Just yeah, we got quick. the... We got just a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure there's a girl somewhere with a potion and some guy with a potion, so uh, yeah, just go go meet him. Yeah, casually this bit would probably take, like, hours, man. Especially when you're, like, oh, 13. Yeah. You get home from school and you put, you boot up FF9 <laughs> and you probably find, like, one or two potions. And you go to school the next day, it's like, where's the next potion? I can't find it, man. <laughs> and you get home and it's the first place you look. Yep. Probably... And you're playing Lapis Lazuli, I don't need this. And... I'll sell that. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs gems? Like, what summon does it teach? None? Get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Garbage. <laughs> but there's also just loads of stuff to do. There's loads of people just chilling there's around. So Everyone wants to play cards. There's loads of chests. <laughs> new shops, yeah, new synths flavor everywhere in this game it looks like amart is about 50 odd seconds behind at this point so i don't can you leave right there um you can leave limblum as well I you think can you go can. out dragon's gate so you could go and do chocolate hot and cold <laughs> just, 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 absolutely yeah you spend a lot of time here just kicking around that's one of the things that will just like make oh, like excalibur 2 just seem impossible <laughs> yeah you get very easily distracted Oh, 
Alrighty, Mel is in the final bit of dialogue in Limlim before she is finally Mel. granted leave. <laughs> Please, a boat, my kingdom Anything. for a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these go on for so long. I can do you a boat, but it's it's a rowboat. Will you take that? <laughs> you have to row to the outer continent. I think that'd be easier than mashing through this uh, 30 <laughs> minutes of that scene here. Um, so the next part is, as Rev uh, kindly said, we are going to go and try and find Kuja. And I think we have a lead to go to Black Mage Village and ask around there. We're going to go and see what they know because they have been created by Kuja. Um, so we're going to head back over. And for those that were with us, around the four hour mark or so <laughs> will remember that we left a chocobo in a very odd position <laughs> our very um, patient friend he's just been hanging out for six months i think is the time that's elapsed if i remember right between this two hibernating this like crazy <laughs> he's just hanging out so yeah. we are gonna make our way back to that point and we're gonna take that very chocobo back to black mage village uh have a little bit more dialogue but not too much <laughs> and then we're off yeah it's actually kind of then... funny that uh the the chocobo parking thing that was something i discovered on my own probably four years ago i want to say and oh, really? my initial goal was to tell the world about it when i released that segment and then petro showed up and is like why don't we just park the chocobo here i'm like well there goes that because she just it together herself immediately and shared that with everybody <laughs> i had lost oh, all man. the glory with that beautiful time save but i'm, I'm glad <laughs> she came around and did that on top of many many other things that she did yeah i'm kind of gutted that i missed that that, that portion <laughs> of history it's a little bit too late i'm still just trying to find yeah. my feet on the emulator i think when she yeah, was the, kind of the history up of this route. History of this game is fantastic, and I, I love being one of the older members of this community. I came around in 2015-ish, and we still have some of the original runners from 2010 and 2012. Uh, Spike Vegeta, Puexel, and Karakar, and some of the old legends are still around in some capacity. They don't play this game a whole lot anymore, but I remember a lot of the early history. Uh, Mutsky's been around a, forever, too. A, a very, very small, funny story about um, Spike. And that was yeah. um, when when Pete had just gotten his his second world record on nine at HD, and uh, I played it for a, a little while, and I, I took it off him just to flex, basically. And uh, in on the week I got it, while Pete was getting it back, Spike Vegeta came back to this game and came into my channel because of it, and was like, "Oh, I just saw your world record," and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Talk about oh, timing." Poor Pete. <laughs> oh, Pete. I need to get back like, later that week. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah. Spike uh, is basically the grandfather of this game he was uh, originally going to do a segmented run after Essentia who was the grandmother of this game had nailed the category down and he was going to attempt to do his own segmented run but while he was doing that he accidentally discovered a video of some Japanese runners uh, doing the game in one single setting and he said you know what I'm going to try to do that too so he sat down and watched all of the JP videos he could find and basically turned that into the very first route of this game and wow. did the first RTA run did it have night in it? It had some crazy stuff in it. I can't remember if it was night. I think whale zombies were involved. It had some crazy I'm stuff. Sure I actually were. have his guide somewhere. It's uh, that's a trip to look at. Good old level five death. Yep, exactly. <laughs> in the in the Final Fantasy trading card game that I play, there are not many Final Fantasy nine cards. There's a lot of Zidans. <laughs> but there aren't many of the rest of the cast. There are zero Tantalus members, um, for example. Oh, but there are whale zombies. <laughs> <laughs> the there iconic are whale zombies. zombies. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a ton of history of this game, and I, I've been working diligently to try to track it all down. Some of the uh, Japanese history is a, a little bit lost to time. It was somewhat before streaming was extremely popular, but there are some. Nico Nico videos from 2008, 2007, even of some very early speedruns that are just fantastic. 
How many VVs? VVs had four cards. His legend from Opus Three is is beautiful. It's the fuck. It's the um. It's the you know when he's shooting Black Waltz Three when they're on the the ship in Disc One on the way to Limblum. It's that yeah. just as all the fire is charged up around him. It looks awesome. <laughs> it looks so sick. How many Steiners? I believe there's three. Maybe four actually. Actually, yeah, there's four. We haven't seen any of the the main cast in quite a while. We've seen some Zidans. Um, quite a fair few sedans. So next set is supposed to be quite heavy on the uh, the FF9. And uh, if I play my cards right, pun intended, I might be able to get some spoilers <laughs> to release for our community, which would be pretty cool. Ooh. I'm uh, nice. hopefully I've, I'm, I've a little 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 word out that there might be a little right. Vivi or a little Freya involved, which is pretty exciting. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> So back to our run, uh, Mel just left and Amart is just leaving as well, the Black Mage Village, and they said, yeah, we just came from over on the other side of this mountain here. Uh, that's where Kuja is hanging out, so we have to take a, just a quick boat ride around the shore, and we will be entering the Desert Palace itself. Not the scary part yet, but uh, the beginnings. Hmm. You're making my skin crawl just talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are almost there. So this is what we consider the start of the game, going into this sand trap here. This is uh, Kuja's Palace, take one, which is going to be the start of our adventure through the Hildegarde screens. We're going to pass through it three times, commonly referred to as Hildegarde 1, 2, and 3. Um, they are the screens where we take fights, if we are presented with them, hopefully. Yep. Yeah, this is where the run really begins, and a lot of the mistakes will be present if you have made any up to this point, but knowing these runners, I'm sure they're all on track with everything, and we are starting to take benefit of a lot of the killer abilities, the MP attacks, the counters, the strength gains, the good weapons. We're going to use everything to our advantage coming up. A quick save outside because there are a couple things that can go very wrong. Most importantly, picking the right party to go uh, to the right location. This is where we have the classic Final Fantasy party split of the game, at least the first one of them, where you will send a group to a place that has no magic in it, so you cannot use any magic spells, so no point in bringing Vivi or Aiko or Dagger. And very you know, different cases on whether or not you should bring Quinna, and we actually do in Petro Rap bring Quinna for a little bit of uh, safety reasons and the other party will be stuck in the Desert Palace and it's interesting how we deal with both Oh yeah So it's very important that we take the right parties to the right location for AP reasons as well as the strategies that have been defined in advance Um so this is going to be Team A, also known as the Good Party. It's going to be Zidane, Amaran, Freya, and Quinna. Uh, this is going to be our primary physical dealer, damage dealing team. Ooh, almost Mel, almost, almost took Chu to oil <laughs> <laughs> Um This team is able to deal a lot of physical damage quickly. Um, Art can be quite a damage race. So we need to be able to take him down really quickly. Uh, Amaran uh, is able to deal huge damage throwing um, Silver Forks, which is where we're going to spend a really good chunk of our money. Now, something like 8,500 gil each or something like that, 7,000 gil. Um, and we're going to pick up two of them, and then we're going to throw some other stuff at him. And the kitchen sink, take down Ark nice and quickly. Um, it could see maybe a trance on Zidane if it builds nice and quickly which is another way to end the fight really, really fast. Um, and hopefully we're going to take down some ogres on the way there. But ultimately, it's just going to be it's going to be a lot of AP routing, a lot of experience gaining, um, and condense it into just a few fights. Yep, this is one of the screens where you're basically not expecting to ever get through it without, without a single encounter. Your average is two, sometimes three. So we're going to be looking to get an encounter with one single ogre and we can dispatch that very quickly and it gives a ton of experience and some good uh, AP as well so we're taking advantage of that and we got a quick equipment menu on some of the characters here most specifically on Freya I think is the biggest 
um, neater of AP at this point. Oh yeah, and whatever you do, don't forget to put level up on Freya as well. That's really good. Never forget level up. Unless you're blind, <laughs> then just make it up as you go along. <laughs> <laughs> so Mel is getting her first encounter. We're crossing our fingers for hot single ogre in our area, and unfortunately she did not get that. Some Grimlocks instead, but it's, it's okay. Ooh. She's likely to get another one. Just gonna slow down the run for you there. Don't mind me. Don't yep. mind me. Let me just slow you down there, bud. Um, trance is so I believe that limit break is is really powerful. Um, yes. At least, and I'm not, and I think it is kind of broken in FF8 the way that I, did, I, I still haven't played FF8 yet, but. I'm fairly certain that yeah, you can just eight, keep skipping turns hard. over and over again until you get them. So it, you can, you know, they're they're, they're really abusable. Interesting mechanic. Yep. So I believe they kind of turned it down a little bit in nine. Um, they are unfortunate yep. in the way that <laughs> Revy loves cease boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I do love cease boxes. Mel did get her single ogre, and Amart is fighting a single ogre, so they're going to throw some weapons that they no longer need. They're still going to do a decent amount of damage. Um, Particularly the extra exploded that they have at this point, I think, is the first target. Yep, so we've got you some saw, extra gear routed in that we, yes. we can expend here for some damage. So you saw Zidane hitting for about 1500 damage, and Amaranth, even though he has his basic starter weapon and would do 200 damage with an attack through the weapon, that did 1500 damage as well. So, not an issue that we have a weaker character at this point. So Amart's getting all of the single ogres. Yeah. So, and uh, on a more technical level for the speed run here, this is this always amazes me. I think it's one of the coolest things that's in this route, and that is if we manage to get an encounter in this first Hildegard screen, like we have done, we can actually do most of our menu in advance coming up after this shop, so that we can then begin gaining AP for future Hildegard screens in advance so that if we get really good RNG later on and we're not rewarded with many encounters or we don't see the ogres later on we can actually have pre-backed it up already in this in this part of the game and it's just whoever came up with it, it was just they're a genius it's just really really <laughs> really really cool it's beautiful out. yeah the uh, a lot of the um routers and tech people that we have in this game roaming merc is one of them he's a very good um tech person and router uh mythic dawn is another one uh sweat is fantastic there's a lot of um players that have come in and out of this game whether or not they've even run it and of course petro it's hard to not give her all the praise um they've made just fantastic contributions to the speedrun as a whole whether it be an idea that sticks or leads to other ideas that stick um, there's so many people that have their hands in these runs that it just can't be understated how every person has helped the person after them. Yeah, routing this game does sound absolutely horrifying, but there is a very specific mind that these people have, and they're extremely good at it. And yes, Steth, obviously, as soon as he gets the world record with Steth route, will uh, <laughs> show Someone's us who's right all along. Mentioned Trouble Knife, and uh, um, you were probably in that stream. Rev, if you're from back then. Yes. But, um, were you in there? <laughs> oh, yeah. The, it was a marathon run with, with, with I can't remember who was in it, but I know that Karakhan was in it and he uh, he was the, the victim of a trouble knife. <laughs> uh, went a little bit awry. Um, trouble, trouble is a status effect that when you're afflicted by it, if you are dealt single target physical damage, the damage is also spread to your party. And there's a lot of that in this part of the game, particularly from ogres. And they are also yes. programmed to target trouble afflicted party members so if someone is hit by trouble knife another ogre could then come along and hit them with a basic attack and deal lots of damage really quickly to your party and um, i believe it cost him like 20 minutes in a marathon <laughs> yeah yeah so these statuses can really eat you i don't is there might be an ability to not be troubled i don't think we i don't think there is actually there is just no. one of those ones yeah um Real quickly, Mel is doing a stutter step and she's going around this forest because she has been on the world map for over 20 seconds. It's unlikely if she were to stutter through the forest that she would see the ragtime mouse, but we're just not going to take that risk. We'll see if Amart does the same. He might go for a little more of a YOLO strat, but I think he'll go around as well. He is opting to do the uh, backwards stutter here, which is very impressive. It's hard to 
know your uh, landmarks when you're stuttering backwards, and this is one you could be off by a lot, but I think he's on track. Let's see how close he gets to this mountain. Yep, has a really good stutter. And he is going through the forest, so we're holding our breath for a couple seconds. Fearless. Oh, okay. I like <laughs> it. So that probably did save him about five seconds, and the uh, backward stutter probably saved him another three seconds, so he just made up a good chunk of time right there. He's got her single ogre as well, which is good to see. And yeah, Mel's coming up to the. Uh, yeah, pain when yeah, fighting you, arc, you're a little under leveled. Yep, you don't necessarily need it, but you really want it. Uh, Mel is doing the Oilbert shop after the save here, which is uh, one of the most important shops in the game. This is where we route a lot of uh, the, the gill and everything else to be able to get this shop down specifically because this is where things get really expensive in the game and we have not been grinding extra money and haven't really been picking up a ton so she's actually going to go through and sell a good amount of gear so that she has the money that she needs to be able to afford everything in this shop and the most expensive item as you would expect is one giant fork that she will be throwing at an airship now that's anime it's great. It's <laughs> one of the best animations in the game. You'll see uh, this fearsome amaranth full of muscles just chucking a giant fork at a ship. A comment, uh, never knew that the ragtime mouse was a time thing. Yeah, if you are on the world map for at least 20 seconds in some capacity, whether you're on an airship, on a chocobo, something, as long as the world map has been loaded for 20 seconds, you can potentially get a ragtime mouse. So if you are looking for it, um, and you're just running around in circles in a forest and getting a fight and running away and running around again, you need to wait about 20 seconds before you start running, otherwise you will never get it. And yes, same time, the same as the uh, friendly monsters. They work the same way. So if you are grinding for friendly monsters, don't just run around in circles. Just stand there for 20 seconds, then start running. neck and neck it's just one encounter difference at this point I don't, I don't have a encounter tally but they're just only separated by one encounter another double logo so this is not an encounter that we're willing to take trouble knife on Zidane and he evades it very nice yeah. thank you distract Too powerful <laughs> um yeah so these double logos for the reason that we were talking about earlier with uh, trouble knife we, we we don't mess with them they're a little bit too dangerous yeah I think these ogres have more health than uh, the ogres that we just fought. Is that right? Um, no, it's not. I don't think. I think they're all okay. the same. The difference is that when we are doing our Hildegard 1 screen, um, Amaranth is equipped with the yellow scarf, which provides strength, which brings his damage rolls up a little uh, bit. Which changes yeah. how quickly you can kill him. Uh, I'm seeing another encounter on the first screen for a mile. It's kind of... Yeah, but at the same time that Mel got one in a screen that you usually don't, so it's still... Yes. Often to not kill it. You, you can take this one out, and this is actually a good fight to take, but um, often to not take this one out. So Amart's got his uh, Ogre kill here, so that's going to count towards his uh, his later fights. He's going to be a little bit more beefy for um, uh, the arc fight, which is brilliant, which means that it's, he's going to have a hard time getting knocked out there. It's not a terrifying fight in that you really have to be worried, but there there are certain circumstances where you will lose a lot of health very quickly, so you need to at least be mindful of everyone's HP in the fight. So, we're going to see Mel splitting this screen in a moment. She's going to navigate around, hit this first terminal, and then use those staircase on the left. Hopefully, I'm going to encounter it. Nice. Hold your breath. Reset nice. the danger value, and then proceed back through. Grab the rest of it. You need to interact with all of these holograms from up to bottom, so it's easier just to split the screen, reset the danger value, and then come back in. You don't have to do it all at the same time, so you click the first one, run away, and hope to not get the encounter that Mel just got, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's a tough screen. It's a single ogre. It's a kill. 
This is a nice <laughs> sack of experience. Kill it. No. See if Amar can make up some ground here by not getting an encounter. I'm not a fan of pina coladas, Chuck, but I do like the music that you play. <laughs> so, crossing our fingers here to hopefully not bump into any murder birds. Yep. The old very on these bridges. They have an ability which sets your HP to 1, and they also have party-wide um, wind attacks. And if they combine together, they can be pretty dangerous. It is very nasty. I'm seeing one murder bird, which is not great, but at least it's just one. Oh, Maelstrom. Not anyone relevant, hopefully. Nice. So you can just Stop we can afford to leave Freya in crit for now. We can worry about her later, perhaps. She's fine. Oh. We, we have really the money wanted. to buy the high potions. We, keep, we don't have anyone to cure here because magic does not work in this dungeon, so we just have to rely on some high potions. Yeah. And usually at this point, they're a little bit limited. Oh, double murder birds on Mel. Okay, oh. we're just going to pretend this is going to be fine. Oh, Decent. Okay, okay, it's Quinna. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. It's just Quinna. And then the Mel's not to that. It's okay. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> One HP damage. Brutal. Right, bird of murds are gone. <laughs> <laughs> for now, for yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, for now. Hopefully, no more no, for Amar. Amar is right it. behind, about 15, 20 seconds behind Mel at this neck point. Neck and neck. Caesar's got doing a menu, up, menu outside. Hopefully she can get a nice uh, nice oil vert. We've seen some pretty good oil verts actually so far. Maybe like four or five encounters <laughs> inside. Cover and level, that's it. Clear headed into counter. Nice. In the encounter, is it a single? It is. Sure this is, is a nice, nice fight for Cease. Take this. Yeah, she's going in. Paul Blart, Mythic Cop, just the way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Mel and Amart both making their way to the boss now. Okay, so Cease has actually used their final ointment, so hopefully that's not a problem. I believe if you don't have any anointments in, you run the risk of having Dagger equip the power belt. So I'm going to drop a little message in the chat for her just to make sure that she's aware. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mel with one more encounter. Let's see if Amart can get through this cleanly. And he does, so Amar takes the lead for the first time in the race, I think. Amart is heading into Ark, which is kind of a slow fight at this point in the run. We don't have a ton of damage compared to the uh, boss level at this point. We don't have a 
very great gimmick to getting this down. It's kind of just brute force doing it damage it's, by damage. So let's see I, how he I, goes. I, I, I thought this is a pretty, pretty, pretty tasty fight with the way they handle it. Um, it's got just literally just over 20,000 HP with 20,002. Amaranth deals around 5k per, per throw. Preempts with Freya, nice. Maybe with Zidane as well. Nice. Yeah, Ark is not that fast, which is nice. No, a you are, uh, there is, is a good open up. Propeller Wind is a brilliant follow up. That's uh, AoE confusion, but everyone should have clear headed on, which I'm fairly certain that he's done correctly, as he has. Very nice. Ah, yeah, Rome loves preempt. playing around with no. bad status here and uh, slowing the boss. It's very fun. <laughs> if you slow him, can you wait him? You can. <laughs> brilliant. I think so. Rome would have to verify that, but I'm pretty sure you can. So we're seeing forks flying left and right. Mel got hit with the photon, which just reduces one party member's uh, HP to one, which is not actually the worst as long as you have Quinna available for a high potion. You're right back in it. Those these forks, forks are flying. flying. <laughs> Thousands of damage coming off. Yeah, cheeky little high potion on uh, Amrin here. He's back road as well, so his armor's he's, he's pretty tanked up. Propeller Wind is a beautiful follow up. We're seeing a lot of Propeller Winds going off right now. This is just a free that. turn. This is a free <laughs> turn. We want to see this. We do want to see this. This is probably the first fight in the run where you get massively hit with status ailments, and if you are not prepared for it, uh, things can go south instantly. Oh, yeah. If you use Party not a status you want to have, it's really bad. Yep. And a Whirlwind follow up. This should be fine. Uh, this should be the last turn, I believe, for Mel. I oh, should be looking at lethal here, yeah. Get that diamond sword out nice and early. No trance on Z, which is actually a, a fairly dangerous level of trance on Zidane there because she could be taking that to uh, Red Dragons, which could be a problem. But hopefully, it could. maybe, we, uh, we see it taken care of. All right, don't forget the post arc menu. Nice. Just a little switch up. We're um, freeing up some armor for um, Steiner coming up here. And then um, while we're in there, we take care of a few extra little things for the Hildegard 2 and 3 screens. Coming up is one of the very iconic uh, mini games in the speedrun and casually, and one of the greatest songs in the game as well. The uh, Hedgehog Pie Hot uh, Red Light Green Light coming up for Amart. Um, very fun to see on Turbo because they can just mash through this and fly right on by. Uh, so, if this is done properly, Amart should be zooming through this. Let's take a look. There are a couple tricks to getting through this. Um, if you do get caught five times, the Hedgehog Pie will stop turning really, really quickly. So it's a good way to do it by brute force. It's just getting caught a couple times, so you have an easier time getting through the rest. So Amart is opting to just get caught five times takes about 20 seconds ish 25 to get caught but it'll make the actual mini game a lot easier for the fourth yeah. time failing it is a, is a lot easier one more time yep and then and mel is top three song. To do the same oh yeah uh it's top three not three let's just say that <laughs> right, so Amart is going through and just making sure not to get caught, but you can see how smoothly Amart moves. Take note of that. And then when Mel starts moving in non-turbo, go look at that, you'll see the difference. And Amart has the key, great job. Alright, and Mel should be off now. Thankfully, Mel is a fantastic masher and can get through this extremely fast, considering she's doing this all by hand. Nice. Not the best uh, Joe Pie time, but he, honestly, the time yeah, here is pretty it. much down to, yeah, it's pretty much just down to how quickly he wants to look at you. It'd be quite annoying. Yep. So, season's coming up. We saw a preempt from Zidane. That's nice. 
Not bad damage. Boomerang off the... Oh, this is turn two. Uh, oh, Blart's going down here. Oh, we need to get back into this. Yeah, you want to keep throwing with Hammer and maybe... Maybe throw an Elixir with Zidane. Yeah. Photon on Zidane, this is looking like a pretty, pretty scary fight. We still have a round of attacks to go. Should be okay. Elixir use, you don't you don't hate it. Uh, we run the chance of losing Quinna here, which is not the end of the world as long as we have yep. enough damage whirlwind. done. So whirlwind. Yep. Back in this, this is over. Yeah, I think uh, Zidane and Amaranth have enough to survive, so it should be no problem. Even if uh, this is an under damage, it should at least be done the round after. Get that diamond sword out of the bags. Oh, he's still kicking. Okay, well, Amarant can pick should up be... here if anything needs to get picked up. Propeller wind, Propeller is, wind is great, okay. so yeah. Okay, so that should be the end of the fight. We definitely have a lot to talk about going on with Mel and Amar right now. They are currently in Desert Palace, which is the most notorious. Well, maybe not the most notorious run killer of the game, but one of Anybody the most annoying Anybody can come out on top ones. after this place. That's the first fight from both A <laughs> and uh, Mel yep. coming up on the first screen each, right? Oh, double Grimlock's yep, perfect. absolutely. Ecto. So they, of course, do not have Zidane in the party here since he is stuck uh, dealing with Oilworth. So all they can do is hope to kill or quickly. And the best way to do that is to use a very long attack animation just so you have that time where the enemy is not attacking and hope you get the quick flee off. So Mel is going to be casting Carbuncle here for the first time, which means it's guaranteed long animation, I believe. That's true. Um, so she it's has something about like a 15 second seconds. animation. So yeah, something it's, like that. So. It's long. You get a lot of flea checks off it because it is not currently there to end, which is the most important thing. And it up. Oh, still stuck. Help, oh, please! No. So, so now we're she using, has to do... Yep. Using some long animations. animations. Yeah. Oh, let me out. Oh, countered. And this, this is why Desert Palace can be really annoying. These normally, you know, 35 second annoying fights can very quickly turn into minute and a half, two minute annoying fights. And it's not uncommon to get four fights in Desert Palace, and it's just complete RNG, whether you're going to get through them, whether you're going to get them. This can oh be a run God. killer for a lot of people. I was using every trick in the book to get out of this <laughs> damn fight. Just get out, run away. Scan it, it's still not the enemy's turns. The flea checks are still happening. Please just run. Hey. <laughs> we Finally. are out We're of home there. Free. My goodness, that's the first screen. <laughs> the very first screen of seven or so that she has to get through without encounters. The room that she's currently in, she cannot get an encounter until she lights the seventh candle, so she's a little bit safe for the moment, but we'll be dealing with a couple encounter checks on her way out. <laughs> Jim is saying they're flintstoning all over the place, and now that's a mod that I need as well. <laughs> Could you imagine you can, uh, that running sound whenever you're trying to flee? I know. Oh it's my the old Scooby Doo, they're just running in place. It's great. <laughs> oh, man. The room Amart is currently in is also safe until all the candles are lit. That's a that's a good hedgehog pie time. That was over five minutes uh, remaining. Yeah. Sorry, it, anything plus five uh, uh, with five minutes remaining or more is, is a good time. Amart's getting his second encounter in the Let's last. See what it is. He's, uh, it's probably going to be his last encounter for this. Uh, no, the, never the blue. Oh, oh right. the double grimlock. So it's probably Not the worst encounter. Good ATD. I think. Magic attack blue means that he could actually get out of this. Yep. Low just for fun. Yeah, so Stein is tooled up to, to just clock these guys and to knock them out straight away. So just, oh, nice preempt. That's not preempt, but he changed. No, he didn't. 
He did. Yeah, he did. He did. The sleep or not Steiner? Anyone but Steiner? Insomniac is a myth. Nice. Uh, knife, nice. Mel's, Mel's getting with, swamped. Uh, in Japan, Japan, I think. Yeah, again, which Steiner is the one shot with Steiner. Steiner. Yeah. But <laughs> also they do mind blast, which is confuse, and I think Steiner can get afflicted by that. Yeah, I think that was on um, P though. That was on okay. P D. Yep. Yeah. Oh, everyone's losing turns. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Here we go. Batter up. Blah. Little Ruby Light to help us out. Long animation. Cease is uh, praying for zero. Maybe he can save a little bit of time over it. Uh, get in second place, please. Amart yep. is, is, is essentially out of Desert Palace at this point, they're on sure pretty no much more no more checks. Yeah. I think you can get an encounter on this bridge here if you just kind of run around. I, if you I've just never run. seen that in all my segmented run, but I have a feeling you probably could. As long as your you movement to, is not uh, awful. Yeah, I think you have to pretty much force it. If Cease can get through this with one or zero encounters, she would make up a ton of time. Mm-hmm. I thought Amart was further along. Oh, sorry, no, no, never mind, no, no, he was, he was looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> okay, last big pair of screens for Mel coming up here. Hopefully, we can make it through. Story nice, is one. Clean. Second. Oh, Cease is getting her first Clean. encounter in the okay, torch she's got her first. Amart is going into the boss. Mel does have like one more encounter check she has to deal with, but let's just assume she's going to get through that. So, Valia Pira, do you want to talk about the strat here? It's very interesting. It's it's really cool. It's a really old strategy, if I'm not mistaken, as well. It's come it back is, yeah. um, after being buried for quite some time. Um, essentially, in the NA version specifically, when you um, have Reflect across your party, and you target in your entire party with a spell and reflect off yourself, it gets amplified by four times. Um, and on every other release other than NA and PAL, it's actually reduced <laughs> down to three times, I believe, or two times. I think it's um, two. It deals we 4K. Don't it's 4K yeah. in others and 6K in this one is, is, is what yeah. I know. Which is a weird way to look at it. But yeah, ultimately, yeah. oh, nice preempt. That's really good. So Valiapira is now completely neutered. You can't do anything anymore. Um, our entire party has Reflect, and Valiapira only knows how to cast Black Magic. Um, we've made it our mission to pick up um, a number of Bloodstones from around um, Desert Palace to limit um, Valiapira's abilities. All he can do is cast Reflect and a bunch of other simple Black Magics like Viraga and whatnot. So uh, it's going to open Thundaga, it's going to reflect straight back onto him, it's going to do negligible damage, it's kind of irrelevant. But VV is going to deal a solid six to 7,000 damage. Uh, by targeting our own party. We're going to hold ATB here as Reflect only runs out for as long as um, ATB is flowing. There's that 6-8. That's more than 50% as uh, Valley of Hero only has around uh, 12,000 HP. Valley of Hero is taking the second turn. Fizaga, Reflect off again. And then finish the fight with another Reflect. Very simple. It's only really a problem if Ico goes down early on. Um, Steiner has got enough armor to survive. Um, Dagger is currently equipped with auto life. Uh, VV does go down, but you can have Slana res, followed up by the reflect afterwards to get straight back into the fight. You can only really spin your wheel if Ico keeps getting targeted turn after turn. Um, that's kind of it. And Cease has only just left that encounter that we were talking about. Um, yeah, Cease very rough uh, encounter for Cease. Oh no, she's getting the... <laughs> that's the, uh, the tank runner in her. <laughs> pause, quick pause. <laughs> Yeah, so the VP fight is uh, very well done. It's designed with the weakest party. Actually, handles this fight faster than I think every other strat. The only annoying thing is the casting of Carbuncle, but odds are good that you're going to get the guaranteed long animation out of the way while fighting an encounter. So this fight is actually pretty darn fast compared to the old methods of throwing things at it or trying to cast Berserk on Steiner. And there's a couple other ways of getting around it, but this one is very clean with a very weak party. Yeah, I believe it's not quite as quickly as the knight strat, though. I believe the okay. uh, knight has a higher ceiling, um, but it's not much. Um, and uh, it, it kind of 
Yeah, one of the big things that we have is taking Quina to Ark because of the millionaire ability. We're gaining extra currency there, right. which we're going to be using later. Um, so bringing Quina here would kind of mess with that party composition quite a little bit. Um, so we're playing into that strength, sort of, um, of not having Quina available, I believe. Um, but I think if you can if you can sleep it and you get like an instant enrage on Steiner, that it's the crit chance that makes it so much more. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think the fight can go a lot worse. Like Knight cannot stick. Um, things yeah. like that. And the only thing that really messes this fight up is if I, I if Iko specifically is targeted by either lightning or yep. ice, because she's wearing an adamant vest which gives her armor to fire as well. So. It's specifically one of those two abilities, and he has to get a pre -amp. It's just a bunch of things that like aren't going to go wrong more often than not. Yeah. Yeah, but unfortunately, Seas is having a very normal desert palace, which is code for uh, not good desert palace. Yeah. So Mel and Amart are making their way through the screen for the second time. Now this time they're going backwards back into Kuja's area. They're attempting to merge the parties once more. Amart got through with two encounters there, I believe, which is pretty good. Mel did get her trance out of the way on that random fight, which is kind of nice, actually, because there are certain spots where we want trance and a very small handfuls where we really don't want it. And the next sort of boss fight is one that we really don't want it in in the wrong scenario. So getting that out of the way is actually OK there. Yeah, Red Dragons, um, we are really, really interested in using the skill Soul Blade, which Zidane only has access to when he is not in trance. Um, so if Zidane is uh, caught, caught in trance early into that fight, it can become really hard to manage. Um, but we'll get more into that, I think, when the, the fight's coming up. It, yep. is, it, is, Both, it uh, is a fight where the, the runs can die really quickly as well, though. Yep. Both Mel and Amart got their single ogres on the way back, so they are happy with that. I think, uh, I think Amart killed one in Oilbird, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe that was Cease. Maybe it was both, but either way, they both got some very valuable experience on uh, party members, which is great. Karakhan saying that Grand Leaf Wolves on Red Dragon says it's time. It does, but there are just a bunch of... can if you're them. alive. Yeah. yeah, if you're alive, you need a lot of uh, <laughs> variables to line up before that's uh, viable, unfortunately. It can save a ton of time. It does just nuke them. <laughs> so on Amart screen, um, we see the story advancing. So Kuja decided to send the Dane to Wilbert to pick up the basically the summon that they just fought, Ark, which uh, Kuja figures is the strongest possible thing on Earth. It's the the biggest idol, and it is the um, actually is the most powerful summon that we can get in the game and he figures I am going to take back my airship and my rights with this summon that he now has access to so now he is off to do his evil bidding with his strongest ability that he knows of at this point he is we done with his to... palace I'm going we're to gonna chase him away. else now because <laughs> uh, as we were leaving he also stole Iko and he plans to extract some oh. other idolins from her as well I think Amart forgot I think he forgot. Should we tell him? He? He I forgot. think we should. He didn't pick up the naming way card. <laughs> hey, Mark, you gotta go back, bud. Now, now how is he going to rename Zidane? <laughs> <laughs> Disappointed, eh, Mark? <laughs> I picked it. Did you? No, no, no. I'll check the tape. Don't make me check the tape. He did? <laughs> oh, no. Did you get it? <laughs> Apparently he did. <laughs> oh, we were just, he was just so fast. <laughs> he is a speedrunner. I, I want to see that uh, a card list there, Amart. Let's prove it. Yeah, can you bring it up real quick for us, please? 
Oh no, there's the Zara on V. Ugh. Oh no, you have to pick it up. He picked up. Okay, thank God. Oh. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous there. All right, perfect. Yeah, so this is one of the ways that the fight can slow down a little bit on this route is that if uh, one of the more important members gets tagged. But you can get straight back into it. Now Now the fight's on rails, so... Um, I believe you still do want to pick up uh, either Steiner or Dagger if they go down, right? Because you need the reflect on everybody to do max um, damage. But I think if you do it off of free, you can still get it to work, but you would okay. need him to reflect off himself twice to make up the damage. I see. So yeah, you can, but like, <laughs> it's probably it's a little less good. reliable. Yeah. yeah. There's pretty much no reason not to. Mel absolutely gunning it so that she can take her break. Go and get another monster energy. She's going to need it for the rest <laughs> of this run. Going to need it for that next Limblum coming up. Oh, oh wee. <laughs> or Mel has to do it the old fashioned way. So, oh, Priya. Uh, has Mel got all of her kills? I think Rex. she's good. Mel is getting hammered pretty hard with the encounters on the way out. Yeah, I think Mel is, is the, more than anyone I've seen Mel take like two steps <laughs> several I times know. and then just get another fight. <laughs> These screens are so long. Like I said, this was the one screen that I decided I cannot get without an encounter. So, yeah. I've never actually, you know what, maybe it's an analog thing, but I've never made it across this screen without getting an encounter. It probably is. It's, isn't that it's long rough. Thing. I think I've made it through the screen probably ten times in all of my attempts. You know, yeah. each direction. Getting yeah, through yeah. it. It's just so unlikely. Kick that ladder. <laughs> Take that break. All right, let's see if Amar can get into this lovely city without an encounter. The murder birds are back. Nice break time. Is it and a whole minute? I didn't realize it was that long. It's something like that, especially with Turbo. Yeah, this uh, this airship encounter is actually close to a minute too. Oh, defend not quite coming in clutch then. Oh, Freya. Oh, Oof. maybe it is. It is. It is coming in clutch. It is coming in clutch. <laughs> I'll take it all back. I'll take it all back. <laughs> so, yeah, um, another hidden attribute for defend is not only does it reduce physical damage by 50%, but it also uh, increases your evade by 50%. Um, I'm not sure if it stacks with things like distract uh, in some way, shape, or form, but it, it, it makes you pretty hard to hit. And uh, can come yeah, in clutch in scenarios stack, like that. Stack, if I know, if I remember correctly. Maybe it takes you to seventy-five or something like that. Okay, Mel is doing the final stutter of the game, going down to Esther Gaza. See if she can get through without any world map encounters, which is very impressive for. Not in Turbo Runner, it's what you expect, but we've all gotten caught. Oh, yeah. And she is safe. Nice. So, another screen. Uh, Esther Gaza is littered with murder birds. <laughs> another place where you really don't want to get them. The maelstrom can be quite devastating. Um, typically, at these parts of the games, you're, uh, you're, you're conserving your high potions as much as you can. You don't really want to just throw them out. Ooh, you don't really want to just throw them out whenever anyone takes damage. You want to try and uh, use them with a bit of with a bit of caution. And um, Amar's yeah, getting one Amar's getting double made. as well. Double murder birds. Ooh. Ooh, it's perfect. We are out. Oh, look at that VV ATB. 
Oh, now that is going to be an interesting that little set of dragons. Yeah, uh huh. That is going to be an interesting dragons fight. He's got uh, wind absorb, correct? He does. So he dive will not get any trans bill. Yeah, no, dive. he won't off of that. Dive could still trigger it. Yep. As he only goes down to a, um, a single dive if it's a crit. Yep. Um. The other thing is that he's gonna, uh, it's gonna be taken to Tahaka, which is actually not good. Having it on, to, I think Tahaka is kind of bad for it. But to be no, honest, no, I think I, it's actually pretty good, isn't it? Because you can do double Aragos. Yeah. It just that fight is just so, for me at least, it's just so on rails that if it's right. not on plan, then I never know when Tahaka's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only difference is you just don't get that uh, steal opportunity, but. Let's be real, we're going to get uh, a lot of heat anyways. That's true. Amart got the Gulag encounter. Uh-oh. Oh. No. Uh-oh. Let's see what kind of cutie he gets here. Okay, I think these guys are okay. We just want to not see uh, any status effects on Zidane. I, I think that's the all they... Oh, nice job. Yeah, they can do uh, the heat quickly. and freeze, but not an issue when you're Amart. Just run away. No problem. No mm -hmm. problem. Amar will be taking on the Red Dragons, which is uh, not... It is technically a boss fight, right? I believe if you're doing all bosses, you have to kill all of these Red Dragons. Oh, you do, actually, yeah, now that you mention it. Yeah. So, it's it's a kind of a random battle type encounter. It's kind of a boss fight. Uh, it's two giant murder birds. Uh, the ones we saw earlier were nothing in comparison to these. Um, we have the murderous a... Murderous birds. <laughs> We have a very unique way of killing these compared to a lot of other enemies in this game. And we also really want the experience that they give us, but we don't want it on everybody. This is actually one of the last times we were using BB, and he does not did not lead any experience here. And we really just want to funnel the experience only to Zidane and uh, Steiner. So we're going to do some careful manipulation to make this a very safe fight, as long as our ATBs cooperate and the birds cooperate. And kill off the two party members that we don't want experience with and we get through this very cleanly so let's take a look at what Amar does just here. need to hope that there's no twister opener and ah is there any TVs not great aerial flash is okay an early okay. blizzaga and a slime swing okay let's see what the other bird does dive nice dive we'll live that missed okay so We're in. you can kill off one of these with a blizzaga and a steiner hit which is fantastic and we are using our ability Soul Blade, which is the backup on Gizem Luke, which we did not see. But it, uh, it's going to cause confusion here on this bird, so we're going to remove his ability to cast spells and all but remove his ability to deal damage to us. He can still dive, but it's very safe at this point. Oh, there's that P.E. trance on Mel. Um, <laughs> the only other thing that I didn't know about for the longest time as well is that if you are confused... You cannot evade. Yes, that's correct. Um, which is a really weird attribute, but it means that at this point in the game, Steiner doesn't have the ability Accuracy Plus, which is um, the, the the passive of combat ability that stops you from being able to miss. But, but, but thankfully, because he didn't attack himself, and uh, he's still confused, Steiner can't miss, and it guarantees lethal on this fight. Very nice. Yes, that can trip you up if you uh, have a confused dragon. It hits itself and knocks itself out of confusion, and then Steiner misses his last attack. That is very bad news, because you have two party members dead and possibly some other damage, and you all of a sudden are in grave danger. So um, Mel actually did a, a pretty advanced technique there. Um, if Zidane or an important party member is stopped, with the ATB weight mechanic, you can... Um, cause uh, cue somebody else to cast a remedy on them um, and then hold ATB with somebody else so that the enemies can't gain ATB while you're waiting for the remedy to resolve which means that that person that has been um, hit by uh, stop or whatever will be, will be able to have their turn before somebody else is able to act so what happened is one of the birds cast stop if you let ATB flow that bird would be able to have another attack before Zidane is remedied and cured of stop and it could actually cycle you and end up like putting you in a really, 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 really bad situation. But Mel uh, held ATV with somebody else while uh, the remedy was resolving and was able to get out of the fight really quickly, which is really, really good strategy. 
yeah, handled perfectly. A lot of experience goes into those small things that make the run a lot safer. Mm-hmm. And Cease has now completed the last world map stutter right now, so we got no world map encounters. You'd love to see that. And Mel is about to head into the Red Dragons fight as we hope for no encounters for Cease here, which we have said so many times it's going to happen one of these times. I believe, Cease. I believe. And she's in there. All right. Okay. Let's see how these red dragons go for Mel. So kind, I, I, I mean, I'd be great. I'd be happy that the trance is gone just because it can kind of mess with the fight a little bit. We don't yes. have to worry about that anymore. And um, that's out of the question. So uh, it's going to be a standard fight. Hopefully, Zidane's got good ATB, and early sword blade's going to get rid of a lot of the threat. Oh, maybe uh, mediocre. Let's see. Twister. Okay, one twister is very scary. It does a random amount of damage between a certain uh, set, so we want to see. Oh, that is really bad. No, you need to kill one of them. Don't deviate from the plan. <gasps> nice. Okay, 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 okay. okay, nice okay, dodge, okay. Yeah. We can take out one of the birds really quickly. Nice. Yep. So from this point, we need to get Zidane up, and we need to confuse this bird. So this is a little bit of a annoying part where we just need the right set of circumstances to get him up. It's not awful because... Um, VV has some wind absorb, but we just don't want to see Steiner dying here as well. Yeah, VV is going to be able to just. The only thing that will end uh, Mel here right now is. Well, actually, she can't go down anymore. It's impossible because every single turn she's going to be uh, resurrecting Zidane until it doesn't kill Zidane. So, and as soon as that happens, then we've stabilized the fight regardless. Um, the a the only AoE effects it has. Right now, but... Yeah. Going to be a chance for Cease to catch up. Yeah, the only AOE effect is uh, wind-based stuff that they've got, and DV absorbs that. Please don't connect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so Mel is in control of this fight again. She just needs to get Steiner back alive. As long as the, no one goes down again in the following turn, she can swing fleet. Should be no problem as long as he doesn't dive on himself or damage someone with the dive. He did dive himself, but he missed. As far missed. As the, uh, Perfect. That's what, exactly what you want. You want so, BB. Yep. Turn order no, here is really important. Need... Yeah, you need Vivi to go first because Vivi needs the Blazaga, Zan needs to um, put Vivi down, and then Stein needs to finish the fight. And it has to go in that order, or else you're not going to get the result you need. Stein can't miss because yep. of confusion. Very nice. Great recovery, Mel. Fantastic job. So back on Amart's Amar stream, we caught, we saw a bit of like an auto-scroller section. Even though it was a fight, you have no control over it. But uh, story-wise, what happened, um, Kuja stole Aiko and was planning to steal more Eidolons from her. And one of her Moogle companions actually turned out to be an Eidolon itself and went into trance. So Kuja saw this happening and is about to come in and say, wait a minute, even Moogles can trance? Can everything trance? Can I trance? And his goals have changed from, I need to find the most powerful Eidolons possible to, I think I can do this myself. With those thigh highs, anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> These annoying jesters, Zorn and Thorn, that have been with us throughout the game have actually been the puppets of Kuja all along. And he says, you know what, you deal with this crew, I've got bigger fish to fry as villain always does in these scenarios so BV is automatically swapped out with Ico here for story reasons and we head into the Melty Gemini fight right here the only big twist that we deal with with this fight is that he uses an ability called Viral Smoke, which um, will apply virus to all of your party members, and you can't actually protect against it. And the only thing that that will do is cause us to not get AP for this fight. So we route this so that we do not need the AP for this fight. Yeah. Uh, so there are adjustments that have to be made if you, if you do get AP here um, in the route, but they're minor. Something to pay attention to if you do learn it. It is actually beneficial to get it. We get accuracy yes. plus early, which is helpful for one of the encounters in a, a, a specific sequence later on. But ultimately, it's 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 just yeah, it's fine. 
by a wall. This doesn't kill Zidane, right? It shouldn't. It's pretty no. close to having lethal. Oh, it's single target. <gasps> Sorry. Okay, we're fine. Yeah, uh, this fight can be a little scary. He has a lot of uh, AoE spells, and he can end up bringing you to very low health. And if he gets the first turn off, he's very fast. Um, you can end up being at uh, near death or dying if you're very unlucky. There's just not much you can do about it. Amart had some good ATBs, was able to kill him very, very fast. A nice clean fight. Oh, CC survived the Twister. Nice. Yeah, the Twister is completely random damage. You saw it do. It did 35 to Steiner and 700 to Zidane. It's it's a bizarre spell. Oh, and they heard you kind of just hold your breath. That yeah, you know, and it, it's connected. It makes no difference whatsoever, but that's okay. And Cease is perfectly in control of this fight, despite the very scary opener. We'd have no problem, just smack Vivi and good to go. Nicely done. Those red dragons are very tough for new runners. It's a fight where if it goes perfectly, it's not too bad, but it's can go wrong quickly and there's a lot of things you need to do to adjust to make sure you get everything done in the right order yeah it's very important that you get the right experience and the right people because it is a lot of experience those dragons ton. I, I think they give you like seven or eight levels per character yeah the day i saw is 27 for cease and was probably 19 or so when she left from all the yep. uh, ogre fights something around that so it, it's a good amount it's one of those ones that if you're playing hd since these sound effects stack on each other it makes a <laughs> terrifying noise from all the level ups at once yeah there's a headphone warning there usually <laughs> So Amart is in the last Lindblom section, and thankfully you don't actually have to do any movement here. It's all just text mashing, and since he is on turbo, he gets a nice nine minute break here. It's fantastic. No, not yet he doesn't. <laughs> not yet. Oh, it's coming up. <laughs> um, hopefully, hopefully he's aware, but no, not yet. <laughs> I think most people that have like switched to turbo, myself included, <laughs> have, uh, <laughs> have thought that, oh, it's over. Okay, great. I can, uh, I can go and get my my nice cup of tea now and I go away and I come back and I'm talking to a guard and I haven't actually come to any of it whatsoever and the run's dead. Yep. <laughs> nice seven hours. <laughs> Alright, Mel is heading into the Melta Gemini fight. So Steiner is our beater here. He deals huge damage thanks to the Flame Saber and all of the killer abilities that we've been acquiring. Oh, preemptive! Ah, oh, he's too oh, fast. Oh, still faster. Yeah, Ve Multi Gemini is a very, very fast boy. Yes. Venom Powder is almost entirely harmless, so it's going to do oh, a little bit of a annoyance. That's a shame. Could remedy him. You could eat it. It's Nah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Need to be careful. Holy TV. Holy TV too much, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's that's not too. That's, actually, that damage is fine. Yeah. Bonk. Right, this is gonna be a solid. Uh, 18k, 16k. It's about nine left. Might not roll high enough to kill. Nice. That was on Amaranth. That's, that's totally fine. Yeah. So we've not actually been venom powdered yet. Yeah. Thankfully, the safest members here are Zidane and uh, Steiner, who end up doing the most damage in the fight, Steiner specifically. But there usually these two will survive no matter what. And we, again, we don't rely on this AP whatsoever. So Amaranth being dead makes uh, no difference whatsoever. Yeah. A little scary. It can be end set times, but... No yeah, the only person us. that has any chance of learning anything on, in this route is uh, Steiner. He can learn Accuracy Plus early, and the only thing that you have to adjust is that because you learn Accuracy Plus early, the one of the menus we do, the cursor goes closer to Manita, so it's optimal to unequip Manita rather than Accuracy <laughs> Plus to gain the okay. necessary crystals to finish the menu. 
it's one of the menus that I didn't understand for the longest time until it's someone crazy. said, oh, this is why we're doing this. I'm like, all right. Because I was just doing it for the longest time. And someone finally explained it to me. <laughs> I, like, I guess that makes sense. But it's it's simply down to your cursor is closer to this one, so we take this off instead. Yep. Again, those tiny time saves that add up on the course of the run. They matter. They matter. Yeah. So we're going to have one more little boss fight before we're done. Uh, should put us nearly halfway through Amart's dialogue mashing before um, we move on to... Uh, it's Ibsen's after this. a whole lot to talk about at this part of the run. We have a bit more plot city for Amart and Mel as we get to watch the cease handle Melty. Let's see how this goes. Good time to uh, take a break for you, Broods. If you want to go step out, we can bring Rome back in for a little while. Yeah, I think I'm going to grab some breakfast. It's nearly nine in the morning here. <laughs> I don't blame you. I'm going to pass over to uh, Rome, so yeah, I'll uh, leave you in their capable hands. Oh, hello. Enjoy your breakfast, Broods. Thanks. Right, so we got an opening bio with Cease. Let's see if it's single target or everybody. It is everybody, which is a little annoying. So we're going to yeah, we're gonna be watching health for everybody. What the follow-up attack is. So for wings, which it is... Uh, you don't like to see it land, but Steiner's still alive, so we're gonna play a little safe and store a bit of his health. Mm -hmm. Trying to refresh my stream one second. Yep, no problem. Amaranth just fell from the poison, and the viral smoke as long as Steiner survives this. I think he does. We should be okay. Come on, Steiner. Oh, no, that's not great. Uh -oh. Okay, so we're in danger here for Cease. What, uh... Don't know the best option here. Uh, you can try an elixir, Sedane, or you can just try yep. and get Steiner back up and hope for the best. Um, it's tough. Uh, she went with the elixir, which puts Sedane mm -hmm. full health. We just don't yeah. want a wings crit or anything. Right. I don't know how much health Melty has left. Probably under... Gosh. I would assume just one more Steiner hit should do it, but... Yeah, it might be better just to hit with Zidane a couple times if you have the health. It's riskier, uh, but let's see. see. We just get a Wings that misses, or a Wings that just does exactly as much health as Zidane has. That's great. Mm. Yeah, it's a tough call. At least Steiner is up and is elixir so might be able to kill in one hit. And thankfully, he is immune. He has the antibodies, so that venom powder will not damage him too much. One more hit from Steiner should kill, and I think he will survive anything other than a wings crit, which we didn't get. So, very, very scary fight, but a great job backing it up for Cease. You yep. need to be ready for the worst at all times. Ooh, yeah. That can get really scary, as you see. <laughs> uh, it can either... Just, you know, go swimmingly, everyone gets their attacks off, there's nothing too terrible, yada yada yada, it's all good, Melty's fine, but then, yeah, Melty could just decide, hey, I'm just gonna AoE everyone, always, and just yeah. take out all your damage dudes, and it's just, ah, oh, just can go south so fast. But nice yep, recovery. I can't state enough how impressive it is for all of these runners to be able to adapt to everything. We plan mm -hmm. for the good fights when it makes sense, it's just very smooth, but to have the knowledge on 
so many of these fights and what you do in every situation. I mean, you, you saw right there, I had no idea what the best course of action was in that scenario, but Cease did the, the perfect thing to survive. And that's a fight if you just did one thing improperly or too slowly, it runs over. Yep. You gotta think quick on your feet. You gotta be able to react to any situation. That's what coming down to just doing experience, doing runs, and knowing how to react yep. in every situation, or even just watching runs, seeing what other people do. So it's a run that really rewards knowledge and experience and understanding how to react to all these different situations as best as possible, which is really, really fascinating. But now we have. Um, Amart wrapping up the plot city. Yes, his run starting for the fourth time, I think. <laughs> yeah. We just always just joke that, oh, the run's finally starting now. <laughs> Actually get uh, one of my favorite cutscenes. Dagger cuts her hair and lets it fly into the mm -hmm. other side of Alexandria and probably into some poor Alexandrian's face. <laughs> I always imagine it's a... Uh... Dante, Dante, the sign keeper, just having another bad moment. Yep. Where... <laughs> just a terrible day. She gets a face full of hair out of nowhere. <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah. But it is a, it is tradition <laughs> that if you're on world record pace and you get to this cutscene, you have to cut a bit of your hair off. Yep. Don't think we're quite there for Amart, but I think he should cut a bit of his hair just for good luck anyways. Oh, he said he shaved his head, oh, so he we're, head we're good. Yep. <laughs> and while we have Mel in the middle of the Lindblom plot city, and we have Cease starting it. So. Yep, we're all within six minutes of each other, I would guess. And yeah, there's a around. lot that can happen from, from this point. Shaped a mini death, guys. Nice. <laughs> One clean swipe of the blade gives you a perfectly layered haircut. Of course, yeah. She doesn't need to go to a, a stylist or a barber or anything like that. Oh, it all stays One clumped swipe. together and it's about to go smack someone in the face right now. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> oh, so disturbing. <laughs> yeah, Big Barber hates this one simple trick. It's called a knife <laughs> and passion. But now we have an airship. Hey, since finally back to normal, we uh, saved his kidnap estranged wife who turned him into an Oglop before for being unfaithful, but he promises he'll never do that again, I guess, so he's human again. I don't know, it's, it's a yeah. bit of a weird plot <laughs> that like, half makes sense, and we yeah. just kind of just go with it, but he's like, able right. to make an upgrade to his airships, and we're good to go. We don't need to rely on the mist anymore to get anywhere. Yeah, it's like, within five minutes, he's human. He's like, hmm, oh yes, that's how I fix this airship, being bad. Oh uh, yes, then, airship, <laughs> yes, yeah. Make it in five minutes, and all solved. But yeah, we're gonna bring a specific set of party members. Yeah, we're gonna bring Yo Vivi, Freya, and Steiner because we have some abilities to learn from the upcoming boss. And we need Vivi there Rev, for my dude name. loves blue. I think it's the layout here. Hey, Revy, my dude loves blue. Yeah, this is gonna be Vivi's last hurrah in our run. It's gonna be the last time we use him in our party. So the upcoming dungeon is a little unique. Um, it doesn't behave like any other dungeon. More, sure doesn't. More so than Oil Root that we had uh, recently with uh, No Magic. You want to go and explain that reverb? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if they do a... If they, they probably do explicitly explain it, but uh, the damage formulas for all of your physical attacks are shifted so that the weaker the weapon is, the more damage you will do. So casually when playing this, if you've kept all your equipment and you've been hoarding everything, you equip your starter weapons and you'll do basically the amount of damage you were doing with your extremely strong weapons. But if you happen to sell it because you no longer need it and you're stuck with powerful weapons, you're going to be hurting and need to take that airship back to some 
low-level places and buy some daggers and some broadswords, but well, essentially what... attacks are no longer useful here. Well, what if I told you that this castle also hints that by having daggers and rods and basic equipment as what? a reward in this, ch in, in this dungeon? They kind of tell you, like, hey, you should be using maybe, this stuff. Maybe you do want these, yeah. So that is one way of getting through this, but we have a couple better options for dealing damage. Thankfully, magic is unaffected, and VV has been very specifically tailored to just be a glass cannon at this point, and he can do a ton of damage. But we do have two more tricks that we're going to be using in this fight to hopefully make it go faster. Do you want to hint at one or both of those? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, so we bought a the flame saber for Steiner that we used for Melty Gemini. Um, and we used it for the fire damage as well, um, just because it's also a straight-up upgrade for attack, I believe. But uh, there's a property on it that has an add status, uh, so if we equip the add status ability, call, um, it'll, it will inflict heat, which is a status effect we haven't seen yet. We could have possibly seen it from random encounters, but uh, the heat status effect is whenever the user is afflicted and they attempt to take an action, they are instantly killed. They are instantly defeated. And thankfully, this upcoming boss is susceptible to heat. So, yep. Un unfortunately, there's no great way to apply that other than add status, which is ends up being, I think it's a 10% chance of applying right. on one of Steiner's hits. So it's not guaranteed, but we take that risk. We'll go for it. Yeah, yep. Just a 10% flat, doesn't it's not affected by uh, magic evasion or anything else, just a 10% roll, and we hope we get it. But The other thing have... that he is susceptible to here is uh, poison, so we will be using Soul Blade with Zidane as a backup to apply poison twice in the fight because it does run out, but mm -hmm. you will see the damage ticks are very, very high because it is percentage base. so while you're passively doing some fire spells with Vivi, and the enemy is doing some spells right back at us, he'll be taking a ton of damage from poison. Yep, the poison is going to be a, a big uh, form of DPS for the fight. But we really want to see a uh, spicy shrimp here, so cross your fingers for Amar. Let's yeah. get this heat going. We need some spicy shrimpies. We can also and because of this fight... Oh yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, we can also try and see if anybody wants to try and steal uh, from Taharka, because there is a really, really good weapon for Zidane. But yeah, I mentioned that we uh, we apply poison twice, but Zidane will get a third turn in, and we might as well try to steal. It's a 1 in 16 chance of getting uh, the Ori, and if we get it, it's going to save a couple turns coming up and be very, very helpful and save a lot of money, too. Um, it's not expected, but we're going to cross our fingers for a Heat and an Ori at the same time. Might as well. Yeah. And it's every shot you don't take, right? So... Might as well try and get it. Norch had a very quick Castle Zero encounter up to Taharka, so let's, uh, let's see how this fight goes. There's a little shrimpy boy. It's just the ant lion kind of powered up. Now he's a bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. This fight isn't too dangerous. Freya can die if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. But you want to uh, make sure she's okay. No heat on the first hit. Yeah, no heat. Use the skull blade to inflict the poison. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice the damage ticks are just under 2,000 damage every time. And we want to keep the ATB flowing, unlike other uh, other bosses where we usually want to like hold ATB and kind of wait and see what they do. We want that ATB flowing just so the poison ticks keep coming. And then we always start up with the Steiner. Let's see if we get it. Nope. So boil again. Fireaga. Rinse and repeat. And then since the last turn, we will kill him before the poison damage really does a whole lot extra. So we're just gonna go ahead and steal. Cross your fingers to at least get the Ori in. We have uh, Mel entering Ipsons, and we have Cease wrapping up Plot City, so they're both on their way to catch up to A Mart. Stolen elixir, unfortunate. Unfortunate, but still helpful. 
Very standard clean fight. fight framework. Yep, yep. Very clean, standard. Something else you can attempt to try and do is uh, make the poison ticks line up as the final hit for Taharka. It's not really something you really want to set up for because it's kind of a pain to get it to work. But uh, <laughs> if you if Taharka dies from a poison tick, it skips that death animation and he just fades away and it saves like one second or something. <laughs> Anyone uh, managed to get the heat kill? Uh, that was the first attempt on Taharka. We still have two more chances for it. So we have Mel going through that dungeon, and Cease is right behind him. So Amart now needs to go back out of the dungeon, only to realize he needs to go back into the dungeon. So, <laughs> yeah. little ways to go, but the boss is down first because it's backwards, so we might as well do it that way too. Yep. Yeah, uh, before we entered, Amaranth was kind of being cocky and was like, hmm, I don't need you guys, I can do everything on my own, type of, like, I bet I could do this all by myself while you guys have each other. One hand um, tied behind my back, no problem. Yeah, well, he's kind of a chump, and he ends up falling and getting hurt, so... Well, I eventually need to go back and get him, but Zidane's gonna do it solo. Because he's a little also annoying. macho and awesome, yeah, I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> Mr. Macho. <laughs> Thankfully, it's not too dangerous, even though you're solo Zidane for a little bit, and then just Zidane and Amaranth. It's very unlikely that we die. There is a, a very specific case where you can, but Oof. not going to happen. Veteran. Yeah, thankfully, uh, when Z uh, Zidane is solo, um, the enemies won't have too many other nasty spell uh, status effects so they won't do like the stop and doom or anything like that on Zidane and death and whatnot just because the game's like ah oh, you're solo we're gonna be a little nice but um little mercy on us at least a little thankfully. mercy but as soon as you get Amaranth back in the party it's gonna be like oh you're big boys now so. no more <laughs> yeah. we'll open up all those nasty spells so Mel has finished her encounter checks and is making her way to the boss so we'll see if you can get the lucky heat here is this the PC version? Uh, nope, all three runners are using the PlayStation 1 version. Playing on PlayStation 2. Yeah, the uh, insert disc prompts will happen uh, at the disc spots. Uh, the next one's coming up in probably an hour, I would say. Uh, yeah, just short take. an hour. Mm -hmm. The final one. We are on disc three out of four, and the last disc is the last 45-ish uh, minutes of the run, so coming up soon. Yeah, we, as we see with Amart, we're gonna strip Vivi of all of his gear and give him just the basic mage staff or whatever. Just because we need to sell all that stuff and use anything else uh, that we strip from him. Because yeah, money is gonna be very, very tight on the final shop, so we mm -hmm. no longer need Vivi, so we might as well take his gear and sell it all. Yep. A little smooch of a high potion for Revy. <laughs> just to top him off. Bell's waking. Excuse me, Cease is making her way into the uh, Ipsen's dungeon herself. And we have Mel heading into Making sure that ad status is on. Love to see mm -hmm. it. Everything's good. Alright, here we go. Another fun fact, a little quick fun fact is you can get encounters in this room right before you <laughs> fight Taharka, and it could be three uh, Tonberries. So fun. <laughs> so fun. But, uh... Amart is now making his way back into the dungeon to go pick up Amaranth. He got through the first room, no problem, and should be able to get Amaranth without an encounter. So he's past the first, not super scary, but kind of scary part. And just needs to make his way out as soon as he's done with a little bit of dialogue. Mm. Bell's jumping into the fight now. Let's cross our fingers for some heat. Starting with the Fire Aga, might as well just put on the damage. Yep. At the preempt, you might as well go for it. Yeah. Let's see what he does. A little shrimpy. Full saga all. Pretty normal. Ah, never lucky. <laughs> There's a 10% chance, so we're not mm -hmm. expecting it, but we just want to yeah. see it. Might as well try. Uh, just to clarify, Taharka is the only boss weak to heat. Uh, it's the only one weak in the speed run that we uh, try to take advantage of. Uh, there might be others yeah, that are weak sure. to it, 
but as far as the speedrun goes, it's the only one we attempt to try this and strategy on. Yeah, I don't know of any others. There might be, but I don't know if we have heat as a viable option. We, right. we can't. The only other way you can apply it, I think, is blue magic with a mustard bomb. But Correct. Yeah. We don't bring Quinna here. We don't have a good opportunity to learn that. So the only chance we have to do it is here with the flame saber. So if there is a way, we just wouldn't have a good method of attempting to apply it. Oh, yeah, looks like Mel's gonna need to heal. We need Freya alive for that AP, because it's coming down to the wire now with um, AP routing, that there's not gonna be many options for backup, so we need to try and make sure everyone's alive that needs the AP by the end of these fights. Be nice if this thing would just close. Yeah. Of course, more spells. And while Cease is on the way. Ugh, it's on the way. That is, uh, that's, oh man, that's scary. Oh no. Uh, died, died to poison. Died to poison. That is not Freya dead. Uh, right. Okay. Brutals will, uh, yeah, Brutals be able to fix it for Mel. Brutals knows yep. a lot about this AP fixing, mm -hmm. so. Yep, we'll figure it out. It's off in the, the Discord DM. Plugging away at this, so we'll get this fixed. I don't know what the backup is off the top of my head, but there is a backup. There's always a backup. Yep. Master Curse. Yeah, seriously. But yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll get Mel um, back on AP. Not a run killer by any means. Yeah. We'll figure it out. All right, Cease is getting all prepped to head into the fight. Must have had a very good Ipsons because it's already there, so. Yeah. No encounters. Yeah, there's backups for backups for backups, and at the end of the day, <laughs> if you are missing an ability, you just kind of go for it anyways. Just pray for the best. <laughs> Alright, Amart is out of Ipsons and is making his way to Earth Guardian. He has to drop off some party members at a couple other temples. This is one of the infamous cut content parts of the game. They're in uh, normal Final Fantasy fashion. They split your entire in, entire party up into odd pairings, and you're supposed to fight four different bosses with four unique setups, but they didn't quite have the disc space for it, and they didn't exactly want to torture us with it. So we only get to see one of the four fights, but would have been interesting yeah. to see, that's for sure. Yeah, would have been really interesting to see Ico and Dagger. <laughs> taking I don't know on how a... you'd kill a water demon with Holy, but right. I don't know. A baby kraken, yeah. Like, oh man. Like, normal kraken's a nightmare enough. I don't know about that. Yeah, but yeah, it would have been really cool uh, to see how they handled it. Yeah. We'll handle our odd pairing very, very nicely. We'll talk about that when we get there as soon as we see uh, Pieces turn. Going for the early steal with the preempt and got the preemptive attack. Just only stole an elixir and didn't get the heat. Okay. A couple more shots of heat. Come on, cease. Curl, at least. Yeah. The best pattern for Taharka is just them curling and opening and curling and opening and just sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> yep, even Ram is not as scary as Blizzaga Alls. Right. Ah, no heat. No heat. I think we'll have one more shot at heat before mm -hmm. it's a uh... Pointless. And one more steal attempt as well. We're making a save outside of the Earth Guardian just in case things can go south. Yep, it's a pretty safe fight, but there are some scenarios, as with every single fight, mm -hmm. that can just go completely wrong. Unfortunately, we have no heat this run and no yeah. Ori's, as is the usual case, but. Yeah. And we also have to watch out she for goes. Those. We also have to watch out for the mini game before Earth Guardian. That can be kind of scary as well. Yep, this is the most dangerous part of the run if you're not paying attention. <laughs> yeah, no heats, unfortunately. Yeah. So you might think the danger is over, or the boss is done, we're going into the next boss. We can just take this nice and slow, but uh, don't oh. mash to this little cutscene oh. with Amart here. You just get crushed okay. by the walls. Amart, you better be there. Amart! Oh. <laughs> okay. It's Oof. free with turbo, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is free with turbo, he just walks away. Dangerous, you never know you might crush there. Let's 
So if we sold the Ori, we would uh, equip that on Zidane here. And it makes this fight incredibly fast. You just yeah, need to attack it, a, a handful of times and it just melts him. But basically doubles your damage. Um, this is another interesting fight that's got a little bit of a gimmick to it since we have Zidane and Quinna here. It is, of course, able to be eaten. So the way that works is you need to deal at least 75% of its health and you can just eat it for the last remainder. And that ends up being six attacks with our current weapon, or three if you have the Ori. But... Yeah, as we see all the little cutaways, uh, we get to see the uh, the Wind Guardian here and the Fire Guardian, but there's no Water Guardian. Never see the Water Guardian. <laughs> Never see the Water Guardian. They probably look like uh, Kraken, because these yeah. all look like the other bosses in Disc 4, but with a couple fewer tentacles. We're yeah. fighting our little mini Lich right now. And the only thing we really want to look out for is, uh, I believe it's Fyraga on Quina is the worst? Yeah, Fyraga on Quina is just outright just deletes them, so... Ooh, and then you can also this? hit with a uh, double slash that can crit. It's the worst case scenario for Zidane, otherwise he's almost entirely immune to death on this fight. Quake is fine, Blazaga is fine, Thundaga is fine, I think. Thundaga might kill Quina? Oof, uh, yeah, you can see double blade does a lot of damage there, so... We do have auto regen at this point. Quina has the Coral Ring, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, but even though it's an Earth Guardian, it only has, like, yeah, Earthquake, I think. And then it has all these other spells, so you think, oh, it's just Earth, I'll just be fine. Yep. Nope. And we have complete, uh, absorption, I think, from Earth, so that just heals everyone to full, so this fight is usually pretty fine, but... Yeah, it gets scary. It can get scary, but yeah, it's for the most part pretty straightforward. Just attack as a dane, heal up when needed. The auto regen tech will do, do a lot of the work, but if it's not a high potion or elixir, if it's too severe. This is where our uh, gear routing really comes into play here. We have very good um, immunities, absorptions, and half damage to all these spells to make this extremely survivable and what would be an otherwise very, very scary fight, especially because Quinn is so underleveled, but he holds her own with 600 HP and hoping this Bright Raga's on Zidane and is not, so we have to pick Quinna up. Um, Mark currently is just counting the number of hits that he's done to Earth Guardian. I think he's one more away before he can eat, so he needs to get around where everyone is surviving. I think this is his last one. Hopefully. This is uh, also one of, the only, one of the only bosses you can eat with Quinna, because it's just kind of yeah. like, well, let's showcase, you know, we have to use Quinna somehow, <laughs> so let's just make yeah. him edible. Because why not? Yeah, we get the so We don't have knights here. This is the only one that Quinn is really useful on, and mm -hmm. just like that, learned Earthshake, and we will never use that. And for the most part, we're saying goodbye to Quinna. She'll yeah. uh, they'll show up in a couple battles, but yeah. it won't really be used. Yeah, we'll take them through uh, the next uh, dungeon, I guess, so to speak. But particularly just to strip their gear and then never see them again. <laughs> well, they'll show up in a forced fight, but all they do is just stand there. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true, too, yeah. Yeah. All right, so that is out of the way for Amart, who's got a little bit more navigation to do and is heading to the last, eh, last, second to last dungeon area, whatever you want to call it, of yeah. the disc. Yep. While wow, Mel is saving outside of Earth Guardian and on her way to that fight. While wow, Cease is trying to make her way out of Epson's. You can see how boss variations tend to gain you time, lose you time. Mm -hmm. Random encounters tend to gain you time and lose you time. The Cease has gotten the short end of the stick on a lot of these. Bella's had a rough go of it, and Disc 3 has gotten a lot of random encounters, which has pushed her yeah. behind a bit of Amart. Amart's had a very clean disc, and oh. they've all performed extremely well and are handling everything great. They've all had a couple curveballs thrown their way. Cease more than others and has handled it extremely well doing a great job to stay in this. Looking at Cease's uh, Zidane trance, uh, it's almost full, so I think we're going to probably see a Ooh. trance on Zidane for Earth Guardian, which is pretty good. be nice. That's a good fight to get a trance on. Mm -hmm. Mel, thankfully, did mash through the minigame and did not game over on that screen That's for good, Earth yeah. Guardian. Very dangerous for non-turbo runners. That's why we do our safety save outside, just in case. Mm-hmm. 
case we get splat. One of the last great FMVs for Amart as they head into a whole different planet. Yeah, a little wormhole. Shimmering Island, the connection between worlds. Mm -hmm. These tall mushroom building things. Remember this blowing my mind as a kid. This is great. Yeah. So this um this dungeon, so to speak, that uh, Amart's going to be running through, is kind of annoying. Uh, there's we don't really need to we don't need any AP here, but it is a pretty nice option to make up some uh, AP or experience for anybody that died during a essential part of the run. So you might see somebody sub in another character for this, but for the Petro route, we're just bringing the three other characters that we're never going to use again. Uh, except for essentially Quinna and Dagger, which we're forced to use for the upcoming uh, You're Not Alone section. But we're basically just going to be giving them the bare minimum and then never seeing them. But, yeah. yeah, there's one specific enemy that is undead that can be dealt with with a single life cast, so it can make up a couple of issues if you have them um, yep. Mel is making her way into Earth Guardian starting off the fight and we'll need six hits with Zidane to get there so count them um, out you can always hope for a crit with Zidane too yeah. the counter to double slash mm -hmm. it's not likely but you love to see those because this is such a slow fight because you have to do so many turns so if you steal the Ori you're saving three turns and so many spells yeah this is another Two. reason why I like to use the Silver Fork, because the Silver Fork um, adds status with Quinna, allows you to slow Earth Guardian, you can use them to ATB weight with Zidane, get two hits in, so you see half the number of spells. So it's, I love it, yeah. But you can do a lot of only, different fun routing. Mm -hmm. It's only 15% chance though, so it's kind of like a... <laughs> only, odds are only a little bit better than me, but it's still fun to try. Yeah. It was four, Zidane took a double slash, we're just going to heal him up just to be safe. Looks and like, I think Brutal's uh, mentioned it earlier, we are just going to uh, defend with Quinna. We don't need Quinna's turn, and defending mm -hmm. increases your chances of evasion by, I think, 50%, and yep. Double Slash can take Quinna out otherwise, so not only is it reducing the damage that Quinna takes, it also reduces the chance of it hitting, so it's very helpful just to defend as opposed to sitting on that turn. Yep. Looks like uh, Amart's getting a couple encounters in the old Terra. Yes, he's having fun in Terra. It's, uh, there's no boss to the dungeon, it's just making it to the city, but there's a chance for a lot of encounters. They're not super terrifying, but they add up fast. Yeah, they're just annoying. And yeah, so, no Elves did a great job clearing Earth Guardian. Love to see. Thies is on her way there, saving outside, I believe. Yep. Part of the marathon safety. Yep, very unlikely to die completely to Earth Guardian. You're more likely to lose a lot of time, but right. it is certainly possible to lose mm -hmm. control entirely of the fight. Yeah, exactly. Just a, sing that's just a single crit on Zidane can turn everything south, so... Yep. Okay, so there's the Heck dies there, which is uh, undead. So, because uh, Iko had uh, fast ATB, Amar's just gonna elect to uh, kill that off. So everyone's going to get some experience, but it won't push Zidane into that level 35 range uh, after all the You're Not Alone sections to risk level 5 death from future bosses, so we're fine. Yep. The only thing we need to worry about when it comes to leveling is level 5 death. That's a spell that anyone who is a multiple of 5, so 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 for our run, if Oof. they have that cast on them, they will be dead. And if they are not those levels, the attack just misses, and it's... A free turn, even though it takes a while, it's completely safe. I think this Nord is, is getting encounter. absolutely destroyed. Fourth yeah, encounter, he's Terra. <laughs> he's not even on the bridge yet. Usually he's on pace see... for five or six. Yeah, usually two is annoying. Like... Three, or man. Yeah, one or two. Five is something special. That's so incredible. That's gonna probably gain some time here. I don't yeah, I don't get it. Time, but... Karma is catching up to Amart after some really clean dungeons before. Yeah. 
and just also something to bring up, not throwing shade at Amart or anything like that, but just in general for movement in dungeons is really important for the FF9 speedrun, so making sure your movements are clean, just to make sure you're mitigating all these different checks. Um, yep. If you can cut out the just that last check, check, check or yeah, two, yeah. Is, oh. mm -hmm. If you could cut out the last and check of every screen, you would have ten less encounters in the run. Yeah, it's not the most exciting sometimes thing. Sometimes you can, practice. sometimes you can't, but yeah, 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 movement is very important. Learning what's optimal to do with D-pad, what's optimal to do with analog stick, it's mm -hmm. very, very uh, important. Yep. It's Deez is heading into Earth Guardian here. Let's see if she gets the trance. She can do a couple of interesting things. That looks like it's on Quinna. It's not helpful. There's number five for Amart. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the worst attack Deez could have opened with. But if we can get the trance, she can still save a lot of time here. <laughs> Incredible. Five <laughs> encounters in Terra. And the miss. miss so not even I know. The one time you want to take a hit. Let's see if Amar can get the legendary six encounter Terra. He's got like two more encounter checks to get past. It's very low odds, <laughs> but this has been so bad. Yeah. I mean, this, this screen has gotten me a couple times, but yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like 20% chance of getting mm -hmm. an encounter here. It's not guaranteed. I think he's clear. Usually we wait until after the last check to do this menu. And I think he has passed it. He should be, yeah. He should be. He is safe, so just a measly five encounter right. dungeon. There's a Maybe trance. Damage. All right, we got grand a trance, lethal. so C's yeah, going to go with the go. grand lethal. Yeah, so instead of dealing 2,600 <laughs> damage, I think we'll see a couple of nines here. Let's see if uh, Cease's calculations on point. Oh, do you want it? Might be a little low. Might have been a low roll or something. Yep. Ooh, I know I can't eat till we can. Okay, and eat. Fine. Just survive so one more question, turn. An attack might okay. just kill. I would just attack here, probably. No. Yeah. I think it's only got. 500-ish health left? Is that a Flintstone running? <laughs> yeah. Ears flapping. <laughs> that was them running in place. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately we see the D-trance, but nothing you can do. Needed to do a little bit yeah. more damage push and then eat. Still probably a faster fight than just doing it normally. I think that right. still might have been a little bit faster. I haven't been paying attention to Mel, but she is cruising through this. I don't know if she's yeah, gotten think... encounter list, but it's going much, much faster than Amart regardless. So making up some time. Seen... Yeah. I don't think she's gotten one yet, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Zero encounter. Next screen is, is very difficult to get through, so. Yeah, this bridge. It's short, but it's loaded. Yep. Yep. <laughs> So Amart's a uh, task to bring a party with them. We don't care. We don't need anyone. So we just bring the closest person who's Vivi and just run around Ooh, town. Ooh, back talk attack. To, talk to whomever. If this is Mel's only encounter, she's making it count with a nice slow one. Mm-hmm. Seeks was able to wrap up Earth Guardian, as we mentioned before, and now she's on her way to Terra. Hopefully Terra is kind. So every planet has to have a bit of a plot city, and this is uh, <laughs> Era's Lindblom, known as yeah. Brand Ball. Basically the same thing. It's just a. Uh, it's not too bad though. Only four or so minutes of mashing to get through. But mm -hmm. once that's done, and we do a little bit of talking with this mysterious character who showed up, whose name is Garland, who will tell us some more backstory. We get to a lot of people's favorite part of the game. Yeah, the jam. Thankfully, there's a lot of elixirs around Brain Ball uh, we're going to be picking up. It's going to be helpful not yep. only for the upcoming You're Not Alone section if we need them, but also just Discord in general. But uh, there's also going to be a pair of angel earrings that we're going to pick up, which 
if anybody did 10, not. 000. Yeah, 10,000 gil, which we're going to need for the upcoming shop, but also uh, the angel rings are Angel Earrings are also another option for a Holy Boost. If you, A, didn't get Rebirth Ring, and B, stole Ori, you could save that money from not selling their Angel Earrings and use that instead. But, but yeah, we just, since all three of them uh, got the Rebirth, we'll just sell it. Don't need it. Hand Never lost a single like a card nice uh, battle in this marathon, so. That's right, yeah. Everyone's got the Rebirth Ring. Three winners. So if you had uh, stolen the Ori from Taharka, you would not need to buy it here, which is really nice. Uh, we do have the money to be able to buy it, but it is 17,000 gil to do so. Yeah. So It's a spicy meatball, yeah, but we need it. We need that Ori for Yana, or else it's going to be a real bad time. Yep. It increases, for some uh, people, it is the uh, final weapon for Zidane, mm -hmm. depending on your preferences. We'll see if... Uh, people opt for the other option or not. It does offer uh, speed, so that does help with uh, some ATB waiting for uh, one boss in particular, but yeah, it's just nice to have it in general. Yeah, this is a... Uh, as we can see, there's a lot of people here that look similar to Zidane with the, the tail similar to his. Oh. Mm. Mm. What it's could gone. it mean, Rome? What could it I mean? Don't know. What could it mean? There's a tasty crystal. Yeah, I remember that. All we're doing is chasing Kuja around who has come back here. I think this is right about the part of the run. It's not so much this part, but when uh, we're talking to Garland in a second, as you see Amar just about to do, he's going to explain the full backstory of Zidane. Uh, this uh, planet that we're on was a planet of magicians who fortunately are in a dying planet. Their crystal at the center of their planet is starting to fade and is going to be gone one day. So... Since these are such brilliant magicians, they devised a way to absorb the crystals of other worlds and take their life force for their own to keep their planet running. The problem is they need to keep doing this constantly, and they tried to absorb Gaia, the planet that we started on. Um, unfortunately, Gaia was a bit too strong for what they understood, and they weren't able to absorb it and ended up merging the worlds together. So the people of Terra decided to put themselves into somewhat of a hibernation and implant their spirits into these uh, genomes is what they call them, these other people that look like Zidane, and just temporarily put themselves on hold and hired Garland to take over Gaia and G Garland um, has created some genomes of his own in an attempt to weaken Gaia a bit more he started off by making Kuja as a grown adult who he thought would be the most powerful being but quickly realized that Kuja was not powerful enough to get the job done. Garland thought that the way to fix this would be to make a child genome who could age normally, and they would have the experience to grow and become stronger through their experience. So that uh, genome that he made was Zidane. Thank you. So Zidane, Zidane, upon learning this, is going to have a, a bit of an existential crisis where he tries to figure out what it all means. Mm-hmm. Like ceases tearing through Terra. See what you catching up. Catching up real quick. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Cease and Mal both had very good Terras. They're gaining some ground in Amart. They're just mm -hmm. a couple minutes behind at this point. The old Papa Garland. Old Grandpa. Yep. And Disc 4 is going to be quite the equalizer. It could go very smoothly or it can go very unsmoothly, much more so than some of the other dungeons that we have seen. We might see some resets, we might see some massive time losses, we might see some massive time gains, so this is still a very, very close race. 
Oh yeah. Anything can happen still. All the way through the last couple bosses even, right? So like it's yep. still anyone's game even until the final the final boss. Even dead. the last boss, you might have to <laughs> yeah. reset and cost another seven minutes. Uh oh. Look on Amos oh. stream. Do you see something? Oh, I don't see anything. So Amos doesn't nothing. look out. Look out for what? There's nothing here. He's laughing. What is it? Oh no, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> Is that a shark? Oh my god, it's a shark. <laughs> oh no, way, it's just an airship. There's a, a long-standing meme in the community that uh, that airship coming up underneath Kuja. You'll see it two more times. Kind of looks like the Jaws cover, if you've ever seen that. Some people are adamant that it is a shark, and some people are adamant that we're just insane meme lords, and it's just an airship. <laughs> Calm down. And uh, I am very firmly on Team Shark. It's terrifying. <laughs> it is a scary shark, yes. Yeah, Zidane's uh, a little down in the dumps, so he's going to be telling his little allies to go away and kind of being a little emo boy as he kind of tries to overcome all this stuff, but his partners are, that have been through this journey with him are sticking by him. Yep, all over the best song in the game. So we'll uh, we'll talk very quietly because there's only a few things to discuss for each of these fights. But we'll let you enjoy the music. So coming up for Amart is the first of three forced encounters. This one has three different phases to it. You can deal with it in a couple ways. The first phase is dealt with by just waiting for the horse bird to take flight and be a true bird. He'll always start with a bio and then he'll take off, prompting Freya to come in. Has entered the fight, you need to deal 5,600 ish damage, and that will prompt Amaranth to come in. Okay, it is possible to under and damage. Now that Amaranth or... is here, you need another 5,600. Mm -hmm. We need to come and it's off possible to under damage. Yeah. Um, we Zidane's need to funnel coming. experience up just to Freya and Amaranth. So we kill off Zidane, let Amaranth kill with the Wing Edge, which is always guaranteed to kill. Marant and Freya get some much needed levels here. And uh, You're Not Alone section is actually the last uh, part of the game where we're going to get experience for our characters. We're not going to kill any other account encounters after this that will grant experience. So whatever we get after this section is going to be the levels we're, we're essentially stuck with. Uh, unless some something goes comes up in disc four but yes we'll we'll not worry about that this is very important to have level up on characters i think it doubles your experience so this is your last beefy bit so this is the second fight uh the only goal here is we need to survive first and foremost for two rounds and then zidane will come in we need to deal about twelve thousand damage um, we actually want quinna dead here because we do not want them to get experience because this is the last time we will see them in the run in battle we switch Steiner to the back row, which ends up causing double defense, which is great, but it also skips a line, a line of dialogue when Zidane comes in. So we switch to the back row and then just wait, and then Zidane will show up, and then two Zidane hits, and probably a Steiner hit will kill. Yep, usually just uh, two Zidane hits, but if you enter damages, we bought the Steiner. We should be able to hit. It looks like we'll be able to finish it off with Amart. As... Mel starts her, you're not on the bird. bird horse. High wind is the uh, most dangerous attack, but it's not too bad at this part of the run. The only thing you don't want to see is double high wind at the start when you have not moved to the back row. It is physical damage, so Niner will survive it no problem as long as he's in the back row and not getting hit twice, but problem for Aymar. And Aymar makes it through. We'll see how Mel does for Amducius. 
Kmart is coming up on the third and final part of this uh, little boss rush here. It's actually the most dangerous in a couple of ways. There's a few different um, methods that have been tried throughout the years to get through it. So the way this works is very similar to Plant Brain in the very beginning. The second phase will start when Zidane is in critical HP. Not dead, unfortunately, like Plant Brain. So you need to get him to critical HP. Um, some old strats used to use the Rebirth Ring, so you just kill off Zidane and he gets revived with 1 HP. And then Dagger comes in, full heals him, and you do the fight like normal. We're going to be doing some damage manipulation here. Try to get Zidane into a very specific damage range so that um, a smash will cause him to go into critical health. Mart's in a weird spot because of his levels. He's a little bit over-leveled, so it's going to be a little tricky to get him to that exact number. Uh, we can also just wait for the ability Smash, which can happen on the third turn Oof. and is guaranteed <laughs> to happen on the fifth turn. <laughs> 5 so. HP. Nice. Yikes, eh, Mart? Yikes. But he did it. All according to plan. And then... Wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 5 HP. So if he had done 5 HP more, that would have been a reset, and he would have lost All calculated. about 7 minutes. But we're good, so now he just needs to hit um, oh, that crit. Hell Dragon a couple of times, and it's over. And he's about to trance, crit. too. Nice crit, yep. So we definitely want a knife here to to be knocked out, so Zidane gets a solo, solo experience. Because, Which is uh, why we kill Zidane in the first fight, he's going to get all this experience here, so we don't need him trance, to... Yeah. So Dagger so, should be able to self-attack and kill herself uh, without any issues. That's the last uh, time we'll see Knife in the run as well. And the Trance and the Grit makes for a really fast fight for Amar. Wow. Just barely killed herself. What a Shell Dragon. The Holy two-turn moment. Shell Dragon. Very, very clean for Amar. <laughs> very good. A little scary at the start, but a great yeah, finish. Yeah. Great, yeah. Worth it. I was making quick work of the second fight. Everything went very smoothly for her. She will be heading into Shell Dragon. Let's see what her levels are looking like and her max health will be determined. I think she's going to be a little bit high. She might be the right level. It's usually a standard level you tend to be on this route just because of the way that um, experience. Um, is exponentially required and gained. Even if you kill a lot of enemies early on, which she did, she was very beefy in the beginning, it doesn't necessarily lead to a very beefy ending. So we'll see if she's at the right level. The, not the right level, but the standard level where things are right. mostly That's designed cool. for. And we're going to see uh, Amart picking the final party and do the final shopping menu, which is one of the most fun menus to not only do but also watch there's a lot of involved so amart is taking off everything he doesn't need so he can sell it and swapping out some weaker weapons so we can sell some stronger weapons and arranging his inventory so we can set up this coming shop he's going to save first for safety because you don't want to sell something that you really 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 need right or buy 11 avengers or something which i have <laughs> done before yep so Mel is dealing with Shell Dragon and is getting a little bullied and is not getting into the perfect HP values. You probably have to wait for a smash, which will automatically take her to 1 HP unless uh, she gets lucky with this next damage roll. Let's hope for a yeah. smash. Now it's a charge and she's in a safe range still. We've got uh, different charts for how much health you have, you know, how much damage you could potentially take. Yeah. So she will yes. be holding ATB or running or... Whatever, but got smash, which just means you have one HP, which is actually the kind of easiest way mm -hmm. to uh, get to the second phase. It just can only happen on the third turn and beyond. So and Amart is zooming through this menu. There's so much going on. And uh, so just to confirm, yes, uh, Amart and Caesar are using turbo. I believe Mel is not using turbo. Correct. There's a quick little charge to knock out Dagger. So Shell Daddy is kind to know. We'll see this being done a very different way just because of no trance and no crit. So I think it's mm -hmm. four attacks to kill, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, four attacks. So you have auto regen, and 
don't take a ton of damage. The only thing we need to be very, very careful of is smash. Uh, yeah. Mel's playing an extra safe, it yeah. looks like. And it's looks just like getting she has extra health. Mm -hmm. Looks like she has the extra elixirs too, so she can spare him. And is very close to trance herself and smash. could get pushed here. <laughs> As well, just elixir again and wait for the trance. Yep. Yeah, this this boss can be an elixir toilet sometimes. I think uh, Amart, well, I watched Amart do a run once where he just smashed like five times <laughs> in a row and they're, you're just sitting there just yeah. tossing elixirs going, well, there's nothing I can do. I'm going to die if I don't do this. So. <laughs> Mel did get that trance, I think, can do enough damage to just kill this here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Should be not fine. should be able to kill the next turn. Yep, totally fine. <laughs> So Amart went through... Yep, sorry. Cease is on Amducius, the first part of the fight. Uh, Amart has finished his menu, did a quick little mini game that I think we'll see Mel do a little bit differently and is making his mm -hmm. way to the end of the disc. Does Mel do the task strat? The, uh, she does do the segmented task oh. strat. Yep. It's not the current task strat. I don't know if you've seen okay. the the newest task strat. He just kind of oh, I goes straight through the middle of the board and through <laughs> all the lights, and it makes no sense whatsoever. Wonderful. So Mel is going to be working on her uh, pandemonium menu. She's opting to revive and cure instead of using elixirs, I think. I think it's just a little safer than just saving elixirs. Don't worry, Kegar, it only saves, like, a second maximum, and it's not worth doing. It's pretty easy to pull off, honestly, but it takes a bit of practice, so wouldn't recommend YOLOing it, but... I like uh, Cease's combo of Maul Mythic. <laughs> Maul Mythic. Will soon to be Paul Maul Mythic. Mm. We do have uh, Amart uh, fighting Silver Dragon, which, which just takes five hits from everyone. So unfortunately, not a full round of attacks. So we need to have like either one preempt, um, and then the or full crit, round. So or another round. Yeah. Yeah. So the end of disc three is a three boss boss rush. Uh, the, this first boss is actually the scariest because it can it do is, some AOE yeah. spells like this yeah. Shockwave here. The counter attack uh, going to be lethal and can cause a counter. Doesn't really need it, but mm -hmm. yeah, great. Most important thing is no one died and is no, not going into the fight with a man down. So mm -hmm. the next two fights are very, very safe because they can both only do single target spells. So you can revive with someone and attack with the other two. It just costs a bit of time if uh, it goes poorly. Mm -hmm. Cease just wrapped up Abaddon as well. Looked like it was a pretty smooth uh, fight. She was able Hell to put Stein in the background. The yep. We got a pandemonium menu on Mel, while Amart's running through the second boss of the boss rush. Your Garland. Mel is a little light on Phoenix Downs. I don't think it'll be an issue. I think she bought like 35-ish. Mm. Remember the scary number. It's not not the highest. It shouldn't be an issue. But yeah, it should be fine. Ooh, cease with the instant. Critical HP. That's exactly Ooh, what you want turn, to yeah. see. Yeah, you want to see so, that roll. So, unlike the other two, Cease is immediately into phase two. That's why the leveling is very important there. We are in a range where we can't die in the first charge, but there's a, I think, a three or four out of 21 chance of being into critical health, something like that. Yeah. Now, Cease is having a very good Yana, it looks like. Looks like it's all, all coming together. Mel with the instant encounter on her way to the lights. We gotta wait just a little bit to see those great strats. She's letting us see uh, Cease's fight first, which is very kind of her. Oh, marble! I got a marble. Need more. Bad breath is an extremely annoying spell. It'll put every disease in the world onto uh, little Chew there. Yep. I don't think it does virus, right? If it I does, we'd need to cure it. it. Uh, do we need the AP on? Uh... Uh, yeah, we need the AP. Well, maybe for Amaranth, I'm not sure, but for others, we do. Yeah, I don't think Amaranth needs it, but Amaranth's kind of just. Yeah, let's check her uh, her little light mini game. Let's see what she does here. Oh yeah, look at that! 
Oh, yeah, she's going for that. a task rat. So normally we go up top and we wait a little bit for the lights, and uh, she has learned the task strats of wow. not waiting and just kind of sending it. There's a couple of dead zones that look like you would get caught if you run yeah. up against the light. What happens is you get an encounter, but there's That's a couple cool. spots where it actually won't get you. And it saves a second. It's, mm -hmm. it's a 10 minute thing to learn, and it's extremely safe once you learn it, but it's, uh, it's worth it, I think. Like ceases getting um shell daddy uh wrapped up here. I think one more hit'll do it. I believe so. Alright. Yep, she is attacking after the smoosh. Oh, smoosh smoosh. Never worried. And everyone survived. Yana, a fantastic job once again. Everyone had a different experience with Shell Dragon, and that's pretty typical of what you See with that fight, it can go very, very cleanly, or it can go a little scary, but it was handled great by everyone. Well, at least we got a three-man charge. Yep. Um... If someone asked, uh, they saw Amart using a phoenix down on an alive character. I didn't quite see the circumstances, but... Uh... That can happen if you forget about uh, auto life sometimes. It can happen if you press the wrong button and just tap down just a little bit too much. There's a couple of mistakes that can be made in that direction. But nothing too yeah. fancy. There's crazy strats you can do, but just a normal one. I don't think we've uh, talked about charge yet, right? I don't think so, no. Do you want to uh, explain what that does? The best move in the game? So yeah, charge is quite possibly the best ability in the game. It's, uh, only standard can use it because it's, it's a knight skill. And essentially what it does for only 10 HP, it makes everyone that's in critical HP attack uh, do a basic attack. And since we're have, we have a party full of just beefy hitters, not only do they get their full turn of Zidane, Freya, and Amaran doing their attack, but if they're all in critical HP and standard goes charge, then we get a whole nother round of attacks, and we're, we're just going to be wailing on these bosses throughout this core. We're not going to be casting any more spells, so, well, aside from maybe one boss, we might see a spell, but um, we're just going to be whacking away as we just put on caveman mode and just get them as fast as much as possible. Yep, the great thing about the spell is, like you said, anyone who's in crit HP is going to get their turn in, and because we are kind of low level, any attack will either kill us outright, so it doesn't matter if we're full HP or 1 HP. And if it doesn't do any damage to us, we're just going to be immune to it. So for the most part, being in critical health is not scary. Yeah, and uh, another bonus to this already strong ability is that it also doesn't trigger counterattacks. So there's a lot of bosses in Disc 4, and... Oh, sorry, there's a lot of bosses in Disc 4 that will trigger a counterattack if you do a basic attack or some spells and things like that. However, charge itself is a counter, as essentially Steiner is casting a a spell to his party that then is a reaction. And so this game can't handle reactions on reactions. So, yeah, it just ignores uh, some boss mechanics. Oh, we got a uh, lovely twister opener on Silver Dragon, so they're going to have to pick up Freya, unfortunately. Getting into the final two fights, Cease is past her Pandemonium menu, and we'll be doing, I think, the usual light strats that we just aim aren't doing, but this is how they are most often done. Up top, you kind of wait for that light to disappear, and you go around the left side, very, very safe. Yeah, it is about one second, because Null exited that screen at 21 on the clock, and that was 20, so yeah, it's about one second time save. That's pretty good. Nice little... Maneuver. Three second counts. Yeah, exactly. So Mel is in the second to last fight of the disc, which is Garland, this uh, character we're kind of introduced to, who is just going to fight us and then immediately be dead. Again, at this point, they're only doing single target attacks, so we are at no risk of dying here. The only uh, risk-reward part of this is knowing when to revive, when to charge, when to attack, what's the fastest, most optimal way to get through this, so 
I was making a couple decisions as she goes along based on what happens, but you're very safe. Nice and easy. And again, as we mentioned before, um, making sure you have your calculators out and so you know how, so you know when to attack and when to charge, because a charge might be able to kill if uh, you're missing one attack essentially. But for these for these bosses, you just basically just want to whack away. And it looks like Freya might be missing something. She was doing 3K. Hmm. I know we did have some issues with her dying on Taharka. Maybe there's some man eater had to be removed for some reason. Yeah, it might be man eater. Which won't be a problem because it's last man only is the fight after this. Yep. Yeah, after everything else is a bird. <laughs> so murder or devil, that's all we have going forward. And I guess there's a dragon in there. The dragon, yep. Yeah. But um, yeah, without Van Eater, it's it's not bad because just yeah, as you said, just Garland here and then Kuja are the only man. Oh, it's Holy Boost. Oh, right? Holy Boost. Gotcha, gotcha. How many Lumas are we gonna get? Ooh, that's a good question. Let's see who's brave. Who has good enough open? Luma or Nova? We have a sea setting into Nova uh, Silver Dragon. Oh. Right up. So Silver Dragon is extremely, extremely fast, 50 speed, and can do this claw attack, which is also very quick. So if you're not on top of your inputs, you will see the bird getting two turns in while you're still making your decisions. This is one fight that's really tricky for a lot of runners starting out. You tend to stop and think and think, okay, I need to Phoenix down, I need to do this, I need to attack with this. And if you are delaying your inputs at all, this bird will just absolutely destroy you. Uh, I see. They had to use Lapis for Silver Dragon for the AP, so she's missing Holy yep. Boost, but uh, that with Nova should be able to correct it. Oh, Freya was dead for Silver Dragon. Uh, she has Rebirth. She's got Clawed and had the Rebirth taken away and then got Shockwave, so she will auto-revive for uh, Garland. It's the biggest deal. Freya was dead. So? Sorry, you cut out a little bit. What was that? Oh, Cease is uh, Freya's dead uh, going into Garland. I'm, I'm not. I'm pretty sure she might need uh, AP for it, but we'll see. Oh, yeah, the AP is the issue. She, I mean, she will auto revive, but right, yeah. she did miss out on some AP there. Oh. This is making her way onto Garland. Mel is making her way onto Kuja. Both uh, pretty simple fights that should be over in a matter of a minute. And Amart is just about at the very end of disc four. He has to do a bit of mashing. It's about six minutes once you finish this fight. And just gotta mash a little bit and move a little bit and then he will be putting in disc four. Where the run really finally starts again for the fifth time. I can hear me now. I can hear you a little bit. You're very cutting out. I don't know how it's being picked up on the stream, but uh, you're having some problems, so I might swap you out shortly if uh, having some issues. Board is on to disc four. Hey. Hey, Broods. Thank you just for helping time, all these right? runners with some questions. Yeah, you're just in time for the good bits. <laughs> yeah, Mel is, uh, is all fixed up now. It's just uh, uh, had a little bit of a rough end of disc three yep. sequence, but uh, Freya is sorted. She's got another little menu to do, but she'll be touching down to do that anyway, so it shouldn't be too bad. Excellent. Everything is in its right place now, almost. <laughs> yeah, like I said, this is a very, very supportive community. If you're doing a run and you don't quite understand what's happening, you can ask someone and someone will be in chat and they'll be saying, let me look through your VOD real quick. <laughs> we'll find you the solution. And by the time you're done mashing the current cutscene, you'll have an answer. So It's a fun little puzzle. But yeah, <laughs> having Freya go down onto Harker is really bad. 
Um, there's a lot of things that are, yep. it's one of the only places where the, there isn't really a solid backup for it. But fortunately, because we're saving, um, it's not a complete time loss because we're actually we're touching down the ship and we can get anyways. Yeah. There, and everything will be back in place going into Nova and all the menus in Discord will be the same. I believe that's a 22 AP on that fight, correct? Because it's 11 and then it's doubled for ability up that you end up losing out on? Uh, uh, yeah, that's right on target. But I, <laughs> I just found out that Silver Dragons were 13 before ability up. So that's a big stick Ooh, of yeah. AP right there. Yeah. He's a juicy boy. He's a big boy. Poor Freya is getting absolutely destroyed for Cs every single fight. Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Not a big deal. No, the only thing I was nervous about was that uh, she had to survive Nova, but luckily she was able to pull it through. Yep, no, that, that I'm a little nervous bad. with uh, nervous about Freya's trance on Cease. That's not something we want to see. <laughs> Come Scary on, level, Blart. But <laughs> Get up, Blart. <laughs> Get together, Blart. Might have to deal with some interesting circumstances there, but uh, more to come on that. Mel has finished up her disc three fights and is a couple cutscenes and a little bit of text away from disc four herself. This is probably the second major run killer boss in the whole game. We've got obviously the red dragons that we had earlier with their Twister, and then Nova is the next one. Uh, it can get pretty dicey pretty quickly. Uh, Shockwave does a lot of damage really fast. Um, pretty much everything it does is, is an AoE, except for um, Psychokinesis, which is unfortunately also a really damaging ability. <laughs> Really, really painful. Um, there are some interesting theories about how you can, you can still Luna despite um, Psycho Kinesis openings, but I think it's kind of risky no matter how you, how you skew it. But we'll see. It's um, one of those fights that is quite difficult to practice um, like a standard fight for. Um, there's a lot of weight that you can make in there, and it's the And it's Roughly a 50 50 on whether or not Luna is successful with, the, with like a, like the opener that you want for it and things like that. Um, so when you're practicing, you should see a good amount of variation in these fights between every runner. It's, no fight is going to be exactly the same as the one before it, unless we all get yeah. lucky and see some Lunas and it's hands free, but we'll see if we get any. But if it's like a stunner, he lives, you think it's doable. Um, I've seen people making theories of like using Amaran to throw an elixir and things like that and you can do it it does not not work <laughs> um but your shit yeah if you get shockwaved on the following turn and two people go down then you're kind of at the mercy of hoping that you get counters out of it yep okay, so we'll see kind of what happens we're if we're gonna get luna we want to see an aerial slash or a tidal wave opener from nova dragon and see what we get well, this is clearly punishment for the slander of saying that Rev loves blue text boxes. Um, How dare you, sir? <laughs> the counter Shot straight from me to you. He got some very nice damage rolls there. There's only one person died, and it's the one who has auto life. So we're going to go into the uh, backup version, the standard version of this, which is just revive and charge, because charge cannot be countered, as Rome said, because it is technically a counter in its own right. It's a counter to a counter, so you can't do that. So... This is a little bit slower and a little risky if we see another shockwave, which we're just hoping not to see. It's a very low percentage chance of it at this point. It can happen, so we're just going to hope to get through this fight as fast as possible by just reviving, charging, and doing a couple calculated regular attacks with Sedane. That's right. Yep, as Sal yeah, mentioned, yeah. at this part of the run we finally have a good weapon for Amaranth, so he's actually dealing some real damage again. Love to see it. Aerial Slash is going to only knock out Freya here. So the elemental abilities that he's got, which is Thunder Wave and Aerial Slash, and a little bit later on Twister as well, um, pretty much don't do anything. All of the elemental attacks completely heal Steiner, which is beautiful. And um, 
Amaranth and Freya have got variations of resistances to different elements or two. And that is a big counterattack on Zidane. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Oh my goodness. Get flattened, sir. <laughs> 25, should... 76. You are not surviving that no matter what you do. This should be very close to lethal at this point. Hopefully, yeah, as long as it's not a psycho. Uh, the shockwave here. We should be able to get back into this fight. Even if it is, Steiner has a chance to survive it. But it's not a shockwave, so. Yeah, it looks like we're, we're on the verge of lethal, so this should just be. There we go. Very nice. Yep, yeah, Steiner is um, a huge rock in that fight. He uh, absorbs a lot of stuff, so he needs to get focused pretty hard on the down. Unfortunately, not the fastest fight, but uh, still a fairly commanding lead. It's about uh, six and a half minutes or so. Uh, usually take down an over on a fight like that. Something like that. Now is reaching disc four as well. Last disc swap, you always hold your breath, make sure it loads properly. Oh yeah, give it a little hour in there. <laughs> a little little, little, little rope just to make sure. Come on, buddy. You can do it. You can do it, you've been so good to me. <laughs> you've been going for so long, just a little more, please. Please, please, please. just 45 more minutes, not anymore. <laughs> and Cease is making her way there. She's a minute or so away from disc four herself, so we are all very close to each other. Mert's got yep, the first four. scary fight of the disc, so it's cruising it's, now. It could still be anyone's game. Disc 4 has got a lot of t twists and turns. Death guys can just say no, and uh, even after that, it's still not over, thanks to Transcurja and Necron and the uh, the curveballs they can throw at you as well. In a setting like this as well, where you are, you know, kind of forced to finish, um, normally in an RTA, RTA setting, if you don't save it and you, you, you go down, you you don't often have many chances to get back into it thanks to not having a save or anything like that. But um, yeah, we're going to be relo reloading and Death Guys can actually just completely stop you dead for quite a long time. Absolutely. So at this part of the run, we're not really concerned with everyone's health all that much. We're going to see a, a few occasions where we uh, restore health for Steiner and Zidane. But again, like I said, we're mostly relying on charge at this point. And the way charge works is if you are at critical HP, which is Phoenix down range, you will attack. And since we're either nullifying all damage or dying anyways on an attack, we might as well just stay in crit HP. So aside from a couple of use cases, we're going to stay in critical HP with everyone. Um, It'll actually help Amart if he kills Steiner off here in a random encounter, just to get him to crit HP himself, because he survived the Nova Dragon fight with full health. So, we'll see how the fight is set up going into Malaris coming up. Uh, I looked away for two seconds and I didn't see Mal's menu, but I did hear <laughs> some of the buttons I being pressed, so well. <laughs> just, yep, I'm assuming that it's right. <laughs> Feel free to check the VOD, I can take over for a couple minutes while uh, we make sure, but I assume she You got know it. what? I'm sure we'll notice. I'm sure, yeah, we'll, I was I'm sure somewhere in Nova it will rear up if uh, it went wrong, but no, it should yeah. be fine. And this point is just four for Cease as well, so here we go for everybody. Alrighty. We're gonna make estimate. I believe we actually are with every single person, as long as we don't get anything warrant at the end. But uh, shouldn't have said anything. We're we're great. Yeah, here comes uh, disc four. This is the uh, last dungeon of the game, if you want to call it that, and it is rife with encounters. You saw Amar just get a second encounter on the same screen. This is a very unforgiving disc, if it wants to be. Uh, the typical disc, I would say, is 9 to 11 encounters on average. Sometimes you get a 7 if you are extremely lucky, and sometimes you get a 16 if you are extremely unlucky. <laughs> so It uh, does have a huge amount of variance, but... Not only the encounters, the driving force behind the time as well, the fights can really trap you, especially things like Tiamat. Um, Nova Dragon actually That's is one of them. 
Um, death guys, obviously, in the setting is something that can really stop you for a while. And um, if uh, if uh, Necron doesn't go so well, you have to if you reset, you have to go and do Transcooter again, which is roughly a two and a half minutes to three minute fight. Yep. Oh, the yeah, cleave! Heard. It's Mr. Cleave! Damage, dude! 2.3 thousand <laughs> damage on blue. <laughs> it was absolutely okay. Great. We... <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wanted him to be no HP. You did see Amart stop running there. It's uh, something that was learned about a bit late in the speedrunning game, probably five years before people realized what was happening. When you are running away and you take physical damage, you take extra physical damage. And that enemy in particular, people were trying to flee from and were running away, and he would do that move cleave, and everyone would just die even at full health. And no. they'd say, well, this enemy is just brutal. Taking a Priya? Oh, she's taking a Priya. Hey, Please don't punish. Nova Dragon. Psychokinesis. On. Is it on Steinbutt? You can survive. Looks like she's okay. going to go for it. I respect it. Mad lad. All right, let's see it. Okay, I so she is using Luna. I don't think we've talked about what this actually does. It uh, casts Berserk on the whole party, which means it every attack will do. It a steering wheel and hands it over. <laughs> 50% then, extra really damage, so the damage numbers wrong. are going to fly, but you can't revive. You're at the mercy. Like we saw, we can survive pretty much everything very easily, other than shockwaves, a little scary. So oh, we're just hoping for no. some tidal waves and some aerial slashes, and we're going to hold our breath here. But I think everyone's <gasps> going to That's die. Enormous. Counter attack! Oh as my well? god! Oh, everyone over. survived. A counterattack. Okay, so we're gonna see some really high damage rolls from everyone. Eight thousand, seven thousand, eight hundred. That was so necessary. Okay, well, we still need another attack from Zidane. I it's think. Not and... not... Oh my <laughs> god! That preempt with Zidane was the difference. It's too easy. Absolutely beautiful. It's so Wait. scary to use Luna, but oh my god, does it save a ton of time when it goes right? So that was a fantastic <laughs> job by Mel. The preemptive Steiner is on the, the second. This great Steiner's on the second boss, Malaris, and uh, basically we're just going to be dealing a ton of damage here. There is a gimmick to this fight though that um, after Malaris has taken lethal damage, she will counter with a move called Raining Swords, which does a ton of damage to everybody. And there's a couple ways around it. You can either jump with Freya to completely dodge it, or you can just have the Rebirth Ring. So. Thankfully, we have the rebirth ring, and we're doing everything I can, everything we can, to keep Freya alive, including protect girls on Zidane, which is why it's so important to get that AP early in disc one, so you have it here. So Zidane will prevent Freya from dying at least once, and hopefully more. Whoa, and whoa, whoa! We'll just survive this fight, no problem. Choto the Mate, one second. Is that the tower that I see in Zidane's? It sure great. is the tower. Oh we're going for the swag goodness. strat. And picking up the tower. Once a meme, now part oh. of the run. Can you believe it? We're actually C's seeing got the, the opening, opening title wave. Will we see another Luna? Here comes Paul Mark. Here Brock. comes the wing edge. Here comes the dragon. Here comes Luna. The Dane take the wheel. There comes Raining Swords. Everyone's dead. No way. Freya's revived. <laughs> Amart is through it. Oh my god, this is crazy. I just realized that Freya, not Freya, Cease has got her party members around the wrong way a little bit. It's Paul Mall Blood. <laughs> Paul Mall Blood Cup. I hope she doesn't fix it. <laughs> I was wondering why she's shockwave. having a hard time finding Luna. Oh my god. Oh, I don't think she's going to be as lucky. Like Miles. Please, Freya, live. Live, Freya. Oh, oh it's okay. It's okay. So counter attack. No, no counter attack. Oh my god. We are praying for a tidal wave. Cut away, please. Ah, oh, aerial slash is gonna kill Freya. A slash. Freya's gonna go down and he is gonna Steiner heal has Steiner, no though. control. He's alive. He needs a lot of attacks in with Steiner. Come on, Steiner. Here's one of his hits. Twister is good. We absorb Twister, this. Okay. We, we eat this for breakfast. That means he's gone past 50%. So two she's more hits after this. She's capable of still surviving this. We just need her to get some good RNG. On. A lot of tidal waves, some aerial slashes. Some... Psycho is scary. But survive. Let's survive. Ah, oh my god. It's gonna take more than that. Come on, Steiner. Yeah, you beat the boy. Oh, 
<laughs> Unbelievable plushness from everyone using Luna. Easy fight for babies. It's just that easy. <laughs> it's so easy, mates. Oh, oh my the, god. The, 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 Mr. Cleave. You love to see everyone. Maybe a quick flip the rest. making his way to the, the third boss of the disc, Mr. Tiamat. Tiamat, there's only Jetfire. Let's take a look at that fight. Nothing too unusual about that fight, except he can do some nasty punishing. He can absorb your strength, which not only makes him stronger, but uh, also weakens your party members. We really don't want that on Freya, because she is the strongest one. Cause she's the only one with Dragon Killer, which Tiamat happens to be. He can also absorb your MP, which can be really annoying. Take away your charge. He can That's float you and snort you away if you countered. He can just do a ton of nasty things. Or he can be really nice and just absorb magic over and over. Um, so absorbing strength is that that powers up Jetfire, am I correct? And then sure does. Magic yeah, is Jetfire is considered physical. Yeah, and then it's uh, twisted for magical. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, Jetfire really hurts if he's done an absorb strength prior to it. But look, fortunately, he can only do one of them each. So one, one twister and one Jetfire per fight. He is not allowed to cast it again. He is banned for being too powerful. <laughs> so this, this is the the one fight that we will uh, heal up another party member besides the Dane. We will heal Steiner just in case we get Jetfired. Makes things a little bit safer, I assume. Amar's going to be doing that. Um, the only I'm thing afraid. to really watch out for is, I think two uh, absor absorb strengths are okay. It's a little scary, but if he absorbs strength, strength three times, then does jet fire, everyone is dead. Oh, yeah. And this is a very long fight because he has a ton of health and a ton of defense. You'll see Freya hitting for a normal amount and everyone hitting for 65% of what they were hitting before. Grim, nice no. Silent Claw opener just to be annoying. Mel's getting bullied a little bit by Mel, but is still alive. We just want to make sure that she has the auto life on Freya still. That's the only thing we're really concerned about here, other than some time being lost. So typically uh, in these fights, we're trying to reserve use of uh, charge because the actual act of casting charge itself is somewhat slow. But um, Freya deals so much damage in these fights that it's actually worth spending that extra little bit of time to uh, manually cast charge each turn. Uh, but only really in this fight. Afterwards, we, uh, we kind of gravitate away from it a little, again, a little bit. Oh my god, that's a PP crit. Freya, please. <laughs> this is PG. I need you to calm down. And Never. that's lethal damage on Malaris. Oh, we're seeing a veteran. Ah, please, Priya, please. Oh no. Cease. No. How lucky is the cease? So the only thing we don't really want. Well, there's two things we. It's the two in five <laughs> chance of heartbreak, and Annoying. that's one of them. That is one of them. Oh, so there is a goodness. backup strategy here that you can employ. Uh, I think she's just gone for it. Is she attacked? Yeah. So e that so. will kill. But the problem with that is that everyone else is alive. So this is going to split experience really badly. The alternate strategy here is if you um, if you KO um, uh, Amaranth and, and and Steiner as well before finishing with Freya, then uh, Freya gets so much experience she ends up on 28, 26. She goes straight past 25. But uh, it's that's like only just... Amaranth is level five, which is not the end of the world. No, it has actually put Zidane on 34 as well, which is actually good for Death Guys. Um, the extra level on Death Guys is going to bring his HP up by roughly 300 HP, which is really nice actually. Uh -oh. A significant amount. She heals that, right? Yeah. Uh, good question. We do so. We do. Yeah. yeah. It's on the menu. I don't know what happened. Yep. Okay. It's the first law of resonance. The no protect Necron. <laughs> <laughs> if an Iron Giant cast protect, that means that Necron cannot cast protect. This is the back of the line. He cannot get it again. <laughs> it's, it's literally cheating. <laughs> Meanwhile, Amar is absolutely zooming. Please, Damn. sir, this is a no speeding zone. I'm gonna have to issue a blink. I missed the Tiamat fight. It must have been so clean. Oh, cease! Yes, cease. Correct. 
Oh my they goodness, decided to he's ignore the, the tower, tower. Throwing the game away. Perfecto. Okay, Jesus so we've got... Malaris. Mel is about to enter Tiamat. Mark's got a ways to go before the next boss. So he's doing... He's doing progress towards uh, the Kraken here. Kraken is considered one of the worst well. sections of this core. There's a lot of there's a lot of space to traverse, a lot of chances to get encounters. These are good ATVs. Can we get in front? Oh, not quite. I blame the tower. <laughs> <laughs> is that a double preempt from C? Wow, boy. Reflect. All right. Yep. Okay. She has opted to do nothing this turn. You fool. <laughs> We're not even going to use magic. I don't even know the first spell in the book! Imar with a one encounter long screen for Kraken. I think it's a two encounter split so far or something like that. That's and he is absolutely zooming busting. through this one. He's just hoping for not one extra one in time. Maybe he'll kill, you know, maybe he's gonna go for Hades. <laughs> I noticed he didn't save. A little risky. <laughs> I think he's confident in himself. Kraken, if you are set up properly, is the safest fight in the game, I would say. Is this the form the legendary four-man charge? Oh my goodness. Oh. This is, some, this is some real damage. This is going to do about 20, 22, 26. Oh, but never mind. It's even more critical. It's more. <laughs> I cannot be stopped at this point. She is un unbeatable. Coming in clutch, ending the round. Blood, <laughs> milk, hot. She switched them round. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Paul Mall. Paul Mall. Alrighty, we're seeing no preempts on Tiamat for Mel here. An instant float. I hope it's on Steiner. Amaran. Ah, it's just going to have to sit there. The way and flow works for a little bit. Do a regular attack. You will counter with Snort, which kicks your party oh member out of the fight for good. Yeah, all the criticals. And they don't stop. Oh, they don't stop coming. And they don't stop coming. <laughs> <laughs> All the times in the game you want a critical, it's on disc four, and especially on Tiamat, who is so painfully slow. Absolutely, and straight into a twister. So this is going to leave Amaran up. Might kill Steiner if uh, Mel's unlucky. Okay. Nope, still kicking. Uh, auto life, auto life. Yes, 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 yes. You can continue to attack. That's it. Get that tower in. Put it to good use. Four point three thousand. It buffs. It buffs a stand by around eight hundred damage, and it could potentially save an entire turn because Tiamat. It's quite hard to deal damage to. Meanwhile, Amart is opening Kraken. Open freeze is what you want to see. One of the weirdest fights in uh, Disc 4. Kraken has two tentacles on its side that have 10,000 health apiece. And the uh, attack pattern changes very drastically between whether or not it has tentacles up and whether it's just a lonely little Kraken boy. So while Kraken's only got 54,000 health, you have you also have to spend an entire round dealing damage to both of these tentacles to get them down. But because of some weird animation glitches, you can do a nice little manipulation where you can get a charge off between turns to get a little extra damage going. So there is such a thing as a two-turn crack, and if you do the fight very specifically, let's see if Amart is up to speed there. Some really good calculations by uh, Mel there. She was able to work out the damage on the fly at the end then and calculate that a charge was going to give uh, lethal. And, uh... Managed to save a turn on Tiamat, very nice. So, ooh, this is going to want to put Zen and crit, never mind. Doesn't quite need it though, the tower is going to carry our damage a little bit here. Might be okay. We just need Zidane to be put into critical um, next turn. Kraken's a fight you want to optimize very, very much if you can help it because it is an extremely slow fight. As you can see, he just kind of sits there and waits to do his turn, decides to cast a Water Go, which is a very slow spell, sits there and waits for his animation to finish, and then repeat, repeat, repeat. So if you can cut out a couple turns from this fight, you end up saving a lot of time. Yeah, the, uh, I think the, the PD, I don't know, it's hard to say. It might not have been necessary. Because if this, if this connects and Zidane goes into crit, the charge with a Freya attack behind it would be lethal. Uh, I guess this is the most strategy. Uh, safety strategy, safety strategy. Yeah, since the uh, Zidane survived that with the distract. Mm. 
Mel is dealing with a veteran of her own. Let's see uh, who this uh, let kills. Yeah, so this strategy doesn't work that um, Cease was using before because um, but De Demon, Devil Killer, and Bird Killer have been taken off now, so Zidane can't deal lethal damage. As uh, Freya can't, sorry, deal lethal damage to the uh, the veteran. We're using some consumables here to uh, try and get a quick flee, perhaps. No such luck. We are locked in place. This is uh, this is kind of annoying, really, isn't it? <laughs> <Round> <laughs> a little two bit. Of Russian roulette. Please just kill off All right. uh, Amaranth All or right. something. Amaranth is a viable selection. Okay, Cease is going into Tiamat. Gonna get that Dragon Killer put on. Get our Stunner topped up. We've got plenty of Ethers to play with. We could probably drop a few. 15 Ethers? Oh, oh my goodness. God. Oh my god. Kamar is making his way to Lich, is dealing with a couple of space doodle bugs, but he'll be there in a matter of minutes. Matter of seconds, actually. The uh, On the last boss, you need to get down before the 12 hour mark for the Excalibur 2. I think he's going to make it as long as he gets this boss down within the next three ish hours. He'll be fine. Nice Being trick. A float on Freya. That is very unfortunate, which means Freya just cannot use a regular attack, otherwise she will be snorted out of the battle. So, Pretty this fight's going to be just a tiny to get bit loaded. slower. Yep. It will wear off after roughly a turn and a half, so hopefully by the next turn Freya will be able to do a regular attack depending on what uh, Uma does nice here. Get a very quick attack. The yellow's nice, though. Uh, yeah, you have to hold ATP a little These bit. These could probably that. attack here with yeah. Freya. She kind of it would be off by the time. Her. Yeah, it'd be close. Let's see. Yeah. Could have got a cheeky fair. I believe Amar bad. just picked up the Mace of Zeus. I don't know uh, what his plan <laughs> is there, but we might be seeing some cheeky throws on Death Guys. VV on Necro. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. Look at that Chimera booty. Oh my. Battle boots. For the whole family. <laughs> so there is an optional steal from Garland that some people route in, which. Uh, Gives you an ability called Initiative, which gives you a 1 in 3 chance for your encounter to be a preemptive strike or something like that. Or a 1 in 4, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun to joke. It's fun to yeah, joke, it really messes your composition up though. Like... Oh, it's awful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Absorb Strength Jet Fire for Cease, but Steiner survived it, thankfully. That's the big issue, and I think the fight is close to done. I think we can just end it right here. Take a look. Oh, uh, I just noticed that Mel has a Steiner that's not in crit. That's gonna need to that's true. change. True. Diamant is down. Hopefully, I don't know where Mel is on the map, but let's see if uh, he gets Steiner in crit before cracking. It's gonna be very important. Absolutely, yeah. You really want to be going into that fight with a crit Steiner so that you can get him in on the charge. Pretty much essential because uh, Steiner pretty much can't take damage in that encounter. Or can't. Kumar's making quick work of Lich, who's actually a very easy boss, very weak to Holy, so Freya is doing almost max damage every hit, and because of charge, she's getting so many hits in that uh, the boss just kind of melts away. He can do a couple of attacks that kill off your party members and waste a bit of time, but for the most part, it's a very easy fight. And we'll see if he actually the Excalibur 2 in time. I think he just might. Oh, Whew, that was close. Oh, he's got it, okay. <laughs> nice work, Amart, nice work, nice work. Yeah, so for those that haven't seen it, that is exactly the point where you can find yourself an Excalibur 2. Fortunately, you only get to use it for three whole fights in the game, but we do take advantage of that. Yeah, the Excalibur 2 is, uh, is one of the only weapons uh, that we actually acquire that has a, an element attribute to it, which means that we can find a way to amplify its damage. Just a little bit of holy boost on top of MP attack, on top of killer abilities, will push him into the 9999 damage range for pretty much everything. Mel did get the extra encounter just before Kraken and is able to take Steiner to critical health, which means he will be in range for charge. Everything is right with the world. We, uh, yep, we wanted that encounter. Calculate it. <laughs> yep. No space doodle for Amar. Gonna get out of there scot free. Nice. On the last couple of screens that have encounter checks on them before he heads into death, guys. He's got three more screens to go. Or the big nasty himself.
Mel is just beginning her Kraken fight in a matter of moments. Let's see if she can get the two turns set up herself. She has indeed he picked up the first power. screen, no encounters. Oh my goodness. Second he screen encounter, there we go. He's schmoovin' though. He is schmoovin'. I noticed that um, Mel's only got four ethers left, so she's gonna have to start Oof. serving some mana. That's after she's topped everyone up though, so hopefully she can take those four all the way to death eyes and into Should be okay. okay. Mm. Also, tent if we really need to. We've got uh, some options. But... <laughs> I don't think we have any tents left. Oh, no, shouldn't we? be carrying okay. any. <laughs> well, I always feel like we should, but <laughs> never do, do we? <laughs> Make a quick pit stop, exit out of Pandemonium, go back to Trino, buy some tents, and you're good to go. Kraken is beginning for Mel. We wait to see what the first ability is. You pretty much just want to freeze since we are immune to that for everybody, I believe. She will be doing a very specific turn order, attacking certain tentacles with certain characters to be sure she kills them off, making sure Steiner goes first so that by the time the tentacles are finally dying, the charge will be able to be input, which is extremely important. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because the, the mechanics here is actually very similar to Lani. Um, <laughs> and if you look really hard, you can see the likeness. She needs to start queuing these abilities this turn, though. Get them in nice and quick. That's it. Plenty of time to get the... Yeah, there we go. We're good, we're good, we're good. 7,000 damage from Freya. Good old 50 e close bracket exclamation e mark dash for quote. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Amart is there. He is going to, I think, get himself fully set up, make a save, and head into the Death Guys fight. He is there. He is there, ladies and gentlemen. This there. is the moment you've been waiting for. If you are doing an RTA run, this is where the make or break point happens. This boss can just end you. When he someone wants. has to swear, it's there. It's there. Okay, this tunnel looks good. Needs to be careful with the... Uh... So Amarin always going last on Kraken here is usually going to be met with a counter-attack, but you've got to be careful that the counter-attack actually is Kraken's turn. Yeah, here's the leg. Was doing a but good sometimes... job of holding ATB and checking. Yeah, there's the Wargo. So this might put Zanin crit. If it does, you react accordingly and you... Uh... Send him in after the charge. It's the charge first. Very nice. So it's charge. Freya's done. Ooh. I suppose Zidane hasn't gone down yet, so it's okay. Correct. Yep. Yeah. But this should be lethal. I'd be very surprised if this isn't lethal. Looks like Cease and we are heading into Kraken. death, guys, with Neymar. Cease right behind Mel. So, a. Uh, Death Guys opens every time guaranteed with an ability called Meteor, um, which does random damage between 50 and 4,500 damage to all party members randomly. Uh, defense stats are completely ignored. And you just gotta pray, really. Cross your fingers. And that's, and that's only the first part of the fight. Uh, Priam! Cheeky win. little Priam! Hey, uh, didn't <laughs> jump. We'll it's not actually it. enough. It's not actually <laughs> enough. <laughs> Yeah, it does cap out. I think 4850 is the highest goal. We're seeing hopefully two people survive. That is the goal. Ideally, we love to see Zidane and Steiner being those two people. We'll take any two people, though. We'll take one person if we absolutely have to, and if everyone dies, we have Rebirth Ring, and we're crossing our fingers, but we're oh. probably doomed. Oh! Oh, that's not attack? good. You do not like oh. to... Oh, this could. This oh, is bad. Amart is risky. Demon's claw again. Yeah, he's yeah. getting away with it. Oh I my keep god. Getting away with it. <laughs> Simply he can't keep Amart. getting away with it. So easy. <laughs> now he is in the classic spin to win cycle, but we have everyone with correct ATBs and correct health, so he should be safe. We're just looking for that. Uh, that lovely close, maybe a counter or two. We're counting off yep. our damage. I think we need six attacks total. Yeah, that's three, but unfortunately Freya's damage is a little bit low, so we're going to need a little help getting up Amaran yep. here to hopefully tank against any stray um, deaths uh, cast. Yep, now that uh, he's closed, he can cast death on one random target, so we bring up Amaran just as a bit of a beef shield. He can also throw some weapons. Maybe the Mace of Zeus will be coming out. He has Wind Absorb. He'll be totally fine. Let's see what uh, yeah. 
Yeah, dude. Mark. Let's go, I buddy. I don't even know how much damage this does. I don't know either. Probably not. Actually, I, have, I was gonna say, I don't think it has a ton of attack power, but hey, it'll make up the gap for Freya's damage being just a little short. So it we'll actually it. will. It, you know, it's helpful. Twister, you love to see it. You've got Wind Absorb and Immunity. With City. Tried to get Zane into critical HP. Didn't quite get there. Nonetheless, survives the fight and is on to the last two. Oh, we've seen a bunch of victory screens all the same time here, so it seems to just take down uh, Lich. And Mel's taken, uh, Mel's taken down. Uh, I'm getting mixed up. Mel's oh, taken down around. Lich. <laughs> Cease is taken down Kraken. Amar's yeah. taken down Death Guys. A lot of victory going on right here. Another Excalibur two for us. Excalibur two for Mel. Yeah, nice. Mel's got time. four elixirs. <laughs> <laughs> it's, okay. it's, it's enough. It's plenty. It's, it's fine. Cease made her way through without an encounter, so she'll be getting onto Lich in just a matter of moments, and we'll be taking that fight down in another minute or two. We'll be right behind Mel. We'll going to be keeping all eyes on Amart. This next fight is mostly safe, but things can certainly go wrong. We just want to avoid the spell known as Flare Star. Flare yeah, is totally he's... okay. Flare Star is not. So, let's just see what happens here. He's opting to... Um... Taking a critical HP Zidane, which means that Flare Star could potentially knock out three of his members in one hit. And uh, if it's preceded by targeting Stein and taking him down into a follow up Flare Star, it could get really, really, really rough. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> there is a little bit of a gimmick here with Trans Kuja. What happens is once you push him past his half health. Thresh threshold barrier he will counter any regular attack with a flare star so what we're going to do instead is push him to just under half of his health and then charge because as we have said so many times charge already is a counter you can't counter a counter we'll be doing a decent amount of damage and then charging our way through the fight opening with a holy on amaranth is no big deal we'll be attacking with everybody or opting to charge, that works too. We're just gonna start the charge train right now. That's a lot of damage with the tower, isn't it really? It's lovely, isn't it? Reflect, you love to see it. I don't think this will be lethal damage. We're gonna have one more attack from Transkuja that we have to get through. Anything other than a Flare Star, and I think even a Flare Star might be okay as long as Steiner survives it. Might be in range. A lot of calculator handy. Hopefully Amart does and knows what to do. Oh, she's out of remedies. Uh-oh. You just have to hit him. <laughs> hit him. Mel can unfortunately not uh, clean Zidane up. Best option here is to kill him, bring him back to life, and then flee. Yeah. A little scary. Amart is through Trans Kuja. Nice. On to Necron, the last fight of the game. Don't you Did not take a look at Treya's Transbar, but eh, let's assume we're safe. Hey, maybe it was the damn that trans. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Cease has got the highest prayer transfer. I don't think Amart's is very high. Though I don't okay. remember seeing Amart's prayer trance at all. I didn't look, and I am wishing I had. It'll be a surprise to all of us. Cease got oh. the <laughs> lovely space doodle encounter, unfortunately. <laughs> Everyone's making their way to death, guys. Mel is getting so many encounters. What? Well, Amart is once again just two steps to later straight into another fight. Firaga, <laughs> <laughs> ooh, non shooting. Yeah, making a him. beating here. Ooh. 
Okay, so there is a very specific strategy to Necron. Uh, I didn't see Freya's trance. Oh, we don't get to see Freya's trance unless we're going to start us, do we? Nope. Yeah, so uh, Necron is a very unique fight. He, instead of having one ATB bar that dictates when his a turn is up and what attacks he will do, he has four ATB bars that all have different spells tied to them. Which sounds very, very terrifying, but you can disable some of those ATB bars by killing off party members or having them in critical health. If you get them down to just one party member or all your party members in critical health, you'll only have one ATB bar to deal with, and that's on a very set measurement of what the attacks will be. Fortunately, we do start the fight with full health after the previous fight, so we have some work to do and we have a little bit of finger crossing to get to that uh, critical status. And from there, we only have to deal with a couple of attacks. Let's see what this fight looks like, and we'll explain what's happening as we go, because it will look very bizarre. What an awesome fight Necron is, man. Once I learned the strategy for this, it was just oof, it's so, it's so satisfying to pull off as well, yeah. Great way to end the fight, or end the run, honestly. Mm -hmm. So it should only be two turns of attacks, roughly, once the fight actually starts. But, uh, Amart's going to have to do a little bit of a dance first. Not just as simple as attacking. We're going to be paying very close attention to the first couple of attacks. We're hoping to see the spell Blue Shockwave. That's our cue that we're on the right track and ready to start doing some fun stuff. We don't Ooh. want to see some spells. Shell we is really good. don't want to see attack. Shell is great. That means he cannot cast Protect. He's casting Shell instead. The dog is start okay. Off our party members. The dog is annoying, but okay, as long as Freya doesn't die. This is the good. survived. Fantastic. There's the blue shockwave. Next hit should be a blue shockwave. Zidane killed himself, so we can no longer do meteor, flare, or holy. Blue shockwave on Freya. And he's going to jump, which is not going to do very much damage, but he's going to do a very important thing. So right now, Necron only has one ATV bar that is active. The way it works is it will do blue shockwave. On the next turn, do a move called Grand Cross, which will do any status ailment it chooses. It'll do some serious damage to you if you are just standing there and taking it. Because Freya was in the air, he completely skipped his turn. His next turn would be a move called Neutron Ring, which does insane amounts of physical damage. He can only do that if he has done Grand Cross right before. Shockwave in the cycle. What will happen is there'll be three blue Shockwaves. All that does is take your health down to one key, and then it'll be another Grand Cross, but we can get just enough damage in before that happens. We are attacking, we are charging, we are reviving, we are ATB waiting, we are doing everything we can just to get this thing over with. As long as his inputs are clean, his time will be coming up in just a matter of seconds now. Be the final turn, so one last ATB wait for Zidane here. Let's get that extra just little bit of damage. He probably in. doesn't need it, but we just do it anyways. So the charge should be a Zidane hit, a Freya hit, and Steiner's hit will most likely be time. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Final Fantasy IX. Congratulations, Amart. Great, great job. Dude. That was awesome. Well played. He's counter-attacked. He's counter Make it stop. He's, <laughs> he's already dead. <laughs> Mel is absolutely destroying death guys with some counter-attacks. We're seeing a couple of great fights on the side. Cease is just getting the meteor herself, and everyone is dead because, of course, Cease gets the fun stuff. No one else gets to partake in any of our reindeer games except for poor Cease. Still survives it, got the demon claw, got the miss. Still alive. Come on, Cease. Mel with her zero elixirs and zero ethers and zero MP managed to absolutely destroy death, guys, because that's the kind of game this is. Meanwhile, Cease clinging to life, <laughs> trancing, getting activated. bullied, trancing, a surge of emotion for this, Cease as we head into the. End. This is a fitting example of using, uh, <laughs> using the trance. This is definitely when emotions are surging right now. Oh, you stop think of a more spinning, useless spot for a trance. Gonna have to get 
Please yeah. just I close. You could even pivot to using defend a little bit. It's always a little bit scary though. Okay, okay, we can PD this then. Actually, got no high potions left. <laughs> Wait, have you got any Phoenix Dance? Oh, I dropped 30. Yeah, we get, we get. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. This is, this is when he demons go and you're in the fight. Oh, closes. Called it, called it, called it, called it. Elixir. Okay, okay. No, not attack Elixir. Oh, no, yeah. go for it. We're going to get a close. We're going to get a close. Work. Go. Oh, yeah. go. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Never worry. <laughs> Bell is heading into Trans Kuja. About to get some attacks off. We'll see what the first ability is. Frey, I got the 3M. i going to try to do about 26 ish thousand damage before we start charging. I don't need to attack with everyone but Steiner and then begin to charge. Peace is absolutely nice. demolishing Death Guys as we all expected with that meteor opening. Of course she is handling it perfectly. No issues, all calculated. This is the, the new age of FF9. Absolute fearless. Safety saves. Who needs them? Who needs to save the game against the most lethal fight in the game? Not Cease. Not cop can survive a death itself. Mel is eating a flare star right now. It's gonna hit everybody. It can miss though. No, oh, he's it ain't it. It on. The auto life as well. Cannot be taken down. Wait, is this lethal? I have Yarge? not been paying attention. I've been watching Cease's insane run. We'll take a look. He should be safe. It, what about the big oh, flare star? Oh, it's <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Player to end it all. <laughs> Mel is going to be heading into Necron in a sec. Can Cease is in control of this fight, finally. I don't know how many hits we've gotten in, but let's just do a couple more. Why not? It's never enough. Hit never him again. Enough. No Mace of Zeus to throw, unfortunately. We'll throw the Wing Edge instead. We'll only do 4,000 more damage, but it's good enough. gone up in smokes how i ask you rev how <laughs> how have they defeated death guys the odds Honestly, were stacked against team, them don't you see i have no idea did you see that meteor on cease no one alive mel with no elixirs whatsoever amar just doing maze of zeus strats out of nowhere the it's disrespect calculated. to death guys i've never seen anything like it before Anarchy at 3 in the morning, 10 in the morning, oh, whatever earth. time it is for you people. You FF just can't stop Paul Blart Mall Cop. <laughs> Paul Mall Blart Cop can't be stopped. Paul Cop Mall Blart. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Mythos Blart Cop. Mel is just doing a couple more minutes of text matches before she heads into Necron. Will she get a nice clean fight just like Amart? Are we going to see someone please a solo Freya? Freya. <laughs> so, the solo Freya strats, the only way to do it if you can't see. Will Cease get a trance on Necron? Okay, so. Final uh, refusal of party. There's no, men there's no menu here, but it'll give you an option to do a quick little tinkering before we do the re party is ready. It's never been more ready. Let's go. No like need to do any menu opening. here. We're ready. We are so ready. Oh, holy on finally, thank you. Let's see that. Beefy boy. The strongest. You were a little worried about a flare star, but we're not going to get any flare stars here. And if we are, it's going to miss everybody. Even the ones that can't dodge it. <laughs> because that's the power of the marathon. Take my energy seize. Oh, the reflect follow up. It's over. Hand over the dub. Now. It's all over. Mel is heading into Necron. Let's see what kind of attack she gets in before the blue shock wave. Let's see what she Oh, not. It's on prayer. It's okay. It's okay. We'll still deal with it at this point. It's 
You want to make sure you kill off your team as fast as possible. You don't want to sit there and think about it. You just want to kill them off so you remove as many bars as possible. We gaming. We gaming. Oh. Okay. Time to death. So protect. What do you do here? Why does this matter, Brutals? Protect adds all physical damage by 50%. So if you just ignore it and you try and do the regular strategy uh, despite this, you just won't be able to reach the damage. Uh, the only way around it is to cycle through one more time. So when we come back down, there's three more blue shock waves and the fourth attack is going to be another Grand Cross. So we're going to have to waste a little bit of time here. Hopefully we don't build another trends. So we can get a few <laughs> cheeky little pokes in. To be safe, that was not too big of a trance build. No, and then Mel's gonna have to manually time a jump after the third blue shock wave. It counts to about four or five seconds. Depends on how fast you count. We'll like to count to three very slowly, something like to count to five, one, two, three, four, five, and jump. You just want to wait a little bit of time, it's not too tight. So this is it, so we're gonna delay a little bit. Unfortunately, not in shock wave three. Three. Hover over the jump, so it counts to three good. or four ish seconds, and input jump. If everything goes smoothly, when she lands, we're going to see another blue shockwave where she will do the normal strat of picking up Cider first and then today. Alrighty, that we are on it. In a matter of moments, it's gone already. And she is in there as long as she does the few basic commands that she knows how to do a million times <laughs> by now. The fight is over. Yeah, had to find those knows. Phoenix Downs. They weren't <laughs> where she thought they would be because she's used all of her high posts. And she's used all of her ethers. She's used all of her elixirs. <laughs> Oh god, the muscle down memory down is failing her! <laughs> <laughs> One more revive, a charge! One more blue Sick. shock wave, some attacks, and it is all over for now. As Cease has ended Trans Kuja, I blanked and I missed it as well. It's got a nice clean fight for Cease as well. Let's watch that Freya that tra Trance. It's the only other the weirdness we can take in this fight. But not for me! <laughs> I'm gonna go for the 80 weight anyway, just because we can. Wait, is Nam back road? That 4 8 was really low. That's really low. Uh, he usually actually doesn't do <laughs> all that much. I'm sure she'll be fine. It should be okay. But then, yeah, that's low. That's pretty low. And if not, let's watch a grand cross together. <laughs> and time Jeez. for Mel is coming up right about now. Great job, Mel. Great run. Very cool. But it's not over yet, is it? There is not one over more. yet. We've got one more fight. Cease, bringing it up the rear for the rest of us. Let's go, Cease. Now, Cease is very used to using auto haste on this fight. So let's hope. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Cease, do you know how to do, do this fight? <laughs> I believe in you, Cease. Make us proud. Here it is. So one more time up from the top. You know how the fight works. You know what we're looking for. Let's see what we get. Blizzaga. We're seeing all We don't know how we feel about that. We'll wait and see. As long as Freya doesn't die, it's not that annoying. That may have been too She's late. trancing! I'm not sure if that was too late or not. For what? Uh, getting a regular trance in. A regular jump. Blue Shockwave hasn't happened yet. No, <laughs> she was just hoping. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> there it is. It worked. I respect it. It worked. I don't know if she got it in the time. Are See. we getting a regular jump or are we getting a, are we getting a jump? spear or are we getting a. Uh... Oh, this could be interesting. Oh. I wonder what's going on. I'm going to open up my spreadsheet real quick. Oh my goodness, this is where things get really complicated. She, instead of landing on this turn, will stay up in the air until her entire trance bar is gone. Is that on Blue Shockwave 1? Right? Is it Blue Shockwave 2? Is it Blue Shockwave 3? I don't know. Brutals knows. I don't know that what level Freya cool. is. Ate the veteran, I think? So I don't know what level Freya is. She should be landing before the third Blue Shockwave of the first cycle, so she's gonna see this, she's gonna delay a little bit, and then jump. All right, same strat as the protect that Mel had to do. So 
and wait a few seconds. That's completely normal. We'll wait a couple seconds, and the real test will be when Freya lands. Will we see another blue shockwave, or will we see a grand cross? That's the question. Come on, full block. Here. Ooh, Land, let's see that blue good. shockwave. It looks real good. Okay, as long as that was blue shockwave one, we're in there. <laughs> Hold your breath, everyone. Blue Shockwave or Grand Cross? Let's just see two more Blue Shockwaves. Let's go! Let's go, Cease. This new age of runners, man. They they don't even know the definition of the word fear. It Insane. doesn't exist. It's pure confidence. That was a low, low roll from Zidane at 3 9. Oh my <laughs> Very low roll with the Ori. <laughs> you miss the tower, don't you? Okay, we got a couple extra spears in there. We might be able to make up the damage difference. Real quick, we are a little bit over time, so thank you all for being here with us. We had a wonderful time. Thank you, Amart. Great job. Thank you, Mel. Thank you, Cease. We'll try not to take up too much of your time as we wrap things up here in the FF9 world. Been brilliant job for all three of the runners. You guys really, really have did yourself. This was an experience. <laughs> it's an easy guys game much fun. It is. That's time. Easy That's time game for the whole babies. race. This, this was Great really job. Fun. Thank you, everyone. Speedrun.com slash FF9. Come run it with us. Thanks for having us. That's yeah. all I have to say. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Questing for Glory. Thank you, RPG Limit Break. And thank all of you. It is snowing here. The sun's coming up. <laughs> I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'll see you, everybody. everybody. <laughs> Please do enjoy the rest of the marathon. And uh, yeah, come come check us out. Um, gonna be running this for another couple of weeks, and then be picking up Chrono Trigger 100. percent So we'll be. Uh, 